Chapter 1461 Looking for Traces The first time I got accurate information about the Dragon of the Void was a few years ago. At that time, I had arrived in the holy city of Estali. While observing the stars, I accidentally discovered that there was an abnormal space distortion in the sky. Space distortion actually happens quite often, but most people won't notice it. Because such a phenomenon will not cause any physical harm to the human body. And it cannot be observed purely with the naked eye. It is like a river flowing from west to east. Water can flow straight through the river. Even if the river has a few bends along the way, the water still flows from west to east in the general direction. The water will not stop flowing just because the river has turned. Although the human body is not a liquid. From the high-level concept of space, people are not a fixed shape. Another more intuitive example is to use the curved mirror surface to make the people in the mirror appear to be of different heights. Height. Fatness and thinness. No matter how the mirror bends, a person is still one person. With arms and legs. And will not become two or two halves. However, such spatial distortion can be discovered through side observation of third-party phenomena and then proven through mathematical verification. The first discovery of the Void Dragon's whereabouts was actually just the discovery of the spatial distortion left by its passage. And at the beginning, I never thought that these were the footprints left by some kind of creature. At that time, I had no idea about the Dragon of the Void, not to mention whether it is a legendary creature. In fact, among the legends widely circulated in the land, there is surprisingly little news about the Dragon of the Void. Most people have no idea what this is. When it was discovered for the second time, it was already speculated whether the thing that left the space distortion phenomenon was the Dragon of the Void, a legendary creature whose existence could not be confirmed. So as soon as someone saw the trace, he immediately chased after it. Because I can't observe it with the naked eye, I don't know what I should be looking at. Although they say they are chasing after them, they are actually just chasing after new spatial distortion phenomena that appear one after another, all the way slowly. If the distribution positions of these new spatial distortion phenomena are disordered and random, then you may have to wonder whether this is a natural phenomenon unique to the lost land. Just like the ebb and flow of the sea. As for the situation on the earth, I can't observe it myself. And no scientist has published such a paper. So I don't know whether the same phenomenon exists on the earth. But in fact, when chasing, the space distortion phenomenon has a certain trajectory. And the distance tends to become farther and farther. It was as if some living creature realized that it was being chased. So it ran away faster and faster. This made Lin realize for the first time that there must be some kind of will behind these spatial distortion phenomena. They are not necessarily living things with strict definitions and life characteristics in the world they live in. The reason for wanting to chase the dragon of the void stems from the irresponsible remarks of a certain world tree. Lin has confirmed that none of the different worlds connected by the world trees belong to the earth. So why did I travel from the earth to the lost lands? According to world tree, it is possible to bring things from other worlds to the lost land. In addition to World Tree, the Dragon of the Void is another possibility. Since it can bring itself here, it can theoretically send itself back too. So Lin wanted to gamble on the possibility. So the first step is to capture the Void Dragon, or at least get a chance to communicate with it face to face. Of course, Lin also studied the record of the second experience afterwards and gained some insights from it. The most precious thing is to capture a trace of evidence that seems to be the footprints of the Void Dragon. If it could be confirmed that those were indeed the footprints of the Void Dragon, then he would no longer have to chase the space distortion phenomenon and try to find the annoying dragon. If everything moves too slowly, you will always be chasing. For the third time, this time, the footprints of the Void Dragon triggered an alarm set by someone. Of course, Lin launched the capture plan he had made before. Although it is said to be a plan, the content is mostly based on improvisation. After all, my understanding of the Dragon of the Void is still quite shallow. I haven't obtained much substantive evidence. And I can't decide on many targeted methods. What's more, this is to capture, not to kill. Thinking about Zhao Yin being able to enter and leave Chang Banpo seven times. The biggest reason was that Chao Chao loved talents and couldn't bear to shoot him with random arrows. He just wanted to capture this fierce general alive and subdue him. This is what made Chan Chan Zhao Zilong famous. If he had been allowed to shoot arrows from the beginning, Lu Bu would have become a porcupine. In short, catching is more troublesome than killing. But this time, there were hundreds more boxes than before. And Lin directly asked Fen to help, which could greatly increase someone's confidence in the success of the capture. If this lineup can't catch a single hair, it will really be a crime other than war. After the alarm sounded and Halfen was contacted, 
Lin flashed into the sky. Immediately, all the Shigiri Kimaru were released and scattered around, at least 10 kilometers away, without relying on external objects. Lin's complete monitoring range of the surrounding environment is a radius of 50 meters. The maximum range can be expanded to nearly 1 kilometer, but doing so will involve most of your computing power and attention. When the monitoring range is increased by 1 meter, the energy consumed is not just 1 50th of the basic increase. You should know that the monitoring range is a spherical range, not a linear or circular area. In an open place, the detection range is of course increased. After all, there are fewer obstructions that may occupy computing power. The scattered Shakiri Kimri can act as temporary arcane eyes. In the past, communication between the gyrus could only rely on contact with each other, or at least staying within a very close distance, so that the consciousnesses of the gyrus could communicate. But since the rise of someone's forum, Programming languages entered the mysterious world, and Khan came into contact with first-hand information from someone's consciousness. The communication methods of Haikiri people have certainly been updated. The most obvious point is the communication distance. It's like originally, you could only use Bluetooth for matching. Once the module is changed, you can directly connect to the satellite remotely. Therefore, the scattered Haikiri can not only monitor the environment as arcane eyes, but also transmit the detection content back to the con in real time for integration. The most important thing is that multiple box cuts can be directly used for triangulation, which improves space monitoring capabilities by more than a small amount. The purpose of finding fun is not only to serve as the second thug at critical moments, but also to become the second detection center in the early stage. The original spherical detection range centered on Lin became a spindle-shaped range. If it is farther away and becomes a barbell shape, there will be a detection blind spot. Therefore, although the two of them flash forward alternately in the air, they still maintained a certain distance. Coupled with the scattered Shakiri sword pills, the furthest distance under surveillance was a hundred kilometers away. If such a distance were placed on the ground, it would be unimaginably far. But once moved into the air, a hundred kilometers seems to be within reach, and the range that can be seen is farther than a hundred kilometers. But no matter which one they are, they can provide the most basic computing power. Coupled with the presence of Lin and Fin, who are equivalent to human calculators, the detection range is also much larger than last time. This time, the speed of tracking the Void Dragon's footprints was much faster than the previous time. And the more participants there are, the more directions they can focus on at the same time. Although every additional focus may distract some computing power. But in the current situation of redundant computing power, doing this kind of thing does not delay the business. Fortunately, Lin agreed to broaden the scope of the box cutter's attention. And they really returned some data that they had not noticed before. To put it simply, it is the phenomenon of diffraction. The phenomenon of diffraction is a major characteristic of waves. Fluctuating creatures. This was an idea that suddenly flashed through someone's mind. An idea that was extremely inconsistent with their common sense. Back home, any theory without sufficient evidence was regarded as false. Therefore, the world is material scientific, and rational. There are no ghosts, no gods, and no existence that is invisible and unfathomable. The saying that there is a god when one raises one's head is just a matter of belief in people's hearts. And faith is both reliable and unreliable. How do those fraudsters succeed? They rely on the same method as preaching to brainwash people into stupidity. But in Lost Land, there are ghosts, gods, demons, and all kinds of unreasonable things. The source of these strange things is usually not native to Midi, but comes from a higher dimensional world. Such common sense has also developed a habit for someone. Whenever you see something you don't understand, just go to higher dimensions and you'll be lucky enough to find a match. But this time it was a slap in the face. If you want to explain the situation in front of you, you have to look in reverse. Volatility is also one of the characteristics of the low dimensional world where high dimensional creatures exist. However, behind the waveform observed this time, there is no complex mathematical model involving dimensional parameters. The complication lies in the other directions. When something has the characteristics of a wave, and the wave is strong enough to interfere with real matter, it will behave like the suspected creature in front of you. It's like turning the subwoofer to its maximum volume and shaking the house so much that pebbles are falling. At the beginning, Lin was still thinking about the quantum field, but he was not familiar with it. Although there is a means of observation with the help of Agiri, it is not comprehensive after all. At least it is not sure whether there is another self-contained world and creatures in that field. And how the creatures there should behave. Is it related to the phenomenon I am observing now?
but no quantum is big enough to crush people to death. But now that you have caught the opponent's tail, there is no reason to give up tracking. After thinking about the direction to move forward, Lin launched the flash technique towards the world he had never seen before. When your eyes become familiar with the new world, what you see is a beautiful picture. This scroll is huge, colorful, and changing. And I am also the person in the painting. In the painting. But looking at the painting. This feeling is very strange. Even a little queasy and nauseating. If you break into a high dimensional world as a low dimensional creature, you will easily be overwhelmed by the extra information from the outside world. In the past, you had to reduce the dimensionality of the information before you could understand it. However, I have also undergone several upgrades. And this situation has also improved. There is no need to use dimensionality reduction to delete and modify information obtained from the outside world. And one can now understand things in the high dimensional world. However, this is the first time that he has forcibly reduced his dimensionality and entered a world with a lower dimension than the lost land. Chapter 1462 Tracking In the two-dimensional world, don't think that such a world will be simpler. With the same information carrying capacity, such a world will be more complex because it was like the original world was cut into countless planes and then all overlapped in one breath. Some Hagaris followed, some didn't, then still remains in the original world, serving as an anchor for return. When someone doesn't want to run away, and doesn't even know where to run away. He can't even cry even if he wants to. The complexity of the two-dimensional world is no lower than that of the three-dimensional world. In other words, this is because I am not adaptable. The higher the dimension of the world, the more information will be displayed even at the same location. These messages cannot be seen or understood in the original world. If ordinary people tried to understand, they would either go crazy or have their heads exploded. So the fastest way to adapt to the high-dimensional world is to ignore the extra information. But entering the two-dimensional world is completely different. The world with the same amount of information has suddenly changed the way it is presented. If you can't find a proper angle to see the world, you will still be driven crazy by the scenes in this new world. This feeling is like in mathematics. From 1 plus 2 plus 3 to 10. I am used to seeing all 10 numbers and 9 plus signs arranged in order. If you suddenly come up with a quick calculation formula, although it represents the same thing and can get the same answer. The feeling before you will be different, although the former is long. It is intuitive and you know what you are doing. The latter is short. But after a few turns, it has a different train of thought. At first glance, you may not understand what this is doing. In fact, the two different calculation formulas are different in terms of language and logic and express different things, at least when used to talk to the original Snake King and the current colonial ship imaginary number. It will be used to understand two different meanings. Someone will feel like this after coming to the two-dimensional world. Everything I see and come into contact with has a lot of information compressed into it. However, entering such a world, the footprints of the target he wants to track are much clearer than before. Originally, the dragon of the void could only be tracked from various signs such as the distortion of space and the unusual environmental information records that were regarded as footprints. But entering the two-dimensional world, what can be seen is not only the footprints, but also the traces that appear to be the dragon of the void. It's like tracking a car. Originally I could only see tire tracks. But now I can see the taillights. Such results certainly made Lin excited and confirmed that his method was correct. But still can't catch up? The most important factor lies in its fluctuating characteristics, which appear and disappear. What is the reason for this phenomenon? Lin couldn't find it for a while. In the process of tracking, Lin also communicated with Hagiri, and through Hagiri and Fen. It's just that in this urgent moment, no one has the opportunity to sit down and calculate which mathematical formula can be applied to the phenomenon in front of them, or which physical theory is consistent with it. But there is one thing that all participants agree on. That is, the target is still in a lower dimensional world. But which one it is? No one can be sure. The low dimensional world is not a place that can be entered by simply reducing one's dimensions. There are also lost lands in the three dimensions, as well as lost lands belonging to the main plane, and the four elemental realms of the subplane. There are countless ones that are complete, broken, and strange, but after all, you are chasing something, so someone doesn't worry too much, and just tosses himself hard for the target's traces. Drop. Just drop it again, leaving the year ring and half of the Hakakiri Kimru as anchor points. Lin thought of a way to squeeze himself into the one-dimensional world. No wonder those great gods and angels are in great hardship every time they come to the world. 
and they look like they will die after they come. This matter is really not easy. If he can pursue the target in the gap between dimensions, he can still maintain his original shape. Anyway, the dimensional gap is a chaotic area. If you can hold it inside without being torn apart, you can maintain your appearance. But if you want to track the Void Dragon, you have to enter the world at the same location as the target. Otherwise, the collected information will have to go through several layers of transformation before it is what you need. It does not discuss whether information will be lost during the conversion process. If you really have the time to convert the data and verify it, you won't have to worry so much. Moreover, after entering the dimensionality reduction state, the amount of computing power occupied increased dramatically, and there was no time to do unnecessary things. The same is true for the Hagiri Kinmaru. Although they don't have to be like Khan, with enhanced computing power, if they are weaker in computing, they will simply not be able to maintain themselves in a low-dimensional world. Therefore, those who can follow Lin are specially selected Hikiri. It is precisely because we have no time and no confidence that we have to choose the difficult but most promising method to achieve our goals. What is it like to enter a one-dimensional world? Honestly, no feelings at all. Because in this world, one's own body can be regarded as existing. But it no longer exists. It does not exist because the individual has no hands, no legs, no eyes, no mouth and tongue, and of course no feelings. Some are just your own consciousness, knowing that you still exist. Is the dragon of the void in this world? The answer to this question is yes and no. Judging from the data fed back from various aspects, the traces of the void dragon are more obvious. But it is not yet complete enough to reveal its individual form. The results of tracking are just like the situation in the tortoise and the hare paradox. The tortoise is in front, and the hare is behind. They both move forward at the same time. When the hare reaches the place where the tortoise was originally, the tortoise has already moved on to the next place. Repeat this, and the hare will never catch up with the tortoise. In this linear one-dimensional world, it is simply impossible to use general physical rules. However, judging from mathematical formulas, the greatest possibility is that it is still in the next level of the world. As usual, this time leave the con and half of the box cut as anchor points. Without even thinking about it, Lin followed the previous method and planned to reduce his dimensionality again and enter the next level of the world. It's just that this time it's not as easy as the first two times. In fact, whether it is 3 to 2 or 2 to 1, it is more difficult every time. However, the increase in difficulty is still within the expected range. But this time, it has to be reduced from one dimension to another. Actually, I don't know what it can be reduced to. Anyway, just follow the previous method. First project yourself into the target world, and then find a way to squeeze into the projection. As for whether it's reasonable or not, I don't think about it now. Traveling to a magical world by yourself is the biggest unreasonable point. Since this kind of thing can happen, what else is impossible? Besides, not all physical theories that have yet to be verified by evidence are based on the same principle. That is, as long as there are no errors in mathematical calculations, then the theory is reasonable. If the evidence is found and falsified, it only shows that there is still some lack of thinking, not an error in mathematical calculations. So after getting the calculation formula for projection, Lin did it without hesitation. He didn't care at all whether this thing was reversible or whether he could come back from that place. It means that you keep throwing out anchor points to ensure that you can return. But is such an action useful? It's too late to think about such a thing. Flash dimensionality reduction. Lost in the main plane. After someone leaves the main plane, the target to be tracked suddenly speeds up their escape. Although only half of the Hagiri Kinmaru and Fen remained in the main plane, they had not yet severed contact with the other half of the Hagiris and Ayashi. The so they could still pursue and surround the Void Dragon. But the speed suddenly increased again. Every time a target appears, it is almost at the very edge of the detection range. If you don't react quickly enough and follow a beat slower, you may lose track of the target. This troublesome situation did not last long. And then suddenly broke off contact with Lin. The contact with some parts of Hagiri was also cut off. At the same time, the target being tracked no longer appeared. Originally thinking that the opponent had escaped from the detection range of his tracking, Fen and Hagiri, who stayed in the main plane, stopped their unnecessary calculations and spread out. I spent a second to enhance the detection mode and found that I didn't even leave any footprints. This means that the target did disappear from the last place where Fen observed it, and then did not appear elsewhere. Suddenly an unpleasant feeling came over him, and Fen began to contact other Hagiris to confirm the situation. 
Only then did he know what happened from the consciousness of the year wheel. Khan! And others Akira Kimaru who followed someone. And it was not just Fen who had severed contact with that person and the last batch of Agiris. The other Agiris also seemed to have lost their companions. This is something they have never experienced in their lives. In the past, perhaps they could not communicate with each other as long as they were beyond a certain distance. But you will still know who is there and who is not. Although this feeling is not entirely accurate. It is always a reference. Now it's like that feeling has been forcibly cut off. And suddenly I can no longer feel it. Finn didn't just sit there and wait for things to change. She immediately pressed the ring of fire on the ring finger of her left hand and traced the location of the only ring on someone's hand in reverse. But what was given back was only a hazy feeling. Not data that could be used by the flash technique. This is something that has never happened before. Even the dullest person would feel something was wrong. Not to mention that Finn was not among those dull. She immediately took the Akiri left in the main plane and flashed to the subdimensional tower that someone built in the gap between dimensions. As long as the tower does not fall, it is enough to prove that the man is still alive. If he dies, even if there are ghosts from the world trees to keep the subdimensional tower from falling, there will definitely be other signs. At least the tower can no longer maintain its intact appearance. However, when he appeared on the first floor of the subdimensional tower, the strange situation he saw made for the unsure of what the man's current situation was. Normally, even if Lin is sleeping, the operation of the subdimensional tower will maintain a certain level. Just like a person's breathing in heartbeat. They will not stop breathing or heartbeat because of sleep. But now the subdimensional tower is quiet. The flow of energy in the tower stopped. The energy conversion device on the top of the tower no longer continued to operate. And even the lighting sources in the tower that were supposed to be in a perpetual state were extinguished. Fortunately, the location of the subdimensional tower is a special balance point in the dimensional gap. In addition, there are also world trees on the negative level to look after it. So the unprotected subdimensional tower was not torn apart by the turbulent currents. In this situation, how should we judge the person's current situation? Chapter 1463 Origin Then turned upside down and entered the negative layer. Asking the world trees about the changes in the subdimensional tower should be the clearest. Although their clones seem to be subject to some invisible restriction that prevents them from leaving the negative level. But the world trees are not just plants. Within the scope of their perception, they have supreme authority like the masters of the domain. What Lin did was not to avoid the world trees. If there was really a taboo, it would have been impossible to allow the world trees ghosts to enter the negative level from the beginning. Although Finn did not meet the Yggdrasils as frequently as someone else. As a former demon king, the Yggdrasils were still no strangers. Walwal, the youngest among them, is also older than Finn by an unknown number of years. The world trees are even more aware of the relationship between the original lich and that person. So when Finn appeared, the white deer spirit of Waldwo, who had dealt with the original lich, jumped off the high seat, came to Finn, and said, Millennium King, we understand your purpose. We can only say that the man is not dead, but he has entered the land of nothingness, and we cannot trace his whereabouts. And the silent performance of the subdimensional tower also represents as his consciousness fell into temporary silence. Temporary silence. When will he wake up? Finn asked. However, Bailu could only shake his head in response. Wherever the magician went, it was also strange to them. Being able to confirm that the person is not dead is already the limit of their abilities. If you want to predict anything, that is really beyond your capabilities. Knowing that there would be no more information, Finn waved his hand and let all the Gyrus attached to his body escape. At the same time, they contacted the Khan and the Year Wheel, etc., who served as anchors and still maintain communication with them. It is not difficult to communicate with Khan, the Year Wheel and other Hykiri in the two-dimensional and one-dimensional world. But cross-domain communication is more expensive. Fortunately, after a period of adaptation, the Gyrus immediately changed their form, allowing them to stay in this place without losing any energy. Therefore, they can still sustain the consumption of communication with their own energy, relying on the responses from these two batches of box cutters. Then quickly confirmed their coordinate locations that could be used for flash spells. It's just that Fink didn't want to chase after him enthusiastically. The first thing she had to do was to learn someone's ability to use the flash technique to capture objects. Finn's idea is simple. Instead of running into the same place as someone else, he is more likely to encounter the same situation and be trapped then it's better to just capture the other party. 
It's just that my application of flash technique is not as versatile as that of the man who spends all day thinking about these things. So if you want to have any changes in usage, you have to spend some time to use it. But then doesn't force herself to be like that man. And the matter is done. With the goal of saving people, the success rate and completion of spell casting are more important than the speed of casting spells. Such a request is easy for Fen, who has a foundation in flashing. After trying several times in succession, she cut the box that entered the two-dimensional and one-dimensional worlds, caught a few and returned them to her side, which was located at the sub-dimensional tower in the dimensional gap. However, she did not bring back all the Hagiris, who entered the lower dimensions in one go. The most important thing is to confirm the person's location. Using the Ring of Fire to trace back is one way, but then doesn't want to hand over the ring on his hand. Anyway, the positioning abilities of that set of rings are the same, and only the additional abilities differentiate them. So Finn went home and brought over four of the seven rings that had not been given away, and the five of the nine rings that were still there, for a total of nine rings. After telling Higuri and Igersil how to reversely track the one ring, everyone began to discuss the issue of saving someone. It's not exactly a method of reverse tracking with a ring. Anyway, as long as it's possible, everyone will try it. However, after several days of hard work, there was only disappointing results. Although I know that the person is probably still alive, I have no clue where he is. Just like chasing the dragon of the void before, then came to the 18th floor, the energy pool of the sub-dimensional tower, which is where the chaotic energy of the dimensional gaps is absorbed and converted. There should be a high concentration of plasma-like energy between the upper and lower poles, blooming with dazzling brilliance. This kind of brilliance is not harmless. It is not only dazzling, but also accompanied by excessive radiation. These harmful objects are all confined in the 18th floor of the tower. So normally, there is no way to visit the 18th floor. Unlike now, all the secrets are exposed in detail to Finn's eyes. The lich who came here had only one thought in his mind. If this tower is connected to that person's life, is it possible to get in touch with that person from the subdimensional tower? In fact, this idea has been proposed more than once in the past few days, and experiments have even been conducted, but all failed without exception. However, no one has started working on this energy converter, not only because this place is so critical and cannot bear the trouble, but also because no one understands the design here, so there is no way to use it. Of course Finn doesn't understand either, but there's nothing we can do about it elsewhere, so we have to start here. Except for the two poles used to release energy, the entire device is a polyhedron approaching a sphere. Each side is covered with sophisticated magic array patterns that are so complex that ordinary magicians would despair relying on this magic array that ordinary people cannot understand. Disordered and chaotic energy is converted into orderly and usable energy. And this is not the most primitive form of this energy conversion device. Thun was also present when the subdimensional tower was formed, and knew what this big thing looked like at the beginning. It can be understood from this that the man was not satisfied with his long-term achievements. He is still improving himself. On the verge of death. This time it was just bad luck. And I really got myself into a state where I was about to die and he doesn't know it yet. But others are taking care of it for him. I won't go into details about Higiri. But why did the world trees ever work so hard for a mere human being? The two ancient ones are not idle either. Infant's memory. This most aloof group outside of the mysterious land basically wouldn't necessarily take action, even if the Wood Elf tribe below faced the crisis of genocide as long as they didn't take the initiative to provoke them. And myself, the former demon king, whose heart was in a mess showed an angry look on his face, and punched the polyhedron collector and converter. There is a clang, loud and noisy. If it were in the main plane, this furious punch would have smashed through several walls. But on the subdimensional tower, it just sounded like a bell, and there was no response. Where did the sound go? Then has no idea of saving people now. He just wants to vent the resentment in his chest. She yelled and shouted, Baby, you leave. Come back. In the zero-dimensional world, Everything is nothing until the Grand Mist is opened. Suddenly, a flash of inspiration from somewhere else struck one place. Like a great bell, it echoes and resonates. If the sound was a meaningless sound, it might not have any effect. But the owner of the voice was her. It was like a drop of water dropped into a hot but calm oil pan. Causing the oil pan to boil in an instant, Lin's consciousness came back to life because someone was thinking about him. But this situation cannot last long. This weak power will eventually be used up and he will return to his previous state. And next time, Lin can't guarantee whether such awakening 
will be useful. The most troublesome thing is that the flashing technique has failed. All his abilities are gone. And he can't even return to his original world. Therefore, he must find a way to maintain himself within this limited time before taking the next step. Was he awakened by Finn? That beautiful but angry frowning expression flashed through her consciousness instantly. But that shouldn't be the key. Lin judged this. Does this mean he wants to become a god himself and use his body as a god to gather the power of faith to maintain himself? Let's not talk about whether it's too late to do such a thing now. Lin was confident that even if he became a god, he would not have many useful followers. It is impossible to rely on forums, mathematics, and automobiles. These things may support oneself in achieving the status of a god. Knowing that someone had briefly regained consciousness, he looked around him. However, up, down, left, and right. It seems boundless. And everything seems to be nothing. It's like being in a secret room with no lights. And nothing else can be seen except the darkness. And he couldn't move. It was a bit inaccurate to say that. Because I have no feeling of movement and no sense of distance. The concept of so-called movement does not seem to exist. But there is a Hakiri that follows him. When you have your own thoughts together, you can always get responses from other boxes. Unfortunately, I couldn't contact the Hagaris who were deliberately left in the one-dimensional, two-dimensional, and main planes of the mysterious land. The same goes for Fun. Not to mention the Forum. It seems like I am isolated from everything I once had. This feeling reminded Lin of the religious knowledge in his hometown. There is a saying in Buddhism that although a person is an individual, this individual is not independent of the world. They will be influenced by the opinions of others and may even rely on external things to exist. How to transcend it and reach the realm of emptiness is the method that Buddhism continues to convey. This is the emptiness of dependent origination. Even if we ignore the philosophical part, this view is correct from a scientific point of view. People must stand on land, breathe air, eat food, drink water, and have external objects to exist and survive. Whether it is the support of other things at the scientific level or the recognition of cause and effect at the philosophical level, people are not independent individuals in the true sense. There must be him in order to support one's own existence and to prove one's own existence. Unfortunately, this is a world with nothing. Since there is nothing, then the self that relies on other things, other minds, and cause and effect to exist cannot exist. This couldn't be more reasonable. Well, this is not the time to praise yourself for understanding your situation. Now that you know the problem, you need to solve it. The road to becoming a god was denied by myself from the very beginning. Then the remaining method is to find the path that can truly exist without relying on external things. As long as I want to know the classics of Taoism and Buddhism, all kinds of words will immediately pass through my consciousness. And each word will be clear. It's a pity that a certain fat man is not an expert in religion. Although I had read the classics of the two religions, they were not numerous, and I only read them as storybooks at that time. It's like reading the Bible as a wild history of the West. Therefore, if you really want to use the methods in the classics to achieve your goals, with limited prompts, no matter how much time you give yourself, it will be too late. What's more, I don't have much time to waste now. In such a situation, Lin decided to take risks and kill himself. Chapter 1464 Suicide Suicide is not suicide. Although if it goes astray, it is no different than suicide. The idea is that since the self-body is established because of him, then there is no need for this self-body. The specific method is just like what is said again and again in Buddhist scriptures. This is empty, and that is empty. In a world where all forms are present, it is difficult to achieve success. Therefore, Buddhists continue to teach their methods, hoping that even if people cannot understand, they can understand them, by getting close to them. But in this world where there is nothing, it seems not difficult to do this. Since there is nothing, where is the dust? Right. Just how to kill yourself. In this world without arms or legs, without any image. At the last moment before my consciousness gradually became blurred, I remembered a Buddhist scripture that I had read through. In the Diamond Sutra, the Buddha's first answer to the disciples' questions was, You should live like this. This subdues his heart. Translated into vernacular, this is how you live. Suddenly my consciousness became clear. The already dim consciousness seemed to have returned completely. Everything I have learned and experienced in the past flows through my mind in waves and is let go again and again. The reason why I let it go so easily is because in this strange world, those things are not important, do not receive any support, and are not needed. This made Lin understand that he had taken the first step. 
and it seemed that he had taken the right step. But one of my abilities is also included in the list of letting go. And the situation has not changed much. It's probably like the death penalty turning into a life sentence. So the next step is to find a way to escape from prison? I just want to return to a miserable state from this world where everything is empty and many mortals yearn for it. Is this right? Buddhas go there to save people from suffering. So after they have suddenly attained nirvana, they are willing to return to the human world to teach the Dharma. But what's the point of going back by yourself? Just thinking about it, Lin felt something was wrong all over his body. I tried every possible means to return to my hometown from Midi. Not because Midi's crumbling entertainment industry simply couldn't meet the needs of a certain house. So how can we feel satisfied if we stay in a world with nothing? After all, I am just a common person. As the thoughts came together, my feelings suddenly became richer. The first thing he noticed was Hakiri, who followed him into this zero-dimensional world. They are not as noisy as they were on the main plane. And most of their strength is used to deal with this strange environment. And gradually adapt to it. Using their own unique way. Once they sense someone's consciousness directed toward them. The Hagiris can only respond with nothing. Let's just prove that he is still alive. Outside of Hagiri. Every feeling that triggers oneself is either simple or extremely complex. The simple ones are like the feedback that Hikiri gives to himself. Just a point. A response. However. The complex ones can be said to be all-encompassing and all-encompassing. And the amount of information seems to be so much that even if I spend my whole life, I still can't get enough of it. Is the dragon of the void among them? Along with the thoughts. One of these many feelings is particularly clear and prominent. It's like the feeling when the teacher calls the roll call and the students answer the call. Could it be that we found it like this? But it didn't feel like Higiri. It felt like I was in the same position. And staying in this world, I don't know how to move. However, the same situation. Just as the thought came together. My position seemed to jump a step. And I felt closer to the yes answer. In fact, there is no sense of distance in this place. So strictly speaking, it is the difference between feeling lighter and stronger. And your own movement is actually a phenomenon of transition. Because the change in feeling is not gradual. But an obvious and sudden change. But as long as there is a difference. It can be used for calculation. Lin does whatever comes to his mind. Treat everything you feel directly as having the same intensity. Then determine the coordinate system according to the strength of the feeling. And use yourself as the origin. Once we have the coordinates, we have the direction and distance of the jump. I thought this would make things easier. But I didn't expect that once the coordinate system was determined, the original ability to jump with just a thought would be gone. Of course, this unique non-continuous coordinate system cannot move like other places so it is necessary to find a method to replace the jump. There is no doubt that flash technique is the most suitable method to use. In fact, it's quite simple up to this point. The real difficulty is the use of flash technique. The first difficulty is that he has also cut off the connection with the secondary plane tower. So if he wants to cast the flash spell, he must use the normal spellcasting method to construct a spell model belonging to the flash spell, and then activate the magic effect. As for where the energy for casting the spell comes from, that's not a worry. Now I feel like I have plenty of energy and can do anything. But the truth is that nothing can be done and nothing can be done. Therefore, the powers that should have been consumed by various actions are now stored in their most primitive form. I originally thought that after the coordinate system was determined, flashing would be used to replace the normal movement method and the straight line distance between two points would be calculated. But in actual use, the most basic flash technique doesn't work at all. After he flashed, he was still at his original position, not moving at all. The only explanation is that in the coordinate system defined by oneself, there is not only the distance between two points, but also other flashing parameters that must be corrected. No choice. Forget it. Not to mention being trapped here forever. Forget it. There is still a chance to find the target and leave this ghost place. Dimension gap. The 18th floor of the subdimensional tower. Fun. Who had been busy for several days, and hadn't been able to have a good meal or take a break, was still upset even though he yelled just now. Just when he was about to curse a few words, he didn't expect that the energy conversion room where he was staying had changed. Between the sharp needles of the two poles is the plasma forming place that converts energy. It is supposed to be the place where the subdimensional tower absorbs the chaotic energy from the dimensional gap, converts it into ordered energy, and then transmits it into the tower for application. But at the moment when the subdimensional tower is down, there is no energy from the outside. And the conversion device certainly does not work. 
Then, there should be nothing between the two poles. But suddenly there was a flash of dazzling light, and the place where the plasma ball was formed seemed to be ignited, and a little light appeared. However, this light did not last long and turned black instead, absorbing the original light and emitted radiation. It seems that the black dot cannot be satisfied by sucking back the micro substances that were originally released. It actually began to shake the conversion device used as the energy pool of the subdimensional tower. The nearly spherical polyhedron began to collapse in some places, and the material separated from the main body was sucked into the black spots. This may lead to the overall collapse of the subdimensional tower. Before Fink can confirm what happened and come up with a solution, the situation changes again. Black spots turn white, and the change only occurs in an instant. There was no transition, no gradient. It just changed directly. The white point behaves completely opposite to the black point. Not only did it release a large amount of micro-materials and heat, but it also spit out a living person and a strange beast with snake-shaped antlers, scales and feet. The living person is Lin, who has been missing for several days, and the strange beast looks like the blue dragon that someone once drew, although the color was different. It was said to be the fictional dragon clan from that man's hometown, even the well-informed former demon king who treated killing gods like killing chickens, was so shocked that he was speechless due to such a turn of events. It's just that people are faint and dragons are paralyzed. Neither one nor the dragon responded, and Finn didn't know who to ask if he wanted to ask. Wake someone up. In normal times, in the outside world, Finn would have been able to get away with a few loudness. If you don't wake up, you will sleep forever. But in a subdimensional tower, she really didn't dare to mess around blindly especially when everything is wrong with the man in front of him. The first thing you should do is confirm what happened. Only by knowing the reasons can we come up with targeted solutions. Moreover, the changes in the subdimensional tower do not stop after spitting someone out. Black dots and white dots still appear alternately. One moment he inhales, the other he spits it out. The double force changes can make the surrounding environment very unpleasant. If it weren't for the person standing nearby and witnessing everything, he was the former demon king and the original lich. They may have been crushed by the huge force when the black dot suction force was generated. When the white dot appeared, it was almost blown away by the massive blast of wind that flew outward at that moment. It was not easy for Finn to protect himself against the unconscious man and dragon on the ground. Of course, she couldn't take the subdimensional tower into consideration. And the energy conversion device had been torn to pieces long ago. There is even a tendency of falling apart on the 18th floor. As the speed of black and white exchanges becomes faster and faster, the destructive power increases even more. In addition to the 18th floor, the damage also showed signs of spreading to the floors below. I don't know when. Black and white dots appeared at the same time. The suction and blowing forces chase each other, and everything ejected by the white dots will be sucked back by the black dots no matter where it is sprayed. It went around a large or small arc and submerged into the black spot. The two points of black and white were in a stalemate and they began to swirl around inexplicably. Although it turned faster and faster, once it reached a certain speed, it stabilized at this speed and did not continue to accelerate. At the same time, the energy conversion device, which had been messed up so badly, actually changed and reorganized automatically. But instead of returning to its original state, it becomes a new structure. The structure of the two pole pointed needles was completely destroyed and replaced by a gyroscope-like balance ring frame, with a total of nine layers. The rotation speed of each layer is much slower than that of the next layer. At the center of the ball are black and white dots that are spinning crazily. The farther to the outer layer, the slower the speed. The approximately spherical polyhedron has also become a structure like an exquisite ball, layer by layer, covering all the innermost conditions. The function of these layers of exquisite balls is to protect everything inside and prevent harmful substances from escaping outward. In addition to the major changes in the energy device, the changes in the tower body are not at all smaller than that of the exquisite ball, which is about the same size as a human. Some places were broken and rebuilt. In some places, I just turned over and over again and changed the arrangement and combination. Among these many incomprehensible changes, there is something comforting. That is, as the new form of the subdimensional tower becomes more perfect, the condition of the man and the dragon lying on the ground will become better. Long didn't know. But the human part becomes more like a person and shows vitality, rather than the original appearance. Chapter 1465 Dragon of the Void The first round of changes to the subdimensional tower was like the entire tower being rebuilt. 
the entire tower had been changed to the point where the original appearance was no longer visible. That originally thought that when the transformation process stopped, the matter would come to an end and the man and dragon who fell on the ground would wake up. However, the moment of silence was just to prepare for a bigger explosion. When Finsai wanted to approach the still sleeping man to confirm the signs of life and to really reward him with a few big mouths, the subdimensional tower suddenly shook. With a sense of balance and physique, he almost lost his footing. When she took a closer look, the body of the subdimensional tower seemed to be transparent, leaving only the outlines and the dense magic patterns carved on it. Then can clearly see the surprised expressions on the faces of the Igrasils on the negative floor, as well as the Shakiri Kimru who stayed here, quickly shuttled through the interior of the tower, sprinting towards the 18th floor. Come! The next moment, the 18-story tower was no longer 18. The space inside the tower began to extend continuously, and the number of floors increased one by one. Then has witnessed this situation once. Every time this man gained new knowledge of the roots, he would make major changes to the tower, in addition to strengthening itself. It is also necessary to engrave on it those magic formations that are regarded as unique skills. From the intricate lines at first, it evolved into really patterns later on. Because the lines are too dense and thin, they are difficult to discern clearly with the naked eye. So when you look at it, it's like seeing a picture. But this time around, what appeared on the added floors were really pictures. And it is obvious that the patterns come from three different systems. Then may have learned something about someone's hometown. But his understanding was ultimately incomplete. If someone were to sober up and explain, he could clearly explain that one of the three systems is the Buddhist mandala, the complete system of Buddha, Bodhisattva, gods, Vajras, and Arhats is all present in it. One of the systems starts with Hichu and Luoshu, Tai Chi, Bagua and 64 hexagrams, supplemented by Shou Tian Shingo diagram. Then, there are the four spirits, the twelve zodiac signs, hundreds of birds and beasts, and hundreds of scales. All mysteries are hidden. One of the systems starts with oracle bone inscriptions, seal script, official script, and regular script. He wrote the classics of various schools of thought and Confucianism. And finally Yangming's theory and among the strokes carved by the knife and axe. There are knife intentions, sword intentions, hooks and spears, and 18 kinds of martial arts. Many skills are not based on gentlemen, only benevolence. These layers are complementary and complementary to each other. Each floor is a story and a scripture. The three systems not only check and balance each other, but also reflect each other. In this way, it grew to the end, and the subdimensional tower had a total of 108 floors. However, from the outside, the height of the tower has been reduced, but the internal space has increased to an incredible extent. Of course, Fen cannot see the external conditions internally. All she saw was the miserable appearance of the Hagiris flying as hard as they could but unable to reach the finish line. This picture could not last long, and the changes in the subdimensional tower would eventually come to an end. After the expansion to the 108th floor, there were only outline lines, and the tower building became transparent and return to its original state. The subdimensional tower is operational again. The energy generation method of absorbing the chaotic energy from the dimensional gaps and converting it into the tower is still retained. But it has changed from the original one group to the current three groups. It also changes from the primary energy supply mode to the secondary energy supply mode. It is laid out in an equilateral triangle, surrounding a huge exquisite ball in the center. The huge exquisite ball in the center is actually more like a seal than an energy generating device. Although the black and white dots chasing each other form a dynamic balance, they cannot withstand external forces at all. So they need layers of protection, forming a dynamically balanced black and white dot system. There is actually no energy that spills out to collect. Even the micro substances ejected by the white spots will be absorbed by the black spots immediately. However, such a dynamic balancing system will still generate induction force to activate the balancing ring frame and exquisite balls wrapped around the periphery. The entire device relies on the ring frame and exquisite ball induction to generate huge and terrifying energy several times greater than before. However, this newly upgraded energy generation device will only maintain the operation of the subdimensional tower. Then couldn't see the nearly a hundred layers of new patterns. Most of them had dimmed, leaving only the minimum energy for maintenance. Then has no clue to what level this man's strength has been elevated to by such changes. Just when he wanted to slap someone's mouth for the third time, and ask him to wake up and explain everything before him. Lin's body lying on the ground stood up straight, 
He took a deep breath through his nose, his chest rising high. The man who regained his vitality bent forward, then raised his hand, straightened up and leaned back slightly, stretching greatly. At the same time, he yawned loudly and chanted in the language of his hometown. The Tao comes to the world and transforms all things. The Buddha's kindness shines on the world and saves all living beings. The Confucianism spreads the fire through the ages. And the three religions learn from each other and are equal. Note, Parak Puppetry. The poem title of Qin Jiangzi's later period was changed. After a big yawn, Lin sighed in the common language of Hui Di. If we continue on the path of science, we will eventually end up on the path of philosophy. My predecessors will never deceive me. However, after saying that, someone noticed that Fen was squinting at him with disgusting eyes. The bright red siling Hanfu has the function of self-cleaning and even self-ironing and starching. So the clothing is flawless. But that black hair is not like before. It is a wig created by power. If your real hair is neglected, there will always be some uncombed hair strands falling to the side. It's just that there is no trace of embarrassment in such a slovenly appearance, but rather an indescribable feminine charm. Looking at such a face, even if it was a look of disgust, Lin actually felt a sense of nostalgia and dependence. The memory of being trapped in that world before was not lost at all, but in a place where the physical rules were completely different. Lin had no idea how much time had passed in reality. If I were to use my own thinking speed and amount of thinking as a reference, I am afraid that thousands of years would have passed. So being able to see a familiar face is something I will never miss again. Then certainly doesn't feel the same way. Because with the way this whole thing is going, it looks like this shit will come naturally even without her. In other words, I wasted a few days worrying about something that I didn't need to worry about. So now she wanted to slap someone's big mouth for the fourth time. It's just that before I whipped someone, I seemed to have forgotten something. Then looked down and saw that the dragon that was paralyzed on the ground was gone. I just wanted to turn around and look for it. My body seemed to have been swam by a snake several times. It was very weird. But this weird behavior didn't trigger his own magical protection. Then just looked in the direction he felt. Lin also followed the original Lich's gaze and saw the dragon of the void. It resembles the shape of the dragon totem from my hometown. But its body is a glazed crystal body that refracts different colors with the light, making the entire dragon look like a dreamlike sculpture. But what this dragon is doing makes someone puzzled. It had just taken away the tobacco pipe and pouch from Finn's body and placed them on the exquisite ball. Not only was he skillfully twisting the tobacco into the pot, but now he was using a flint then he didn't know where to strike to light the fire. All the movements were so skillful, and nothing was jerky. The lit tobacco smoke flows down the long tube and is sucked into the mouth of this old void dragon. It showed a satisfied expression and blew out a big mouthful of white smoke. Seeing this dragon, Lin was half excited and half uneasy, and asked, Is it the void dragon in front? Old Long blew out another puff of smoke and deliberately blew it towards the person who was asking the question. It said, I am not the dragon of the void. I am also the dragon of the void. This kind of answer, which was no different from playing a charade, confused Lin. Although there was a vague guess in his heart, he still asked, What does this mean? I have infinite possibilities. But from the moment I was captured by you, you defined me and turned me into your shape. You must have done it on purpose. This is misleading. Can I call you a hooligan? Someone said awkwardly. Lao Long smiled widely and didn't respond to anyone. He just talked about his own affairs. So instead of asking what I am, it's better to ask yourself what you want me to be. But what I want to emphasize is that I have been defined. So it is too late for you to change anything now. Of course, I can't go back to my original self. Looks good. One person and one dragon just looked at each other. Lin tried hard to think about what he had thought before that defined what was in front of him. And in doing so, it seems that I feel a little sorry for it perhaps sensing the trace of guilt. The void dragon smiled freely and said, Don't feel sorry for me. I quite like the identity you define for me. The only pity is that I don't have long to live. Lin frowned and asked, What's going on? The next journey will be my last. When it is completed, I will die and return to the cycle of life. And after a thousand years, I will be born from my corpse and start a new cycle. I can send you back to your hometown. But I can only send one person back once. If you miss this time, it will be a thousand years later. So, have you decided? Are you ready? This question made Lin silent. This should have been a long-cherished wish. But now the opportunity to realize it was right in front of me. Why did I hesitate? 
the dragon of the void seemed to have read someone's mind and said with a grin, The next train will leave in three days. So make a decision before then. You know where to find me. After that, he said like a long snake, with a flick of his body, he slipped into the changes of infinite space and left. Lin looked at the people next to him with some guilt. The former demon king regained her cold expression and was extremely beautiful. It's as if no matter what decision someone makes, it has nothing to do with her. But after being together for so long, how could Lin not see that this was a sign of anger? I'm not afraid of her hitting or making trouble. I'm just afraid that she won't say anything. Just like the martial arts competition in martial arts. You can only break it if you have a move. If you don't use any moves, how can you defeat it? Just when he was thinking of a way to break the ice, the Shaka Kirikimaru and others who were left behind in the main plane of mysterious land and followed Finn into the subdimensional tower finally appeared, even though they were belatedly arriving. Chapter 1466 The Truth About Opportunity The Void Dragon ran away before he got his answer, since it was stated that he would see Xinjiang in three days. Lin was in no hurry to continue chasing him. A bunch of Hakakiri rushed around, which broke the gradually embarrassing atmosphere. What they care about most is, of course, the situation of their companions. It is very simple to recover the Khan, the Wheel of Time and other boxes left behind in the two-dimensional and one-dimensional worlds. Lin recalled them all with a snap of his fingers. As for their shapes that have adapted to the two-dimensional and one-dimensional world, it is not a big trouble to change back to the original shape. Now that energy is plentiful, Hagaris have the money to squander. Besides, for Hagiri, all this tossing and going is not completely without benefits. Every change is like a self-examination and a reconstruction for them. The more such experiences they have, the higher their growth rate is. As for the Hagaris who follow someone into the last world, this is more troublesome. They were actually attached to the Xuanmu robe. When Lin and the Dragon of the Void were ejected by the White Dots, they also returned to the sub-dimensional tower in the dimensional gap. However, their changes and forms are very different from other Hakiri that enter the two-dimensional or one-dimensional world. This batch of Hakiri enters a very special virtual state. Other Hagiris said that the companions they saw came in all shapes and sizes. Some Hagiris said that this group of hollows had returned to the tattered appearance they had when they were kept in the Holy Sword Club. Some Hagakiri say that this batch is a reappearance of their peak form. Of course, the most important thing is that they maintain the simple appearance of Jin Wan. No matter who said what, the same point is that if no one keeps an eye on these Hagari, they will disappear as if they were forgotten. Even under someone's environment detection magic, they are in and out of state. This state is very similar to the wave creature that I defined when I was chasing the dragon of the void. But looking back now, my judgment at the time was not correct. But it was not completely wrong either. At least Len hasn't found a true wave creature yet. But these batches of virtual box cutters are indeed somewhat similar to the situation of the previous void dragon. It's easy to say what the shape is. But the most troublesome thing is that it is quite difficult to communicate with these Hykiri. This is an extremely incredible thing for this group of races, who proved their existence by speaking. But actually looking back now, Lin probably guessed the origin of the Hagiri clan. That is actually the origin of the Dragon of the Void. And it is the same origin as the Sand of Time in the Wheel of Time. Developing at a set pace is called growth. However, growth does not equal evolution. If you want to evolve, you have to change. This change may have a good impact or a bad impact. But evolution, like change, is not easy. For example, Darwin's theory of evolution is a living joke if viewed from a new era perspective. This is because some scientists have conducted DNA tests on animals that are homologous and have different evolutionary signs due to different environments as mentioned by Darwin in his theory of evolution. The result is that those so-called homologous animals actually have completely different DNA. Even the Dan logarithms are different. No matter how organisms evolve and change, DNA will not change its quantity and composition. Even if a quantitative mutation occurs by chance, it is only a genetic disease. Down syndrome is a practical example. So is it possible for men and women with Down syndrome to give birth to new humans? Then this new humanity will completely replace the old humanity? No science fiction novel dares to write this. At most, there will be a considerable number of apes to replace humans and become the dominant group on the earth. In artificial plant breeding, the most difficult thing is to make a certain characteristic become the dominant characteristic of future generations. Moreover, this characteristic must be able to be reproduced naturally and maintained for more than three generations to be considered a new variety. For example, in the flower world, 
countless people have been pursuing the black tulip variety. Since the tulip craze in the 17th century, the flower species tulip has entered human vision. It was not until the 21st century that indigo, a nearly black tulip variety, was developed. But this is only close to black. Not exactly black. By saying so much, I just want to emphasize the difficulty of evolution. Even if the time is extended to tens of thousands, millions, or even hundreds of millions of years, it still cannot explain how single-celled organisms evolved into humans. Just like the theory of evolution cannot explain the Cambrian explosion. In conclusion, even in the 21st century, Dad's theory of evolution and philosophy still have a group of loyal believers. But the science part is bullshit. One by one, all the evidence has been overturned. But few people dare to speak out loud. Since evolution is such a difficult thing, how can a universe with a complete ecosystem and a balanced overall ecosystem have a chance to evolve? Even if evolution is not mentioned, how can unexpected changes occur? Answer, it is the power of wishing represented by the sands of time. Thoughts belong to the metaphysical category and can break away from existing cognition. Be unrestrained and allow one to have unlimited freedom. There is no evidence, no science, no reason here. This kind of statement almost hangs science on the wall behind the fireplace. Along with deer heads, lion heads, and bull heads, it is simply pretentious to claim that one is the heir of science. But thinking otherwise would simply not explain the conflicting evidence. In fact, we only need to magnify time to billions or tens of billions of years and magnify space to the entire universe. Even if the probability is so small that it approaches zero, it will become inevitable. Under such a background, the universe can maintain balance. You can imagine how rigorous the system is operating behind it. However, as mentioned before, when this system continues to operate according to rules, the universe can continue to grow, but it will not evolve. That's why it needs the power of change to give itself a chance. Regarding related tips, Lin Yi should have understood it when he saw the galaxies in the micro-universe being refined into the sand of time in the wind elemental plane. The wish-making power of the sands of time is evidence of change in the universe. Since there are galaxies in the micro-universe, how can there be none where you are? So that force was encountered by someone, found it, and turned into something like the dragon of the void, which didn't even exist in the first place. But even if it didn't exist originally, it exists now. The reason why I think of the Hagiri clan and overturn my original idea that the Hagiri clan comes from a certain high-dimensional world is because I see many unreasonable things in Hikiri. In the past, the most accepted theory about the origin of the Hagiri clan was that a certain hero king asked Yggdrasil for help in order to fight against the demons from the abyss. Under the guidance of the world tree, the Hagiri clan entered the lost land. The hero king also equipped himself and his troops with Hakakiri and defeated the demon. I won't discuss who the king of heroes is for now, but I am so familiar with the Yggdrasils. So it's not too much to ask which Hagiri brought them over. If you know the origin of the Hagiri clan, you won't have to rob thousands of people and come back to strengthen your own momentum. Huh? That kind of scene where thousands of swords are launched when they meet? It's beautiful no matter how you think about it. Do you know how to play the king's treasure in Hero King Gilgamesh and Fate? It is a pity that even the ancients Yggdrasil or Fasnas only know that Hikiri may have been introduced by a certain world tree. Which one is the guide? That must be a certain world tree that has been used as firewood. As for where to pick it up, the two ancients didn't know. World Tree does not have symptoms such as forgetfulness and Alzheimer's disease. Regarding memory, they only have two different things, remembering and not knowing. There is no such thing as forgetting. Therefore, the Hagiri clan, whose origins cannot be explained by the two ancients, has become the most unreasonable and mysterious race in the land. But this time when he broke into that strange zero-dimensional world, even though the Holy Spirit of Xuanwu on the Xuanwu robe was pretending to be dead, Hagiri actually had a way to give himself a reaction. This ability can be said to be unique even in the lost world. Speaking of myself, if I hadn't heard the roar of the Hadon lion, I might have fallen asleep all the time. Maybe Hagiri, who was brought there, could wake up after adapting to such a world. But that was only a possibility. They have already escaped from that kind of world. And only when they are mentally retarded would they torment themselves back to see if the Hagiris will scream in the end. Although the person making the roar was not aware of it. Instead, she was complaining that someone was wasting her time. Lin didn't know how important that sound was to him. In that strange world, all truth is unreasonable. In short, the Hadiris who followed someone to the zero-dimensional world are back safely. Although they don't like to talk to anyone now, 
everyone just thinks that they are holding back their energy and planning to do something bad. And someone who returned to the dimensional gap also walked around the expanded sub-dimensional tower in a daze. But I gave up after walking a few floors. It's not because my legs are sore and my feet hurt. It's just to cope with Briefen's endless problems. Philosophy is not like mathematics or physics. If you have some evidence, you will say something. If it does not match the evidence, you will put a big cross in it. Philosophy is a set of knowledge that starts from human values and explores the truth. Therefore, Confucianism, Buddhism and Taoism are separated because no one can convince anyone, even if they lead to the same goal in the end. As for the new subdimensional tower, the mysteries of the three religions that appear on each floor are in opposition to each other or reflect each other. To use these things to convince a protolich, who has already formed his three views and is extremely serious and stubborn. Sister, just read these as stories and laugh at them. So why are you taking it seriously? I've done this before. Therefore, someone lost spectacularly. Before leaving, Lin Bu Wang went to the first floor to say H, low to the world tree bosses. During the period when they were missing, they were very busy with their own affairs. Even if they do those things, it won't take much of their energy. But as long as you take action, it's just a matter of personal favor. Most people want to owe the world trees such a favor, but they can't afford it and can't do it. When I returned to my home in the holy city of Estali, I heard the siren, and it was eight days after I left. The harvest of this trip was a dragon of the void on the surface, and the strengthening of the subdimensional tower in private. But the parts and equipment on his body were the same as when he left, and they were the same when he came back. Even the broken left hand was still in a box. But Lin couldn't explain the real gain to others. And those things cannot be described in words. Chapter 1467 Everyone's Attitude A Chance to Go Home Although this news about someone is not a bolt from the blue at home, it is still a big deal. The three women closest to him are the calmest. That person's desire and the motivation to work hard for it is only that one. So they have already been mentally prepared for this. After all, no one has ever seen a time traveler who still hums tunes from his hometown from time to time, murmurs his hometown dialect, and even asks questions to himself, who is not determined to make progress, regard himself as long out again, live like a loser, and counterattack in life? It means that normal people may not encounter a time traveler in their lifetime. He is also a time traveler who is not afraid of death and shows his identity. No matter it was fun. Kaya or Halumi. They didn't express much about it. All feelings are light. There is no such thing as losing a man. As if you suddenly lose support and the whole world will collapse. There is no such excitement as if the man is gone and all the family property will be in my hands in the future. Anyway, it's time to eat and sleep. And the days are the same as usual. However, the performance of the second generation apprentices, namely Leonardo and Marquis Ballin, was completely different. Leonardo was the most collapsed. With a look of envy, he didn't dare to hate. And he couldn't hate it. He knows best how badly he is doing in this heresy-ridden world. If it weren't for this teacher from the Eastern Kingdom, he might have returned early. No. If he died in the Lost Land, he might not be able to ascend to the heaven he believed in. Nor could he descend to the H. L. When he heard about the opportunity to go back. If he said he wasn't envious, that would be a lie. But he had no face to fight for it and he didn't know where to start fighting for it. His teacher spoke in an understatement. But in fact, he didn't understand any of the relevant content. If the same opportunity were presented to him, he would probably be helpless and miss the opportunity. What bad intentions are there? Others don't know. But his teacher's fear of death has given him a lot of protection. Not to mention whether there was anything Leonardo didn't know. Even the parts he knew made him feel unable to start. So what else can be done? There is nothing you can do except size secretly where no one can see you. Marquise Ballin is really indifferent. Her teacher is Fen. Someone who is just the nominal owner of the family. She neither relies on this person nor looks at his face to live her life. It would be best if she never even sees him. If there are fewer men in the world, there will be more peace. The Marquise's attitude was obvious. And she had no intention of avoiding others. Even if Lynn saw it and understood it clearly. So what? He has great capital and an even more powerful backer. Although I am able to be brave now, I used to eat a lot of other people's food. As the saying goes, one who eats people is soft-spoken. It's not like he suffered any loss now. On the contrary, he keeps taking advantage. Except for a few secret places. Almost all the trivial matters at home are taken care of by the servants of the Marquise's family, who have not been paid. 
It really depends on whether this home is the home of a certain magician or the Marquise's other family. D. Others really can't tell. Anyway, I didn't suffer any loss. The little girl just hid when she saw people. So I didn't care about such small things. A certain former fat house has a big heart, which is definitely not fat. The old black dragon Augustus also missed a few words. As a long-lived species, it has also been a long-lived species that has lived in human society for a period of time in human form. It has seen too many friends leave before it does. And it has long been accustomed to this kind of life and death. I can't say much more than miss you. Old people who are about to kick their legs are always more open-minded than many young people. But having said that, the old black dragon looked like he was dying a few years ago. And a few years later he was still dying. And it would not be a surprise to die the next day. It is estimated that this appearance can continue for several years or decades. This reminds someone of a little knowledge before time travel. If you cut off the head of a cockroach, the cockroach can continue to live. The reason why the cockroach died later was not because it was too seriously injured. It was because it had no head, no mouth parts, and therefore could not eat and starve to death. In someone's eyes, the dragon is an equally magical creature. As long as he has good food and drink, Augustus can probably live a long life. It's a sin to compare a giant dragon to a cockroach. Someone clasped their hands together and rubbed them together, hoping to get rid of the guilt in their hearts. The president of the technology guild, Yuzov Gontia, the silver-bearded dwarf Freya, who resides in the automobile R&D and manufacturing center, and the president of the first bank, the dark elf Melchon, are followers of a certain magician. Of course I also know the news. Yuzov's mood was the most complicated. Although he stayed in the technical guild most of the time, he never forgot to care about that person's condition. After all, one of the major tasks he gave himself was to monitor the former demon king and the magician who was constantly seeking death. Perhaps Yuzov was not involved in many things about that person. Nor was he qualified to participate. But he would still make some insinuations afterwards. Lin's attitude towards these matters cannot be said to be confidential. Anyway, he will not take the initiative to publicize it to the whole world. If someone asks, answer. As for saying more or less, it depends on your mood. But don't think that someone knows everything about everyone and tells everything. If he couldn't get a single understandable word in three sentences, Lin wouldn't be in the mood to continue talking. The most common example is Blink. Many people have asked about this magic. Lin basically throws out three mathematical formulas. If you understand it, then continue talking. If you don't understand it, then the listener is not smart enough. No matter how much you talk about it, it is a waste of words. So please come back and come back after reincarnation. On the other hand, those miscellaneous experiences, although they are not enough to swallow three cups of yellow soup, they are all mentioned as if they are showing off. But if you have asked, Lin would not deliberately hide it. Therefore, this member of the Ikaruga Alliance, who has followed the magician for a long time knows a lot about someone's affairs. Knowing more, Yuzov understands the destructive power of a certain magician better than anyone else. It can be said that before that man destroyed the territory of a Grand Duke in the Karlsruhe Empire in the south, Yuzov knew that this magician had the ability to destroy a country by one person. As for whether one person can destroy the world, it's hard to say. If you really want to say what you think in your heart, you have a good chance of doing it. Ordinary people look at the consequences before doing anything, and pay attention to benefiting themselves at the expense of others. Although this magician is said to be greedy for life and afraid of death, and his actual performance is indeed the same, he often does unexpected things, sometimes in order to achieve something. You don't hesitate to involve yourself, even if it means self-destruction. He doesn't seem to hesitate. It was this contradictory performance that made Yuzov even more afraid of the magician he followed. When did this guy get so hot that he blew up the world and himself regardless of care? So when he revealed the news that he was leaving, Yuzov should feel lucky. But in fact, I couldn't feel happy at all. Mathematics is too advanced. But whether it's technical guilds, banks, or the constitutional monarchy promoted in the South, each of these is a real benefit to the people. Speaking on a small scale, he also took in so many children, regardless of the quality of education. Just giving people something to eat is a great thing. The people of the Ikaruga Alliance are a cancer and a resistance force in the eyes of those in power. But as members of the Alliance, they consider themselves to be vanguards who resist privilege and serve as mouthpieces for the people. If placed in a time travel world of martial arts, each of these people are heroes who dare to use force to break the law. Yuzov, 
who was once an idealist, never forgot his original intention, even if he was later severely beaten by reality. Otherwise, I would not have resolutely given up the foundation of my hometown and wandered around with a magician, since he has never given up on his ideals. Although everything that the magician promotes cannot reach the ideal world in his mind, it is undoubtedly a big step forward for ordinary people. Isn't such a person worth following? Not to mention, Yuzov is one of the very few humans who knows that this person has a high seat in the alliance. A man who can be on an equal footing with Idrisil. No matter what agreement or exchange of interests there is between them. Just the qualification to be on an equal footing makes him an ordinary person. Just look up to him. I don't know when I started to monitor the former demon king and her man from a self-sacrifice mood. To the admiration I have now. Yuzov wished that the leader of the Turtle Dove Alliance he was following would stand up and raise his arms and shout. Call on all the people in the world to stand up. Oppose all injustices. And kill all those privileged people who do not treat people as human beings. But that person is selfish after all and pursues his own stable life. On this point, Yuzov could not find fault. As long as people do not harm others. They certainly have the right to pursue their own happiness. His idea is not so absurd that the rich should donate their property so that others can get something for nothing. Yuzov also agrees with the principle of reward for work. And what he wants is just fairness. Or at least relative fairness. Now that the man said he was leaving, could Yuzov not feel mixed emotions? I'm worried that he will blow up Midi along with me. But I also hope that he can stay and change Midi's life. But honestly speaking, if he really kept this strong man and asked him to help Midi change his life, in the end, he would probably directly pull Moody to explode together. It's complicated. The silver-bearded female dwarf Freya didn't have that much thought. Although she knew that a certain magician still had money in his stomach, she also understood the principle of biting off more than he could chew. Just looking at the automobile industry, I feel like I can spend my whole life studying it. There is no need to figure out how robots work. The reason why she was unwilling to return to her hometown in the first place was not because of the magician, but because she was greedy for the vast world outside the Silver Beard Iron City. Since you can live a nourishing life if you stay, then there is nothing to worry about. The attitude of the Dark Elf Melcha is actually the attitude of the World Trees. The ultimate goal of the World Trees is to find a way to continue to advance. The creation of the ninth power arranged by a certain magician seems to be the only feasible path on the table. So everyone has given their full support and worked together to this day. Now the steps of the original plan have begun and are even on track. The magician said he was leaving. So of course it was a farewell. Is it reasonable for a matchmaker to enter the bridal chamber to help push the bride's buttocks? And then ensure that the bride has a son? At least the world tree bosses couldn't be so shy as to ask for such a thing. Even if it fails afterwards. The magician still tried his best to fulfill his promise. After all, they also know that what they want to do is not so easy to accomplish. The two ancient beings had already climbed to the top in their own time and they have continued to do so for more than a hundred thousand years. If a human being with a lifespan of less than a hundred years is fully responsible for a problem that cannot be solved, and if he still pursues the problem if it is not completed, how can he be described as incompetent? But it's not until the last moment. So there's no need to rush to express your position. The future has not yet been realized. The vision of the world tree bosses is beyond comparison. Chapter 1468 The First Night The news that someone was about to leave although I could only tell the people close to me, but I didn't think about whether to tell the outside world for a while. Then almost everyone in the world who cared about it knew about it. Three days is a short period of time, and most people don't have time to rush to someone and make any reaction. But the reactions of those who might be able to make it in time are also, well, interesting. The group of fat boys and babies headed by Ezio lived in another building in the courtyard. It's just that the vast majority of them may not see the magician side of a certain dragon throughout the year. Whether that person is still alive or gone makes no difference to these children. Anyway, as long as there is food to eat today, I can survive. They have a short past experience. And they are used to it just because they have been here. There are a few people who can meet a certain magician. Such as the three Babosha brothers, who come to serve someone from time to time. They have no conditions and no qualifications to say anything. As for the children who came to help from that place. Lin only regarded them as people who shared the burden of his two apprentices and had no special concern. If you want to start a small project, like if you have any problems in your studies, asking someone for help when they are free is not a big deal. But most of the time, Lin Jing couldn't answer the weird questions that come from a child's mind. I still remember those friends who had occasional contact 
and got married before someone traveled through time. They often complain that they can no longer understand their children's primary school level homework. Then those questions were posted on the internet, and a group of top students who had graduated from college and had unlimited academic qualifications were immediately confused. It is too difficult to study in this era when Chinese is tested in mathematics. Logic is tested in Chinese, and citizenship and morality are tested in logic. In short, someone who is already quite old and should be considered quite knowledgeable is still speechless when asked by a child from time to time. It can only be said that someone is not made to be a teacher. Every time I see a child like this, my hands are itchy and I want to twitch. As time went by, how could a child born on the streets not be able to tell what a certain magician was thinking? And he gradually stopped disturbing others. On the one hand, what I asked was too low end, which is also true. He is always trying to figure out how to cast apprentice level magic for a person who can reach the level of a great magician. If you put this among other magician masters and apprentices, the teacher would probably say, come on, obediently get on the experimental table and the teacher will explain it to you. In any case, the movement of the group of children was less than expected. This makes someone's heart feel a little uneasy. I feel that I should be the number one person. But in fact, I am not taken seriously. The Ron brothers, who also have investments in automobile manufacturing and R&D centers, won't say much. Taking advantage of the car. The two brothers have been prosperous in recent years. Although he looks like a person, he is still running around all day long. The family fortune is getting bigger and bigger, but it is also getting harder and harder to find people. But another retired old man seemed a little abnormal. He just asked to his granddaughter, asking if someone really wanted to leave. Lynn replied out of nowhere. I'm thinking about it. The granddaughter ran back to deliver the message. And then nothing more happened. Is this being spurned? Or is it because you don't want to see me, because you feel sad more than your heart is dying? According to the speed of the old man's custom-made car, the brutal collision function is turned on all the way. And any monster that blocks the road will only be knocked away without compensation. With this momentum, it was enough for the old man to fight from his own territory to the holy city in one day. It's such a short journey. And I didn't say I'd come to see him off. This departure may be a lifetime thing. So someone who thought he was a good friend squatted in a corner and drew circles. It feels like some retired cadres. Before he retired, he was the one who made all the changes wherever he went. There were people bowing down and waiting on him. Once you retire, you will be gone and no one will want to see you. When the birds are gone, the good bow is hidden. When the cunning rabbit dies, the lackeys are cooked. This truth is true all over the world. And nothing is more tragic than this. Although this person is neither retired nor a fast kicker, his situation and mood are somewhat similar. It's just that someone didn't think about it. If he had all the worldly contacts, he might be so busy that his character, who was born in a wealthy family, would be disgusted. During the day, all my thoughts were occupied by trivial things. On the first night, two female apprentices came over hand in hand. In fact, there are really few couples who have an innocent relationship between a magician and his apprentice. And most of them are casual and informal. Lynn is certainly no exception. It's just that the relationship between Lynn and the two girls is neither about lust nor about satisfying physical needs. The two girls were originally sold to the magician's association by their parents because of their magical talents. But their magic talent is quite low. Only slightly better than civilians without talent. In the eyes of other magicians, such people are called apprentices. But in fact, they are treated as magic materials. When there is a sacrifice or something to be sacrificed, or a substitute for death. It is always apprentices like this who go first. As a great traveler, Lin's heart is certainly not as ruthless as that of his colleagues in Lost Land. But others don't know. At that time, the two girls were worried and frightened all day long. And they were unable to do anything well. Another layer of relationship is also to reassure them. After they knew more and more things in the future, became more and more thoughtful in doing things, and confirmed that their position was not a victim that could be discarded at will. They stopped the unnecessary exchanges. In fact, what people fear most when getting along with others is that they are not needed and may be abandoned at any time. Therefore, everyone is always trying their best to show their existence and importance, just to confirm their position in each other's life, especially children. After all, most children don't understand and don't have the courage and ability to live alone. But that was quite a while ago. Lin's view on the two apprentices is that if they each find a suitable person, they should marry them off as daughters. But there has been no news, and I have gotten used to having them in my life. 
so I have made it all the way. However, after a long absence of close contact, someone only had one thought. They have really grown up. It is still the most beautiful age of 20-something. There was no words for a night. Only madness. The day of the second day, just like the first day, was filled with trivial matters that took up all the time. In fact, no one would dare to say anything if they really had to push those things aside and wait behind closed doors for the day to go home. But someone just lets these things occupy their thoughts and avoids thinking about something that should be important. As for what those things were, I couldn't tell because I was busy. On the second night, I thought it would be another exciting night. It's time to find the original Lich, who I am most familiar with, but who has actually changed his body many times and has surprises every time. But after dark, it was quite peaceful. Even when the lights go out, when most people go to bed, someone's attic door remains closed, then rarely uses blink to scare people. Instead of constantly teleporting, she prefers to move on her feet. Unless you are in a hurry, or the journey is really too long, it would be a waste of time. So whenever she wanted to have a night, sometimes she would knock on the door and come in to cultivate some interest. Sometimes she would just knock on the door and come in, push it and get in. Although there is no certain formula, you will always go through that door. But tonight, she was silent. And this could be someone's last night in Lost Lands. Someone who wanted to just sleep, like this was lying on his own special big bed. But he couldn't fall asleep. Unconsciously, he touched the tail ring on the little finger of his right hand, which was the only ring that held the other 19 rings. Quite surprisingly, then was not in his room. If she really fell asleep, someone wasn't going to conduct a night raid or anything. But if you don't sleep, flash twice. Once he changed his clothes, he teleported not far behind the former demon king who was admiring the moonlight. This is the cliff where the poor girl Marlene is buried. It is the most common place for Ezio's group of fat boys to hang out during their spare time during the day. After that incident, it was also the place where these two magicians, who stood at the pinnacle of the world, visited most often to admire the moon. In fact, the moonlight in Midi is not beautiful at all. There is even a moon that seems to be fixed in the sky because it is synchronized with the rotation of Midi. For someone who is used to the changing weather conditions in his hometown, such a night is actually a bit strange. But there is no denying that this weird moonlight is helpful to magicians. The meditation ceremony with the Lord of Mystery, one of the eight great powers, was conducted under such moonlight. However, those special meditation methods are of no use to Lin, who has poor talent, and Finn, who has accumulated a lot of experience. Lin was just fascinated by the sky under the dark night. And fun, she just wanted to see what was so charming about the night that fascinated that man. Lin didn't deliberately hide the sound of his footsteps and just walked to Finn's side, looking up at the moon as well. The two of them said nothing. It's not so much that someone feels like they have a thousand words to say, but when they actually see the person, their mind is blocked and they don't know what to say. It would be better to say that after finishing the beheading meal, the presiding judge was asking himself if he had any last words. The man who was put on the execution ground just wanted to shout, unjust. But obviously, this is not the right time to cry out for injustice. So someone is inexplicably stuck in a situation where they have nothing to say. It was said that Lin himself had no idea why he came here. Then didn't look back. She was still looking at the moon. The starlight couldn't help but dim a lot under this moonlight. Of course she knew about the man's appearance. Just like in the protective magic that Lin set for himself. Then was on the white list. The protective magic she set for herself was also unrestricted by that man. She had never given anyone such trust in the past. Even undead warriors like Stone. Created by her own hands. Once they become self-aware, they have to stay away from her to protect the Devil King. What really makes the Demon King Fanitical feel safe is not how many loyal guards there are around him, but how long there is a blank space with no one around him. This distance means how much reaction time she has and how much she can destroy her opponents. Although she no longer maintains such a blank space, she has also used the convenience of programming language magic to set up a defensive circle for herself, similar to someone else. If someone did something inappropriate within this range, flying out would be considered a polite response, and it would be possible for someone to be knocked down directly, or even disappear from the world. But this man has no limits, so he could walk to him safely without saying anything. Chapter 1469 The Second Night Tell me about what you saw and heard in that world the parts you still remember. Finn spoke first. The tone didn't change much. Just like when the two of them discussed academic issues in the past. They were just plain and straightforward. Lin spoke. 
as always, without reservation. This is also because there are a lot of things he doesn't understand. And he wanted to find someone to ask. Those things are incomparable to my two apprentices. Their levels are too low. Let alone discussion. Whether you listen or understand is a question. Other magicians who are at a high enough level do not have such a deep friendship and can communicate these things that can be called the mysteries of the world. Fun is the best and most suitable partner. At least we can get some valuable feedback from this original lich instead of paying unilaterally. From the moment he flashed into the two-dimensional world, he explained in detail how he used projection to squeeze his true body into the low-dimensional world, including mathematical formulas. Then he entered the one-dimensional world and found traces of the suspected void dragon, finally chasing into the zero-dimensional world. How I lost myself in the final world. But because of a call, he temporarily regained consciousness. As for the content of the roar, someone actually had no memory of it. He only remembered hearing Finn's voice. However, this incident also caused the former demon king to show a strange expression for a moment. But he restrained himself well. Then, there are Lin's observations and guesses about that world. And how he found a way to move in that world. And even finally left with the void dragon. The mathematical formulas given here are so complicated that it is difficult for Fren to understand them. However, compared to the derivation of mathematical formulas, what is more useful in that world is various philosophical thinking. More numbers just make that world more complex. Specifically, it is the feeling that the Tao is as high as one foot and the devil is as high as one foot. But that world is not purely idealistic either. The place where you truly get what you want is the dream realm that Lin once studied. That is the place that can accommodate all kinds of messy things. Ranging from unreasonable to unreasonable. In that zero-dimensional world, your possibilities are infinite. But you will always encounter obstacles. It feels like infinity infinity plus one. A formula that cannot be established mathematically. But it is the thing on the left of the less than sign. So if you want that kind of world to work, you can't be too mathematical. In other words, my mathematical knowledge and qualifications are limited. I am not a true master like Gauss. And I cannot truly calculate the reality of that world. Then you can only find a different path and find another way to crack it. The first thing that comes to mind is the various theories of Buddhism. And then the meanings of the three religions from my hometown appear in someone's eyes. However, although someone's memory has been transformed several times, it has reached the point where he has a photographic memory and can even recall this ability. But he has not read all the classics. And those on the Tower of the New Dimension cannot be sorted out by someone's original knowledge. Fen has also asked about Lin's hometown knowledge and philosophy including religion in the past. He is no stranger to Confucianism, Buddhism and Taoism. But she couldn't put that much content into what she had heard. You know, there is an agnostic collection of information in my hometown, the Akashic Records. It contains all the information and its connotations that have happened and not happened. Such a treasure house cannot be mastered by human beings. But you can find ways to take a peek and capture some of the information in order to find a way to escape from that world. I thought about starting from Catholicism, Islam, Buddhism, Taoism, etc. But in order to better explain these things, I also need to find the classics of Confucianism and various schools of thought. Finally confirmed since the first two constitute their own system and are different from the three religions of Confucianism, Buddhism and Taoism. I retain the more familiar latter and studied its principles. If I want to thoroughly analyze the knowledge of the three religions and apply what I have learned, I am afraid that I will be reincarnated a hundred times and I will not be able to do it with the practice of hundreds of reincarnations. So I took a trick, then turned his head for the first time and asked curiously, The trick? What is it? Although that world is not like a dream, where you can make all your wishes come true, but the general direction is determined by willpower. Basically, when you want something, the road will appear in front of you, as long as you have enough wisdom to see it, and enough courage to go up to it. It's easier than real life. Well, it's really interesting. But what I'm more interested in is the Akashic Records you mentioned. I remember that one of the reasons why you always wanted to go back is that there are no animations or comics like you mentioned in Midland. Novels, TV, movies, etc. Isn't that included in the record? If it really contains all the known and unknown information as you said. Well, you think it is entertainment. Knowledge? Ah. Someone suddenly realized. His eyes widened. His mouth opened wide. And he could not say anything. Then saw this and chuckled. It's the same. No matter where you are. You are in the treasure house without knowing it. You just look at the benefits of other places and leave. 
you can be considered sick. Ah. Uh, no. Actually, how should I say it? Ah. Uh, yes. Process. Process is also very important. Just like RPG. You don't just need to read the plot and beat the boss to clear the level. You also need to practice the game during the leveling process. Techniques and exploring Easter eggs are also very important pleasures. When watching a movie, you must first carefully avoid those thunderous movie reviews and then go to the cinema, whether it is to enjoy it for two hours, to vomit for two hours, or to sleep for two hours. You will have a deeper understanding later. This is not something that can be done just by looking at it. Someone talks haltingly and keeps making excuses for his or her behavior. Infant's eyes. This look just seemed very funny. But Finn didn't listen to the words someone was trying to convince him of. After laughing a few times, she turned her head without hesitation and planned to leave. Seeing this, Lin asked casually, Are you leaving? No. Before he could finish his words, he was interrupted by someone who was about to leave. Then slightly tilted his head, looked at the person from the side, and said, What else would I think about someone who doesn't intend to stay for me? If I can't sleep at night, I want to spend a fragrant last night. Go find your two apprentices. We were quite compatible last night. Maybe you don't want to admit it, but their attachment to you is deeper than you think. After saying that, he flashed away. There was a person sitting alone on the ground, looking at the moon and speechless. Early in the morning, in the attic room, in front of the astronomical telescope. In fact, not long after Fen left the cliff, Lin also left. But after he came back, as if he was tired of looking at the starry sky, he sat in front of the telescope again and greedily watched the stars. It is as if one of the stars is the sun of the solar system. But this is impossible. According to someone's rough calculation, the distance between mystery and the Earth is at least 3.7 billion light years. Even if you see starlight, it belongs to the entire Milky Way galaxy and cannot be a single star like the sun. In fact, before dawn, the Marquise's servants woke up one after another and began to prepare for the morning. Everyone's attitude was the same as usual. There was nothing special prepared. It's like a farewell party, with no flowers or procession of gifts. Such an attitude makes someone who is about to leave feel mixed emotions inside. In fact, as a former Fatotaku, I am somewhat neurotic about this kind of thing. If someone really takes it seriously and holds a grand banquet, it might even bore someone. But not paying attention to anything like this makes people once again sure that they are just a little transparent which is also not very pleasant. There is no middle way in this kind of thing. No matter what you do, it will make someone uncomfortable. People who think of themselves as rationalists certainly understand this mentality. But understanding is one thing, actually encountering it is another. However, someone's sense of presence is already very low. Especially not long ago, I went on a business trip to the South and didn't go home for two or three months. I didn't forget to prepare an extra portion for him at breakfast which was already the most benevolent thing. Lin's breakfast was served in his room. After escaping for two days, he could no longer escape the problem on this day, leaving him no time to think about whether he was hungry. So breakfast was thoughtfully delivered by my own apprentice. The time limit agreed with the Void Dragon is getting closer and closer, and many things have to be faced. Just like my current state of mind, this is not the feeling of being so excited that I can't sleep the day before a primary school student is going to teach outside the school. Thinking about the question, should I go back, is a question in itself. I thought about a lot of reasons for going back or not. But this is not a matter of adding and subtracting. And finally getting a mathematical answer. So Lin planned to call the third party. My fellow countryman, Leonardo from Vinci Village in Florence. After eating breakfast, the young apprentice hid in his studio. In normal times, apart from giving some painting and art classes to those children, he would hide in the studio and study some of his favorite knowledge. But today is special. Leonardo was neither sad nor happy. Just in a daze. Suddenly, he and his chair were photographed by someone using a flash technique to reach the attic room. Old teacher. Leonardo was a little confused when he was suddenly teleported to another place. Although he didn't come to the attic room often, at least he still recognized the person in front of him. However, his mood changed three times in a short period of time. It went from nervousness to surprise, and then to disappointment. Lin didn't show any suspense and asked directly, Do you want to go back? Leonardo was stunned, not knowing how to react. In a world where magic is king, you have talent, but you are unwilling to work hard in this area. 
Instead, the knowledge of painting, mathematics, and engineering attracts you more. This kind of incompatible attitude makes me want to ask you such a question. Question. Leonardo jumped up and finally came back to his senses and said coyly, But, teacher, you don't plan to go back? Chapter 1470 Return How could something like that happen? Lin answered his inner thoughts without hesitation. This, of course, extinguished the meager hopes Leonardo had originally raised, and his raised eyebrows lowered again, seeing the change in this fellow's mood. Lin no longer kept people interested and said, Actually, I just want to make an optimal choice. You see, I have been looking for a way to go back. You're welcome. Everything I did in Me-D was for this purpose. And it wasn't fruitless. Right? Asked casually. Leonardo subconsciously nodded in approval. Lin added, I can see that you also have the desire to go back. But you don't know how to implement it. In other words, if you miss this opportunity, there is a high possibility that you will die here. But if I miss it, I will just follow the original pace or continue to find other methods. I will always have more opportunities than you. The depressing truth, even if Leonardo wanted to refute, he couldn't find a suitable reason or explanation. Len continued, with the help of the power of the Void Dragon to return. I am confident that it is a foolproof method. Its source of power is at the same level as the wishing spell. Although you have not learned much about magic, you should have some common sense. Letting the Dragon of the Void take you back is the best way for you. It can be said that you will never have a second chance except this opportunity. And it is actually the same for me to give up this opportunity and let you go back. Created another opportunity. When Lin finished speaking, he pointed. Leonardo followed the direction of the finger and moved his eyes to his hand. It is one of the nine rings related to the one ring. And its additional abilities are also the limit that ordinary people can bear. Going up to the seventh and third ring. People who are not physically strong enough may be killed by the additional attributes of the ring. But the most important ability of this ring is still positioned by the magician in front of me. As long as he wants. He can teleport to the owner of the ring at any time, or capture the person to him like just now. This made Leonardo realize something. Lin Gung said directly, I believe I don't need to say more about the relationship between the ring on your hand and the one ring. So after you go back with that ring, is it possible that you can become an assist for me to go back? This possibility the sex is quite big. So you see, letting you go back with the Dragon of the Void is the best option for both of us. And, when he heard the explanation, Leonardo, who was already in a state of excitement, did not have tears in his eyes. But his red expression was enough to show how excited he was now. Because the situation his teacher said was indeed the best way for two foreigners from a foreign land to go home. He didn't even consider whether someone would be left in the lost lands if his plan failed. If someone knew about this mysterious confidence, they wouldn't know whether to cry or laugh. But the unfinished words still made the excited Leonardo feel a little confused. And asked, Teacher, what more? Lin still has a lot of emotions about the turning point in his mood. While patting Leonardo on the shoulder, he said, Without you in my hometown, the Renaissance color will be reduced by one-third. But without me, society will still be harmonious and the earth will still move. Compared with being dispensable, you are the one who cannot stay in lost land. Although there were many parts that were hard to understand, Leonardo could still hear the praise in the words. He wasn't too humble. More importantly, he still didn't understand why his teacher would say that. But he was in a good mood. So he certainly wouldn't let such a trivial matter ruin his mood. Nor would he get carried away because of it. When he thought that the ring he brought back to his hometown might become the key to the magician in front of him returning home, Leonardo couldn't help but ask, Teacher, how long will it take you to find a way to flash back? Am I what preparation should be made first? Regarding the problem of his apprentice, Linny Ling then smiled bitterly and said, Well, I'm not afraid to tell you. In fact, the era when I came is five or six hundred years after your era. If you go back, I will appear immediately. Then cry it will be me. How is this different from staying in lost land? Leonardo showed a disappointed expression. He originally thought about whether he could continue to rely on a supporter like the magician in front of him after he returned. However, he also understood the situation of the person in front of him better, and had an explanation for the feeling of being out of place that this fellow countryman had always given him. Simply put, although two people come from the same place, they are people of different times. But the problem of his own apprentice is actually a reminder, Lin urged. So, if you want to help me, there is indeed something very important. Teacher, please speak. 
Leonardo asked seriously, suppressing his smile. That is to find a way to preserve the ring, at least so that it will not be damaged or lost in the next five or six hundred years. As long as the ring is there, it is the greatest help to me. Well, this is indeed a very important issue. Teacher, I will do everything possible to protect this ring. Leonardo said seriously with a serious face. Do your best. Lynn patted Leonardo on the shoulder again and said, Now go back and pack your things. Take what you want to take. But don't think about taking all your belongings back. What you look like when you came here is probably what you will look like when you go back. At the end, Lynn also joked, As long as you don't come here naked, then the most important thing is to choose what you bring with you. If you don't have it at home, it must also be something that conforms to your beliefs. If you really come here naked, well, then there's no way. Because before today, Leonardo was only envious and never thought that he would have the opportunity to go back. When his teacher brought up the problem of luggage, he was immediately in trouble. He had been wandering in the lost land for a short time, maybe several years. Although it was very hard at first, after being accepted as an apprentice by the person in front of me, life was completely different. But just like someone else's situation, in this mysterious place where entertainment is so scarce that it's almost non-existent, Leonardo can live his life in a dream when he has some free time. But he chose to really use someone as a teacher and learn the knowledge he was interested in from him. Lynn didn't have anything to hide. And he didn't even care about transforming this all-round super talent who might be one of the three great masters of the Renaissance into something even more incredible. All kinds of knowledge beyond the 15th century seemed to be given away for free. As long as Leonardo was interested, Lynn would teach him. In this way, Leonardo of course accumulated a lot of information and works at his home in the holy city of Astali, including the composition of the painting, which is exactly the same as the Mona Lisa's smile. But the main character is Finn's oil painting. These things were extremely precious to Leonardo, and of course, he would want to take them with him. But just like the restrictions imposed by my own teacher, it is impossible to pack everything away. So what can be taken away is undoubtedly a very vexing question. Seeing Leonardo walking away in distress, Lin Buhue shot him in the back and said, I don't have much time for you to think about it. You only have half an hour. Come to me when you're ready. Go. I'll send you to see the Dragon of the Void. Since the rise of forums, the concept of time accurate to the second has become deeply embedded in the habits of some people. As the initiator, Lin made pocket watches, watches and other timers for everyone around him. And of course Leonardo also had one. So someone is not afraid that the young man in front of him will waste his time. At most, he can just remind him. Moreover, the agreement with the Dragon of the Void is not like a time traveler catching a train or catching a plane. There is still some margin. However, the young apprentice with a slumped face had no time to worry about time. What can and cannot be carried is a big problem. He turned around and said, Yes, teacher. Then he continued to worry. In the end, Leonardo was not like some women who need to put on makeup when they go out. They say that it will only take five minutes. But they can make the whole afternoon disappear. He still showed up at the attic before the half-hour time limit. He cleverly changed into a set of clothes that wouldn't look too out of the ordinary when he returned. I carried a few bags on my back, but they were not big. At least not the level of a mountaineering backpack. Judging from the appearance, there are not many things in the bag. And it is not a big item. Len didn't do anything like checking the luggage. He is not a customs officer. And he cannot give Leonardo advice on which items are suitable to bring, and which ones are not. This trip is not an ordinary trip. Not a spring outing. Nor an escape. Only he knows what he can, and needs to bring back to his hometown. Lin, who was not familiar with the social environment during the Renaissance era, had no idea what items he would bring back with him. And if discovered, he would be burned at the stake. I don't want one of the three heroes to act heroically after returning. So I'd better express less opinions on such matters. Although the Dragon of the Void had left a mystery as to where it would appear again, Lin could easily guess that it would appear in the sky above the holy city of Estali. The location of the dragon's footprints. The reason why he is so arbitrary is because it was originally his own idea. Break the closed space crack. And under the guidance of the Dragon of the Void. Travel backwards back to the Earth. This so-called Dragon of the Void is formed by condensing someone's willpower. So his actions should be in line with the first impression in someone's mind. Although Leonardo didn't even master the most basic apprentice-level flying skills. With Lin's help, it wasn't a problem for him to wait in front of the crack. When the Dragon of the Void appeared, he did not immediately sweep someone away 
and send him back to the earth. Instead, it kept weaving in and out of the clouds until he revealed his head and stared straight at someone. Without a word, Lin asked Leonardo to move in front of him and said, Please send him back to where he came from. His hometown. His time. The void dragon was not surprised, but he still confirmed and asked, Is he going to leave? Magician? Lin hesitated for a moment, but finally said firmly, Yes. Okay. I will take this last journey. If you can't find another way to go back, then just wait for my reincarnation in a thousand years. I can send you back again. Lin didn't respond this time. Just smiled. Chapter 1471 12 years later. It was a summer night in the year 748 of the Aramaic calendar. A subsidiary country of the Hater Empire. The country of Silk. Mulberry Garden. For an empire that spans the north and south of the Midi Equator. The kingdom of Silk is located in a hilly area to the north. So even in summer. The climate is still cooler and not as hot as in the plains. And this is also the basis for planting mulberry and raising silkworms in the country of Silk. The Mulberry Garden was the place where mulberry trees were planted when the Kingdom of Silk was first established. All silk-making processes are also concentrated in nearby houses. However, with the development up to now, when almost all the people in the country of Silk grow mulberry, raise silkworms and reel silk, the Mulberry Garden has become a centralized processing place for weaving raw silk into cloth. A small area is used for other operations, including dyeing the woven cloth and tailoring it into clothes. Today, there is a large enclosed room in the Mulberry Garden, where celebrations are taking place in full swing. On the side are several huge machines that are obviously not consistent with the style of the Kingdom of Silk, connected to pipes as thick as arms, used to transport magical power. But the machine is not running now, and everyone is celebrating around a square handkerchief that has just been woven with patterns of flowers, birds, wind and moon. Some of the people celebrating were wearing hanfu, and some were wearing kimono. The bloodline of the Kingdom of Silk has actually been integrated into the part that belongs to the Lost Land. But in terms of tradition, there are still many people who insist on things passed down by their ancestors. Among such a group of people who had a very different style from those in Midland, there were three people dressed as magicians standing by the wall, quietly watching the celebrations of others. The three of them don't look much alike, but they are indeed three brothers. The most powerful one was the boss, whose roused muscles bulged out the already very large robe. If he hadn't been wearing a magician's shawl and had two silver threads on his chest, no one would have doubted that he was a berserker. The other brother is not as tall as the eldest brother, but he is also a muscular figure. He also has a magician's shawl and two silver strings, but the iron staff in his hand is not so much a magic staff. It may be used to hit people directly, and the damage will be relatively high. The youngest is the third child. Compared to the two eldest brothers, this younger brother looks more normal. The only thing that stood out was that the magician's cape on his body was tied with golden tassels. This means that he is officially a magician, not an apprentice of Silver Spike. The common feature of the three brothers is that their skin seems to be in a state of dryness for a long time. And the degree of dryness and cracking is very serious. There are also one to three horns on the head, which is an obvious abyssal feature. If one of the parents of a person with such characteristics is not a demon, then they were contaminated by extremely high concentrations of abyssal aura when they were in the womb, or during the most important growth period of their childhood. The three brothers could not confirm the condition of the former, because since they were sensible, they have never seen a creature that looks like their parents. The latter is perfectly normal for children, like them, who come from street backgrounds. In addition to the abyssal aura brought by magic weapons, such miasma will also naturally occur in some dark, dark and dirty corners, contaminating the children living there. The three are brothers Bobosha, Boboluo and Bobosha. They were here for a sum of money, an amount of money they had never seen before. But it's hard to get such money. At least the way the people from the Kingdom of Silk looked at the three brothers could not be called friendly. Among the three brothers, Bobosha, the youngest, has always been the leader. After drinking a few glasses of white wine, which had no other sensation than spiciness, he took his two eldest brothers and walked outside to the courtyard compared to the hot atmosphere inside the house. In order to maintain confidentiality, the house is sealed very well, so people outside cannot detect the movement inside the house. Moreover, Minnie didn't have the habit of lighting up streetlights. So the three brothers just walked in the dark environment. Suddenly Bobosha, who was taking the lead, stopped and looked up at the corner that was as black as thick ink and completely untouched by moonlight and starlight, said, 
Ezio, it's you. Mister finally sent you to kill us. No need to hide. Come out. Babosha said so. But no one came out of the dark corner. And there was no movement at all. After a while, the eldest brother Babosha said, Little brother, do you really think that Mr. will send Ezio to kill us? These days, you will say this almost every few days when there are few people. In fact, what do you mean? Didn't find it either. Babosha breathed a sigh of relief and said, Ezio is someone who has a way to discuss how to hide himself with Sister Kaya and play hide and seek with his husband. Maybe you don't know, but even the demon prince Azad once taught him. No matter how much I value him. No. 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 Azad is not teaching me. He is serious about killing me. It is not easy to escape from him. The voice that interrupted Babosha was a young man hiding in the darkness. Unlike what most people think, he wears all black night clothes. Instead, he put on a striking white trousers with red lines, calfskin boots, a single shawl, and a hood that almost covered his face. But for such a big living person, no one noticed his existence until he took the initiative to show up and speak out. Ezio put down his hood, revealing his youthful face, but with a somewhat mature look in his eyes, looking at the old friends in front of him. When you called me by name at first, I really thought you had discovered it. If Boss Yaw hadn't said it, I wouldn't have thought it was just a little trick to deceive people. Really, I almost got fooled. Seeing the person coming, the three brothers said with a bit of sourness, Sir! Did you really ask you to come and kill us? Ezio shook his head and said, The old man won't care about this kind of thing. Although he is quite disappointed with what you did, it's not to the extent of assigning us to hunt you down. If you really want to do it, he will definitely do it. We'll do it by myself, not by other people's hands. Although Ezio denied the first question, Paposa still did not relax his vigilance. He knew very well how talented this gifted boy was. Asked, Then why are you here? Although the old man didn't say anything, you three must give us an explanation for betraying the brotherhood. Ezio moved his hands slightly away from his body and placed them on both sides of his thighs. He appears to be unarmed. But that doesn't mean he isn't dangerous at all. Even people like Papocha and Popolo, who looked much stronger than Ezio, alertly added a full set of auxiliary magic to themselves in an instant. He also took out a hand crossbow from under his robe and pointed it at the incoming person. The hand crossbow is only about the size of a palm. The crossbow arrow is about the length of a finger. And the handle takes up most of the volume. Although the short crossbow arm does not bring much lethality and long range. The magic effect attached to the crossbow machine still increases the power of this hand crossbow to the normal level. And in order to enhance the lethality, poison is quenched on the crossbow arrows. In the Lost Land, in order to deal with those monsters with strong vitality, all the poisons used to quench the weapons are of the blood seal level. The kind of poison that just happens to paralyze people is worse than pepper. Facing the hand crossbow, Ezio raised his hands exaggeratedly and took a few steps back. Said, Hey, brother, relax. You should know that anything without tracking arrow magic will have no effect on me. How do you know we don't have it on our crossbow? Even if it doesn't, can't I add an extra one? Bob Osha, the only one who didn't raise the crossbow said, as he raised the magic wand in his hand to his chest. Ezio glanced at the crossbows in the hands of the two brothers, and said, If you are using special products, then I dare not say. But the things in the big man's hands are clearly mass products made by the technology guild. You even if it can be modified, there is not much room for modification. And it is impossible to add tracking arrows. You can of course use the magic of tracking arrows now. And then you have to see who can move faster. Oh! Is there no room for negotiation? Bob Osha asked with the last bit of luck in his heart. Go and talk to the people you hurt when you fled. If they are willing to forgive you, that's fine with me. Oh, by the way, it seems that a few brothers and sisters have died. Then you may have to wait until you die. Ask them if they are willing to forgive me. If there really is an afterlife. The words of regret were cut off. Like a signal to start war. Two big hand crossbows fired at the same time. The crossbow arrow fired flatly missed without any surprise. Ezio, who instantly disappeared from the eyes of the three brothers, jumped out from the darkness on the side like a ghost. The second oldest, Babalo, was the first to bear the brunt. It's just that at this time, Popolo had no time to cast other magic besides activating the existing magic protection effect. Compared with warriors, most magicians would still be a beat slower, so they had to pick up close quarters weapons to defend themselves. 
for Popolo. It is the iron rod in his hand. In this situation where there is no decisive gap in technical proficiency and physical fitness, the quality of the weapon becomes the key to victory or defeat. The iron rod was broken. The dagger stretched out from the sleeve of Ezio's left arm, only slightly longer than a palm, ignored the blockage of the magic shield and stabbed into Popolo's neck neatly. As the hidden sword was drawn out, a cloud of blood sprayed into the sky. Popolo's eyes were filled with helplessness, and he pressed his hand on his neck where blood was spurting out. The magic props used for healing on the body are working, but those props cannot cure such a serious injury. Of course, the two brothers next to him couldn't stand still, but they didn't try to save their brothers, but instead moved towards Ezio to encircle him. If the pursuers are not dealt with first, any rescue operation may be interrupted. So the strongest Bobo Sia roared, threw away the hand crossbow that had been unstrung, and held the flail he found from somewhere in his other hand. Without much preparation, he threw the flail at Ezio's face. Bobosh's reaction was equally quick. Having reached the level of a magician, he was not just an academic magician who had learned the 72 apprentice-level magics of the Three Rings. Coming from a street background, he has been studying instant magic from the beginning. Although it cannot reach the level of a certain magician, Using the subdimensional tower as the foundation and the programming language as the means. He can cast magic with just a thought. But Bobosh's combat routines are also quite good. In a very short period of time when his second brother was attacked, Bobosha not only gave himself three more layers of shields, but also released two attack magics. One fire and one wind. He even chased the fireball and wind blade to kill Ezio. Go! The brutal collision is performed while taking a long stride forward. Chapter 1472 Assassination Using six magic spells in a short period of time is an achievement that even a skilled magician who is good at fighting can be quite proud of. But Bob Osha had no confidence at all. Just because the person he was dealing with was Ezio, a beloved child in his eyes. The so-called favor here, in his mind, means having a set of props and equipment that are valuable and even make people jealous. In fact, there is no. But Ezio still lived up to his expectations and bounced back hard. He did not choose a muscular physique like Bob Osha as his first target, but instead found the thinner Bob Osha. The thinness here is compared to Bob Osha and his two eldest brothers. In fact, Popoza's physique is on par with Ezio's. But in terms of danger, Bob Osha is thousands of times more dangerous than his two brothers. It's a pity that the magician seems to be overwhelmed when facing fighters with more skilled fighting skills. Even though physical fitness can be enhanced with auxiliary magic, there is no shortcut to quickly becoming proficient and diverse in skills. Ezio seized on this weakness and attacked Popoza's lower three lanes with sliding tackles. First, a hidden sword slashed his ankle and even severed his hamstring. At the same time, he turned over and grabbed the calf of Bobosha's uninjured left foot, dragging him to the ground. After dragging Popoza over, Ezio used his hands and feet to climb up. At the same time, the hidden sword was slashed left and right hitting any vital points or joints first, not caring whether it would cause fatal damage. Not surprisingly, Ezio's hidden blade completely ignored the ability of the magic shield and was instantly broken upon contact. With the continuous attacks, Bob Osha didn't even have time to feel the pain and scream out. The whole body felt like it was in a high-temperature environment. Extremely hot. Just before Ezio climbed to the upper body, near the neck, he used all four limbs to bounce back. The support of the roaring eldest brother Bobosha finally arrived. His eyes were red. And the swinging flail passed over Ezio's original position and hit his brother hard. The flail head used by Bobosha is an iron spike ball. It has no magic attached to it and is just heavy and solid. Therefore, Bobosha's broken magic shield still had some effect and did not really smash his lower body. Even so, the damage caused by the flail was like an explosion from the previous injury making Bob Osha couldn't help but cry out. As the eldest brother, Bobo Xiao also did not stop to care about his brother. Being from the streets, they know very well that as long as the danger still exists, then the danger is something that must be dealt with immediately. Instead of crying while holding their injured brother, the latter's actions cannot save him from the crisis. Ezio bounced away and disappeared into the darkness again, and Papoxia was unable to pursue him immediately. The big guy even had to carefully observe his surroundings trying to find Ezio's whereabouts first. At the same time, Bobo Xia was not idle either. His free hand quickly dug into his pockets, grabbing several bottles of potions and small glass jars. Bobo Xia didn't feel any distress 
and smashed all the potions in his hand to the ground. The broken glass bottle allows the potion stored in it to quickly atomize, and the magical power is integrated into it. While constructing the spell model, it also triggers supernatural effects belonging to magic. This is one of the fast spellcasting methods similar to magic scrolls. And it is also the achievement of the technology guild in recent years. Of course, one of the bottles Papoxia smashed open was a healing potion. This bottle can be taken orally or atomized. The latter has a wider range of effects. But of course, the effect will be attenuated. But this bottle is used to help my brother. The bottles that were smashed open at the same time included bright light spells, magic protection, spider whip traps, etc. Just at the moment when the light suddenly exploded, before Papoxia was dazzled, she saw Ezio's figure flying toward her from the side. And he was already very close in front of him. Although the big guy has a strong body, he also follows a crazy magic fighting route. But just like the shortcomings of all big men, there is a slight difference in reaction and speed. Facing Ezio's attack, Papoxia simply parried. For Ezio, who is taking a wild approach, his skills are not up to par. Compared with the ruthless three brothers who came from the street, he knows how to use his flexibility better. Simply put, it has many tricks and looks cool. But don't think that such a display is not fatal. As long as the key point is hit correctly, it can be fatal in one blow. However, Ezio's style of play never focused on killing with one hit. Instead, he shot randomly at various vital points. Joints, limbs and tendons. Even if the person cannot be killed, the person's mobility must be disabled. When he pounced on Babosha, he not only slashed his hidden sword across his wrist, the inside of his elbow, and his lower side. He even walked around behind Bobo's jaw and rode up. The human skull is very hard to protect the brain, cerebellum, and other organs. This also shows how important the organs inside the skull are and cannot allow any damage. In comparison, the neck is much softer. But Bobo Xia's muscles were like natural armor, coupled with the addition of auxiliary magic. Ordinary swords can't leave any damage at all except scratching the skin. But Ezio's hidden blade is no ordinary thing. No matter it's the muscles that are as strong as fine steel or the extremely hard skull, none of them can withstand a punch. After pricking it for a while, it wasn't enough. Ezio quickly pulled it back and pricked it again. Santa! Sitsa! The movement didn't stop until the huge body he was riding fell forward and fell to the ground. No longer moving. At the same time, blood flowed all over the ground. On the other end, Popolo, who was the first to fall, was still bleeding. And his life or death was uncertain. Just looking at the blood volume. If he didn't receive treatment in time, it probably wouldn't be a matter of life and death and he could just buy a coffin to calm it down. Bobosha's methods were relatively complete. He was not hit by a fatal attack, and the healing potion was still in effect. So he stood up with difficulty and stared at the person in front of him with malicious eyes. The uninjured Ezio stood up from Bobosha's body and walked slowly around, looking relaxed. The eyes under the hood were wandering around, as if they didn't pay attention to Bobosha. Bobosha gritted his teeth and said, You are indeed the most favored child. The hidden sword in your hand cannot be a hakiri. The clothes on your body are Sir's special silk. With a playful expression on his face, Ezio looked at the inner side of his left wrist, where the hidden sword was folded, said, Don't look at people with that jealous-to-death expression. I'm wearing ordinary equipment. Apart from the old man, it's impossible to follow anyone else. The only valuable thing is this one. The hidden sword was polished by the old man's teeth. I didn't take anything from the old man. Even the ring. So, is this the reason why you have always been dissatisfied with me? Come on, old man, old black dragon Augustus. I still cry out that I am going to die every day, but I can still eat a cow every day. Stop talking nonsense. After scolding, Paposa suddenly took action. The staff in his hand was pushed forward, and the chan free magic came into effect. Five consecutive rounds of flash bombs can blind people and cause impact damage, heading straight towards the enemy in front of them. The trajectory of the 5-ray bullet is also very particular, basically blocking the possibility of the enemy charging from the front. But Ezio rarely confronts enemies head-on, and he doesn't like to rely on the magic-breaking properties of the dragon's fawn hidden blade to confront magic head-on. He slipped his feet and jumped backwards into the darkness again. Some people once suspected that this was the shadow-walking ability that he learned from the demon prince Azad. But in fact, this is just a trick and he is just moving quickly and silently in the darkness on cat steps. 
although the light source of the flash bomb prevents him from hiding in the dark. His burst speed is so fast that ordinary people cannot imagine. Before Popoza could react, Ezio had already circled the side of the young magician and attacked again. The two exchanged three or two moves at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Of course, Popoza, who was dragging his injured body, was no match for Ezio. The hidden sword stabbed into the eye hole mercilessly. Ezio didn't pull his hand away, but instead dragged it in the direction of the other eye, cut off most of the head directly. When Boboche's body knelt down weakly on the lawn of the courtyard, Ezio discovered the figure of a girl who was originally covered by Bobosha. The girl was standing not far away, looking like she had run away from the banquet in the house to find someone. The clothes she wore were anything but ordinary, indicating that the girl should be a person of status. The girl also confirmed what was going on at the scene right away. Three people fell on the ground. Although it was difficult to see clearly in the dark night, the puddles on the ground were still visible. Although you can't see the color clearly, it must be blood stains. The frightened girl just looked at Ezio. Next, it seemed that he was preparing to kill someone and silence them. However, Ezio did not make those moves. Instead, he waved his hands and bowed in a gentlemanly manner and said politely, Beautiful lady, Ezio Augustus is here to greet you. Perhaps it was the gentlemanly etiquette that made the girl lower her guard a little, but she still looked at the person in front of her warily. Ezio then took out a pamphlet from his arms and said exaggeratedly, Oh, where did this silk production note come from? Really, such an important thing would appear in a place like this. But this is not mine. Let's forget about the mission goal. With that said, after placing the pamphlet on Popoza's kneeling back, Ezio showed a charming smile, waved his hand gently, and retreated into the dark courtyard where the light magic was no longer active. After the assassin disappeared, the girl ran forward in panic to confirm the condition of the three brothers. More importantly, that production note. Is that true? Why did that person intentionally leave this pamphlet behind? In the distance, the roof, Ezio had just climbed up from the eaves. But there were already two people standing on the ridge. A man and a woman. The man was wearing armor that looked so heavy that it would collapse the roof. And he was holding a large shield in his hand. The female is dressed similarly to Ezio, but has a longbow and quiver on her back. They looked helplessly at their companions, who had just climbed onto the roof and said, You really gave out that information. Aren't you afraid of Mr. Blaming you? If the old man really doesn't allow this to happen, no one can take anything away from that big house. The fact that we can take it out means that he acquiesces. The mistake made by the three brothers was to hurt other brothers. And there are still people because of this he's dead. Isn't that why we came here? That thing inside. One of them pointed into the house. Ignore him. As long as the old man doesn't ask us. I don't care about him. After that, Ezio clasped his hands behind his head and walked into the darkness. His two companions looked at each other and followed the darkness. Chapter 1473 The Country of Silk It has been twelve years since Leonardo returned. In the end, a certain magician did not leave, and the news was regarded as a farce. But he also faded out of the public eye and disappeared behind the stage of history. However, the legacy left by the great magician Gabriel Ashtrip would repeatedly emphasize that people are not dead yet and are still fermenting on the lost continent. Although many things have developed to the point where people have long forgotten who the original initiator was, and everyone only pays attention to the matter itself. But there are exceptions to this situation. For example, this summer, in the Hater Empire that straddles the equator on the Lost Continent, Mulberry Garden is the most important organization in the Kingdom of Silk as one of its vassal states. Silk products have been the exclusive industry of the country of Silk for a long time. Even though mulberry trees and silkworms have been known for a long time, but the most important silkworm seeds have not been leaked out, and the Hater Empire is its backer. If other places want to steal this technology, they have to consider whether it is worth offending an empire. If it were placed in an ancient time that traveled through many hometowns, other big and small countries would steal it. The country of origin may not know about this kind of thing in the first place. By the time the matter cannot be covered up, it will be too big to handle. But in Lost World, even before the forum, the circulation of information was not that convenient. But with continent-level transnational organizations such as the Adventurers Guild, the Mercenary Guild, and the Magicians Association, the lack of intelligence is not as severe as it was in someone's hometown in ancient times. More importantly, Lost Land is a world with great personal power. In the ancient times of someone's hometown, if you wanted to travel a long distance to a distant country to cause trouble, either a large army would set out 
and only 1 out of 10 would return home. Or a big country would be dragged to death by military expenses. But in the lost land, just sending a few strong men can easily destroy fixed facilities, such as silkworm breeding grounds. Relatively speaking, assassinating a specific target is relatively difficult. This kind of technology has no commercial value until it reaches scale. Once it reaches scale, it becomes a very eye-catching target. Facing this special operations assault by strong men, there is almost no resistance. Over time, other countries and nobles no longer consider the issue of producing their own silk. After all, no one can accept a large amount of investment only to have it completely destroyed before it can be recovered. Even if you can rebuild, you still need to consider whether the cost of constant rebuilding is worth the investment. Compared with reconstruction, the cost of destruction is too low. And this is different from the poison in a certain time traveler's hometown. Although no one does the loss-making business, and some do the beheading business. The most important thing about drugs is that they are addictive. Once you get addicted to it, you will consume it until you die. This can be regarded as a long-term business with huge profits. Although silk can be regarded as a hugely profitable industry, it is just a luxury product. It is not addictive and has many alternatives. So in reality, no one is willing to continue to rebuild the silk industry that is destined to be destroyed. The arrogance and violence of the hater empire are the biggest reliance on the kingdom of silk to appear to be transcendent. Of course, behind the scenes, the protection fee that should be paid is not small. Otherwise, why should an empire protect its vassal states? Why not just annex it? However, the monopoly that had been maintained for so long was still broken. In an unexpected way, in the Guana Empire, a kind of magic silk appeared in the holy city of Estali. This is a direction that the kingdom of silk has been trying to reach, but has never been able to make a breakthrough. Although the output of magic silk is not large, the clothes produced are also quite special similar to the traditional clothing of a certain ethnic group in the kingdom of silk. But these sets of clothes are extremely powerful magical equipment and can even be used directly as armor to protect the body from swords. Even though the output of clothes made from magic silk was not large, the effect was so powerful that those who were lucky enough to use it showed it off. And people followed it. And things became so popular. If the maker is an ordinary person or a skilled craftsman, then there will be all kinds of overt and covert means. If you don't snare someone, you should at least get a few works from the other party. No matter how small the output is, there are still ways to think of it. But the reality is that with a former demon king sitting in charge, most people don't dare to make mistakes. Another key magician is so powerful that he can defeat the three lords of holy light alone and eradicate the grand duchy of an empire. Those who want to engage in conspiracy should really consider whether they are worthy enough to be touched by others. Of course, silk monopolies, like the kingdom of silk, and the hater empire cannot remain silent about someone's actions. That kind of gameplay of strong men raiding. They actually came several times. And then, they all ended up with no return. And the opponent suffered no losses. This is why people from the Kingdom of Silk later visited, hoping to use national level pressure to force the magician to surrender. It was a series of accidents that the members of the Holy Sword Society joined their ranks and then took action. The strong men said secretly in front were all so heartbroken that it made people feel sad. Who would want to fall out with that magician? The result of still failing in the end was infuriating at the time. But after the southern incident in the Karlsruhe Empire, those anger turned into a fluke. Fortunately, the magician didn't go crazy. Otherwise the kingdom of silk would definitely be gone. And the hater empire wouldn't be in a good mood. Even if you don't care about the country behind you, you will definitely bear the brunt. This was the thought shared by those who had stood up and tried to exert pressure. They were on the front line at that time. However, this does not mean that the Kingdom of Silk and the Hater Empire will just settle down, let alone give up the benefits that Magic Silk can bring. Besides continuing the clueless research, the easiest way is to find someone next to the magician. Threats and inducements are two eternal weapons, but you still have to be careful and make subtle moves to avoid awakening the two ferocious beasts and bringing disaster to yourself. The intelligence personnel of the Hater Empire were very skilled at this delicate operation. After continuous efforts, the people of the Hater Empire finally found a breakthrough and obtained a complete set of reeling and jacquard machine designs, as well as the usage ratio of various magic moth types of silk threads. It's a pity that with a magic combination attached to the silk, they only got two or three sets of templates for outsiders to use, not to mention the designs of Shuangu robes and four spirit costumes that are comparable to artifacts. Even the costume designs used by the people around the magician. The Hater Empire was unable to obtain them. 
and even if it is a basic foreign trade design. At this stage, they do not have the ability to change the design. Someone never thought about the issue of popularization. So he never thought about making the operating system stupid. Many design changes require direct changes to the underlying code, rather than simply using menus to select everything. Therefore, in order to understand the entire process of making magic silk, the P language that a certain magician once disclosed to the world is a hurdle that cannot be bypassed. The programming language on the magic side has actually received much attention in the past 12 years and has even cultivated a number of talents. Forum plugins and other gadgets are all the work of these people. But how can something that someone uses for themselves be the same thing as something that is published? I don't know how many versions of the P language have been revised internally. But the public version has always been the original version. Therefore, the secret factory established in the Mulberry Garden of the Kingdom of Silk can currently only produce two or three types of magic silk. The weaver girls in the Kingdom of Silk can only make differences in height, shortness, fatness and thinness in the tailoring, but cannot change the type of magic added. Compared with making reeling machines and jackhard machines that no one understands the principles of. Another equally troublesome thing is the cultivation of silkworm seeds. There is a specific type of silkworm that can be used to make silk threads. And this type of silkworm is not native to MIDI. It was brought over by the predecessors of the Kingdom of Silk. I thought that as long as this silkworm species was well controlled, the silk production technology would not be leaked out. However, someone used the most unfavorable method of scientific experiment to exhaustively try to find the moss species suitable for making silk from the original moss species in Midland. And not only looking for ordinary moss species, but also focusing on magic moths. And Lin integrated the ideas of material science into the production of silk threads. A record of the characteristics of silk threads produced with different moss species ratios was left behind. This is an idea that those weaver girls in the kingdom of silk who are resting on their laurels have never had. All along, the silk of the kingdom of silk has not remained static, but they focused their change on post-processing techniques such as weaving and embroidery, as well as improvements in silk reeling and looms. For silkworms, they respect them like gods and take care of them with great care. Therefore, someone's treasonous practice of using cocoons of other moth species to extract silk threads made many old people in the kingdom of silk want to kill people. It's a pity that I can't beat it. So everyone just stopped talking. Now I have someone's design for reeling and jackhard machines, as well as the recipe for moth seed thread. Looking at these things, would anyone be content to just find other moth species as a substitute? Or think that they can get the same effect by using only silk moths? In the imitation stage, of course, all aspects must be exactly the same to be considered imitation. The main purpose is to confirm whether the relevant craftsmanship is in place based on the degree of completion between the imitation and the original product. Unless there is a technical gap, and it is difficult to improve and catch up. Otherwise, those who confidently say that they need to improve even though they are not exactly the same, and claim that they are better than others, are either mentally retarded or liars. Although the people of the Kingdom of Silk are a little stuck in rules, at least they know how to do things down to earth. So while the craftsmen in the country were striving to build that incredibly delicate jackhard machine, they were also trying their best to collect specific moss species from various places and cultivate them. It's okay to say that those ordinary moths are not a big problem if they are all treated as silkworm moths. But those magic moths are not that simple. Demonic insects containing powerful powers are a minor trouble for adventurers. Whenever you encounter something in the wild, the best way is to use a fire to deal with it. But to capture it alive, it must not be too damaged. And the difficulty will be increased by more than several times. After catching these magic moth species, how to raise them is another big problem. There is no such part of the parenting experience in the information available. Because the people who started it didn't think about this issue. Fortunately, most of the creatures with the prefix, demon, are meat eaters. People in the kingdom of silk still have this common sense. After solving the two major problems, another trial weaving worked, and it was successful. Then there was a celebratory dinner. However, the murder of the three hero brothers, the pamphlet left behind, and various contradictions have dampened the celebration mood of the country of silk. Chapter 1474 Focus In the past 12 years, the general trend of lost land has certainly not changed without change. The part that attracts the most attention, attracts the most attention, and worries the most is the constitutional monarchy of the Karlsruhe Empire in the south. The emperor handed over most of his power and transferred the military and political power of a country to the hands of the nobles. This was an unheard of thing. 
and all the people in power on the lost continent watch the development of the situation with trepidation. If they fail, they can openly laugh at the overestimation and suppress any signs of it arising. If he succeeded, then he would have to carefully handle the relationship between himself and the nobles below. Then he preaches the truth that different systems may not be suitable for different regions. During this process, few people directly criticize the actions of the Karlsruhe Empire or badmouth them in the process, cursing their failure, because most of them cannot withstand an angry blow from an empire. Even if the two countries are not bordering each other, sending a few strong men across the border to raid, punish them and then leave. There are really not many small countries that can withstand this kind of gameplay. So in the face of this powerful force with no solution level, most people remain silent. The only one who dares to laugh at the Karlsruhe Empire is of course their old rival, the Hater Empire. Then it became tragic. Perhaps in this era of mystery, there is no such thing as ideological output. But seeing the vigorous restructuring of neighboring countries, it would be a lie to say that the nobles of the Hater Empire had no idea at all. The emperor-electing system of the Hater Empire originally gave the nobles more power. In order for every emperor to ascend to power, he needs enough supporters. The simplest way is to exchange large enough interests and power for one's own status. Now that they see a way to further gain power, how could they not be tempted? Moreover, the people next door rotate every few years, unlike my own family. As long as you become the emperor, you can die. And then other people will have the opportunity to gain weight. Therefore, the hater empire was also undercurrent for a while. On the bright side, the plain of Oz, where the two empires meet, is becoming lively again. Due to the restructuring of the Karlsruhe Empire, there was inevitably some slight turmoil within the empire. The center of gravity and focus will also shift slightly from the original place and focus on the establishment of new systems. In the eyes of opponents of the same level, such a flaw may not be fatal, but it can still be taken advantage of. Therefore, the Hater Empire instantly increased its offensive intensity. After dispatching the airship corps to mobilize their military power, they occupied many farms and fertile land on the Oz Plains in a short period of time. However, all the nobles underestimated the role and influence that the lower assembly, elected by civilians without noble status, could play. In the past, military merit was a very important indicator in the competition within the families of the Karlsruhe Empire. Therefore, as long as you are not the kind of extreme genius who is almost demonic in intelligence but has no power to restrain a chicken, going to the plains of Oz and obtaining military merit is an unavoidable process. Today, Members of the House of Commons need to be elected or elected. To be able to get ahead, you need support from people. So how do you get more people to support you? Especially when there are competitors. That, of course, means having greater strength, a better reputation, and showing more intelligence. The simplest way is, of course, to obtain military merit that will last a lifetime. Therefore, countless young people rush to the battlefield in the name of revenge and regaining lost territory and defeated the Hater Empire steadily. The Karlsruhe Empire even began to plan to capture the fortress bordering the two countries and spread the war to the large desert in the Hater Empire. So how to prevent airship bombing and supply in the desert are two major problems. Although in the past 12 years, the Karlsruhe Empire has not really sounded the clarion call for counterattack, but the various actions he made were enough to frighten the Hater Empire. However, compared to the strong aggression displayed by the Karlsruhe Empire externally, their internal affairs were more frightening to onlookers. The problem also lies in the fact that the nobles believe that it is just a knife in their hands. The members of the House of Commons are all elected from the territories of the nobles. So they should act according to the orders of the nobles. However, this should part is not written into the law. The consequence of this is that members of nobles, who have poor control skills, can easily run away from members of their territories. Even those very capable congressmen, who came from country squires, and wealthy families control their own actions and speeches. In the past empires, although the succession of the virtuous son was advocated and the capable ones ascended to the throne, there was a gap between the nobles and the common people. As long as the nobles did not make fatal mistakes, even if the family died, they would adopt adopted sons from other noble families and continue their titles. Commoners who wanted to ascend to the throne and become nobles still had a chance in the early days of the empire. Although it is possible now, it is more than 10 times more difficult than in the past. However, the establishment of the lower parliament allowed those with strength and means among the common people to see opportunities. They don't need to be nobles to do things that nobles can do. There may be some twists and turns in the process. 
and the difficulty is certainly not low. But for those who have the strength, this kind of challenge is just right. If it's too simple, they won't like it. Look at those people who started from scratch and became successful. How many of them looked down upon those who were born with a silver spoon in their mouths? The counterattack from the lower council was like a storm, almost defeating more than half of the nobles in the Karlsruhe Empire, turning them into the puppets of the upper council. Such a development is unexpected by most people at first. And of course other ideas will arise. Abolish the constitutional monarchy and return the emperor to power? If it were possible to return to the previous situation easily, the nobles would definitely not hesitate. But the fact is that the changes in Empress St. Allegria made the nobles dare not act rashly. The magician left. Good thing. The empress gave birth to a son, disaster. Who is the child's father? Everyone guessed it. But no one cared. If the emperor and the queen have not had children for a long time, and the queen suddenly gives birth to a son, people may still question whether the prince's bloodline belongs to the emperor, using this to force a queen to death, depose a possible heir to the throne, and spread gossip about the royal family. This is something that everyone likes to hear. But when the empress gives birth to a child, no matter who the father is, it is an unavoidable fact that the child falls from whose belly. No one can doubt that this child does not have royal blood. Perhaps the statement that the father is unknown is a bit unpleasant. But the empress's husband, Prince Thomas, is still alive and well. So it's just good to use him as a support. Even though everyone knew that anyone could be the prince's father. But not the prince, who was under house arrest. If you just give birth to a son, and let a minor child suddenly disappear. It is a simple matter in the palace. Although the empress showed signs of turning around due to the chaos in the early days of the constitutional monarchy and the reputation of the magician. But in a palace that is as leaky as a sieve, it is not that difficult for something unfortunate to happen. However, Long Dao's sudden statement put an end to most people's delusions. In accordance with the instructions of the dragon god, the dragon emperor sent the dragon clan sacred objects as a gesture of goodwill. Crown of Thorns is the name of the sacred object. It looks like a few thorns with three inconspicuous little flowers. Black, pink and blue, woven into a round crown. But in fact, the thorns on the crown of thorns are not real plant thorns, but come from the main vein of the heart of a tree dragon that has become extinct in Midland. The three small flowers are the refined products of brain, heart and dragon crystal respectively. Tree dragons are just like the tray ant race still existing in Lost Land today. They have the appearance of humans, but are the inside of plants. The tree dragons have the appearance of dragons and the inside of plants, perhaps to make up for the difficulty in forming a tree dragon. Once a tree dragon is born, it is extremely powerful, but no matter how strong a race is, as long as it has difficulty in reproducing, it will sooner or later withdraw from the ecosystem. This is why tree dragons became extinct, but even if it is extinct, the legacy left by the tree dragon will inherit the power of its original owner and be regarded as a sacred object by the dragon clan. To the dragon, the crown of thorns is like a ring that symbolizes status. But for humans, it allows the wearer to gain the same endless vitality as a tree dragon. This is almost a guarantee of immortality. Showing courtesy for nothing is either cheating or stealing. Although this sentence is not confusing, the truth still makes sense. Especially the empress, who had been suppressed by the nobles for ten years, encountered such things in the process. In the early days, you would still be deceived but of course you would learn to behave later. So of course the empress expressed confusion and doubt about the dragon clan's overtures. The dragon messenger relayed the words of the dragon god. The reason why the empress did not have a child for so long was because the dragon blood in her bloodline appeared, which not only strengthened her body, but also swallowed up the man's essence. Simply put, it is impossible for a man who is too weak to impregnate the empress. Now the child born to the empress has not only dragon blood, but also pure abyss demon blood. This is a powerful bloodline from both the maternal and paternal lines. Although Allegria doesn't quite understand what pure devil blood is. But she could understand what was special about her child. From the moment she was pregnant, everything was different from normal. Ordinary people are pregnant for 10 months. But the Empress's child was born almost a year later. After birth, the baby eats a lot and sleeps a lot. But has little energy. Which is very different from ordinary babies. This made the Empress quite worried. One of the reasons why the dragon god sent the wreath of thorns is that this child cannot be raised as an ordinary human child, but must be raised as a young dragon, without sufficient nutrients and energy. Children will suffer from stunted growth. The abundant energy of the thorn corolla is the best, milk powder, 
as for whether they will overeat or have adverse reactions due to exposure to these things at a young age. The royal family will not consider them at all. Ordinary people also have to worry about whether they are weak or not. This child is like a bottomless pit. The more stuff you put in, the more solid your foundation will be. Besides, the royal family naturally has a set of methods to regulate their bodies and exercise. They are only afraid of their children being too weak, but not afraid of their children being too strong. Under the influence of various internal and external factors, the empress had no reason to reject the goodwill from the dragon god. So she accepted the crown of thorns. Chapter 1475 Accelerated Progress If it was just a unilateral goodwill from the dragon god, it might not be too surprising. After all, given the relationship between Dragon Island and the Empire as both enemies and friends. It is not a big news that senior officials from both sides exchange gifts. On the surface, they are brothers. But behind the scenes, there are many secrets, or when they are cooperating in transactions, they are also making harsh words in their mouths. These are the daily life of Long Dao and the Empire. The reason is that only those who have a deeper understanding of Long Island will know. There are two distinct forces on Long Island. If one party cooperates, the other party will definitely be held back. Or else, he was disdainful of the arbitrary changes in the Empire stance. The Dragon Emperor and the Dragon God behind him are in the same camp. And the Dragon Mother of all things is in another camp. Although the confrontation between the two sides did not break out into actual conflicts, various stumbling blocks and petty actions emerged one after another. Generally speaking, when the Dragon Emperor and Dragon God show good intentions, the Dragon Mother of all things should jump out and sing the opposite. But this time, as soon as the gift from the dragon god came, the gift from the dragon mother of all things caught up with it. What was sent was a young female dragon that had been born for some time. The golden dragon race, in terms of blood relationship, also belongs to the aristocratic class among the dragon clan of Long Island. The growth curve of dragons is completely different from that of humans. If human beings are used as the standard, the current average lifespan of midi is about 50 years, and an adult is considered to be 15 years old. Dragons have an average lifespan of 500 years. Doesn't it take 150 years to be considered an adult dragon? In fact, the infancy period of dragons is not that long. Babies are the weakest of all living things. So they need their parents to take care of them at all times. The longer the infancy period, the longer the period of weakness. As a creature at the top of the Midland ecosystem, how could the dragon clan have been weak for such a long time? Not to mention that the parents of the dragon clan are super irresponsible examples. In fact, this is also the norm for oviparous animals. A parent's responsibility probably only ends when the child hatches from the egg. Even for birds, once the young birds can fly, it is time to live in separate nests. Various factors make the dragon clan's infancy period destined not to be too long. Because if it remains weak for too long, it will be easily killed by other creatures. Under normal circumstances, dragons will remain young for about 20 years after hatching from eggs. Next, we will enter the youth period of more than 100 years, the adulthood period of more than 200 years, and then the old age of the last 100 years. If he hadn't taken that crucial step, he could have gone to the dragon's tomb and waited for death. The mother of all dragons sent her, a female golden dragon who was nominally the prince's guard, a baby that was just over 10 years old. Theoretically, she would emerge from infancy around the same time as the prince. Judging from Jean Long's status and her adult time, Everyone felt that the dragon mother of all things was not sending a bodyguard, but a hostage and a child bride. The attitude is also that if the two little ones get along in the future, let them become husband and wife. If you don't get along, you can just be a guard or a follower. Anyway, we don't accept returns. This is no different from forming an alliance between two parties. Moreover, the two major camps on Dragon Island showed favor to one at the same time, and there was no hostility or competition between the camps. This was an unprecedented situation. Regardless of whether the magician who was driven away might turn around and become a sharp blade in the hands of the empress because of the child. Long Dao's attitude as the empress backer is very obvious. Under such circumstances, the nobles who planned to overthrow everything had to consider another thing because they were afraid of the possible consequences of constitutional monarchy. That is, when the empress loses the constraints of the constitutional system and regains power. Will she still be the powerless vase that was played with by the nobles a few years ago with her hands and feet tied? Compared with the dangers of the lower council, the danger of the empress who has regained the power of life and death and has the support of Dragon Island and the magician as her backer is not only more dangerous, 
but the danger is more likely to be immediate and fatal. On the one hand, if you fight, you may still have a chance to win, on the other hand, you could only kneel down unconditionally, or bury yourself. So it seems that it is not difficult to decide which way to go. The status of the empress is considered immovable. Now that the constitutional monarchy is being promoted smoothly, no one hopes or dares to bring the emperor, who has been placed in the pavilion back to earth again. The name of the emperor has not become a thing of the past, but has become an existence like a sleeping lion. No one dares to disturb easily. A small incident that not many people take seriously. The late emperor's son, Duke Behar, died suddenly in the tower where he was imprisoned not long after the empress crowned him. It was claimed to be an emergency, but in fact, it was an outpouring of goodwill from members of the royal family. Because if a member of the royal family dies, their territory and title will of course return to the emperor. This kind of ending is not what the empress wants to see. However, others acted smartly and thought they were showing their loyalty. Such behavior not only left Allegria speechless, but also most of the nobles who knew the truth. It can only be said that it was not without reason that these people were deprived of the right to inherit the throne. He does things so recklessly and leaves no room for anything. And he doesn't know how to say H, low first, and then do it self-righteously, and then take credit for it at the end. When the other old nobles saw it, they all thought that if there were such idiots in their family, they would definitely strangle them to death on the spot, so as not to cause trouble to the family and leave clues to other families. The empress didn't do this. She didn't even look at the clowns. Allegria just admired and admired how deep a group of people would fall into despair when they lost power and therefore gradually lost control. Originally, the little Duke of Behar would have been one of them, and his life would have been even more difficult. Because he was under house arrest, no one was willing to assist. Even the vassals in his territory happily became one of the perpetrators. Then people die. Another thing happened in the Karlsruhe Empire, although its influence has not spread to other places yet. Many people are paying attention to it. The Lord of Justice has changed his job. It's not quite right to say he changed his job. But the Lord of Justice has an additional title of protector. What law does it protect? Constitution of the Karlsruhe Empire. The Empress didn't know about this at first because the Lord of Justice followed the advice of a certain magician and went directly to the Grand Dukes to discuss it. The situation is similar to what someone predicted. The Grand Dukes hold the principle that they would rather die together than let this happen if a god jumps on their heads. But if we are on equal footing and become colleagues in the name of protecting the law, everyone will not be so repulsive. Some people may worry that it will be like boiling a frog in warm water. If the gods have an excuse to intervene in politics, then they will have other reasons to intervene step by step. And in the end, they will return to the old path of divine power over imperial power. But those who do those things have always been the church of the gods in the mortal world. And the gods themselves are very principled. This was also a religious war more than 200 years ago. The reason why the secular government was able to win was because the gods could not stand what the church was doing and allowed them to defeat. If the gods had really intervened at that time, even if the secular government had not failed, the war would probably have continued to this day. In any case, Theocracy changed from being isolated from the political arena. The upper house, that is, the aristocratic assembly that can form a cabinet, certainly has no room for divine intervention. This is also one of the reasons why the Grand Dukes agreed that people with church status could run for election as members of the House of Commons. No matter how the power of the church expanded, the administrative power of the empire was still in the hands of the nobles. Just like congressional candidates with outstanding military achievements, People with religious backgrounds can easily win the favor of regional voters, especially if they have the same beliefs, or at least those who belong to the camp of good gods, compared with other divine churches. The Lord of Justice, one of the three holy light churches, is the most active and has the clearest direction. While other congressmen are still hesitating about why they are running for election and why voters should support them, the priests of the Lord of Justice already know how to use the slogan of ensuring that the law can be enforced fairly and equitably to win the majority of people. Consent and support. In this era of confusion, people are still unable to distinguish between good and bad laws. In other words, after each law is enacted, the direction in which it will guide people to develop may not even be known to the person who made the law. But the law is not enforced fairly, which is what happens everywhere. The Church of the Lord of Righteousness has reached out into the political circle. They have not created some positions themselves and started to promote doctrines like which hunts. It's like bringing in some law enforcers and arbiters. Everyone in the Three Holy Lights Church is very careful not to go beyond the legal regulations 
that have been established and announced. This is the general principle of cooperation between theocracy and political power. However, those who become members of parliament and have church status at the same time will always come forward to communicate and negotiate with the noble lords when they encounter injustices against civilians. At first, of course, I didn't get a good response. Even those high-ranking people and masters are not taken seriously by the common people or the church at all. But as these MPs ran votes in the House of Commons, the lords found their influence waning. Only then did I realize something was wrong. There is no legal requirement for MPs from a certain territory to obey the orders of their lord. Then it is reasonable for legislators to make the best and most correct choice for the voters who elect them. In one's plan, the process of wresting power from the aristocracy would have occurred naturally until constitutional government had matured and the people had become more familiar with the use of power. I didn't expect that with the help of the church. The whole process would happen so early. It is not that there are no capable people in the church. Priests and bishops who are able to operate within a diocese are not idiots who can easily rise to power by relying on blood ties. They just didn't have the opportunity to intervene in the political arena before. Now that we have the opportunity, who else knows how to win people's hearts better than them? Not to mention that the Lord of Justice is still in touch with a certain magician. As a messenger of justice, the Panda Bibi often travels between the Southern Empire and the holy city of Estali in the north-central part. In the past, it would have taken a year to go back and forth on this journey. Although the teleportation magic circle can be used, the expensive price cannot withstand frequent use. However, the popularization of fast airships has improved this problem. It can be said that the current Midland has skipped the railway personnel transportation and directly adopted the means of flight transportation. This is another big change in the past 12 years. Chapter 1476 The Bank That Went Astray The situation of the Karlsruhe Empire is the focus of attention of everyone in lost land, especially the aristocracy. But no matter how much attention is paid to it, its influence only slowly spreads outward, let alone any substantial changes. To put it another way, the revolution only ends at the stage of stacking firewood. Nobles and lords from all over the country were carrying firewood, breaking down bonfires, and carefully preventing any sparks from flying over. Everyone is not blind and knows what will happen to this thing after it is really ignited. What has really changed the whole world drastically, but which everyone takes for granted and quickly gets used to, is the development of banks. According to the original plan, the belief in the gold coin goddess Cain spread smoothly to every corner of the land. Even the underground world of the evil god camp has been involved and has taken root smoothly. But once the money is gathered, it will easily arouse the covetousness of interested people. The reason why banks in the underground world are stable is more because the moment each depositor deposits money, the money is transferred to the goddess kingdom. If, like someone's hometown, they relied on cash trucks for dispatch, banks in the underground world would not be trusted, and they would probably be robbed every day. As for breaking into the kingdom of God to steal money, let alone being protected by the Lord of Guardians. If you want to break into Kuyin's kingdom of God, you must be led by other gods. When ordinary people enter the kingdom of God, they will only be suppressed. However, the stolen coins were completely useless to the gods and were only needed by the church in the mortal world. This feeling is like the younger brother wants to eat a lollipop and the boss takes the lead and rushes into other bosses' houses and only grabs a lollipop to satisfy the younger brother's desire. Is this possible? If the difficulty of breaking into the goddess of gold coin is the same as in the past, and if you can grab some other things easily, then forget it. But as banks spread throughout the land, the power of the gold goddess also increased step by step. Some gods believe that the gold coin goddess should be enough to enter the powerful divine power sequence. But I am not sure which level it is in the upper, middle and lower reaches. In short, no god continues to treat coin as a medium or weak god. Because even without the protection of the Lord of Guardians, he himself beat up a few guys who broke into his divine kingdom and planned to kidnap him as his concubine. There are evil gods and demons. The coveting of gods is easy to solve. In fact, most of the gods do not covet the money. They are just jealous of the power of the gold coin goddess, who has gradually increased in just a dozen years. Some gods want to replace him. And some gods want to keep him as a favorite and extract the needy parts of him from him. But these actions are easily stopped by more powerful violence. Whether from the guardian lord or coin himself. The coveting of money in the secular world is even easier to solve. The series of settings of the midi bank as well as the elite force of the Wood Elves controlled by the World Trees, which can be deployed anywhere in the Midi at any time, are all designed to resist the measures of mortals. From the beginning, 
Lin did not design the structure of the entire bank operation based on the premise that local people would cooperate obediently. How to react as quickly as possible when encountering a robbery. How to deal with those who block the bank and collect tolls. And how to prevent the Lord from imposing excessive taxes when he sees his subjects using the bank. Banks and wood elves have a set of corresponding rules. And once the wood elves are out, they will be killed and never injured. No mercy if you can silence me. It can be said that things have been completely done. If the churches of other gods dare to act like this, the nobles will probably share the same hatred and suppress and clean up the entire land. But when the gold coin goddess did this, no one said a word, and some people actually applauded, even though some people were dissatisfied with the goddess's behavior at first. After receiving Kiyin's explanation, everyone unanimously stood behind the goddess to support her. Kuin said, It is your money that is stored in my kingdom of God. Your money has been robbed. And I will watch it happen, and then do nothing. Should the loss be picked out by a few unlucky people, and their accounts be zeroed out directly? Or should everyone share the loss equally, and deduct a fee for being robbed? Or should I beat to death those who dare to rob? Best to kill. No one considers that since the bank takes care of things for others, the bank should be responsible for any losses caused by abnormal transactions. This is also because most people are not qualified to hold a goddess accountable, nor have the ability, since you can beat those guys who want to steal money to death. Why not? All that was robbed was their money. If the goddess is not responsible for the loss, then the loss is theirs. So after forcefully killing a few chickens and showing them to the monkeys, the nobles and lords of lost land finally calmed down a bit and did not dare to pursue the idea of banking anymore. No one wants to see a legion of wood elves descend from the sky like divine soldiers, catching them off guard and showing no mercy. However, just because there is no way to grab it openly does not mean that there are no other means. So far, banks only have deposit and withdrawal services, and their functions are similar to the ancient Fachian and Jiazi in their hometown, making it easier for ordinary people to travel long distances with light luggage, instead of actually going to a game of riding a crane to Yangzhou with 100,000 won in your pocket. What level of quantity is 100,000 strings? Regardless of the weight of the holder, 100,000 copper coins can be strung together to form a thick golden garment. It can be used as armor, and it can be regarded as a heavy tank on the battlefield. But after countless small amounts of money are gathered together to form a considerable sum of money, they can do things that were originally impossible. Such a function is difficult to ignore, such as crowdfunding, stock listing and other activities. The original intention is this. It's just that crowdfunding and the stock market need a more mature financial environment and a stable society to operate. Most people still focus on the business that the gold coin goddess bank does not intend to operate, which is lending. In fact, many people are puzzled by the fact that the gold coin goddess has no intention of lending money to earn interest after taking over the savings. They were jealous of the huge amount of money being put there. Since they couldn't steal it openly, they could always borrow it. It just so happens that the goddess doesn't play loans yet. For this reason, many lobbyists found the goddess to lobby, and even found a certain original voter, trying to persuade this powerful magician. It is a pity that in the bank, in front of the holy symbol of the goddess of gold coins, these lobbyists can only get mechanical can replies. There is no good or bad. And of course, it is impossible to agree or reject anything. Just meaningless nonsense being said again and again. Despite this, the goddess was still a little tempted by these people's proposals. The reason is simple. In their plan, lending is a part of helping people. Of course, those who are helped will be grateful to the goddess. And the collection of the power of faith has not exploded. It's just that most people's planning is immature. And the lack of safety issues alone makes the money they borrow very insecure. In addition, when someone was a chosen one of the goddess, he repeatedly warned about the dangers of earning interest on loans. So Kuin never relented on this aspect. The magician in the holy city of Estali was even simpler. He said that he had lost his identity as a chosen one and could no longer influence the goddess. No matter how much you talk to him, it's just a waste of words. Then see off the guests. No one really dares not to leave. Because if you don't want to go out straight, you will go out sideways. Midi does not have much sympathy for those who offend powerful people and suffer misfortunes. And strong people will not be polite. It is true that everyone agrees to protect the weak. But this does not give the weak a reason to bully the strong. Respect is fundamental and comes from both directions. But eventually someone will come up with a plan to impress the goddess. It was as if someone had taken a bank-related proposal in the past and allowed the goddess of gold coins, who was a weak divine power at the time, 
to resolutely promote this career with an unknown future in the lost land. Now there are proposals of the same level appearing again. The specific operation method is very complicated. But to put it simply, it is to upgrade the goddess of gold coins to the status of a gold reserve bank, and then use the SH. L of a second bank to also collect reserves and issue banknotes. The second level bank opened an account in the bank of the gold coin goddess in the name of a private bank and deposited all the savings funds collected into the goddess's kingdom. The savings collected here will provide interest, including current deposits and fixed deposits. The custody fees deducted when funds enter the kingdom of the goddess of gold coins will be fully borne by the second tier bank. Use this method to attract funds. The money collected is the reserve of the second tier bank. While retaining reserves and meeting withdrawal needs, the second tier banks will print banknotes and lend money. These actions are to prepare for a credit based economic structure while establishing a gold standard economic structure. On the surface, banknotes called vouchers allow people to move around without carrying heavy purses, and the bank's lending business also helps those in urgent need or need. But in fact, what is going on behind this whole thing can still be seen by someone who understands. As a time traveler, who has been tricked by capital to the point of falling head over heels. If he is not familiar with this system, then he has paid so much tuition in vain. The familiarity of this whole set of operations also gave a certain magician a clear realization. I'm afraid he is a fellow countryman again. No matter how talented you are, people have limitations. Sometimes it is limited by vision and experience. Sometimes it is limited by environment and reality. Under such a premise, any proposal that challenges the unknown future will always have some immature and risky elements in it. But when Lin learned that someone was trying to hijack a second-tier bank and obtain specific services and business scope, he quickly made the decision to meet his counterpart. Another cross-border group. Because this whole method is quite mature and quite familiar. But it's not without flaws. One of them is that the second-tier bank was not established by a noble lord or a king, but by a powerful businessman. Although the chambers of commerce under its jurisdiction are not at the level of multinational groups, they are still at the forefront locally. I don't know where the source of this mysterious self-confidence comes from. Do you think that capital can simply override power? Secondly, this can be regarded as the old almanac. That is because the design is too complicated and it is clear that you don't want people to understand it. If any business is to be successfully completed, it requires very professional financial talents. What would happen if you were a dabbler and wanted to learn this whole thing and get out? They are both playing basketball. What will happen if elementary school students play basketball with NBA stars on the same court? If people just stand still and just hold the ball above their heads? Elementary school students can't even think about playing with them. So this entire design is obviously meant to trick people. Chapter 1477 Mini Financial Development In the eyes of the world What are the benefits of nested banks? Answer You can borrow money. The loan lending relationship has existed since human beings became social beings. Because its original intention is a form of mutual assistance and cooperation. Although borrowing money is not a rigid need. If it is available, it will always be useful. In the eyes of people with capital strength. What are the benefits of cladding banks other than lending money? Answer. Just print numbers on paper and spend them as money. No one will understand an economic theory that is too advanced. Or even if they do. They will pretend not to understand. Who doesn't want to be able to print money and spend money as hard as possible? Compared with opening gold, silver, and copper mines, the cost of printing numbers on paper is almost negligible. So all of a sudden, this kind of banking system, which was implemented after Half Learned, sprung up all over the country. And it has nothing to do with the first founder. This is also because that person put all the bank regulations he created on the forum for anyone to watch. Of course, there are many capable people who forget about printing money and directly print the banknotes into scrap paper. People don't look at the zero on the face value of the banknotes at all. But just like barter, the banknotes are exchanged for things by weight. However, this situation did not last long. And of course, this kind of bank was despised. Even the founders had to face the anger of depositors because they could not get their money back. In a land where the rule of law is not yet complete, such people usually do not end well. Since these casing banks have no official status and have not been officially recognized by the goddess of gold coins, they are even more capable of causing mischief and printing zeros on the denominations of banknotes into the sky in a short period of time. So they all face the same problem, which is the problem of trust. It's just that the casing banks that can restrain their impulse to print money can take advantage of the gold coin goddess. 
allowing most people who forget about the high interest income to ignore the possible risks. In other words, this is a new thing in the world, and no one is aware of the risks involved. Just looking at the name of the gold coin goddess, I stupidly believed it. Just look at the banks that are printing a lot of money. They can still attract funds in the early stages, which is a clear proof. Although it failed to completely replace the official bank of the gold coin goddess, all depositors and funds within the area's influence were moved from the goddess's bank to the private bank. But the funds gathered are enough for these emerging bankers to do a lot of things. Lending money to the poor and helping motivated people start their own businesses are all bullshit. The first move of the new bankers was to lend money to the local noble lords. Lending in MIDI has not yet developed to the level of credit loans. Everything is a mortgage loan. Collateral does not have to be physical objects. It can also be certain rights. The power in the hands of the Lord is the key to directly affecting a region. So emerging bankers, who are not in the goddess system start from this aspect. In fact, they also want to reproduce the gameplay of capital controlling power. People who can do these things are not necessarily fellow countrymen from a certain age. It can be said that after the money reaches a certain level, as long as there is no legal or artificial restraint, the people who control the money will naturally develop in this direction. If it weren't for directly using money to hire soldiers, it would be too crude to overthrow the lord and become the boss. And it would not be easy to gain the approval of the superior lord to replace the old lord. These bankers did not directly become bandit leaders, but use more civilized methods to plunder. It means that if you are a bandit, you will be a bandit. If a bandit is civilized, then he is not a bandit? Not to mention those noble lords who have no interest in managing their territories and only care about their own enjoyment when they have money. In fact, there are still many lords who are quite farsighted. After they have sufficient funds, they start various infrastructure construction and enrichment measures such as building bridges and paving roads, thickening city walls, raising cattle and horses etc. No matter it is a lord who is already short of money or a wealthy lord, who would dislike having more money in his hands and being able to do more things. Even though the money will have to be repaid eventually, the repayment deadline has not yet come. In the past, there was certainly borrowing and lending. But for lords loans, they usually go to their superior lords, or they shyly go to colleagues who seem to be wealthy. No matter who you are asking for, it is not a glorious thing to reach out to borrow money from others. Who has ever seen a donor come to their door and use various tricks to trick people into borrowing money? Even lords who originally had no purpose or plan would be stunned by the prospects depicted in various development plans. Then they borrowed money they didn't need to borrow and did things they didn't need or couldn't use very much. In someone's hometown, there is a proper name for this, face project or mosquito house. Such development is certainly not the end point planned by the man who designed the condominium bank. After he made certain achievements, he approached the goddess of gold coins and proposed the goddess bank plan throughout the land. He also asked for the identity of Elector for himself. What the man said was simple. The amount of funds he can absorb and the scope of influence he can have in the entire mysterious land are probably only one ten thousandth. There are many people who have learned his method, but they have not learned it well and have made a lot of troubles. Since this is a good model and helps people in need, in order to avoid other people who have not learned enough from going astray, it is the best choice for the goddess of gold to take control of everything. The question of how to operate it was, of course, left to him, the person he was most familiar with. This sounds like there is nothing wrong with it. But if you put it in the society before someone time traveled, it would be that local credit unions in turn annex state-owned banks. This is an incredible thing where a small shrimp swallows a big whale. Of course, the goddess did not rush to agree to this wonderful sounding vision. He is a god. Even without detecting evil magic, he can still sense whether people have good intentions or malice. Unless this person's acting skills are so good that he can even fool himself. But the person in front of him is obviously not a talent in this area. That hypocritical smile, exaggerated words, and unconcealed malice almost seem to burst out of his head. This should be placed on Wall Street, which is the hometown of many people. This is called the appearance of a successful person. Smart, capable and sharp. Unfortunately, this is not Earth. What's even more pity is that the man is not facing a fat old rich man, but a god. However, Cain did not directly agree or refuse. He only delayed the matter on the grounds that he had to reconsider. Doing big things isn't something that can be accomplished overnight. So that person didn't press too hard. And of course, these news were passed from the mouth of the dark elf Maishan to the ears of a certain semi-retired time traveler. 
in addition to the fact that Melson was working in the banking system. It was also because Coin wanted to use her word of mouth to spread the word. Ever since someone abandoned his identity as a voter, one person and one god have been in a state of cold war, with no one willing to bow to the other first. No one dares to speculate on the thoughts of the gold coin goddess, however. Someone's thoughts are just unnecessary. Anyway, that short goddess shouldn't close her account and swallow the money in it. Then just do whatever you normally do. Therefore, Mayor Sean, who stayed in the banking system, not only became a bridge between someone and the ancient world tree fastness, but also became the messenger of coin, the goddess of gold coins. On the other hand, this is what Melson wanted to ask. In other words, this is what the relevant forces behind her also want to ask. Borrow money and charge interest. From the perspective of the creditor, there is nothing wrong with being able to make use of your idle funds and earn some profits within a period of time, especially the savings in the treasuries of several major elf kingdoms. The business atmosphere in the elf kingdom itself is not enthusiastic, and the transaction behavior is more like the exchange of gifts in favor of each other. This also resulted in the kingdom's treasury accumulating a lot of coins over the years. One of the few uses of these coins, and also the largest project, is external business transactions with humans. In addition, even elves given as rewards to meritorious deeds will be looked down upon. You can imagine how much money the kingdom retained. In the past, due to the closed nature of the elf kingdom, the attitude towards communicating with the outside world was to have as little communication as possible. So those coins were really of no use except for occasionally being melted down to make works of art. Now that everyone is borrowing money enthusiastically and earning interest easily, several kings of the elf kingdom can't sit still. With the unification of coins as the hub and the information exchange on the forum, business transactions in the lost world are becoming more and more frequent. Although the elf kingdom is closed, there are still many things that need to be imported from the outside world. The reason why the trade volume in the past was not large was because we carefully selected our partners and did not dare to trust outsiders. This also reduced our choices in disguise. And naturally, there were not many places to spend money. But with the dual impact of coins and intelligence, the Elf Kingdom gradually opened up, and the demand for money was greater than before. Ideas will naturally arise. Lin only gave one response, wait and see. Whether those big shots listen to him or not is none of his business. You have to explain everything until it is clear to others, which sometimes leads to more doubts and distrust. Don't you see the people in my hometown who have been warned by outsiders who have been defrauded? They all keep saying that those scammers are trustworthy, cannot deceive them, and everything is true. The so-called authorities are obsessed with this kind of thing. And this kind of thing is not limited to the era when fraud was rampant in my hometown. In fact, Things like bank lending are not entirely bad. The key lies in direction and control. Once you lose control, you will taste the bitter fruit of the bubble bursting, and wealth will be concentrated in the hands of a few people, just like being attracted by a black hole. Is this avoidable? Maybe. But some people who have been poisoned by capital don't have enough wisdom to think of good ways to avoid it. He will just bury his head like an ostrich, trying to delay the matter until he is dead and can no longer see it. In fact, the crux of the problem is that the bank in my hometown is a profit-making enterprise, not a charity. When banks must pursue profits in order to pay interest to bank depositors and pay salaries to bank employees, it is difficult to control the financial monster of the bank to show its fangs. In other words, banks are like elephants even if they don't show their fangs. If you inadvertently get up and down, you will trample to death some insects or small animals that have little sense of existence. Do elephants kill intentionally? No. That's just where the elephant stepped on. And those little eyesless things didn't know how to run away. But no one has realized a problem yet. The key to midi finance is tied to a god. In anything, anyone who can see the long-term trend is a genius. And anyone who can see the short-term trend is a talent. In this era when geniuses deliberately do evil and talented people emerge in large numbers. A certain pit digger hides in a dark corner and smiles sinisterly. Watching the situation change. Chapter 1478 German Government Order Among those who were close to a certain time traveler, it was not just World Tree and Elves who cared about the development of the bank. A certain retired Grand Duke was also very concerned, since he left all territorial affairs to his own son. The retired old Duke used public funds to eat, drink and play all day long, and lived a very happy life. Even his old friend, who was the emperor of a country, couldn't stand it, so he summoned people into the imperial capital every three days and was tormenting. Anyway, custom-made cars are so convenient. 
and it only takes two or three days to arrive. Unlike before, which took more than half a month for a trip, then come to the imperial capital more often to meet old friends. Maybe we won't see each other again for a few times. And sometimes, the retired old duke status is suitable for doing many things that are inconvenient for other nobles. Coupled with his relationship with a magician in the holy city, he is almost becoming the emperor's exclusive liaison. There is nothing that can be done about it. The things that a certain magician has done are too big. Even if there is a think tank dedicated to research and analysis, it may not be able to fully understand that person's true intentions. So from time to time, it is necessary to ask the originator of everything. Regardless of whether you tell the truth or not, it is always a reference. Besides, whether it is setting up a nested bank to earn interest on lending, or borrowing money to do things, it is quite attractive to the nobles. Therefore, even if the old duke did not send a message to the emperor, he still wanted to see if the dukedom of Kawe was suitable for developing these things. Even if he retires, his influence will still be there. For the family's territory, how could we not hope to develop it as well as possible? A certain magician only mentioned one sentence. Do you still remember that His Majesty the Emperor promised him that he would consider issuing a nationwide order in accordance with his request? Then he cunningly displayed a certain document on the water mirror screen so that the old duke could see it clearly. It is written with rich feelings and sentiments, expressing the feeling that the subjects of the empire are deeply suffering from debt. And there are some illegal behaviors such as selling wives, children, or selling territorial titles. From now on, all unfair debt repayment practices will be stopped and those unable to repay will be allowed to request the cancellation of all debts. If there is any improper behavior that has been performed, a complaint can be made to the emperor for arbitration. The occupied territory, wives and daughters can be returned, and the unqualified person can be deprived of the title of heir. This is the beginning of virtuous government, and it will never end. Written as a moral decree, it is actually a law that approves everyone's legal repudiation, and even has a strong hint. It seemed that a certain retired old duke had a numb scalp, a flushed face, and a rapid heartbeat, as if he was about to have a stroke. Not to mention that it is good news for those who are unable to repay. But those who are able to repay the money should not pretend to be stupid. Anyway, once this law is enacted, people who are serious about repaying money will be regarded as fools in the eyes of others. In today's lost land, except for the Karlsruhe Empire in the South, which is undergoing restructuring and moving towards a country governed by the rule of law. Other countries basically follow the words of their leaders. There is no need to deliberately perform steps such as third reading, announcement, and implementation. This virtuous decree was promulgated from the mouth of the emperor, although it did not involve other countries or vassals of vassals. But government affairs will have a copycat effect, as long as it is beneficial and good. Without the emperor's supervision, the people below or people from other countries will certainly follow suit. The only victims are those who set up cover banks. And then, there are the people who deposit their money into these fake banks. As long as the virtuous government decree is issued, it can be said that all the people will be caught in one fell swoop, and no one will be spared. Regarding the former, the old duke only thought of one outcome, death. I can't imagine any other outcome. But the latter's losses are real. Don't they deserve sympathy? In response to the old duke's question, Lin only replied, whichever is the lesser of two evils. He did not ask the emperor to must promulgate the law he proposed. The original agreement was only to have a direct channel to Tianting. Of course, the decision to do or not to do is in the hands of the emperor, and no one will interfere. In other words, Lin did not explain the issue of whether people who are unable to repay their debts are more worthy of sympathy or those who lend money when they appear in large numbers. After all, the former situation is only on paper and has not really emerged yet. So the old duke has concerns about the German government order. In fact, two years after this conversation, the German decree was officially issued by the emperor of the Guana Empire, Armin Kazalmia. And in a very short period of time, it became a universal law at the consensus level in the land. Of course, with the promulgation of the law, there were many vendettas caused by money disputes. There are banks that target creditors who deliberately fail to repay their debts and there are joint bank depositors that target all those who are either unable to repay or deliberately default on their debts. More often than not, people whose money was deposited in the overlay bank were actually trapped and could not get a penny back. They carried out retaliatory actions against the personnel of the overlay bank. These people would not want to skip the bank and go directly to the creditors who are not paying back the money they owe, because the creditors' rights do not clearly belong to them. It is the bank that owes them. 
so of course, find these hedge banks with clear goals. This caused unrest in many places. But the noble lord suppressed it ruthlessly without exception. Such a result must be seen from the lending relationship before and after the emergence of the casing bank. In the old days, it was very difficult for many people, whether commoners or nobles, to borrow money. Even if the interest rate for borrowing money is quite high, the person who lends it will worry about whether he can recover the principal at least, let alone earn interest. So if you want to borrow money, you either have good connections or a good reputation. People who have a good relationship know each other well. And of course, they know whether the other party has the ability to repay the money. Make sure that the money is only for temporary relief, rather than for lifelong poverty. Of course, a person with a good reputation cannot allow the news that he owes money to be spread and ruin his reputation. And most of these people are capable, even if they can't pay it for a while. They can still borrow another one and pay back the one that's due. If the reputation is really bad, then borrowing money will become a delusion. Therefore, in this land where the financial economy is still quite backward, establishing a lending relationship is not that simple. Even when a loan is made, the borrower is mentally prepared to not be able to recover it. What's more, if you declare bankruptcy because you haven't paid the money, the creditors usually won't choose to kill them all. Instead, the debt will be settled in other ways. Nobles sell their land and titles, and ordinary people sell their sons, daughters, and even wives. Of course, this is normal operation, but no one will go for this goal from the beginning, unless both parties really have their own agenda. Borrowing money is not just about borrowing money. It is about seeking someone else's property. But as long as it is a normal loan relationship, no matter what the final outcome is, basically people can still survive. Besides, the lost land of this era is not a society where it is difficult to move without money. With a knife, you can support yourself by hunting. With a little effort, you can open up wasteland and plant crops in the wild and also support yourself. In lost land, it's not that difficult to survive. But when profit-seeking banks appeared, they are under pressure to pay interest to depositors and salaries to employees. So they must lend out the funds they have saved or invest in other projects that can generate profits. In addition, this is an imperfect economic system and there is no relevant financial regulatory system at all. In this market where banks collect deposits and lend money, it can be said that a hundred ghosts walk at night and a group of demons dance wildly. Let's talk about the simplest example. The first people to create nested banks obviously had advanced financial knowledge. Know to keep a certain amount in reserve to cover those who take vouchers to exchange for coins. But other imitators simply don't understand. How do they know what the reserve fund is? If they want to reserve a thousand gold coins, they dare to lend out banknotes worth two thousand gold coins or three thousand gold coins. Otherwise, how did the devaluation of banknotes come about? In addition to the bank's own capital utilization problems, they also have considerable problems in lending. In the old days, only those who were really in need and had insufficient funds on hand would consider borrowing money. But for the fandom, where the financial environment is quite primitive, very few people will encounter this situation. Even if I encounter it, I will ask someone close to me for help instead of looking for an unfamiliar bank. But when casing banks appear and there is pressure to lend, all talk of mutual aid and poverty relief is nonsense. Please remember the important point. Banks are for profit institutions, not charities. Since it is for profit, those who are really in urgent need of money may or may not be able to tide over the difficulties. As long as they cannot provide collateral, they will first be excluded by the bank. From the bank's standpoint, they have no obligation or right to use other people's money to bet on whether a person can turn around. The best lending targets are the noble lords from various places because these people can definitely provide some valuable collateral. Some squires and landowners can also do it. But most of these people are people who save money in banks, rather than people who need to borrow money. As for those civilians who have nothing, unless the people who open the covered banks have other ideas, they will approach this aspect. But these ideal lenders have no need to borrow money. So what should we do? At this time, it is up to the people from the covering banks to take the initiative and paint various beautiful visions. And this vision happens to be something they cannot achieve with their original strength. So banks can intervene on the grounds of helping people realize their dreams. From the perspective of noble lords, it means building various infrastructures and establishing industries. It is as if they can successfully sell a piece of rubbish and make a huge profit. If any benevolent policy comes out, the people will work hard to have children, work hard, and pay taxes. For ordinary people, it means starting a business and becoming a boss. 
turning a small workshop into a large factory, renting a house into buying a house, and upgrading a 10 square meter dwelling into a thousand square meter mansion. It's like borrowing this money will turn you into a wealthy landlord in minutes and live happily. In short, the bank's money is lent out and earns interest. The borrowers have accomplished their own big things and upgraded their quality of life and social status. It seems like a beautiful situation where both parties win. But in fact, two important points are not taken into account. First, are the things under the beautiful vision really necessary? Second, is the person who borrowed the money really able to repay the money in the future? From the bank's point of view, with collateral and claims in hand, you can perform all kinds of sexy operations and make sure you make money without losing money. However, people who borrow money are essentially prepaying for their future. If your future self is worthy of living such a life of enjoyment and is qualified to stand in that kind of social status, then there will be nothing to say. The advance payment here is nothing but enjoyment in advance. But what if you don't deserve it? Is everything just a bluffing mentality at work? Chapter 1479 The Big Pit of MIDI Finance The worst part is that MIDI is inexperienced in all this. In other words, people can't learn a lesson until they have their heads broken. With the emergence of tiered banks, the difficulty of borrowing money is completely different from that in the past. There are also banks that are adding fuel to the fire behind the scenes due to performance pressure. How many people really realize that the money they borrow today will have to be paid back tomorrow? Without lessons learned and no stopping power, it is inevitable that the future will be overdrawn. When overdrafts occur in large numbers and banks begin to target collateral and borrowers for their own profits, the entire society will inevitably experience turmoil. Many things considered fundamentally important were taken into the hands of the bank, including even the borrower himself. What choice will those who were originally in power make at this time? Because of someone's deliberate actions, the bank is separated from those in power and even has a vaguely antagonistic attitude. Both parties can cooperate, but no noble lord, not even king or emperor, can override the goddess of gold coins and order the goddess to do anything. In addition, the finance of lost land is still in its early stages. As a noble lord with military responsibilities, he is usually not very wealthy in terms of liquidity. Even though there are no wars between countries in this era, threats from nature still exist to guard against warcraft and uncivilized homo sapiens and to protect the survival of civilization. Some lords choose to form their own armies, while others entrust adventurers guilds or mercenary guilds. These all cost real money. Therefore, those wealthy businessmen and country gentry who had spare money had the confidence to establish a set of banks, and they could easily lend funds to the nobles and do a business that was sure to make a profit without losing money. Therefore, the establishment of cover banks and the main depositors came from the private sector. It was too late for the nobles to do anything. How could they have spare money? Many loans are all short-term. One, two, or three years at most. When the first wave of loans came due and it was time to repay, many people suddenly found that they had enjoyed themselves and had done all the things they needed to do. But they did not have enough income to repay the loans. To know the loan interest rate in MIDI, it is still a habit to go there. That is to say, borrow one and pay back two. And the better thing is that the interest is 60% of the principal. This kind of terrifying usury. However, can the investment returns from supporting public construction and private investment really reach such a high level? And that's not even talking about failed investments. So when the noble lords found themselves the target of debt collection by the lowly businessmen who now call themselves bankers, his own citizens no longer belong to him. And a large amount of assets have been transferred to bankers. Even the people who belong to their own territory have become the bankers' people. Although there is no such thing as slave anymore, their status transformation is similar to that of slaves. At this time, the emperor of the Guana Empire lamented the suffering of the people and implemented virtuous policies allowing everyone to forgive their debts. Who wouldn't be willing to carry out this order? And this is the biggest failure of the emerging hedge banks. The separation of finance and power. Thinking about the Chinese and foreign history of my hometown. The most famous person in China is Lu Bui. And everyone knows the ending. The most famous foreign lending group is the European Knights Templar. Putting aside those unverifiable legends. The Knights Templar relied on the Christian advantage and the Crusades to rapidly expand. In particular, Religion was particularly good at amassing money, which gave the Knights Templar sufficient funds to lend money, forming Europe's first banking model. At that time, the Knights Templar lent money not only to nobles, but also to kings of various countries. They were very wealthy, with such a powerful military force as the Templars. And the support of the Pope, 
they have an unstoppable edge and can even influence national or regional policy affairs. It stands to reason that the Knights Templar should be able to develop into a transnational trust and become the black hand behind many puppet countries. But the fact is that the Knights Templar were taken advantage of by King Philip IV of France, who wanted to default on his debt. Since then, the Knights Templar have become legend. In every sense of the word, it was Venice and Italy that continued the lending business of the Knights Templar, which is also recognized as the starting point of modern banking in history. After that, the bank was just like the situation in my hometown. It has always been the pocketbook of the powerful. When anyone is short of money, he should dig out a handful. If he raises it too much and has doubts about shaking the country's foundation or overriding himself, then kill a handful and copy it, like Shen Wan San, Hu Xuayan and others. Until World War II, the tragedy in the financial circle could be said to have reached its peak. One factor in the rise of anti-Semitism is that the actions of wealthy Jewish people are so offensive. It is true that a few people are not enough to represent an entire race. But it is also true that they have become an excuse to raise the butcher's knife. It ultimately resulted in the deaths of millions of innocent people and the suffering of many more. Then capital seemed to have turned over, becoming the mastermind behind the world, controlling the lifeblood of many countries. Maybe not all are under direct control, but everyone has to follow the rules of the game designed by these capitals. The result is like a group of basketball club players from elementary school to college forming a team to face off against an NBA fantasy team. No one will be able to play but to be played. Perhaps this type is the ultimate goal that the fellow who first founded the nested bank wanted to achieve. And he also seriously promoted, okay. But that person made a mistake that most people make, which is to use his own eyes and concepts to look at a different world. In the hometown I experienced, the reason why capital can run rampant is because the rules of the game in the entire world are like this. Anyone who wants to break the rules of the game will have to face the lessons of that super state controlled by capital magnesium emperor. How strong is magnesium emperor? Comparing the military budgets of various countries in 2004 according to the impression of a certain time traveler, the Magnesium Empire is equivalent to the second-ranked country added to the 32nd place. The total military budget of a total of 31 countries is approximately equal to one Magnesium. Emperor. Maybe military budget is not the same as military strength, but it can be regarded as a relatively intuitive comparison number. However, this is a country that is controlled by capital. Only then did the financial group reveal a face that had never been seen in thousands of years of human history. It can be said that without the support of Emperor Magnesium, the tragedy of the Jews, Shen Wan Sin, Hu Xuayan, etc. would have happened again and again. But after these people escape their tragic fate, will the world really become better? Or does the victim become the perpetrator? Let's not talk about things that are too far away. Let's just talk about meeting that dear friend who may be a fellow countryman in a lost place. He may think that he is still in a world with the backing of the Magnesium Emperor. So capital can do whatever it wants. Unexpectedly, I was served by a German government order. In the history of my hometown and abroad, this kind of thing has only appeared in the island country next door. As a country that has implemented militarism since the Kamakura Shogunate, the emergence of Tokugawa is actually not a good thing. To put it simply, some low-level warriors and people were in dire straits and needed to borrow money to survive. When you are burdened with debt and can no longer borrow any more, the people above will take the lead and write off the debt in one fell swoop. At this stage, the only ones who seem to be losing money are the businessmen, local tycoons, and the like who lend money. In fact, life has not gotten better. The economic environment is still very poor, and these people at the bottom still need to borrow money to live. However, after defaulting on a debt once, those who have money dare not lend money to those who will default on the debt or are destined to default on the debt. The result is that I could still borrow money to survive. But now I can't even borrow money. And I have no choice but to die. To put it bluntly, in real history, the German government decree was just a policy of drinking poison to quench thirst. And it did not end well. But the situation in lost land is different. Many's loans are the result of being forced out by the banks and the ordinary people who are unable to control themselves when they are exposed to new things. It is true that there is something wrong with people who do not control their desires and who are too stupid to be deceived. But those guys who have been trying to trick people from the beginning should bear greater responsibility. Fortunately, the main targets of the casing banks are still the noble lords. People of this class have no moral bottom line. So no matter what kind of environmental changes they face, they can adapt quickly. Therefore, 
It only took two or three years from the emergence of casing banks to the stage of the entire midi economy bubble. This kind of time has not been able to change the ordinary people of Midland into a habit of excessive consumption and overdrawing their future. The only thing injured is the money bag in the eyes of powerful people. It can be said that if they don't make a move today, they will take action to harvest sooner or later. Someone once said that socialism is not suitable for the current lost land because there is no soil for germination. Constitutional monarchy only dared to be implemented in the Karlsruhe Empire because other than there, the people did not have enough awareness and ambition to make progress. In a wrong environment, it is normal development to forcefully promote things that are not suitable for development and eventually backfire on oneself. To use an inappropriate metaphor, let's talk about a certain Xuanzong's hometown. If someone goes to an Islamic country to sell pork dishes, not to mention going out of business due to lack of business, he may be dragged out and beaten to death on the spot. However, having said so much, I have not yet talked about the most embarrassing part. She was the goddess of gold coins, who was initially regarded as the most relied upon by the fellow who founded the layered bank. Lin guessed that in that fellow's mind. The goddess of gold coins was a link that couldn't be bypassed and must be accepted. So according to what someone heard, the fellow went to great lengths to explain how much power the bank would gain, how much money it would earn, and how many people's faith it would gain when it develops its lending business. However, the goddess of gold coins never relented, leaving the bank in a state of chaos during the warring states period. When complaints spread, the fellow villager could no longer persuade the goddess with the excuse of gaining faith. I can only continue to emphasize how much control the loan can give back, and how much money I can earn and only the goddess can clean up the mess in front of her and stabilize the entire financial system of lost land. The reasons have been updated. Only making money remains unchanged. When the German government decree comes out, the world will be different. The word virtuous government is not used casually. This is a political decree that can win over a large number of people's hearts in a short period of time. Not only those who were unable to repay the dead cheered loudly for their lords. But the vassals were so grateful that they cried bitterly for the Lord's considerate behavior. People also did not forget to praise the goddess of gold coins loudly after receiving the blessings of the virtue decree. Chapter 1480 The Risks of Eating Melon It is true that gods will be affected by faith. But gods will also consciously control such things. Rather than completely letting faith run wild and control themselves in turn. Just like at the end of the religious wars 200 years ago. When the interests of the church were decoupled from the interests of the gods. The church was abandoned without mercy. So with the faith gathered from the lending behavior and the faith gained after the virtuous government decree was issued, will Koin have many choices when faced with the evil thoughts and righteous thoughts contained in it? Will the three gods who have the best friendship with him, guardian, justice and life, let him deviate towards the evil gods' camp? Let's talk about providing help in times of need and icing on the cake. Which kind of action can gain more gratitude? All this became the fellow's biggest miscalculation. The pursuit of the goddess of gold coins is inconsistent with the pursuit of capital. Unless someone can find a way to reverse the concept of the coin goddess, and someone puts up a firewall for banks not to lend, coin will never become the backer of Midland Capital. Or, establish another god. I dare not say that someone has complete control over the financial and economic development of Midland. But as long as we set a few general directions, there are ways to prevent the lost land from taking the same path as the earth. Lin's most insistent move was to exclude lending from the gold goddess's bank concept from the very beginning. Now it seems that this move is not bad. On the surface, it seems to block the flow of funds and hinder economic prosperity and development. But Midi's current economic size has not yet touched the threshold of the industrial revolution in its hometown. And there is no need for large amounts of investment funds to help economic growth. The fundamental reason lies in the inconvenience of transportation magical beasts crawling on the ground and magical birds flying in the air. These extraordinary creatures put the traffic in lost land under constant threat. Even if an industrial system is established, mass-produced products cannot be transported to other places for dumping. If they are solely digested by local people, sooner or later the market will be saturated and there will be nothing to sell. At this time, in order to maintain itself, the industrial system has to engage in vicious competition without good transportation and dumping grounds. Vigorously developing the industrialized system is actually no different than committing suicide. After all, if capital wants to develop, the two major methods of exploitation and dumping are indispensable. At most, it can be a little secretive and whitewashed. But in fact it's all just to get money. Just say 
that the automobile R&D and manufacturing center established by someone together with the Grand Duke family of Kawei and the two brothers Ruan Wen Zhao. And when you from the Jia Long Chamber of Commerce has indeed encountered a wall in its development in the past 12 years. But cars are, after all, an important part of improving the traffic environment. Perhaps the sales volume will not show explosive growth like in the early days. While its income can offset the costs, it can still afford R&D funds, forming a virtuous cycle, although the profits and dividends shared by the three original shareholders were not large. In fact, the old Duke and the Ruan brothers focused on the convenience brought by the car itself from the beginning, rather than the money earned from selling the car. So I am not worried about such changes. Of course, a time traveler who is not short of money has no worries. When he knew that his desire to own a magic tower was blocked by the world intentionally or unintentionally, Lin had no desire to save money. To put it bluntly, without the hometown of a certain traveler, the globalized economic system, and the backing of the superpower Magnesium Emperor, it would be impossible for Midland's capital to grow to the heights of the earth. Instead, it will only make people salivate like a pig fattening itself, to prevent the banks of the gold coin goddess from chasing profits. It is actually to prevent the Millennium Man from being fed up in a state of exhaustion and directly tormenting himself to death. What's more, capital is not some thousand-year-old man's palace, but a highly poisonous medicine. However, secular banks need manpower and the goddess's church also has bishops and priests. These people do not serve the goddess while drinking the northwest wind. In other words, Coins Bank also has salary expenditure needs. These expenditure needs will be paid from the handling fees deducted by the bank during the deposit and withdrawal process. Moreover, there has always been an invisible point of interest in currency exchange, which is to purify the impurities of coins. These associated metals also accumulate in considerable quantities after purification. As the only automobile research and manufacturing center in Midland that consciously studies the direction of material science, it is also the best outlet for these pure metals. Although someone has a relationship with both parties, he only serves as a bridge. The center wants to get those pure metal ingots. But of course it cannot be free. Relying on these two incomes, the bank affiliated to the gold coin goddess in the mortal world can operate normally. For this kind of design, and the subsequent development that has not deviated too much from the default goal, a certain traveler is somewhat proud. Then when the economy of Midland really grows to the point where the existing system cannot bear the load and must be changed, I will probably be gone too. And there should be someone with enough wisdom at that time to break through the predicament at that time. If you set a 10-year plan for yourself, someone thinks that your performance is already at a super level. It is impossible to establish an excellent system that will last for thousands of years. Do you really think that traveling through crowds is omnipotent? Besides, if something like that really appears, doesn't it mean that the entire society is not progressing and the atmosphere has entered a state of stagnant water? Thousands of years have passed since then, and the environment has not changed much. It can still be managed using the old methods. In short, in the 12 years since he decided to stay, even if he did not appear on the front stage, a certain time traveler felt that his life was very fulfilling. Just like in criminal psychology, the arsonist always returns to the scene to watch the chaos he caused being able to witness with one's own eyes the changes in things that one promotes. Invisibly satisfies someone's perverted psychology. It can be regarded as adding some time-killing projects to this paradise without entertainment. But there are risks in eating melons. It's like those arsonists are always arrested alive by the police just because they return to the scene and leave behind clues and evidence. A certain time traveler who stayed in the lost land was blocked by a real boss because of eating melons. In the entire bank operation planned by Lin, the one boss he most feared to see was Brutus, the Lord of Fortune, one of the eight lords of power. He is the god that the magician cannot offend the most. And he is also the target that his anti-divine power magic cannot work on. The process of this big boss appearing in front of Lin was also quite dramatic. On a sunny afternoon, Lin, who had woken up from a good nap, was leaning on the windowsill of the attic, feeling the breeze blowing on his face. The environment in Midi is still in a natural state, with no industrial pollution. My home in the holy city is considered to be in a good suburb. And the scenery and air are of course more pleasant. And this time is also the time when the three kittens come back from their adventure. By the way, the three kittens who follow the gray cat Hardy to the holy city of Estari have grown up enough. They are at an age where they are naughty and capable of facing challenges. So they are also playful. But they come back at this time because someone who got up will prepare three bowls of cold milk for them on the windowsill. It's afternoon tea time. 
but someone is drinking midi tea with only dried flower petals and no tea leaves, while the magic cats are drinking ice milk. But something is different today. Behind the demon cats walking on tiptoe on the edge of the roof, followed by a leopard that was more than twice as big. I don't know if the demon cats didn't notice it at all, or if they brought the leopard. Three cats and one leopard lined up in a straight line. Surprisingly harmonious. Someone somehow conjured up another shallow bowl. Pour in the same milk and treat this uninvited guest. Just watch them lower their heads and lick the milk. While someone himself drinks into tea brewed with hot milk. This authentic method of making milk tea, rather than boiling tea with water and then adding milk, is quite popular at home. At least it makes up for the slight flaw in the scented tea's own bland taste. But because it was hot, the demon cats couldn't accept it. It was only when the three cats and one leopard drank the milk from the bowl in unison that the three demon cats discovered that there was a big leopard next to them. And they were suddenly frightened. Lily jumped up in fear and clung to the upper edge of the window sill with her front paws. Nini jumped out and clung dangerously to the eaves before she could stand. As the only male cat, Bufong was frightened and rolled over, then quickly struggled to get up. If you have a mobile phone and take the scene just now as a short video and upload it, it should become popular. The reason why the reaction was so great was because in the perception of the three demon cats, they did not notice the existence of this golden leopard at all. It wasn't until my eyes saw it that I suddenly realized that there was a huge creature squatting next to me, drinking milk from the bowl like them. And this is what Lin is curious about. Except for his two eyes. All his detection magic could not detect the leopard in front of him. Which meant that this leopard should not exist. But it did finish the milk it poured. Could this be a daytime ghost sighting? However, Lin also had some speculations about this person's identity. Because this is not the first time I have seen this leopard. The last time I met him. It was when the Xuanwu robe had just been made. The Xuanwu Holy Spirit from his hometown was showing off its power in an arrogant manner, which attracted a counterattack from Midi. In addition to the leopard, there are seven other animals, representing eight powers respectively. The incarnations of the eight lords of power each injected an extremely pure power into the body of the magician, who didn't know he was in trouble. The original intention was to destroy the foreign god Xuanwu in the robe. Unexpectedly, this act coincided with the number of days, and instead created the demigod body of Xuanwu. I also achieved success for someone along the way. It's just that the process is extra hard. Maybe it was the tragic experience at that time that made someone shiver involuntarily. But now that the big boss is here, just ignoring him is not an option. So after coaxing away the three demon cats who danced just like when they were children, Lin greeted them. Your Majesty Brutus? It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Magician. The golden leopard followed the cat's example, licked its paws, and moved it to its face. At the end, he said again, I didn't expect that little magician to grow up to what he is today. After laughing a few times, Lin said, It's a fluke. A fluke. If your majesties had tried harder, I might not be here anymore. I won't be able to stand here and speak today. Chapter 1481 The Purpose of the Lord of Wealth The golden leopard of the Lord of Wealth looked familiar. After weighing a step, he jumped into the windowsill gently and deftly. A certain magician's room in the attic is not small. The big bed is more than enough to sleep three people and takes up only a small amount of space. There are also quite a few places filled with bookshelves, desks and other items. Although the magicians of Midland have worked hard to digitize various books, not only are they better preserved, they are also more convenient for promotion. But in the holy city of Estali, with its world-famous library at its back, Physical books are still a part of the city's scenery. After giving up the method of returning home through the Void Dragon, Lin's room became more alive. It was not as clean as before, as if it was emptied out the next day without any surprise. The leopard jumped onto one of the chairs next to the small tables used for entertaining guests and patted the table with its front paws. Although it is not stated clearly, the intention is obvious. Looks like I'm going to have to spend some time today. How big was the previous conflict between the Lord of Wealth and the goddess of gold coins, and the lord of guardians. Someone doesn't know the details. Even if the two parties collided with each other, it was only known after the fact. But since they are gods that follow similar paths, contact is inevitable. It is said that the gods of lost land are not all guys who live in the kingdom of God and never leave their homes. Perhaps because they were achieved after the dark ages. The new gods, who are only 7,800 years old, can be considered quite young and energetic even if they are not on the road to seek revenge. 
they will sneak into the mysterious land under various identities to collect information. Find ways to expand your own concepts. Or incorporate similar concepts into yourself. If there is already a god who occupies a similar concept, then find a way to accept the other person as a follower god or concubine. In the eyes of believers, the two parties joining together can achieve the effect of 1 plus 1 being greater than 2. Of course, the one who takes the greater advantage is the one in the main position. It is true that gods will be affected by the wishes of sentient beings in their beliefs. And they may even lose themselves and become the gods in people's minds. But the young new gods of Midi haven't reached that point yet. They are quite keen on taking the initiative, expanding the concept of faith, and issuing holy edicts to their own churches to control their course of action. In particular, consciously control the behavior of the church instead of letting them do whatever they want in the name of God. The religious wars more than 200 years ago are a lesson, regardless of the fact that it was just the defeat of the secular church, which isolated the divine power from the political power. It actually also caused harm to the gods themselves, because the church is evil and murderous. The most fatal part is the reduction of their faith, although the war has also cultivated many fanatics. Between addition and subtraction, just looking at the choices made by the gods, one can tell which side is more and which side is less. Secondly, too many good or evil thoughts that are contrary to one's original intention will cause the god's own camp to skew. Whether a good god degenerates into an evil god, or an evil god sublimates into a good god, it is a very serious harm to them. Because to the original believers, a god's change of camp is like a betrayal of believers. How can you continue to believe in such a god? You must be turning your back on him. Look at the idle stars in a certain time traveler's hometown. If a persona breaks down, how much effort do they have to put in to rebuild it, or make up for the broken part. And how much loss will be incurred in this process is similar. By saying so much. I actually just want to emphasize how much the Lord of Wealth attaches great importance to banks. Rather than being beaten back once. And then really giving up completely. And being indifferent. Whether it is a long time or a short period of time. The evolution of the bank is certainly in the eyes of the wealth owner. It would be a lie to say that Brutus is not jealous of coins transformation from a weak divine power. That was about to be forgotten to a powerful divine power that is now on the same level as him. But what about jealousy and greed? If you miss the opportunity, even if you open a bank yourself and compete with Shao Kuyin, you will still have priorities in the eyes of the believers. It's just that this time, I, who was slower than the previous one, will be classified as the second best. This is unacceptable to Brutus. A bank is not like a secular church established by God. The main function of the church is to organize believers. And banks use convenience to attract new and old believers. If the Lord of Wealth copied the rules and used all of Kuyin's methods, he would just replace the portrait on the coin with his own. This approach will not yield much good results. It can only pick up some meat residue left by Kuyin who was eaten. If you set up a separate system on your own, even if you have the foundation of powerful divine power from an old brand, you will still be unable to defeat the coin bank, which has already deployed all over the land. The situation would be even worse if one integrated one's own banking system into coin banks. Because believers don't seriously distinguish the differences. They just give all the credit to the originator. Therefore, even if we want to do it, we must find differences in homogeneity so that believers can clearly know which god they are borrowing the power of. Don't thank the wrong god when you want to be grateful. That would be embarrassing. In fact, for the Lord of Wealth, the best situation would be for him to take the entire Kain system under his control. It's just that I tried it before and was inexplicably repulsed by the Lord of Guardians. Now that Cain has grown up, if he wants to try it again, it will really be a one versus two situation. One god alone against two powerful gods. Brutus is not yet confident to this extent. But the failure of the casing bank opened his eyes to an opportunity. However, Brutus did not rashly contact the mortal who proposed the idea of a casing bank. Instead, he found the man who attacked the casing bank and caused it to collapse. What Lin did was not considered secret, or even deliberately concealed. It's just that his location is too far away from most people. So people can't see him, but as a god who is always concerned. Everything a certain magician does is in the eyes of Brutus. There are many things that the master of wealth wants to know. But what he wants to know most is why this man would deliberately design a sniper attack on the casing bank. The German government order, which was almost equivalent to disrupting the situation, brought Mitty's loan lending relationship back to its original shape. That is, Unless you have a close relationship or trust someone who has the expectation of borrowing without repaying, you will not be able to borrow money at all. 
if you don't find the reason or find a way to counter the German government order. Even if you jump in to operate this hedge bank, there is a high chance that it will fail. Brutus thought so. To find the reason. The most direct way is of course to find the initiator. When it comes to finding ways to counter the moral decree, who is a more suitable candidate than the person who designed the moral decree? Neither candidate could avoid the magician in front of him. So the Lord of Wealth came to the door. Although Lin was reluctant to face this big boss, he was mentally prepared. But what surprised him was that the big boss didn't come to hold people accountable or to gain leverage, but directly asked about the idea. Do you want to talk about the real horrors of the banking industry? Will saying this make this big boss more excited to devote himself to becoming another devil king? If there is a god on earth, who would believe that there is a good god behind finance? Those who are willing to sell their souls to the devil for money are considered low in talents. What a real financial boss does should be the kind of high-end game that even Satan has to find a way to enslave. But after thinking about it, Lin decided to say it. Nothing is more dangerous than a little knowledge. I still remember the movies I watched before I traveled through time. The most disgusting scenes were those where someone would always tell someone half-sentence or force others to do this or that by telling them to experience it themselves. And the reasons for coercion are quite consistent. They all use emotional blackmail. And they always say for your own good. Either because of his age or experience. He doesn't give any explanation and just wants people to obey his command unconditionally. The fraud syndicate also knows how to make up stories. When you encounter that kind of idiot, as long as others obey orders and hesitate to give a few words of excuse, someone will always do what they want to do without any pretense. Since I don't understand the seriousness, it's normal to do things according to my own ideas. And in movies, I usually play the kind of person who doesn't listen to advice, insists on acting alone in horror movies, and has a mother's heart in disaster movies. Then, there will be a small climax with heads flying and blood spilled. And you can go get your lunch. In short, if you don't want this big boss to surprise you and jump out to cause trouble at the most disgusting moment, then communication in advance is very important. It's hard to believe that he has come in person. So why don't you sit down and talk openly and honestly? However, I still have to ask to what extent this boss's prerequisite knowledge is known. If I had to start from the beginning, it would feel like it would take three days and three nights to finish. Lin therefore asked, Your Majesty, do you know about the inflation problem? The leopard put its front paws on the table, tilted its head, and stared at people with its unique feline eyes. After a moment, he nodded and said, I know. For a 10 yuan product, one dollar can buy one tenth of it. If the product becomes 20 yuan, then one dollar can only buy one twentieth of it. One, that's right. Well, actually there are some differences, but the principle is the same. Simply put, the amount used to represent a market value increases but its value remains the same. Then what each unit of money can buy, there will be relatively less demand. Under such conditions, we will introduce banks and lending activities. Someone skillfully turned his hand over and rubbed his fingers together, and he pulled out a golden key in that appeared from nowhere. That minuscule, almost non-existent divine power stung the Lord of Wealth with the body of a leopard. It's like a scumbag taking one woman's things and showing them off in front of another woman. The golden leopard subconsciously wanted to slap the person in front of him down with his paw. But for the time being, I still endured it and listened to him continue. Today, I have the only gold coin on the market. I deposited it into the first bank and got a certificate of deposit for a gold coin. Then the bank lent the gold coin to a person in need and got it the debt of gold coins. So the current market has the value of two gold coins. Can you understand this? Wait, wait a minute. Why two? Isn't there only one gold coin? Where did the second one come from? The feline eyes widened to an incredible extent. And the Lord of Wealth asked puzzledly, Chapter 1482 Causes of Inflation I have a deposit certificate for one gold coin. And the bank has a claim on one gold coin. Needless to say, the deposit certificate can be exchanged for a gold coin. However, the claim on this gold coin is owed by the person who borrowed the money. Money. But for banks, it is also an asset. Since it is an asset, it can be bought, sold and transferred to anyone. Because anyone who takes over the credit has the right to take back the money lent from the borrower. A gold coin. Isn't this money? Think carefully. Think seriously. There is nothing wrong with it. But Brutus fell into an inexplicable tangled state. Lin continued. The story is not over yet. Of course, the person who borrowed the money had a purpose. So he spent the gold coin. And this gold coin will become a reward. 
or the price paid for purchasing a certain commodity in the hands of the second person. This person deposited the gold coin in the bank and obtained a certificate of deposit for one gold coin. The bank lent the money and obtained a claim for one gold coin. So now there are a total of four gold coins in the market books. They are two deposit certificates of one gold coin and two claims of one gold coin. When this gold coin passes through more banks, even if the person who owes money, it will also increase. But at the same time, it will create more book value. But there is only one gold coin. Where will the other money come from? Brutus said. The magician in front of me took out a voucher issued by a certain bank from nowhere. It was quite beautifully made. The textures are detailed and complex. And there are even other details hidden in the details. They are full of modern banknote anti-counterfeiting measures on earth. Lin held the two ends of the banknote and pulled it symbolically. This action made the Lord of Wealth suddenly realize. I dare to say that the purpose of this paper is not just to be lighter than gold coins and easy to carry. There are other purposes. There is always only one gold coin. But as long as the bank recognizes the value of the voucher and the market also recognizes its value, then a gold coin can theoretically generate countless book values under the operation of the bank. These book values vouchers can be issued to reduce the book value. Only when the debt is paid off will the actual real value, that is, the gold coin be left on the market. Having said this, a certain magician took a breath, looked at the leopard who was bowing his head and thought, and asked, after listening so much, do you hear anything? Brutus raised his head and said, according to your statement, inflation does not happen just because someone prints too many vouchers, which lowers the real value represented by the face value of the vouchers. In fact, the process of lending in banks, the money will also increase. That's right. Your Majesty, you also know my situation. In my hometown, it is known that printing money indiscriminately will cause inflation. So, if the government with the power to print money stops printing money, inflation will not have happened. However, the fact is that regardless of whether the government prints money randomly, inflation still happens every year. Why? Because the real point of inflation is naturally caused by banking business. It cannot be stopped. And at most it can be suppressed. No one dares to tell outsiders about this matter. But it does exist. I often heard people say this in the past. Money is the fastest way to make money. I always thought this sentence was an exaggeration and a joke. But I never thought that it was actually a truth describing the real situation. As a god who planned to start from this aspect, the Lord of Wealth certainly could not give up his original idea based on these alarmist words. He tried to argue. But didn't you also say that as long as the debt can be fully paid off, the market will return to its original state. Hey, your majesty, just think about it. You have to pay off your debt completely. People are prone to misfortune and misfortunes. And investment also has profits and losses. What if you encounter someone who still refuses to pay? Or who deliberately defaults on their debts by relying on their power? Then what should you do? Forget it. Besides, I haven't introduced the factor of interest yet. In the scenario I just mentioned, every time you save a gold coin, you can get one gold coin in interest. Every time you borrow a gold coin, you also need to pay one gold coin in interest. What will happen after adding this element? Changes? What if the banks then trade their claims and convert them into cash that can be used directly? One-to-one -one loan sharking is a common thing in a land where the financial economy is not developed. After all, the risk of borrowing is too high and there are not enough benefits. Who is willing to lend money to others? No matter how close you are, that's why Brutus didn't worry about whether such an example would be too exaggerated. As for the science of mathematics, especially simple addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, it is not difficult to learn it based on the wisdom of the gods. Not to mention that within the concept of the Lord of Wealth, such knowledge can also be used to calculate how much wealth one has. After hearing the situation described by the magician in front of him, Brutus could easily come up with the result. The problem is that when the first debt is due to be repaid, there is only one gold coin on the market. Where is the second gold coin to pay interest? To solve this problem, it is not difficult to say, but it is not easy to say that it is simple. That is to borrow a second gold coin and pay the interest on the debt of the first gold coin. Anyway, it is just paper no matter how you borrow it. Then you can relax for a while until the expiration of the second debt comes. Well, it seems that the day when the debt in the market will be completely discharged is far away. The Lord of Fortune concluded. But this also made Brutus think of another question and asked, How is this matter resolved in your hometown? My hometown? 
someone showed a strange look on his face. Winked. And struggled for a while before saying, After a wave of harvested leeks. Before they sprout again. The idle sickle will of course be used to find a new batch of leeks. Cut, and then look for it. Cut it when you find it. Cut it, and look for it again. And so on. Simply put, it is to use the dividends brought by growth to offset the growth of debt in the market. There are two main ways to grow here. One is the growth of external profits. It can be trade. It can be plunder. It can be war. Anyway, it is just grabbing other people's things to pay off the debts you owe. But this is just a way of shifting the loss onto others does not really solve the problem. The other is the growth of population. Although the debt existing in the overall market is increasing, as long as the population growth rate is greater than the debt growth rate, then these debts will be equally distributed to everyone. And there will not be much great pressure may even seem to slow down. At this time, people will say, because people in the past suffered like this, it is okay for people today to suffer equally. And maybe it is easier. But if the population growth rate is not as fast as the debt increase rate, this means that the current people are equally suffering. The burden on everyone has increased. It was already hard enough in the past. But life is even harder now. It is difficult not to be complained about. However, as the population increases, it can be expected that the rate of debt increase will become faster in the future. Although the current debt problem that is due has been temporarily suppressed, the problem in the future will also be greater. In other words, this entire system is like being hungry. He takes poison to satisfy his hunger. In the end, he has to choose one of two options, starve to death or be poisoned. After someone complained about his situation, the owner of wealth looked at him in surprise and said, This is not a solution. Lin spread his hands and said frankly, It's not really true. But you can choose to die early or die late. Then why do people in your hometown choose to do this? Brutus asked puzzled. After thinking about it, Lin explained, Although prepaying for the future is a poison, it is undeniable that this poison can give you the opportunity to grow in the present. If one country does this, and other countries do not follow suit, then even there is no chance, and they may be eliminated before they can grow. Then everyone can only hope that their physique is good enough, and they can eat a little more poison without dying. Then before the poison occurs, they will continue to transfer these toxins to other countries, delaying the time when they will die suddenly from the poison. Lin's explanation obviously dissatisfied the Lord of Wealth. He asked another question that he had never asked before. If all of this is as you said, full of shortcomings and traps, then what can the person who designed all of this gain? Financial power, military power, and personal strength are all designed to be converted into power. To control other people's lives. To control other people's life and death. When money reaches a certain level, for those at the top, money is just a number. What they care about is what these numbers can bring, not the numbers themselves. As for the debts that need to be repaid in the future, as the designer of the rules of the game, how can he not know how to avoid or transfer them? Even though the changes in the overall social environment are constantly slipping into the abyss, but when it comes to individuals, it is definitely some people take advantage of others. If I get the benefits and others take the pain, then how bad the world has become has nothing to do with it. Right. After hearing this, although Brutus still had many questions in his mind, he became much less interested in taking the path of banking and lending. The reason is that gods and mortals are different. Mortals would like to become the group of people at the top of the pyramid in capital society. However, how can the gods satisfy the faith of only a few people and the curses of the vast majority of the remaining people? This is not to mention the issue of how much faith a small number of people have. The consensus among the gods is that unless they are devout people, those who reach the top in a certain field will have weaker beliefs because they believe more in what they believe in rather than placing most of their feelings on a certain god. But, someone suddenly shouted, throwing out a turning point. Golden Leopard cooperated very well and asked, But, when the financial and economic environment of many continues to develop, sooner or later it will encounter a bottleneck. At this time, lending, a behavior that has the function of regulating financial funds, is inevitable, because continued obstruction will prevent people with redundant funds from making full use of themselves. The advantages also make people with limited ability and creativity suffer from insufficient funds to realize their ideas. Someone spread his hands helplessly. It's just that when that time comes, I don't know which way to go. Maybe His Majesty Brutus can be wise enough to find a way out. My only idea is to let the debts be content with the debts and not be regarded as but how we deal with the future world is not my business. 
Chapter 1483 Crisis Lurks There was only one brief conversation with the Lord of Wealth. After that, a certain magician gradually faded out of the public eye, as if he had been forgotten. But this does not mean that someone truly enters retirement and enjoys happiness all day long. Because the words the Lord of Fortune said, when he left have always lingered in his mood. Magician, although I don't know what your ultimate goal is, but don't think that anything you do will have no side effects. When you have to pay the price, maybe it will be so heavy that no one can bear it. So even though he is hidden behind the scenes, he is not completely indifferent to external affairs. Instead, he moved out the program designed by his apprentice to collect forum information from the background and upgraded the original collection function to the level of monitoring. It's just that someone doesn't know what to monitor. So just monitor all abnormal things. For a moment, someone in the surveillance center felt as if he had become Batman. The difference is that someone doesn't go out and fight crime and act as a free vigilante when they see a crime being committed. Rather than being calm, it's better to say that someone is a little cold-blooded when it comes to outsiders. The greater the ability, the greater the responsibility has never been the motto of a former fat house. As long as it doesn't affect the few people in my heart, I really won't be moved even if the world falls apart. Because sometimes, there is really no obvious right or wrong about some things. If you intervene rashly and your father-in-law becomes the mastermind, you will be in tears. But just because someone is cold-blooded, doesn't mean the people around him are equally cold-blooded. Especially the girl with dark hair and brown skin who has grown up. Although she doesn't like to smile and doesn't talk much, she is much gentler and more considerate than the other blonde girl in her heart. Compared with Kiana's hidden attributes that are as hot as fire, Halumi can be said to be a representative of the heartless natural attributes. The upgraded for monitoring system is codenamed Tingting. -ting. The name comes from the important follower of Xitagarbha Bodhisattva in someone's hometown who can detect all the good, evil, foolishness and sages in the world. As an important founder of the original forum indexing system, Kaya's listening function is also open to her. Now that she has seen such injustice, Kaya wants to change something in her heart. But she didn't learn her teacher's flashing technique and couldn't arrive at the scene immediately to stop the incident from happening. What's more, if something goes to the forum, it means that the thing has already happened, otherwise, it is about to happen and the news on the forum is just a sign. Some of these signs are obvious and some are not. The monitoring system focuses on this part and provides early warning. Kaya arrived at the scene quickly because she didn't have to hang on the spider's thread. Kaya, who has the ability to be a good neighbor and a good neighbor, found out about the brotherhood formed by Ezio and his friends. The two parties hit it off and work together. Someone runs it as an orphanage. And his original intention is to help the technical guild and the automobile R&D and manufacturing center to provide some talents with modern education. But in fact, the school that takes in orphans from the streets has undergone a lot of changes in the past 12 years. The supply of talents in civil and military fields remains unchanged. People who don't like fighting and killing can join the technical guild or the automobile center regardless of whether they have achieved academic success or not. Even if you can't be a designer or craftsman, you can still work hard. As long as you don't covet a good life and earn a little money, it's okay to marry a big-ass woman and have two children. If you have an adventurous spirit in your heart and are not afraid of a life of fighting and killing, you may also have a talent for this. It seems that you want to become a warrior or a magician. There are also related trainings in elementary schools. The reward that originally belonged to someone was that in addition to the salary that these accomplished people received to get by, these children had to serve someone for free for 10 years, unless otherwise agreed on rewards and punishments. However, the current situation is that many parents or related people from technical guilds and automobile centers also want to send their children to elementary schools founded by someone. But in fact there is no control over them at all. Enlightenment education for new knowledge is basically blank outside. Therefore, if those who are successful in emerging industries want their children to inherit their careers, they would have to teach their children themselves. They are too busy just to make money. So how can these people have time to teach them from the basics slowly? As soon as they learned that a certain magician had a similar training program, they couldn't sit still and ask to join. This situation is like the first academy founded by someone in the southwest peninsula of Midi. It was originally a free volunteer school for orphans. But later a lot of people asked for money to join. Because he had been severely betrayed once. Lin originally didn't want to be involved in such troublesome things again. But when he turned around and looked around, he just said oops in his heart. Everyone who comes to ask for help is an employee of the industry related to him. 
It's not like he has met those aristocrats who have no bottom line. Besides, they also hope that their children will develop the same skills as themselves and inherit their own mantles in the future in order to use his unscrupulous capital to cultivate leeks for subsequent wool harvesting. Lin agreed to these well-intentioned parents and let their children enjoy the joy of losing a normal childhood. Having said that, Lin actually did not interfere too much in the affairs of the elementary school. And of course, he did not copy the education system of a certain Chuanzhong's hometown. Basically, in addition to comprehensive education in the first year of school, starting from the second year, children will be given specialized training according to their own interests. Anyway, we don't intend to teach everyone to be an all-rounder with complete basic knowledge. Wouldn't it be better to start cultivating professional skills early and accumulate experience? As for the cultivation of martial arts, the sooner the better. In addition to professional training, children can learn whatever subjects they are interested in. As long as I have time and can cope with it, I won't deliberately restrict what they are not allowed to do. Now that there are many more friends in the elementary school, it is inevitable that they will be divided into different factions especially for those who are orphans or those who pay tuition fees to attend school. The two parties can be very different from each other at the beginning, before thinking about how to solve this situation that is not conducive to unity, but can easily lead to class antagonism. This invisible antagonism in primary schools disappeared by itself, because Ezio and his friends have expanded their enrollment. Originally, Ezio only made friends with a few friends he was willing to get close to, and his circle was relatively closed. But since what happened to Marlene, this kid's temperament has undergone a big change, and he has become quite philanthropic. In short, Ezio's attributes are fully realized. In addition, with the old man, the old black dragon Augustus as his backer, and good friendships with Halumi and Kaya, it can be said that it is quite comfortable for the sponsors and leaders of the elementary school. Who wouldn't be happy to have such a kid with you? Even those who didn't like Ezio at first whether they were orphans or paid tuition fees. All of them were eventually dealt with by Ezio. And, there is a faint tendency to open a harem. Anyway, this naughty kid was not beaten to death. And a certain magician, who watched with cold eyes was quite surprised. By the way, it was also the Ma Lin incident. Although Lin still did not intervene in the affairs of the elementary school, he was no longer indifferent. It's just that the attitude has become to secretly pay attention to the living conditions of these children with Ezio stepping forward to integrate them, and using their peers in the elementary school as a bond. A fraternity organization without a clear name emerged. After these children graduate, there must be a way to organize them so that they can repay the debt of ten years of labor. Lin was optimistic about the emergence of the Brotherhood, and even hinted that the leader of the Technology Guild, Yuzov Gontia, and the president of the First Bank, the Dark Elf Melchaw, would provide some help. The organizational structure of the fraternity is of course different from that of technology guilds and banks. But those two people also have another identity. That is, they are members of the Turtle Dove Alliance, the most powerful underground organization in Midland. They are the best at dealing with secret organizations like this. When a group of young men who joined the fraternity graduated from elementary school and began a 10-year journey to pay off their debts. Not to mention those who went to technical guilds or automobile centers to become clerical workers and mechanics. The group of people with adventurer status or magician qualifications ready to attack become Kaya's best hands when dealing with abnormal events discovered by the listening monitoring system. Lin did not raise any objection to such a use. Although the orphans from elementary schools were required to serve him for 10 years, the main goal was actually to focus on the group of children who took clerical jobs, which was to help the automobile center cultivate more useful talents. And the technical guild was considered incidental. So how to arrange for people who take the practical route such as adventurers and magicians? To be honest, Lin never thought about it at the beginning. So when Kaya got started with the listening system and asked to use the Brotherhood's manpower, Lin certainly wouldn't stop it. If those naughty kids who were preparing for actual combat were left idle, they would have their homes demolished. However, agreement is still an agreement. And Lin still drew a red line. That is, the people sent out by the Brotherhood can only investigate and expose but cannot judge. It is a good thing to act on the news and expose the truth, but trial is a very serious matter, and a final decision must be made only after a complete investigation and solid evidence support, and after weighing it from all angles, rather than hearing that someone bullies men and dominates women. You rush to someone else's house to teach them a lesson. If you do this, you may be easily taken advantage of or misled by prejudice. If you make a wrong judgment due to wrong cognition, 
you will hurt others or even kill someone because of this wrong judgment. Such reckless behavior could not be their original intention to fight against injustice. The other layer did not tell the people in the brotherhood, but only told Kaya about the consideration. That is, if a good person was wrong because of his incomplete investigation, and that person was killed by one of his own people, wouldn't this cause a psychological shadow to the hands on children? Besides, an investigation without hurting anyone or being discovered is even more difficult than rushing into the enemy's position recklessly. Using such words is enough to arouse the competitiveness of those young people and make them more careful to hide themselves. Anyway, the listening system is a shady thing, and there is no reason for the brothers who cooperate with it to act in a high-profile manner. If all the evidence is prepared and handed over to the criminal's lord or his lord, but these people with the power to judge do nothing, then expose it on the forum. There are countless good people in the world who are willing to enforce justice and challenge public power. From this perspective, there is really no need for a brotherhood to join in the fun. Chapter 1484 Brotherhood Although someone drew a red line for what Kaya and the brotherhood were doing. But to be honest, there are laws and there are laws that are broken. Rules are dead. But people are alive. Sometimes, rigid rules cannot be used to limit a person's actions under any circumstances. Although they were asked not to kill people, there were still some exceptions that Ling couldn't comment on. A surefire example is a deserter within the Brotherhood who killed his fellow members of the Brotherhood in the process. It has also happened that after completing their studies, they did not want to serve the 10 years of hard labor and simply disappeared from the world. However, there are many possible reasons behind it and it is impossible to generalize. For example, if someone takes a risk and dies outside, it will be better if the body can be found. If you encounter someone with no body left, you have to start with the soul fragments. This is a force measure factor. There are also those who are bribed and lured by other big guys and want to get rid of the constraints of the brotherhood. In this kind of situation, the big boss usually pays the tuition fee to settle the matter. There is no need to break up and make everyone look bad. There is also the kind of momentary dizziness, whether it is hiding incognito or following a woman. If you can persuade such people to come back, then persuade them to come back. If you can't persuade them to come back, then discuss it separately and find a way to redeem yourself. A certain magician's basic attitude is not to force anything. Although such a precedent has been set, it may have a negative imitation effect on subsequent generations. So there will still be some formal punishments to warn others. But usually people who are temporarily dazed or deceived will eventually turn around and ask for forgiveness. If a person with such a weak will is not deceived to death, he or she will find a way to hide back in his comfort zone after being hurt. It is impossible to have the courage to make up your mind and venture out alone. The Brotherhood searches for such people, and most of them are resolved peacefully. But if these deserters kill brothers during their escape, no matter how legitimate the reason is, the Brotherhood's attitude is to hunt them down until death. This is the real red line. As for external affairs, no matter how bad the situation is, even if you don't personally assassinate the target, there are many ways to ruin the opponent's reputation and even trigger a crowd to attack. There is no need for anyone to teach you such things. The people in the fraternity are like self-taught and they can do all kinds of tricks. Fortunately, the request to find out the truth has been fulfilled. It's not just killing someone after hearing about it, which is no different from killing someone. Without such restrictions on the members of the fraternity, Lin would not be able to safely allow them to work on the front line. After all, a group of people are just adults. Or underage boys. How many of them have mature and prudent personalities? Do you really think that you have never passed the second grade? Since there are not many primary school graduates, and a considerable number of them enter clerical fields such as automobile centers and technical guilds. Kaya actually has even fewer people to deploy. However, the actual combat capabilities of those who can be sent out are guaranteed. In terms of magic, although Lin and Fun are not very careful and only occasionally accept questions and answer questions, the people who are mainly responsible for teaching are their two magic apprentices, Harumi and Kaya. But it is different from learning magic from other magicians. Although the Magician Association requires every official magician to bring out at least two official magicians in his lifetime. In fact, when it comes to teaching, no one really devotes all his energy to teaching and is enthusiastic about teaching. Although Halumi and Kaya are only apprentices and have poor talents, they are still the highest level third level apprentices. If they take care of their juniors with their knowledge, they can really get twice the result with half the effort. Therefore, Many magic apprentices who were born in elementary schools have passed the formal magician test and hung up the golden thread, which is envied by many people. In fact, 
This should be attributed to someone who is best at studying methods for exams, which makes those children unfavorable. Coupled with a sufficient amount of actual combat training to prevent them from collapsing in real hand-to-hand -hand combat, the magicians who were born in elementary schools have a high reputation. Children who choose the warrior department will have even better teachers. Basically, they are all personally led and taught by the former captain of the Demon King's guards. Occasionally, the White Sword Master William Greco and the Demon Prince Azad will serve as guest coaches to impart their respective experiences. Unless it is a completely different field, there is no situation where the realm of the lost world is too different to understand. Even if it is just a few words or some inconspicuous little actions, you can steal one or two tricks from those truly strong people, which can be used for life. If you can get personal guidance, you will make rapid progress. Having only used Wang Ba Quan against people in the vegetable market, the experience is completely different from fighting against real masters. It can also be said that if there is no experience and talent in this area, such children will usually be persuaded to quit and find another suitable development direction. Another great advantage of finding a real strong person to guide you is that it can strongly undermine the self-confidence of children with poor talents and let them find another way out early. Although Halumi and Kaya are also examples of those who don't have good talent but have to work hard. But it was also because they had no choice at the beginning and had no choice but to go to the dark side. Now that these kids have a choice. Unless they are really interested. Otherwise, when encountering children with poor talents, they will usually be advised to find other interests instead of dying easily. Therefore, the warriors from elementary school are either extremely talented or at least the kind of people who dare to fight and kill. Recklessness may not be the same as courage, but those who dare to fight have a better chance of surviving than those who shrink back at the moment of crisis. The amazing thing is that Ezio is actually the most outstanding one among the warriors. Lin was very sure that he had never opened a small stove for the fat boy. And the boy would even take a detour when he saw him. As for the original Lich, who is best at human body modification. In fact, Thun has not modified anyone in these years except himself and the little follower who lost his body. Sure Dong, the former commander of the Imperial Guard. But Ezio doesn't act like a purely human being. Not only Lin who was watching was curious. Thun was also curious. Thinking that Ezio might have some special bloodline. Thun secretly collected samples and did some tests. But no results were obtained. This is also because Thun doesn't have many examples of this bloodline variation for comparison. Later. The old black dragon Augustus gave the answer. When it picked up Ezio as a baby in the snowy mountains, it used its own blood to satisfy his hunger. Well, I grew up drinking dragon's blood. So this is quite a supplement. In short, there is an explanation for the matter. But only a few people know it. Lin didn't deliberately help the fat boy promote it. Nor did he take it seriously. In fact, within the small group of the Brotherhood, Ezio's outstanding performance in various aspects has made many people envious and jealous. But for the resources at Ezio's disposal, those who were dissatisfied did not dare to express their emotions on the surface, and only dared to make small moves behind the scenes. However, the philanthropic Ezio not only treats the opposite sex like this, he is also very tolerant towards the same sex. He has a soft-spoken yet tough personality, and when you get along with him, no one can find anything wrong with him. If there is a situation where a request is not met, it must be because the request made is too excessive. Even if you want to unite with outsiders to criticize Ezio verbally in writing, it usually won't work. It can be said that those who can do more work can also be said that this group of elementary school graduates who choose to be adventurers have the wandering gene in their bones. Since Kaya started assigning tasks, a group of people in the martial arts group of the Brotherhood have not been back to the Holy City a few times throughout the year. Fortunately, the fraternity uses forums to communicate. And it doesn't matter if they don't meet. So Ezio's influence has not declined much. In particular, he also did several major things that were only known internally. Which made his reputation even more famous. Needless to say, in terms of contact and assistance, if Ezio comes forward or someone else comes forward, it is very likely that different results will be obtained. In this way, Ezio relied on his good relationships to strengthen his position within the Brotherhood. However, for Ezio himself, although he was quite philanthropic in dealing with others, he did not guard his reputation cautiously, for fear of being tarnished in the slightest. On the contrary, Ezio was a little irritated and even indifferent to other people's evaluations of him. Even if someone criticized him directly, he would just smile and not get angry. But this doesn't mean that he can't win against his critics. It just means he is heartless and doesn't want to argue over trivial matters. 
compared to the gradually growing brotherhood. Signs of overt and covert fighting. Or the work of helping Sister Kaya and traveling to various parts of the world to find out detailed information based on unknown sources. Ezio prefers this kind of wandering. The life of an adventurer. The main reason is that the cute but lonely little sisters from all over the land are always willing to entertain this poor wandering young man. Including food and sleep. All right. The fact is that Ezio's philanthropy is a bit too much. Compared to his previously repressed character. After experiencing the Marlene incident. It was like he had gone from one extreme to another. He is quite gentle and considerate to everyone, especially women. He is even more considerate. Poverty is also true. Orphans from elementary schools, with 10 years of free service, can only get the most basic living expenses. Not even a dime. But compared to the huge amount of money they can make outside of their abilities, it is indeed almost free. This is why some people choose to be deserters, not wanting to abide by their 10-year agreement with a certain magician. However, even if Ezio got some money, as long as he saw someone in need during his journey, he would usually give it out without hesitation. The fat boy who has grown up is very confident in his own skills. As long as he has a knife, he will not go hungry if he throws it in the wild. What's more, there are many kind-hearted sisters who are willing to sponsor food, beds, and themselves. In short, under someone's conscious or unconscious gaze, the painting style of a certain fat boy who grew up became more and more crooked and it seemed like he was fighting against the time-traveling people from the original fat house. And he actually moved in the direction of the scumbag. It makes someone hate him so much. Although every time Ezio performs a mission, he never travels alone. There is always a support team or deputies. But as soon as night comes, his companions will definitely not find this romantic man. Everyone is accustomed to this phenomenon. But this time, the place Ezio and his party visited was a bit strange. Everyone in a temporary market was walking like zombies. Even the animals used to carry goods were sick and lifeless. Chapter 1485 Ghost Market There are no people coming from other places to trade. And the traders waiting here seem to have been stationed for a long time. Observed from all angles. This place does not fit the characteristics of a market at all. And it does not even look like a place where living people gather. The location where everyone is located is the Silatang Empire. The last of the five empires to appear in the northern border of Lost Land. This is a large empire with nomadic people as its main body. Its territory is larger than the other four empires. But its population is not larger than any of the other four empires. Its characteristic is that it has a vast territory and sparsely populated areas. Investigating the reason. If a time traveler were to analyze it, he would say that the entire Silatang Empire is located north of the temperate zone. And most of the country is in the cold zone which is not suitable for human habitation. Pasture is limited and food cultivation is difficult, which limits the rate of population growth. According to the many people, it's just too damn cold. Most of the year can be considered winter, although the main body is nomadic. The Concord is constantly on the move. However, after hundreds of years of development, it has absorbed many other ethnic groups and races and brought them under the jurisdiction of the Suritan Empire. Its characteristic is that numerous large-scale homo sapiens gathering places have been built, such as cities and villages. And farming was also carried out in these places to supply the needs of the entire empire. But in order to meet the trade needs of the more mobile nomads, there will be temporary markets like this one, which appear at irregular times and at irregular locations. It may be that itinerant caravans came here, and there were also neighboring settlements or herdsmen who came here to trade with excess things. The market usually lasts for three to seven days. When the transaction volume drops to a certain level, the traders who organize the market will pack up their trading products and go to the next place to open a market. However, recently on the forum, a rumor about a ghost market appeared. Rumor has it that there is a market in the north where rotten or destroyed items are traded. The people moving in the market are not living people. Nor are they like the living dead of the undead tribe. They are an even more unknown type. The bazaar has also been around for a while. As long as you enter this ghost market, you will never come out alive. When he heard this information, Ezio wanted to complain. If no one alive came out, where did this news come from? Those guys who don't know whether they are dead or alive. Posted it on the forum themselves? Local anomalies like this should have been investigated by suitable adventurers entrusted by the local adventurers guild. However, the situation of the Suritan Empire is difficult to describe. The result is that capable adventurers are reluctant to operate within the empire. Naturally, there are not enough professional and capable people to deal with the anomalies in the ghost market. 
A country dominated by nomadic people is quite welcoming to outsiders and external resources, including food. However, the biggest failure of the Suli Tang Empire is that there is a certain degree of contempt for human race within the empire, mainly in terms of official appointment and treatment. High-level official positions will not be open to non-mainstream ethnic groups, even if they hold the same official position. They will enjoy different benefits due to different ethnic groups. Although this chain of contempt has not become a written law, it actually exists in every corner of the Suritan Empire and affects the attitude of the subjects of the empire. This was done to ensure that the dominant nation's control over the empire would not fall into the hands of different nations. Outsiders are not treated differently just because they are not imperial subjects. They will still be in a certain position in the contempt chain because of their own race. For those experienced adventurers, it is impossible to endure this. As long as they can survive life and death difficulties again and again, such adventurers will inevitably be a little arrogant. Even if you treat people kindly, it doesn't mean that anyone can look at them with contempt and disgust. Of course, there are qualified adventurers within the Silatang Empire, but the number of these people is too small, and they all have their own areas where they are accustomed to hanging out. The ghost market is quite a remote countryside, sparsely populated, and no one wants to come here. So it was the turn of Ezio, a group of outsiders who were just looking for trouble. The location of the ghost market is to the south of the Suli Tang Empire. The area is full of hills and surrounded by hills, so it is not considered an excellent pasture. Therefore, after the empire conquered this area, it did not pay special attention to this area. It just left some small marginal tribes to make a living here to prove that this land belongs to the Suli Tang Empire. In fact, if you want to know the news about the ghost market, the leaders of these small tribes know best. But one shortcoming of the forum is that it is weak in its ability to clearly target specific people. If the person who sees the news knows that it is related to him, but does not come forward, no one can do anything to him, unless the person making the request comes in person. There is no way to ask others to do something through the forum. What's more, According to Sister Kaya's inference, whether those small tribes are still there is a problem in itself. Ezio thought so. The two people following him were covered in heavy armor. And the one carrying a huge shield was Kish, the most special person in the elementary school. His mother Vanna is still working as a maid in that mansion. So just like Ezio, he is someone who receives special care in the eyes of others. But in fact, Kish may be the most talented among the group of children. And he is also the hardest working one. The special care in the eyes of others is actually a manifestation of his own efforts. And it is not that someone really made a small fuss for him. Just say that the heavy armor he wore weighed almost as much as an adult. Being able to carry an adult on his back at all times and still be able to move freely. You can imagine how good his physical fitness is. Such a young man with a promising future is a very rare guardian knight. You must know that not everyone can hold the title of guardian knight. He must be able to recite the oath of the guardian lord and strictly abide by his precepts. Only those who have received divine grace are qualified to call themselves guardian knights. The threshold is not low. But in Lost Land, the belief in the guardian lord is quite popular. Even if they have not obtained the grace and title of a guardian knight, there are still a large number of young people who keep the vows and move towards the goal of becoming a guardian knight. Another young woman who was dressed similarly to Ezio, but with different colors and an extra bow was Rowan. When Ezio blended in with the kids on the street, Rowan was the head kid at the time. But no one knew her gender at that time. And they all treated her like a big brother. Compared to Ezio, who is nourished by dragon blood. Or Gish, who is truly talented. Rowan's talent performance in all aspects is mediocre. And there is nothing particularly outstanding. But compared with other children, any ability is above average. In the eyes of others, he is considered an all-round outstanding talent. Rowan is also good at organizing and directing. After all, not everyone has the ability to pull a bunch of children and take care of them at a young age. The fraternity in the elementary school can be organized. In addition to the help of senior members of the Turtle Dove Alliance, such as Yuzov and Masha, Rowan takes the lead. And she followed Ezio not so much because she had the idea of controlling the Brotherhood. So she wanted to control the leader of the Brotherhood. But in fact, she is more like Ezio's Nani who specializes in helping deal with the aftermath of professional troublemakers. In any case, these three people are the golden lineup and sharp knife team that the Brotherhood can produce today. But with such a sharp knife team standing in the ghost market, looking at the scene in front of them, they felt like they had no idea what to do. There were many people passing by, but no one looked up at them. If Ezio is currently in a stealth operation, 
it is certainly a good thing to have no sense of presence. And he may also say something bad about the results of his stealth. But the three of them stood in front of the market without any concealment. And they were still ignored. People coming and going didn't even glance at me. Such abnormal phenomena have to be said to be a bit strange. What's going on? Ezio asked confusedly. It's just that the three of them are all young men in their twenties. Even though Rowan was born on the street, he has never seen such a situation. Not to mention the other two, when they were little. At least someone was taking care of them. Although I have been traveling abroad for several years, I am still not very knowledgeable. Kish, who is said to have the best talent, is of little use in such a situation. In the past, all his talents were used to train himself. Although his mind was quick and alert, he had no experience. He didn't even think about it, so he naturally didn't know how to deal with the situation in front of him. In the end, it was Ezio, a decisive and bright person, who made the decision and said, Forget it. I can't think of an answer standing here. Let's take a walk and see, Rowan asked. Are we going to separate? Upon hearing this, Ezio immediately objected, said, No, this is not the holy city. We are familiar with the top and bottom of the holy city, and we know where to run when we need to run. If this place is separated, if someone has an accident, it will be difficult for others to support us, and we may not be able to connect. I don't know the situation. Let's go together. Maybe someone can see something that others haven't noticed. The other two people agreed with Ezio's opinion. Moreover, when three people move together, they can pay attention to more directions. The blind spots behind the scenes are watched over by fellow travelers, which makes people feel more at ease. They first walked to the vendor closest to them. On the temporary shelf, there were some withered and rotten vegetable leaves, and their original appearance was no longer visible. Several other items such as baskets, wooden spoons and bowls that would not rot would have accumulated a layer of dust and had not been taken care of. But it was obvious that the stall owner was standing aside, staring blankly into the distance. His skin color doesn't look like the bloodless blue of an undead creation, but it doesn't look like the elastic rosy color of a living person either. The two eyeballs were normal, not gouged out, leaving only two holes, but there was no emotion hidden inside, and they were empty. The reason why we can confirm that the other party is not an undead is because in that home, there is a real necromancer and an undead apprentice who work with corpses all day long. Even the life bishops in the Church of Three Holy Lights gather together to study the mysteries inside the human body. Oh, the bishops of life have set up another mountain. Although they were still under the Church of Three Holy Lights, they formed the Knights of the Hospital, an organization that does both healing and killing. Because there are these people messing around, Ezio knows exactly what the real undead creation should look like. In short, they are not like the living people in front of them. They look alive, but they are like empty sh. LS without souls. Soulless? Ezio felt as if he had grasped something key. Chapter 1486 The Crisis is Coming. I tentatively moved the things on the stall. But the stall owner still didn't respond. Even when he poked the stall owner with his finger, he still looked like a dead person who didn't care. Ezio deliberately threw the wooden bowl in his hand, causing some noise. The three of them immediately looked in three directions. They were nervous, but also wanted to see what reaction it would cause. But everything is business as usual. This is something quite abnormal. No longer focusing on the stall in front of them. Ezio and Kish both looked in the same direction. Rowan followed the gaze of the two men. And this look also made her see something fishy. There are still different opinions on whether there is a sixth sense on earth. And there is no conclusion. The most important thing is that this thing cannot undergo effective scientific verification or data analysis. So earth scientists can only say no. But in Lost Land... This can be regarded as a prominent skill, regardless of whether it is a warrior or a magician. When one's skills reach a high level, there will always be some connection with the external environment. If there are any abnormal changes in the environment, it will certainly stimulate the attention of these people. If the person involved is a believer in a certain god, it would be even simpler. One of the divine favors is danger prediction, which is a permanent additional attribute. It's just that this danger prediction is not a situation and will work at any time. Basically, those who are opposed to the God who bestowed divine grace on them, and even those who can be regarded as their old enemies, will definitely react. And sometimes there will be situations where the camps are in opposition. Therefore, this kind of danger prediction is rather due to the fact that he is on the same side. Then when he meets his boss's opponent, the extra attention from his boss will make him feel uncomfortable all over. It's not really a warning of danger. 
however. Both Ezio and Kish would react at the same time. On the one hand, it is related to their talents and backgrounds. And on the other hand, it also shows how big the crisis is. Kish took the shield on his back into his hands and tightened the straps on his arms. Ezio relaxed his left hand, ready to pop out his hidden sword at any time. At the same time, he took out the ordinary long sword from his waist and held it in his right hand. Seeing that the two people next to him were so careful about their affairs, Luowen was certainly not an ignorant novice. But she just took off the horn bow she was carrying and held it in her hand. This kind of preparation is enough for her to deal with various emergencies and fire quickly. The strange atmosphere that aroused the three people's alarm has actually been there since they approached the ghost market. It's just that it's relatively thin on the outside. The further you go in a certain direction, the more obvious the disgust that comes from your bones becomes. Later, even Rowan felt the strong unpleasantness. Even the air seemed to be filled with a foul stench. A smell of sulfur. Suddenly a warning flashed through the minds of the three people. They looked at each other, and maybe that was the answer. Not far away. There was a loud noise. As the pace progresses, the sound becomes more pronounced. Ezio slowed down, bowed his body, and walked cautiously toward the mountain wall and the shadows among the trees. The two people at the back followed suit, bowed and walked the catwalk, especially Kish. He walked even more cautiously because he was fully armored. Fortunately, the joints had been specially treated. And he had mastered many techniques to still move silently while wearing this outfit. So he didn't cause too much noise. As they got closer to the top of a hill, the three Ezios lowered their bodies lower. In the end, they simply lay on the ground and crawled forward. They arrived at the ghost market near noon. And the current season is summer. Even if the Sulitan Empire is located in the north, it should be warm at noon. But the fact is that a chill from the bottom of my heart becomes more and more obvious as I advance. When they finally climbed to the highest point on the hill, they looked out and saw a horrifying and frightening scene. It was originally a hilly terrain, but now a huge pit has been dug out. There are layers on top of each other at the edge, with scaffolding erected to connect the top and bottom. There is also a wooden lifting arm that is rotating to transport the objects on the platform to the upper or lower level. There are also various strangely shaped fire pits, and stoves burning brightly, because there are many demons and orcs walking in it, forging weapons and armor. There was also a phalanx of orcs or little demons assembled, shouting and shouting, training each other to cooperate and move. In the center of the pit is a tall independent portal, the thick gate pillars that need to be surrounded by several people, or the horizontal door rails, are all composed of miscellaneous and tangled human bodies. As for whether those people were human sacrifices or just sculptures, Ezio didn't even consider it. Under the living doorpost, it is not possible to see the scene on the other side at a glance. Instead, there were clouds of black smoke gathering and lingering. Occasionally, the smoke that ran out of range would rush back fiercely, as if it was attracted. Seeing this strange scene, the three people lying on the hill knew what was going on, even if they were inexperienced. After all, it involves the dark history of the gentleman in the family. It is said, that a certain magician was originally the tower owner of a magic tower. The problem was that he was frightened by the door to the abyss that was about to open. Not only did he return his entire fortune to the magician association, but he also eventually left his hometown. And near any portal, there will be a gathering of half-orcs, a race with an evil camp per capita, and devils, a specialty of the abyss. This is a door to the abyss. Moreover, it has already been opened, and the abyss has sent a large number of troops to the complete abyss gate at one end of the puzzle. Ezio immediately realized what he should do in this bright crisis. Anyway, I didn't rush forward, thinking that the three of me could break through the open abyss door. No matter how many people there were, it wouldn't be enough to kill them, but to spread the information here so that the fans can prepare and even counterattack. Judging from the current situation of this door, troops have already been assembled, although I don't know how many there are and why the opponent hasn't activated it yet. But the southern border of the Silatang Empire, where the Gate of the Abyss is located, will inevitably become a scorched earth. But for such a big thing, you can't just run back and yell a few times. And others will believe it. There is no definite evidence. Even if someone is willing to believe him. The matter is serious, and it is inevitable that he will have to send someone to verify it. Going back and forth is just a waste of time. Otherwise, let these demons rush out and wreak havoc. This saves you a lot of saliva. And you don't have to explain it to others until others believe it. Anyway, the devil is about to kill you right in front of you. Anyone who can close his eyes and shout. 
I don't believe, is dead. But Ezio felt that he was not like that heartless magician. Nor was he his biological father and son. That guy can still sleep soundly despite the sky falling apart outside. As a young man with great ambitions, he couldn't just sit back and watch the demons unite with the orcs to wreak havoc on the land. As for how to obtain evidence that can convince others, if it had been a few years earlier, I might have found a way to sneak into the gate of the Abyss camp and steal a few items with obvious demonic marks. Preferably documents, secondly weapons, and at last, sundries with the aura of the Abyss. To threaten others. Proof that the demonic invasion is real. Especially paperwork. The Abyss world and demons rarely use letters to communicate. To be able to resort to abyssal writing. In addition to the magical power of the writing itself. Its content must also involve quite important secrets. But this kind of thing is hard to come by. Ezio didn't even think about sneaking into the camp to search for this unknown thing. His idea was simple. In the early years, photos for use in the forum mall already existed. After these years of development, although the mall system has not taken root outside the southwest peninsula, other regions have also relied on the forum to build their own blocks with similar functions. Especially the area of taking pictures of products has also made great progress in technology. And people are not satisfied with using this technology only to take photos for selling goods. Some adventurers who travel around also like to use this method to record their lives. For adventurers, one of the great advantages of doing this is that they have evidence to show when they brag. What a great asset. Another hidden benefit is that when you die outside, you can still leave some clues for others to know about yourself during your lifetime. However, Ezio was not yet ready for such a fashionable hobby. The most important thing was that he did not have any spare money on hand. The water mirror magic stone can be connected to the forum. If you bring your own magic stone, the cost of the forum system is only one gold coin. This is an incredibly cheap magic item. But based on the magic of the arcane eye, the magic stone that can be used to take photos is worth a lot of money. In addition to the genuine version produced by a certain magician, there are also many pirated copies made by other magicians. Although the Magician's Association in the Lost Land has taken a prototype to protect intellectual property rights, it is still full of loopholes. Unfortunately, no matter which version it is, it is not affordable for Ezio. It's just that he can't afford it. And there are people around him who can afford it. Ezio immediately signaled to Rowan, who was lying next to him. Although they were lying on a hill, quite far away from the gate of the Abyss camp, no demon or orc would be able to hear them even if they spoke. However, the shocking scene in front of them still scared the three young people so much that they did not dare to make a sound and even move cautiously. Rowan looked at Ezio making weak gestures and was a little confused at first. They have designed tactical gestures, but those things only have a simple communication effect and do not include everything so it is normal to not understand what Ezio wants to express. But after a few rounds of gestures, Luowen also figured it out. Even if you don't understand it at first, it's not difficult to understand what the best approach is based on the current situation. She quickly took out a thumb-sized cat's eye stone from the silk brocade bag that was close to her. This is a photographic stone made cheaply from Sister Kaya and made with the best carrier of the arcane eye. It was designed and made by Mr. himself. Normally, she could regard this stone as life. If I could leave anything to this world, it would be my own travel pay stored in the cat's eye stone. Now this cat's eye stone has a more important mission. After Rowan took out the stone, he aimed it at the gate of the abyss camp. Chapter 1487 Patrol Team Cat's eye is not a type of magic stone, but it is also a magic material in the land of wonders. It can store power and engrave magic patterns. The only difference from the authentic magic stone is that it does not have the ability to naturally restore power. What Rowan did was activate the magic in the cat's eye stone. And a small light and shadow interface immediately appeared on the stone. Someone designed some point and shoot functions based on the digital camera gameplay he played with before time travel. This allows people who are not magicians to operate the cat's eye camera smoothly. Rowan just started continuous shooting. Recording all the demon camps at the gate of the abyss. But just when she was about to change the angle and continue filming the situation in the devil's camp. Someone suddenly grabbed her shoulder and pulled her to the side. Rowan rolled around a few times and half propelled herself up. Ezio and Kish were already standing in front of her. Not far away. There was a half-encirclement network formed by a half-orc team. Tightening in the direction of the three of them. Where Rowan was originally lying. An axe was being struck. Teams of ten mostly use melee weapons. The most threatening ones are probably the two people standing behind and using throwable short guns. As for the other orcs. They are larger than ordinary people. 
and they are all powerful warriors. Realizing that the three intruders had already stood up and bit on guard, the half-orc team leader played with the axe in his hand and said with a sneer, Those demons said that there were bugs running around to peek. I didn't believe it at first, but I didn't expect that there were really three bugs. Tell me how you want to die. If it's interesting enough, I wouldn't mind cooperating with you. Rowan was just about to mock the orcs in front of him, but he didn't expect that the two big boys standing in front of him answered seriously. The wind will blow soon. Die peacefully at home. Just by hearing the answer, he knew who said it, and Rowan didn't even have the energy to taunt. Boring. Boring. You don't think we will provide you with a big-ass woman to play with until you die. Even I don't have such treatment. As for the guy who said he died peacefully, you shouldn't hacking be here. Hide well at home and come out without smelling like milk. The half-orc team leader commented inexplicably. If it weren't for the important image in the cat's eye stone in his hand, Rowan would have wanted to throw the stone directly to the opposite side. Finally, she still knew the importance. So she first put the cat's eye stone in her arms and then put on the horn bow with a light movement. With the convenience of being covered by two men in front of him, Rowan took out four arrows from the quiver on his waist, holding one between his fingers. After quickly assessing the situation, she didn't wait for the two people in front of her to continue chatting with the orcs, and shouted directly, Squat down! Ezio and Kish understood each other, and while squatting down, they moved left and right out of the way. Rowan fired four arrows in a row, hitting four orcs accurately. However, among the four orcs, only one was fatally injured by an arrow shooting into his eye. Although the other three fell to the ground, the severity of their injuries could not be determined for the time being. The place where the four orcs fell was also the direction from which Ezio and the three men broke out. None of them chose the gap that was obviously open because there was a high probability of an ambush in that direction. Although the orcs are not very united and have no centripetal force, they are all self-taught in team tactics. So Ezio and the others didn't want to bet on whether they were the only orc team in front of them, and whether there was no ambush in the obvious gap. Rowan is also very particular about the breakthrough points he chooses. Among the four orcs who fell, one used a throwable short gun, and there were several reserves behind him. Moreover, this direction was also the route they took when they came. Fighting back the same way was the last thing they needed to worry about whether the terrain was unfamiliar. After walking through it once, the three of them had at least a clear understanding of what was going on on the road. Even if they didn't understand it clearly, the side with the most remaining troops of the orcs was still in the direction protected by Kish's shield. The only remaining orc on the other side was completely unable to withstand Ezio's pounce attack. The swords didn't even touch each other before Ezio wiped the sword across the opponent's neck and walked away. The three people rushed out of the orcs' encirclement. The orcs who were lying in wait just screamed and ran out of their hiding places. However, their position was some distance away from where Ezio and others broke through, and they could not catch up for a moment. At this time, the short, thin orcs who use throwing weapons show their value. Although the javelins they threw or the arrows they shot failed to hurt anyone, they were enough to make Kish, who was in charge of the guard, run left and right to block the arrows and javelins, slowing down his escape. Upon seeing this, Ezio immediately said, Kish, you take Rowan and run first. I will take the lead. The warrior in heavy armor glanced over. Ezio didn't wait for him to ask questions, and said directly, the most important thing now is the information on Rowan. Ensuring that she can leave is the first priority. And when it comes to fighting in a melee and escaping, you are not as good as me. Besides, I have that ring. You can always call for support. When you come back, let's kill the demon together. Kish finally only replied this sentence. Ezio smiled and said, Together. He slowed down his pace. At the same time, he turned around to deflect arrows that might hit himself and his companions. However, he smiled and whispered, The ring has been returned a long time ago, but I don't plan to die here. Being killed by the minions would be too funny. As the gap between the two sides grew larger, the pursuing orcs also faintly divided into two teams. One group was still pursuing at full speed, chasing Kish and Rowan as they left. The other team readjusted its position, intending to surround Ezio, who had left the team. But how could the person responsible for blocking the rear attack let the enemy chase his comrades? Ezio kicked hard and quickly rushed into another group of cues. With the hidden sword in his left hand and the long sword in his right hand, he was able to kill more than a dozen orcs in one go. But such an action also caused Ezio to be surrounded by the orc team that was originally coming towards him. In addition to a solid surrounding net, 
Those orcs who were not fatally injured also stood up and rejoined the battle. When Ezio saw this, he screamed and spat on the ground. If there was a fight between humans, someone would probably fall to the ground and pretend to be dead until the battle was over if they were even slightly injured. But the cruelty of the orcs gave them the consciousness to fight to the death. It is this that allows the orc army to still have the upper hand in battles, with equal numbers even though its armaments are inferior to those of humans. But Ezio was not afraid of these orcs at all. As long as they hit the fatal spot, no matter how strong their vitality is, they will still die. And compared to the demon prince Azat, the movements of these orcs were so slow that it would make him yawn. There is no possibility of losing this battle. Regardless of whether this kind of self-confidence was simply due to the newborn's lack of fear of tigers, or it was brought about by strong strength, Ezio had no idea of escape due to a mere numerical disadvantage. His eyes were bloodshot, and his expression was crazy. The long sword in his right hand cut through the orc's tattered armor. Even if it did cut through the armor and cause damage to the orc himself, the damage to the long sword was also not light. It looked like the sword would be useless in just a few more attacks. However, the hidden sword in his left hand was still shining brightly, and the blood grooves and lines were filled with the blood of the orcs, falling drop by drop. Weapons made from dragon teeth cannot be destroyed unless they are made of materials of the same level. Madness cannot frighten orcs. They will only respond with more madness. The collision between more than a dozen orcs and Ezio happened in an instant, and then ended very quickly. When he reached the first few orcs, he had killed. The long sword he bought in the countryside was completely damaged and could no longer be used. Ezio forgot to count. But the subsequent battles were not all about the hidden blade. Instead, they used local materials more flexibly and used whatever weapons they seized from the orcs to kill people. There is a large blade that is so thick that it is more suitable for smashing people than for cutting people. There were axes, there were maces, and there were muskets for throwing. When these weapons were in Ezio's hands, although they failed to display their respective characteristics, as long as they could penetrate or cut into the enemy's fatal points, there would be nothing wrong with them. This was the only thought in the crazy Ezio's mind. However, there are no superfluous parts in his movements, and there are no tricks to confuse people. In the disadvantage of having one enemy and many enemies, the most important thing is to deal with the enemy more effectively and reduce the number of enemies faster. The number of orcs is both an advantage and a disadvantage. Needless to say, the advantage is that they do not realize what kind of enemy they are facing. As long as Ezio is not facing him head-on, his mentality will be relaxed, preoccupied with looking for the enemy's weaknesses and opportunities to intervene. He did not pay attention to his own protection. Such a good opportunity is also the occasion where Ezio's flexibility and speed can best be used. He can often kill the orcs in unexpected ways and from unexpected angles. None of the victims realized they were being targeted before they died, completely confused by the numerical advantage. They thought they had a sure chance of victory. When the madness in the half-orc's eyes recedes, his life will disappear. When the last orc pursuer fell, Ezio, panting heavily, looked at the newly appeared character, wearing gorgeous aristocratic clothes. He has the same thin posture as a human being. However, the red skin and the horns on his head showed that the person in front of him was extraordinary. The demon who appeared clapped his hands and walked forward. He said in a singing falsetto, Wonderful! Wonderful! Your crazy attitude reminds me of a great king who is also famous for his madness. You must not be that bloodline in the human world. Wipe the blood on your face that does not belong to you to avoid blocking your vision. Ezio did not forget to reply. I don't know about this kind of thing but I have no idea of clinging to irresponsible parents. So even if you help me find relatives, you won't get much benefit. Oh, when I talk about the benefits, it goes without saying, am I like a devil who talks only about benefits? Isn't it similar? Ezio said with a smile. That's me. There's no question of resemblance. The demon stepped forward slowly, showing its ugly and fierce face and sharp claws, and said, are you ready to die? I'll kill you and the other two guys who run away. I have to chase you. You really make me worry. Ezio suppressed his smile slightly and stared at the demon with sharp eyes. Said, I have been ready to die for a long time. But it won't be today. And it won't be by your hands. Chapter 1488 The First Battle June of the year 748 of the Aramaic calendar. Late summer. As autumn approaches. A piece of news shocks the world. Demonic invasion. At first. There were just a lot of photos circulating on the forum. But there is no consensus on the authenticity of things like photos. On the one hand, 
It is also because the devil's camp in the photo was shot repeatedly from only one angle and distance. Secondly, it can be seen that the main body of the army is not demons, but half-orcs, a race with almost all members of the evil camp, even though there is a seemingly obvious giant portal. Some people question that it is not the door to the abyss, but a giant portal connecting the underground world, although the abyss invasion is about the same seriousness as the underground world invasion. The development of the forum has also cultivated many bad guys. Anyway, as long as the theme of abyss invasion is refuted, such people feel inexplicably happy. However, the news of the demonic invasion was immediately verified by the regional branch of the Adventurers Guild of the Suritan Empire. At the same time, the branch openly recruits more adventurers through various communication channels of the Adventurer Association to conduct powerful reconnaissance at designated locations. The so-called powerful investigation refers to an investigation method that does not use infiltration as a means. Instead, we use combat as the premise to test the defense situation in various areas of the designated location. It no longer cares about alerting the enemy. It's more like announcing, I'm already paying attention to you. The reason why the regional branch of the Adventurers Guild came forward to verify this news is because someone set a big demon's head. Things like demon smuggling into the lost lands are endless and difficult to stop. Sometimes the devil strays into the space passage and gets lost in a lost place. Sometimes the devil tears apart the space barrier and invades, and sometimes someone summons the devil, typically leading a wolf into the house. But these demons will not be any high-level species. Demons that can come to the lost land due to various accidents or human summons are usually little demons, horned demons, succubi, etc. Their strength varies, but they have not yet touched the taboo of the mystery's isolation. And the cost of breaking through the space is the lowest, making them the easiest to respond to the mist's call. But the big devil is different. Going up from the big devil is the demon lord. And even further up is the abyss lord or evil god. That is to say, the great devil has touched the threshold of qualitative change. Taking that step is equivalent to the existence of the lost god. Of course, such an abyssal creature cannot freely travel between the two worlds. Unless it is just a projection that responds to the summons. This may still appear in the lost land. But demons who are merely projections will return directly to the abyss after death. Leaving no remains in the lost lands. Since someone can hold up a big devil's head as evidence. It can explain a lot of things. The most important thing is that the great demon belongs to the human aristocratic class. Which means that any great demon is its own force. As long as there is a big demon, there must be other demons. Only in rare cases does the arch demon act alone. This is why the Adventurers Guild called and people to investigate. It's similar to a saying in a certain time traveler's hometown. If you see one cockroach, it means there are 30 more cockroaches hiding nearby. Another reason is to need more evidence to confirm the scale of the abyss invasion although a huge military camp has appeared in the photo. This is only a single piece of evidence. More evidence was needed to convince others, especially those noble lords, to send troops. At this stage, the only ones who will be moved by the news are some adventurers with a strong sense of justice and unrelenting passion. They are either alone or in small groups, and their mobility allows them to move across areas and move towards a certain place. Even if you return without success, it is just a waste of time and travel expenses. But if the noble lord send troops, it will be of a different nature. In a time-traveling world, there is a saying that a cannon fires and a thousand tales of gold is said. However, even in an era without cannons, the cost of mobilizing an army is not something that can be solved by a few people and a few days of rations. Rather, there is a series of mobilization, influence and consumption. Perhaps adventurers from outside the Suritan Empire have not gathered so quickly into the areas suspected of being invaded. However, there are some adventurers stationed in the nearby area. It's just that there was no danger in the ghost market area before. So few people moved there. Only then did such a big thing happen. And the Adventurers Guild was not the first to grasp it. Now that there is preliminary evidence, how could the surrounding adventurers just let the situation develop and ignore it? Of course, heading towards the ghost market. People who join the profession of adventurers not only have confidence in their own skills, but also have a vision for the future. This longing is the hope that after becoming famous, not only can one be admired by thousands of people, but also rely on this fame to live a nourished life and have a peaceful old age. Speaking of which, the people who would become adventurers in the lost world were similar to the people who would become the showbiz on earth. There are thousands of troops crossing the single plank bridge, 
and only a few can become superstars. More people become piles of corpses, lying under the feet of successful people, or they just waste their lives half read. The powerful investigation of Mindy certainly does not mean just scattering people out randomly. All those who go out, whether individuals or teams, must have their direction and route arranged by the Adventurers Guild. The factors that allow for return can be that the team suffers serious damage or runs out of supplies and is unable to continue moving forward. It is up to the captain to judge whether to abort the mission and report the results. Or you can return after reaching the designated turnaround point to complete the mission. The intention of doing this is, of course, to maximize manpower. Instead of letting people go their own way in a chaotic manner, which may result in some places where people gather together and some places where no one cares. Another purpose is that even if the people sent out are blocked and unable to return, the Adventurers Guild, as the Unified Command, will know in which direction there may be problems. It can be said that the Adventurers who conduct powerful reconnaissance can still play a role even if they die. As time goes by, news continues to come back, and the fact of the Abyss invasion becomes more and more clear. There is even more information about the Gate of the Abyss, as well as the names of some of the invading demons learned from the Orc captives. The devil who has a name, and is spread among others is no small person. It's like being given a different name or title among adventurers in the Lost Lands. Which means that there must be something special about that adventurer. However, knowing the names of demons also has the advantage of being able to follow the clues, and know which demons may be involved. This level of invasion cannot be accomplished by one or two big demons. Regardless of whether there is a bigger demon behind them, or their own contact relationship, they can learn something from it. Although the devil is not good at group battles, it is not incapable of fighting. There are also traces of members who can form groups, at least in the first wave of offensive. No demon will easily introduce someone who is hostile to itself, and will definitely find a companion who is close to it first. Whether there will be betrayal in the future will of course depend on future changes. If the offensive is thwarted later, and external forces have to be brought in, the devil will be able to put aside its past grudges in the face of interests, and target those who cannot deal with it. In the face of huge interests, the personal vendettas of the demons are not that important. As for where this information about the abyss came from, of course, it came from some well-fed magicians who often wandered into the abyss. Most of them are there to collect special materials that are not available in the lost land. And only a few of them are linked to demons. Logically speaking, in the latter case, it would not be so easy to reveal information because it would be easy to reveal the secret of his connection with the Abyss. But if the big bosses behind these people belong to the opposing camp to the demons participating in the invasion, then it is normal for them to hold back. Letting those guys who plan to eat alone get their heads smashed will also help you reach out later. Won't it? As for the hidden piles in the Lost Land, this is not a big problem for the devil. At their level, it doesn't hurt to expose a hidden stake or two. Who doesn't have a lot of people like this at his disposal? But what is regrettable is that even if there is conclusive evidence, the authorities still have no intention of asking for help. Even the surrounding countries are worried about whether the demon army will enter their territory. Still dare not send troops into the territory of an empire in the name of fighting against demons. Without permission, this is no different than declaring war. Only the adventurers with the highest degree of freedom took the initiative to gather in the direction of the Gate of the Abyss. Of course, the Suritan Empire was not unresponsive. The gate of the abyss is open in their country. And the invasion of underground forces by demons and orcs is an established fact. If we don't find a way to expel them, is it possible to let them wreak havoc and destroy? It's just that no one has guessed what the Suli Tang Empire's strategic policy is. And they just think their approach is weird. Instead of mobilizing the entire empire's military strength, they just ordered the Khan, who was guarding the southern border to recruit the tribes in the southern border to form a miscellaneous army cooperate with the main force of the empire guarding the southern border, and count 100,000 troops to conquer the gate of the abyss. Such strength, if placed in a war between human kingdoms, would be enough for the Suritan Empire to sweep through the surrounding small countries for nearly a thousand miles until it reaches the border of the Guana Empire, but based on the past experience of the human world resisting the invasion of the abyss. Such a military force is not even an appetizer for the devil. Is the Silatang Empire quite confident? Looking at history, it is true that the Gate of the Abyss has never been opened within the borders of an empire. Most of them are in remote areas, and countless lives must be filled in the early stage to buy time for the human world to integrate and mobilize the army. Only by gathering enough strength can it be possible to push back the demon's army and finally close the door to the Abyss. However, 
This time the demon army directly kicked the iron plate of an empire. And it should be a bloody blow. And then it ends like this. And everyone is happy. Unfortunately, the opposite happened. The southern border Khan of the Silatang Empire forcibly recruited the adventurers who had gathered in the adventurers' guild to form an army of thousands of people and used this army as the vanguard and set up a supervising team behind them. They are allowed to advance but not retreat and they attack in the direction of the gate of the abyss. Then all the adventurers died. Since all the fords are dead, let's move in with the motley crew who dares to disobey the great Khan's orders. Then all the miscellaneous troops united by various tribes died. By the time the Khan of the southern border realized that he should retreat, he was already surrounded by heavy siege, including the army of his own tribe and the regular army of the empire. They were also wiped out in one battle. The first battle between the human camp and the demon camp ended with the annihilation of the human side, and the morale of the abyssal forces was greatly boosted. Chapter 1489 The Inevitable War In the holy city of Estali, there is an attic in the mansion of a certain time-traveling magician. Where is the crisis that the Lord of Wealth once warned about? Lin feels that this question already has an answer. And this answer should be something that I had already thought of but had been ignored. What are the limits to moving to a higher level when attacking the two ancients of the world tree? From the overall perspective of Lost Land, the series of coincidences is the biggest problem. The world tree connects up to eight alien worlds. The mysterious land has eight powers. There are eight fixed passages between the mysterious land and the abyss, which are the gates of the abyss. These eight passages are also guarded by corresponding guardians, making it impossible for both parties to travel freely. Since it is necessary to help World Tree connect to the ninth and even the tenth alien world in the future to achieve a higher level of results, someone is promoting the ninth power plan. I hope that the birth of the ninth power can break through the original limitations of the lost land. And this plan is also supported by the ethereal will of the land. The biggest evidence is the attitude of the guardian lord. Under normal circumstances, if there were any time-traveling people who dared to take risks and cause trouble, they would have been patted into meat patties and died until they could no longer die. However, someone is still jumping around and even dares to dance in front of the Lord of Guardians. It is definitely not because someone is strong enough that the big boss has no choice but to do anything. The only reason is because the backer behind Apollo stopped his behavior. Then as long as the lost land fulfills its wish, the ninth power will be born. Then, the world trees can theoretically open a connecting channel to the ninth alien world and increase their strength to a large level. Correspondingly, the emergence of a ninth fixed passage connecting the mysterious land and the abyss is a very reasonable thing. Yes, so reasonable. Someone thought to himself, in line with the traditional virtues from the blood of my hometown, Taishan collapses in front of me. But my face does not change. Lin didn't have much emotion about the abyss invasion. Even the emergence of the ninth gate of the abyss was largely due to the consequences of his promotion of the ninth power plan. Anyway, the door is opened at the southern border of the Silatang Empire, which is still thousands of kilometers away from where he lives now. According to the standards of my hometown, it seems to be just a few provinces away. But considering that this is a world where troops march only on two feet, even if the coalition of demons and orcs can support the war without logistical supplies, it is not so easy to cross such a distance. As for the mainstream race in Lost Land, the human world has been recuperating for more than 200 years since the religious wars. As long as you don't collapse and make fatal mistakes, resisting the abyss invasion is not a big problem. Since no one will come to his door for a while, he has mysterious confidence in several major empires. A certain time traveler covered his head with a pillow as a matter of course, so that he could not hear what was going on. Anyway, if the sky falls, there will be tall people to hold it up and there is no need for him. A short man who is soft-spoken and well-guarded. As for the accusation made by the initiator, we must firmly deny it. We even have to find ways to prevent some people in the know from making unnecessary associations. Because there is no definite evidence to prove whether the two things that promote the ninth power and the opening of the ninth abyss gate are related or unrelated. Just because things happen before and after, and there is an intersection, does not mean there is a causal relationship between the two. This could also be due to coincidence. But for someone who was full of confidence, after seeing the first wave of operations from the official, that inexplicable confidence became not so full. The Suli Tang Empire gave away the first 100,000 people, which had two major subsequent impacts. One is that the southern border of the Suli Tang Empire fell in a short period of time, because all the string masters from various tribes in the southern border were recruited, and they were all killed in one battle. The remaining hold, 
weak, women and children of the tribe were unable to resist the coalition forces of demons and orcs. They were lucky enough to escape from the coalition's encroachment range. Unfortunately, they became sacrifices to the demons just like the men in their tribe. Secondly, the war dead not only became food for the orc army, but also became sacrifices to the devil. A large-scale sacrifice of this scale caused a certain lord of the abyss to descend directly to the lost land. If the lord of the abyss sneaks into the lost land, he will be struck by the guardian lord's true form at the first opportunity. Stowaways are already in a weak state, and when they meet the most powerful god in the land, they usually have no choice but to return home, or just go to the resurrection point. But this time it came through the gate of the abyss and a large-scale sacrifice. The Lord of Guardians has no reason to expel the Lord of the Abyss who descended in this way. This is like someone traveling back home, holding a passport, obtaining legal visa authorization, and passing through customs legally. What reasons do domestic police units use to forcibly deport someone from the country? The arrival of the Lord of the Abyss undoubtedly boosted the morale of the demon and orc army, making them more cheerful when killing people. In addition to the two major impacts of this wave of situation changes, there are of course also numerous smaller impacts. One of them is the attitude of the adventurers killed and adventurers. Ignoring the tactical advantages of teamwork among the adventurers, they forcibly formed a legion and pushed them to the frontal battlefield. It would be fine if he won the battle, but his sacrifice would be in vain. Only a few people could escape from that meat grinder-like battlefield. All of these people are rare strongmen in the world, and no one has escaped unscathed. Among those who lost their lives, there were also dragon slayers, and demon slayers, who could stand alone in other places. However, these people all died carelessly. The actions of the Sulatang Empire certainly aroused the anger of the adventurers. But even if the Adventurers Guild is a pan-continental transnational organization, they do not have the confidence to face an empire and file a lawsuit. And they have no way to seek justice for those who died in vain. However, they can stand idly by, not crossing the border, and watch coldly as the Abyss and underground coalition forces wreak havoc. In fact, due to the nature of the Adventurers Guild's organizational structure, they have no way to force the Adventurers to do anything, nor can they restrict them. Therefore, when the information about the Gate of the Abyss leaked out, the Guild could not stop the Adventurers from gathering towards the Ghost Market. Today, the Guild is still unable to force Adventurers to enter the Suritan Empire and join forces to fight against the Evil Camp's coalition forces. As for the Mercenary Guild, this group of people who are greedy for money realize that they are not as good as the adventurers. As long as no one pays, they won't do anything. However, the defeat of the Suli Tang Empire and the subsequent changes also caused the mercenary guild to take action. Some small kingdoms or noble lords located in the south of the empire, in addition to mobilizing military forces in their territories, also opened their warehouses, moved out gold, silver, cloth and other items and hired large numbers of private armed forces. These small kingdoms and nobles planned to build a line of defense south of the southern border of the Silatang Empire to prevent the evil camp's coalition forces from invading southward. Adventurers also gather in these places. Those with weak reconnaissance and stealth abilities began to form an army and conduct team training. Those who are good at team coordination and investigation serve as scouts to constantly gather information. But even if they cross the border of the Silatang Empire, they would sneak in and leave secretly. Not only are they afraid of being captured by the evil camp, but they are also afraid of being captured by the Suli Tang Empire. By the way, after submitting the information about the Gate of the Abyss, the three Ezios evacuated the southern border of the Suritan Empire. Therefore, they did not die in vain in the ensuing war. The reason why they left was, of course, because the three people who escaped did not escape unscathed, and all of them suffered major or minor injuries. Ezio, who brought back the big demon's head, looked like he was covered in blood. That he could return to the human gathering place alive was like a miracle in the eyes of outsiders. On the one hand, he needs to rest. And on the other hand, he also needs to change into war equipment against demons and orcs, instead of the original ordinary adventure equipment. So they left the Suritan Empire early, and were carried back to the holy city of Estali by the Automobile Center's exclusive fast airship compared with the actions of the countries in the southern border of the empire. The slowness of the people involved in the Suli Tang Empire is simply unbelievable. Except for the death of the first wave of southern Khan kings. There were no other defensive or massing actions. Like a turtle that had one of its legs bitten off. Its head and other three legs had not yet received the pain signal. So they did not move at all. 
The Sule Tang Empire's silence is like acquiescing to the evil camp alliance to take root in the land of confusion. For a time, rumors that the great Khan of the Suritan Empire had reached an agreement with the devil spread loudly both on and outside the forum. And the most frightening thing is that from all the signs, this thing may be true. If we don't judge this way, there is no way to explain why the great Khan of the Empire did not take any action in the face of the Abyss invasion, as if he was indulging the other party's actions. It's just that rumors are just rumors after all. For now, no one dares to accuse an empire without evidence, which is equivalent to swaying the emperor's head. Compared with the inaction of the Suli Tang Empire, the reactions of the other four empires are also interesting. The most likely next target is the Guana Empire, which is also the closest. As an established empire with heritage from an ancient country, they have the most experience in dealing with demons. In the past ten years or so, the subjects of the empire, who have become increasingly wealthy thanks to the emerging industries that have emerged around automobile centers and technical guilds, have begun to integrate resources from all aspects to build a new type of army while also expanding their military capabilities. Strength. Although soldiers can fight with swords and armor, but whether you have been trained or not, the effect of fighting is still different. Who wants to waste his life in vain? Besides, even if you don't play defense, you still have to play offense. Find a way to drive the demon back into the abyss and block the broken door. Therefore, no one is dissatisfied because of being recruited. Everyone has the consciousness to fight this battle. The Vader army and the Hater Empire are considered the second group that may encounter an invasion from the evil camp. Of course, a country named after the military is not afraid of war. They have even sent out forward legions, passing through various small countries and heading towards the southern border of the Suli Tang Empire. The military state is also expanding its army and armaments. The Hater Empire stopped fighting for the Oz Plain at the border with the Karlsruhe Empire, and all its extended tentacles shrank, although they dare not relax the defense on the fortress. They have shifted their focus north and set their sights on the Abyss invasion. The Karlsruhe Empire did not take advantage of others' danger. The civil war between humans and the cross-dimensional war against the abyss are two wars of different natures. If the human side is held back, it will easily lead to public outrage. Although with the dignity of the empire, he is not afraid of being criticized by those small countries. But who doesn't want to lose face? No matter how shameless. As long as there is profit. It is everyone's interest to drive the devil out of the lost land. Who could bear to live next door to such a chaotic creature? So the Karlsruhe Empire also ceased. There are even young people who are eager for military success and are exploring ways to go to the northern border of Lost Land. Chapter 1490 Reactions from All Parties Abyssal Invasion is never a small matter. The previous recorded Abyssal Invasion was in the Southwest Peninsula 22 years ago, near the famous Tower of the Great Sage. At that time, it was just a door to the abyss that was about to open, and it attracted the attention of the whole land. Not only all the countries, nobles, and magicians in the southwest peninsula mobilized. But even across the Doomsday Mountains, countries on the other side also sent troops to stop the demons. The end of that war looked like a farce in the eyes of everyone. But in the eyes of the aristocracy, it had a different meaning. That was the bud of a new era. A precursor to the dominance of the Magic Tower. So capable people united to suppress the magician who relied on the forum to amass wealth. There are many people who hope to bring that magician under their command and even more people want that magician to die directly. Unfortunately, the magician was accompanied by a resurrected devil, regardless of whether it is true or false. Those truly powerful people do not want to use their lives to test the authenticity of the rumors. Then things kept changing. Maybe the magician is still jumping up and down. But after all, his influence is not as good as when the forum was released. So some people still pay attention to the magician. But the importance is downgraded, some people simply forget that the magician exists. When that person appeared in everyone's sight again, he was already inviolable. He can start a fight with the Lord of Guardians alone. And he can, completely, destroy the power of an Imperial Grand Duke. These two simple things only illustrate one important point. That is, there is no one or thing in the land that can stop the magician. Perhaps at a heavy price. That person can be eliminated. But why pay such a price for nothing? Are they getting in your way? So being at peace with each other and then ignoring the other person is the best way to deal with it, even if they don't belong to the same force or the same country. Everyone does this with a tacit understanding. Someone is happy that nothing bothers him. Isn't it also his life goal to have more money, less things to do, stay close to home, and sleep until he wakes up naturally? 
But when the abyss invasion happened again, even if the momentum, this time was more fierce and fierce. Everyone continued to ignore the magician who might be able to turn the tide. Intentionally or unintentionally. Apart from anything else. Let the robot fleet come out to sweep and eliminate the demon and orc alliance. Even pushing back to the other side of the abyss gate is not impossible. Even so, everyone still chose to ignore it. Because humans still believe that as long as they are given time and united. There is still a way to drive away those demons. The failure at this stage is just a matter of being caught off guard, or in other words, someone deliberately let the water go. Perhaps it was because when the gate of the abyss was discovered, not only was it fully open, but the devil was also fully prepared. Even the orc allies in the underground world have been found, and the troops have been gathered. That's why he will have the upper hand in subsequent battles. Some people would think that since they are so strong, they can repel the first wave of an empire's offensive. So how prepared should the Demon Alliance be before they actually launch an invasion? Or what are you waiting for? The arrival of the Lord of the Abyss may be the opportunity that the Demon Alliance is waiting for. No one knows who the descendant is yet. But there are several names on the speculated list. The only thing that can be confirmed is that the Great Terror brought about by the arrival of the Great King weighs heavily on everyone's heart. That day, all the young children in Lost Land were crying. The larvae born on that day were also tainted with a trace of demonic aura. The first sound they made when they came into the world was not a cry, but a giggle, as if they were celebrating the arrival of their new master. This is a king of the abyss, who has complete strength and does not compromise at all. An existence comparable to the gods of Midi. If fighting alone, except for a few powerful gods, no god of the lost world dares to say that he can definitely defeat any abyss lord. The strength between them is strength in different fields. The counterpart to the gods of the lost earth is the evil god of the abyss. An existence that also requires believers. The evil god of the abyss is similar to the evil god of the lost earth. But their origins are different. The former is a product of the abyss. And the latter is a native product of Midi. Although the lord of the abyss also has territory assigned to him. He is assigned to the abyss based on his strength. Just like the body of the abyss being sanctified. The strongest person in the abyss can be resurrected at any time. Beating the gods of the land is not only a professional counterpart. It can also be regarded as using one's own strength to attack the enemy's weakness. That is, one hit will be accurate. Therefore, the Demon Alliance has an Abyss Lord sitting in charge. Not only is their morale high, but their fighting spirit has also greatly increased with the courage of having a backer. As soon as they attacked, they captured a large area with overwhelming momentum. It means that after the defeat in the previous battle, the southern border of the Suli Tang Empire had no resistance. It was just a group of stragglers, old, weak, women and children, and without an effective command, they could not withstand the charge of an army of orcs with several times the number. Mercenary guilds are not popular within the five major empires, so naturally they will not gather many people. I need to hire someone temporarily, but I can't find anyone to hire for a while. It is said that the staff of the guild's regional branch itself are a little overwhelmed. The Adventurer's Guild has been placed in a defensive position by the Sulatang Empire before. So it is on high alert. Even if the guild issues a mission to go to Austria for help, no adventurer is willing to take on such a mission where it is obvious that after it is over, he will be pushed out to die. If you can't resist the Empire's tyranny, why can't you hide from it? It is precisely because of the Empire's arrogance, the Empire's slowness, and the Empire's unscrupulousness that all external forces can only watch the demon coalition raging in the Sulatang Empire. No one is willing or dares to lend a helping hand. Everyone is afraid that they will bleed and sweat and not be able to say goodbye in the end. When the time comes, they will be named and liquidated by the Suli Tang Empire. How unfair that would be if you don't intervene before the Empire calls for help. No matter how much the other party blames you, you won't be able to blame it on yourself. After all, no one is obligated to help. Even if the opponent is a mysterious enemy like a demon, the southern part of the Suli Tang Empire fell. But rather than external reasons, most onlookers would attribute the cause to the inaction of the Great Khan of the Suritan Empire. Rumors about colluding with the devil have once again spread, compared to the last time, which calmed down quietly. The discussion this time was more intense. In fact, it was not that the Great Khan of the Empire was not at all distressed by the fall of the southern territory. He just couldn't use all his troops to fight against the demon coalition alone. Among the kings of the four kingdoms of Southeast, Northwest, and south, none of them are harmonious in face and heart. If we lose the suppression of our own army, not only whether the empire can continue to be maintained, 
but also whether our own tribe can continue to exist is still a question. The Khan of the Southern Territory would take action only because the devil appeared within his jurisdiction, and he had to take action. Even though the move was a mistake, not only did he die, but his own tribe was also involved. Now that the demonic power is expanding, it seems likely that it will go to the east or west to kill. As for not going directly into the center of the empire, it is because there is a mountain range across it. Rather than going over the mountain, it's better to take a detour. Different from the already barren northern and southern borders. The eastern and western borders have absorbed many ethnic groups other than the main ethnic group. Building cities and cultivating land. In terms of wealth among the Khans and kings, the Khans in the east and west borders were much richer than those in the north and south. Of course, such a territory would not want to be harmed by demons. Therefore, the kings of Khans in the east and west lost the idea of staying in the Khan court and forcing the Khan to send troops to commit suicide. In terms of urgency, the safety of the territory is of course more important than conspiracy. There is nothing wrong with being a boss and protecting his subordinates provided that the subordinates ask for it. If the boss does it on his own before the people below him make a request, it will be regarded as having ulterior motives, which will make it more troublesome in the future. The current situation in the southern border is that the king of the southern border refused the assistance of the great Khan at first. The Khan kings of the other three realms wanted to guard against the great Khan's expansion of his influence. So they all spoke out to stop it or expressed disapproval. After the death of the Khan of the southern territory, there was no leader in the Southern Territory who was qualified to represent the Southern Territory and ask for the assistance of the Great Khan, even if the other three realms intended to force the Great Khan to consume his own troops. They were blocked by the reason that no one in the Southern Realm asked for it. This was a restriction that the four realms united to force the Khan to agree to. Even if you want to slap yourself at this time, others will pick it up and use it as a shield. So you can say nothing. However, as if the demon coalition knew the limits of the other party's forces. It stopped the momentum of the army's offensive before triggering these people to counterattack. Go back and consolidate the territory you have already established, including transformation, plundering resources, replenishing weapons, and replenishing the population. According to the information obtained from the adventurers who sneak into the occupied areas, this kind of territory management is the most difficult progress for everyone. The coalition of demons and orcs plans to fight for a long time and even wants to take root in lost land. Now all the forces are still in a state of strategic defense. Anyway, the most important thing is to prevent them from moving forward against the demon coalition. If you are unable to do anything, ask for help. In the face of the great cause of expelling demons, no noble would refuse such a request unless it was too late. It was just a matter of how much effort they would contribute. If someone refuses, he will worry about how he will be treated when it is his turn to ask for help. But the demon alliance stopped. He still looks like he wants to manage the territory well. Logically speaking, he should switch from strategic defense to strategic offense at this time, destroying the enemy's intentions and retaking the occupied area at the same time, working in twos and threes on their own. A counterattack plan will definitely fail. What's the difference between that and delivering food? The southern Khan of the Silatang Empire used his own life and an army of 100,000 to prove how difficult the demon coalition in front of him was. Since we can't work independently, we need a unified command. Who will do it? It stands to reason that the Suli Tang Empire is the most suitable to sit in this position. Because no matter who else takes the position, they will definitely not be able to command the empire. But with the Adventurer's Guild's warning at hand, who wants to be forced to die in vain? According to subsequent statistics, a total of 7,186 people from the Adventurer's Guild lost their lives in that final battle. Including the subsequent sweeps of the battlefield. Only 17 people could escape from that battle. It can be said that the total number of adventurers in the northern part of Lost Land has lost more than one-fifth. Those registered strongmen suffered losses of more than one-third. This is a very terrifying number. Enough to affect the ability of humans to suppress natural counterattacks elsewhere. With such a bloody example in the past. Which country would dare to easily hand over command to the Suli Tang Empire? Chapter 1491 The Calm Before the Storm this should have been the best time to sound the clarion call for counterattack. But instead it became a time for everyone to silently accumulate strength. In fact, looking at it from another perspective, there is no guarantee that the strength of any front can penetrate the demon coalition. Only by integrating all the forces together and coordinating attacks from multiple aspects and making the demon coalition lose sight of one thing to another can victory be possible. Since there is no fight, 
the human side is happy to have more preparation time and gather more troops. According to the intelligence, the abyss door in the center of the demon-occupied area has been fully opened. This means that there are no restrictions on the entry and exit of ordinary demons, which means that the war potential of the demons is the entire abyss. As for where the orcs came from, no one wants to delve into this question. The separation between the surface world of the lost world and the underground world is not as clear as that between the lost land and the abyss. Maybe the caves in the mountains will lead to the underground world if you go deeper. Otherwise, the residents of the underground world can always dig up to the surface world if they dig above their heads. But the underground world is not like the surface, where you can travel around without hindrance. The underground world is divided into many isolated areas. The only way to communicate with each other is through teleportation magic, or by man-made channels. However, the latter is time-consuming and laborious, and the channel may not be maintained for a long time. Therefore, it is not difficult for well-informed people or kings of various countries to know the origin of this group of orcs who are mixed with demons. Who else could be a half-orc from this area? Of course, there are several orc tribes headed by the Fire Axe clan who love the art of explosion. Now that the origin is clear, I have a good idea of the opponent's number, areas of expertise, etc. The only thing that worries people is how many women were captured by the Demon Alliance in the early stages of the war. These women have the opportunity to become the breeding ground for orcs. The gestation period and growth period of half-orcs are quite short. If it really drags on for a few years, the data in the orc intelligence will have to be read several times before it is placed on the desks of the kings of various countries. For such a war, if it can be resolved quickly, I believe no one is willing to delay it. But the reality is that when the Gate of the Abyss was discovered, the alliance between demons and orcs had already become a reality. In contrast, the human side was not just slow to react, but also made poor decisions, leading to things taking a turn for the worse. Therefore, in the minds of some people in power who have far-sighted vision, they expect that this will be a protracted and time-consuming war. Even, it's not impossible for lost land to fall. Everything depends on the intensity of the abyss attack. In an instant, a war that was supposed to be in full swing fell into an inexplicable calm. The turbulent waves turned into invisible undercurrents and the kings of various countries had their own plans. Even the emperors of the empire have issues that they are highly capable of thinking about. However, there was a question that flashed through most people's minds, but it didn't stay long before it was overridden by more realistic issues that were right in front of them. The original question was, how did the door to the abyss open? There are many possibilities for opening the gate of the abyss. Some are man-made, some are natural evolutions, but the process has always been gradual. Even if a gap suddenly appears in a corner of a certain mountain, between the lost land and the abyss, the gap will slowly transform into a portal. However, in the process of such a transformation, there will also be many signs that remind people to pay attention. It includes the demonic characteristics of Warcraft and ordinary beasts, abnormal drying and death of plants in large areas, and mutations in newborns and cubs. The adventurers who explore everywhere actually have a considerable function in monitoring places, where the glory of this civilization cannot shine. It's not all about going somewhere to fight and kill, eating and drinking, and living the life away. Such a function does not necessarily have an exclusive investigation mission. Sometimes it is included in other commission tasks. And the Adventurer's Guild records the situation of reporting back to the place. Integrating this information may not cover the entire land, but most of the areas are monitored. Someone's forum monitoring system in the name of True Listening was actually implemented earlier. It just uses a different method, and the efficiency and difficulty are not ideal. It is logically impossible for the naturally occurring gate of the abyss to grow to the level of the gate in front of you without being discovered, and even allow the demon alliance to make adequate early preparations for war. In addition, the location where this door opens is not an inaccessible and remote area. Perhaps the nearby human settlements were not that large, but a large group of living people really didn't notice anything unusual. So they just allow the gate of the abyss to grow to the point where the demons could cross the border and kill them all? Therefore, it is reasonable to speculate that this door is man-made, which makes it possible for explosive growth in a short period of time. And let the demons be prepared, and start gathering troops and looking for allies as soon as they can cross the realm. It can even be reasonably suspected that there is a mysterious traitor behind this whole thing, a mastermind behind the scenes. But even if someone thought of this question, it would be put aside. The demons are all slaying right in front of us. Does it make sense to find out who is behind the scenes? 
even if you really find that person and kill him. Can you change the status quo? The threat of demons already exists. And the gate to the abyss has been opened. Maybe after all this is dealt with. It will make sense to investigate how all of this happened. Is it not troublesome enough to investigate now? Is it possible that blowing up this person, who can't be dealt with will cause unpredictable consequences? Even if thoughtful people look for the answer to this question. They do so cautiously and secretly. As for whether the mastermind behind the scenes has other conspiracies to cause greater harm to the lost land, this is the invasion of the abyss. And Midi is preparing to fight a plain war with the abyss. What will be the greater harm? If there is really an answer to this question, it will arouse the interest of knowledgeable people. Just blow up lost land? This is not in the interests of the devil. Lead the demons to conquer the lost land and become a new generation of demon king? The abyss itself is in chaos. But the demons will work together in the lost land? Not to mention that there are still orcs. In the underground world, betrayal and conspiracy are commonplace. Anyone who wants to kill this demon king must first deal with the demons and orcs. Two professional backstabbers. Thousands of years ago, the demon king used to conquer the lost lands as an army of the undead without a strong sense of subjectivity. However, the laughing demon is in chaos. And so is the human side. In this war, the most critical attitude of the Silatang Empire was ambiguous. And several wrong decisions were made for nothing. The great con of the empire has colluded with the devil, which is what most people are worried about. But they dare not question what he says. Now, the demon coalition suspended offensive has given the human side some breathing space. There are troops guarding the east, west and south in the three directions where the demon coalition can attack. Unless the devil climbs over the mountains to the north and surprises the Khan of the Suli Tang Empire. Otherwise, no matter which side they attack, they will hit the defense line run by the human side. Although the current strength of the defense line may not be able to withstand the full attack of the demon coalition. But as long as we can hold it back and provide follow-up support to prevent the devil from spreading like a flood, everyone is still confident. Besides, armies from the other two directions may also take advantage of the situation and reduce the pressure on the defensive direction. This kind of tacit understanding does not need to be discussed in advance. As long as something happens, relying on the speed of the forum to transmit information, the other two armies will be suppressed by the people below. Even if the top leaders don't want to take action and just want to wait for a fight to cause both sides to suffer losses. Fighting demons is the most important thing in the world. The only reason why he didn't go up to fight was that he wasn't completely prepared. He might have wasted his life, but couldn't kill a demon. This was purely a loss-making business. But if there is an opportunity to pick up a bargain, who could resist it? But the reality is that nothing happened. Everyone is still gathering strength. For the human side, follow-up support continues to arrive. And the defensive power is becoming more and more sufficient. If it continues to grow, the time for counterattack will come. What is puzzling is, what is the devil waiting for? Are you waiting for more demonic armies to come out of the gate of the abyss? According to most people's opinions, the best way to fight the coalition of demons and orcs that has already arrived is for the lord of the abyss to lead an army to charge. It must be overwhelming. No matter where it hits, it will break. But this kind of combat method is impossible for those who really have access to high-level people. The lord of the abyss dares to show off his power in the mysterious land. It is true that the gods of the mysterious land are vegetarians. Even in a duel, few gods are sure to defeat an abyss lord. But this is the home ground of the gods of the lost lands. Even with the firewall of the guardian lord, the gods cannot come in person. But those who use different tricks to beat him can still send the lord of the abyss back to his hometown. Even if the good gods are not enough, the evil gods will come to join us. Who said that everyone was the hero of the post-dark age? Everyone worked hard to bring out the situation in Lost Land today. Not just to give it up to the devil. And the Lord of Guardians hasn't shown up yet. The true strongest man in the land has not yet made a move. It's just that compared to the open confrontation outside, there is a strange situation where all parties are playing tricks on each other secretly. Another drama is also taking place in the large mansion in the holy city of Estali. Although Rowan and Kish did not escape the attack of the pursuers in the end, the orc team that caught up immediately was no match for them. By the time the demons wanted to take action, they were already behind them. But Ezio, who took the initiative to back up and intercept, was treated completely differently. The demon heads that he regarded as important evidence were replaced one by one. What was finally delivered to the counter of the adventurers killed was the head of a great demon. In exchange, although he kept the two legs he used to escape, he lost his left hand. 
the hidden sword was also destroyed. But the blade ground by the dragon's teeth was not so easily destroyed, and was still rescued by Ezio. In other words, if he hadn't saved the dragon tooth blade, he might not have been so seriously injured. But if he hadn't snatched back the dragon tooth blade, he might not have been able to escape the disaster in the future. The right ear was gone, although the right eyeball was still there. A terrible scar that almost cut open the head ran through it, making it impossible to retain any sight. There is a cut on the left cheek from the corner of the mouth, making it look like he is grinning all the time. I won't mention the countless scars all over Ezio's body. Chapter 1492 Dispute There is no need for the person involved to describe it personally. Everyone understands that Ezio must have gone through a hard battle. It seemed like a miracle that he came back alive. However, this miraculous man was blushing and having a thick neck, confronting a certain magician tit for tat. In fact, if Ezio could take an airship from the southern border of the Suritan Empire and return to the holy city of Estali, his life would have been hanging by a thread, and he would not have died no matter what. But physical disability cannot be preserved by those portable life-saving props. Physical defects are still a reality. If this were to be done on Earth, you could directly apply for a disability certificate and get half the price of going out. Those who should be retired are retired, and those who should be in a sanatorium are in a sanatorium. But this is in the lost land. And with Finn, a magician who is proficient in life and undead, being disabled is nothing to worry about. The old black dragon Augustus came forward to plead for mercy. And Finn was helpless and agreed to the matter. The dragon and the original lich lived under the same roof. And they had more or less established some friendship over the years. If it's too troublesome, then might refuse. But for such a trivial matter as limb regeneration, there is no need to go against the wishes of the old man in the family. Although this black dragon is still younger than her, no one can stop a certain lich from pretending to be young. And limb regeneration isn't like shaping Finn and Stone's bodies. Although the latter still looks like a human on the outside, it is actually a completely new species on the inside. The creation of this new species requires an extremely large amount of power to support it. And it cannot be carried out with non-magic tower level energy pools. Limb regeneration related to Ezio has always been a related issue in the life system of the Church of Three Holy Lights. Fun, who was born as a necromancer, also gained a lot of understanding when communicating with the priests and bishops of the life system. At least Fun's operation no longer involves cutting off the other arm and sewing it on if one arm is missing. This does not necessarily mean that the arms of the same race are sewn. Sometimes it is because they are out of stock. And sometimes they sew whichever arm is more useful. Sometimes it's not impossible to sew a few more arms on. To regenerate Ezio's limbs. Just spend some magic stones and that's it. Otherwise, you can use your own reserves of power to get things done. However, in line with the habits of a magician and having been with someone for a long time, I have been infected with that little and cautious character to some extent. Methods that can be replaced by external objects retain their own power in case of emergencies. You can get it done by spending magic stones. So you don't have to drain yourself. To avoid emergencies. When you have no ammunition in your hand and you have no mana to cast magic. Anyway, it's not like I'm short of those two dollars now. Although after calculation, the magic stones required to completely restore Ezio's injuries are a considerable burden for ordinary magicians. But it's not a big problem for someone's net worth. Besides, there is also the help of the old black dragon. If he really lacks money, he can just tear it apart and sell it. And Ezio can repair the same injury three or four times. But that's what young people are like. Others are willing to pay for him. But he himself may not appreciate it. The magician who accidentally came to visit Ezio, but actually just to see the miserable appearance of a fat boy, was caught red-handed after more than 10 years of getting along, even though Ezio couldn't figure out someone's complete details. However, from various rumors and daily contacts, we also know that this normally invisible magician is actually a powerful person with countless powers in the world. At least in the past, when I wanted to cause trouble for a certain magician, I never succeeded and everything was resolved inexplicably. At first I blamed it on bad luck. But when I gained some experience, I realized that I was just being manipulated. This makes Ezio even more angry. Such a strong man turned a blind eye to the invasion of the abyss. How could a passionate young man endure it? The so-called passionate young people in Japanese comics are the kind of people who can bring the entire team to the top of college by raising their arms and shouting, I want to go to Koshian! No matter how depressed others may have been each of them can transform into a major league-level star player. There are two characteristics of such a person. One, 
There is ambition, the other. There is contagiousness. Only then can we stand in the position of spiritual leadership and lead a group of people who seem to be on stimulants to break through one joke after another. And this kind of people tend to have a symptom. That is, anyone who doesn't follow their own will is the villain who needs to be defeated. There are two types of villains. One is someone who can succumb to oneself and become a companion after being defeated. The other is the kind who is the ultimate evil boss and cannot be beaten to death. Obviously, a certain magician who had been at loggerheads with Ezio since childhood belonged to the latter group. Even though Ezio's character is completely different now from the squeamish appearance he had when he was a child. There are still some red lines in his bones that will explode if stepped on. And someone never got used to this big fat boy. Even if he no longer looked so chubby when he grew up. But one rule at a time. Black history will always be black history. And you can talk about it when you want to talk about it. But regarding the matter at hand, Lin really didn't bother to tell Ijioto. For one thing, I don't have conclusive evidence. On the other hand, 9 out of 10 older children of this age do things without thinking. Come up with an alarmist title, and you will get excited, and your mind will go to the sky. Although someone never lies. If someone dares to ask, he will dare to answer. But facing such a dazed young man in the second grade of middle school, if he really has to reveal everything he has done over the years, the chances of something bad going wrong are relatively high. But it would be unreasonable not to comfort this kid. At least what they did was done under their own instructions. The current situation is more or less related to myself. Not giving an explanation is indeed unjustifiable. After thinking about it, Lin pressed down on the furious boy and said, Do you think it's a mistake that I have the ability to solve something as big as the Abyss invasion? But it's not the past, isn't it? Others say that you were scared away once in the Tower of the Great Sage. This time, why don't you try to save your reputation if you have the chance? Are you really that cowardly? Ezio asked. One of his eyes was covered with excited red bloodshot eyes. In contrast to Ezio's excited look, Lin curled his lips and said, If you are scared away, you will be scared away. Anyway, that is a fact. If someone has a mouth on someone else, can they still be forbidden from saying it? As for you asking me why I don't to solve the problem of the Abyss invasion, let me ask you, have all the people in the Lost Land passed? Have all the people who are at the same level as me and your knowledge have passed? Even if you don't talk about those outsiders, how can this place be done? There is someone more powerful than me. Why do you only stare at me and not her? A plan to divert trouble to the east. However, this move is not guaranteed to be effective. And as long as it does not work, there will usually be a reaction force coming back to you. This time, he was sitting on a sofa not far away, squeezing his ankles, which were as tender and translucent as new buds. Winfin heard this. He rolled his eyes at someone and said, I'm not interested in fighting demons. Don't bother me. Lin Ji had laughed a few times and acted as if nothing had happened. In fact, he understood very well that even if the world was facing destruction, the lost people would not seek out the former demon king. If he finds her, no matter what Finn does in the end, it will be like rejecting the tiger through the front door and letting in the wolf through the back door to the people of Midi. I don't know if Ezio stares at him and doesn't look at the former lich who is more dangerous than him, because he really regards Finn as a delicate and soft woman, or because he just doesn't want to deal with him. Lin did not care about the difference and said his own conclusion. Actually, I am not opposed to fighting the devil, but how to get there is the problem. How to get there? Ezio tasted this statement subconsciously. Of course, he would not be stupid enough to think that this was a simple traffic problem. Ezio is also very concerned about the development after the Gate of the Abyss was exposed. In the great defeat led by King Khan of the southern border of the Silatang Empire, what a person of his stature was most concerned about was that King Khan organized the adventurers who arrived as soon as possible into an army and backed up the supervising team, send them to the battlefield to die. How many warriors who are capable of slaying a dragon alone waste their lives meaninglessly on a battlefield like a meat grinder. How many assassins who are good at lurking can only choose to abandon their strengths and die fighting on the frontal battlefield? There is a reason why the Adventurers Guild and the Mercenary Guild, two similar organizations, are not integrated together. Adventurers and mercenaries both seem to be warriors who risk their lives. But adventurers are suitable for small team operations and special operations. While soldiers and mercenaries are good at group operations. Driving adventurers into a frontal battlefield is a waste of resources on a large scale. And on an individual level it forces people to die. If everything was voluntary, then others would have nothing to say. The problem is that the Suritan Empire suffered an ugly defeat. 
and the adventurers were forced to die. Although only a few people escaped from the battlefield and told the story. But the person who said this is quite prestigious and the adventurers killed. We will not spread unwarranted rumors to discredit an empire. Secondly, the Silatang Empire could really do such a thing. In the past, their usual tactics in fighting were to capture prisoners as vanguards and expel refugees into the city. In particular, they used prisoners of the enemy country to beat the enemy people and make them kill each other. No matter which side died, Suli Tang Khan was always the one who gained. There is evidence and a record. And the result is that the newly arrived adventurers and volunteers from other countries all stay within the borders of the empire. This made the neighboring small countries bordering the Suli Tang Empire both fearful and happy. The fear is that if these people get together, it will not be a problem to destroy several of their small countries. Even if you don't do that, you are still willing to pay real money to buy the supplies you consume every day. But the reserves of small countries are not enough for them to consume. They have almost bottomed out in just a few days. Naturally, I am happy that I don't have to worry about the Demon Alliance picking weak targets. Instead of attacking the Empire, I will focus on small countries like them. At least when the Demon Coalition attacked, there were still people on my side who came forward to resist. However, these gathered adventurers and mercenaries are basically a mess. Worse than a mob. Everyone is still organized according to the form of tasks released by the two major guilds. It makes knowledgeable people wonder. If the Demon Alliance really attacks, can the defense line formed by them really be able to stop it? If Lin passed. Not to mention that he would be captured as a young man and used as cannon fodder after entering the Silatang Empire. Just as a member of the Adventurer's Guild, what role can you play by staying on the other side of the defense line? Holding a position alone? Or a one-man attack? Being commanded? Direct others? Or act freely? Chapter 1493 Clues In addition to serving as a flag, a strong person's best position is to stay there like a guardian angel and go to save wherever there is a fire. But something of this level does not necessarily require the magician in front of you. There are many people who can replace it. Although Ezio is young and doesn't have much experience, he is definitely not an idiot. When you understand someone's situation, you know that unless he is willing to be a knife in someone else's hand, now is not the best time for him to go over. To put it another way, this magician has his own purpose. After coming to this conclusion, Ezio's only remaining eye flashed. He narrowed his eyes at someone and asked, What do you want to do? Oh, Dot! Lin looked at this young man who was as fat as a ball a few years ago with a deep look. It seems that some of the nutrients I have lost over the years have gone into my brain. But after thinking about it for a while, I finally didn't give the answer. Instead he said, Some words. Even if I tell you directly, you won't listen. So if you want to know, ask Meyer. Speaking of which, I am just the stone when others throw stones to ask for directions. But when there is no need to ask for directions, stones can also be used to hit people. Lin stood up not intending to continue fooling around with this merciless playboy. As a loyal supporter of the FFF team, I regretted giving this guy the title of Ezio. Lin really never thought that this guy would be so close to the one in his memory. But before you want to do anything, you need to get your injuries sorted out first. With this look, it's a burden even if you don't have to go to the battlefield. As for the future, if any of you want to do it, I can support it. But don't try to get in my way. Even if you all die, I won't avenge anyone. That's a battlefield. Finished. Leave in style. Lin believed that with that kid's rebellious mentality, Ezio would be able to find some specious arguments to argue against whatever he said. Then let him ask the real person involved. Just like how Lin positioned himself. He was always just a dog-headed strategist with bad ideas. Of course, Ezio didn't think that if he couldn't find the answer by asking himself, he would know if he asked the Dark Elf. Although Meyer was nominally the follower, and slave of the magician. In fact, the two parties had very little contact with each other. He was at best a liaison. In other words, the focus is on the person behind Melson, the high seat of the Ikaruga Alliance. Ezio was one of the few people who was sure that a certain magician had the status of a high-ranking member of the Alliance. He learned this from Melanie. When most people hear such news, they will treat it as a joke or rumor. But Ezio would take these things seriously and use them to judge someone. This approach unexpectedly resulted in the most realistic image of someone. If this whole thing is really related to the high officials of the Ikaruga Alliance, then what role did they play in the Abyss invasion? This is the thing Ezio wants to know most right now. And I sincerely hope that there will never be a day when we stand on the opposite side. But before his bad intentions could show up, then Scalpel gave him a good lesson. 
It made Ezio cry and howl throughout the whole scene. Afterwards, a certain lich said that he forgot to anesthetize. Whether the old black dragon asked Finn to help treat Ezio out of love, or because he wanted to teach this troubled young man a lesson. In short, the happy boy was jumping around with good hands and feet again. No more than three days before and after. Of course, someone was not absent from the symphony of the big fat boy's miserable howling. While listening, I recall the scene of Guan Gong scraping his bones to read the spring and autumn annals, and complained that a certain boy was really unmanly. It's just that someone consciously ignored that Guan Eri's bone scraping was just a wound. Ezio had more than ten cuts all over his body. So he could really be confused. What's more? How can that brat he to be compared with Mr. Guan? This is offensive. The recovered Ezio gathered his friends, who were originally scattered around the world. At the same time, find the technical guild and prepare some weapons and equipment for battlefield and infiltration. Someone has promised to support this part. So there is no need to worry too much about funding but there is still a production time limit. It is impossible to really use all rare materials to make some very complicated weapons and props. If a weapon takes a year to be carefully crafted, it will never be ready for use on the battlefield. Of course the dragon teeth hidden blade needs to be repaired as well. The gift from the black dragon Augustus is Ezio's greatest guarantee. This time, you can kill the demon and escape. This blade, which is only slightly longer than a palm, is the key point while waiting for the weapons and equipment and companions to assemble. Ezio also visited the first bank of the holy city of Estali and met with the dark elf Mircha, the president who had not changed for thousands of years. It has been more than 10 years since the banking business was launched for newly established banks in various places. The first president is usually an elf in order to rely on the world tree to protect them. When the business and environment mature, the bank will either be handed over to local people or let other more hands on elves take over management. Those elves with experience in opening up new territories are moving towards the next strange place. Due to the complex power environment in some areas, Elf, as a trustworthy and impartial third party, was invited by the local area to stay and continue to serve as bank president. This can be regarded as a special case that can last for a long time. Another special case is the first bank controlled by the Dark Elf Melson and it is also the bank with the heaviest deposits and withdrawals. In terms of the total amount of deposits and withdrawals, the capitals of several empires, with the support and use of many nobles, can explode in amounts that no one can imagine in a single day. But when it comes to the large number of users and the large amount of usage, the holy city of Estali, where the technology guild is located, is unique, and no other city can compare with it. Therefore, there are many new banking-related systems that all started in the holy city of Estali, including the currency-less transactions that are being trialed recently. After the buyer and seller agreed on the transaction amount, they signed the contract with the small holy emblem of the goddess of gold coins they own to complete the transfer of money in the account. During the process, there is no need to withdraw the coins from the bank and deposit them into the bank by the other party. There are also letters of credit that are commonly used in cross-border commercial transactions on earth. And this prepayment method that protects buyers and sellers is all being tried and operated under the hands of Miles, a financial expert born and raised in the lost land. If it weren't for the fact that Maishan already had the mark of fastness, the ancient one in the world tree, the gold coin goddess Quinn would have chosen her to be her chosen one. Such a dark elf, who was ostracized in his tribe, became a communication bridge between three powerful beings, together with his own abilities. These allowed Melson to securely sit on the throne of the president of the first bank in the holy city. No one can come and leave. And no one wants to change. However, such a person is not so busy that he has to work all day long without even a moment of leisure. After all, Melson is just the president of a bank. At most, there are six banks in one area of the holy city of Estali. All led by her first bank. Cooperating with a series of measures. The person in charge of everything is still the goddess of gold coins above. So when Ezio came to visit, Melson happily welcomed his little companion. The relationship between the senior and the young has been very good since before. During the period when Ezio was most rebellious, he only rebelled against a certain magician and was quite obedient towards others. Even as an adult, he once had a friendly match with the dark elves. The relationship between the two has deepened a lot. But when Ezio came back, he never thought about playing again. How should I put it? With his fledgling level, against the Dark Elf, a experienced Demon King, even with the blessing of Dragon Blood, he was still beaten by blood. Melson often teased this young man 
because of this incident. But business came first. Within a few words, Ezio went straight to the point and asked about a certain magician's plans. And frankly, he came to the Dark Elf under someone's guidance. What does that gentleman want to do? Meyer said in a rare hesitant tone. Ezio quickly grasped the key point and asked, Sister Shaomai, do you not know? Or is it inconvenient to tell you? Just as he was about to answer, an inspiration suddenly interrupted what he was about to say. After Ezio returned from a serious injury, Melson also visited him once. At that time, no one who went to see this little friend thought that Ezio would live like this for the rest of his life. I just want to see the rare plight of this boy who is not afraid of the sky or the earth. Now he has returned to his former handsomeness. Looking at the lively boy, there is a hint of aura in his eyes that is difficult for ordinary people to notice. During Meyer's lifetime, people with such eyes have achieved achievements that are unimaginable for ordinary people. Of course, there are more people who unfortunately die in the process of climbing to the top, thus wiping out the world. But without exception, even if they die on the way, such people still shine with dazzling brilliance, making it difficult to look directly at them. So, this man has potential? As members of the Ikaruga Alliance with Takazawa as their backer, they all actually shoulder a secret mission. That is to recommend potential good ideas to the big boss behind you and develop manpower other than elves. White Sword Master William Greco will become a member of the Turtle Dove Alliance because an elf introduced him to the big boss behind him. It's just that William didn't choose to rely on any high-ranking person. He just became an ordinary member. Then Ezio should also have this qualification. At the age of less than 20, he escaped from the siege of demons and orcs and killed several demons alone, including a big demon. Such achievements are quite dazzling among his peers. So my Ursha changed her original embarrassed look and even took the initiative to distance herself a bit, changing her sitting posture to a more attractive one and showing off her figure to her heart's content. This method of refusing to welcome is the most popular among men. After lightly sticking out her sweet tongue and passing it across her upper lip, Maishan said, The things you want to know are just as you guessed. I can't say more without permission. But are you interested in meeting you? The person who is qualified to say these things is not that gentleman, but some special beings. The Alliance's high seat? Yes. Do you dare? Or should I ask? Are you interested? Meyer asked provocatively. Chapter 1494 Invitation from Three Feathered Birds There is a high-level meeting behind the Ikaruga Alliance. All members of the Alliance know about this matter. And many people from the noble class also know about it. But who the high seat of the Alliance is? Not many people know who it is. Except for the high-ranking members who have the support of the high seat. This is because the high-ranking members only gain such status after meeting and being invited by the Alliance High Seat. The elves who travel from various wood elf tribes already had the marks of their respective world trees, so they were naturally high-level members. However, such a difference will not cause dissatisfaction among ordinary members, because high-level members don't have any more benefits than ordinary members. They just use the mark of the three-feathered bird, which is different from ordinary people. However, who is the high seat of the Alliance? For a curious person like Ezio, of course, he would have figured out the answer to this question long ago. But after knowing the answer, I wasn't too surprised. It is an organization with wood elves as the main body. And its origin is to resist humans' capture of elves as slaves. And under the banner of liberating elf slaves, is it surprising that the boss of Yggdrasil is behind it? Let's just say it's natural. But even if you know it, the Alliance High Seat, those high-ranking world tree bosses, are not something everyone can see. It's not because the bosses are superior, but because they are plants. It takes a whole morning to say H, low, and it takes a while to think of a question. These are all normal operations. Under normal circumstances, when meeting a human being, the person may have died of old age without waiting for a reply from World Tree with approval. It can be said that the vigorous and resolute speed of doing things like this in recent years is not like Yggdrasil at all. It is a common thing for the Wood Elf tribe to not get an order from the world tree after hundreds of years. This is because the lifespan of the elves themselves is long enough. If it were replaced by a short-lived species, like humans serving the world tree, the boss might go into hibernation and a few generations would pass. And those newly born may think that it is normal for the world tree to be silent. Now that he has received an invitation from the high seat, even though this invitation seems to have been said on the spur of the moment by the dark elf in front of him, isn't Ezio excited? He never thought about getting any benefits from World Tree. It was as if Ezio didn't think that he should get anything from the Black Dragon Master or the Magician. He just wanted to see the World Tree with his own eyes, talk to the other person, 
and make a new friend. That's enough. The wish was small, but it was true. And even big things like fighting demons were temporarily forgotten. Although the elves succeeded in recruiting people for the big bosses behind them, they would not receive any commissions or dividends like the situation in a certain time-traveling hometown. But the friendship of belonging to the same big boss is more useful than any real interests in a place like Midi, especially the place where Myr was born. The Dark Elf Tribe under the rule of Fasnas, the Ancient of the World Tree. In this place where internal strife and external strife are all over the place, there are almost no people you can trust. The other Dark Elves relied on family ties and mutual restraint to reluctantly become allies. And it is because my Urshan's power in this area is too weak that he becomes the target of other Dark Elves. Although he received the favor from His Majesty World Tree, he could leave the tribe for a long time and work alone. But in the Akaruga Alliance, there are also no companions and allies who share the same mark as her and can trust each other. If she could win over Ezio, she might not be able to instruct this kid to help her fight and kill. But at least I can leave it behind and don't have to worry about being stabbed in the back with love from him. Melson also needs such internal allies. The shelter of a certain magician does not exist anywhere. So after confirming that Ezio was also interested, Miles smiled sweetly and led the people towards the rest area of the bank's internal staff. Of course, this was not a daytime prostitution show. It was just a matter of finding a guest elf robe for Ezio to wear. Otherwise, according to the old method, it would take a month or two to walk from the holy city of Estali to the Fasa's dark elf tribe in the underground world. Who wouldn't be happy to use Flash to be lazy? Although Ezio had some status in that family. In terms of scheduling, he was still qualified to receive a set of clothes made of magic silk in the past 12 years. But this rebellious boy paid no attention to such an opportunity. I didn't reject it. Nor did I accept it. But I treated it as if I didn't have the attitude from the beginning. Although the materials and designs of the clothes he wore were pretty good, they were only in the category of ordinary clothes. And of course, they couldn't bear the side effects of the flash technique. Therefore, Ezio still needs to borrow the elf holy robe to protect himself. The flash technique used by World Tree is not like a certain magician or a certain lich who can choose to actively add a layer of protection to those traveling with him. The elven holy robes used by guests are the original old style. In the 12 years since the development of the bank, even if the World Tree no longer has a fashionable aesthetic, it will be bent bit by bit by the elves outside. Although the big boss doesn't care much about the ideas of tool people. No one will insist on not doing things that can improve work efficiency if they can be easily done. Now that new clothes are being made and old clothes cannot be recycled. It is normal to use them for other purposes. The old elf holy robe has become a temporary clothing for special guests. As for whether it will be lost or patronized by thieves. Every holy robe seems to have its own GPS positioning. This is also the basis for the positioning of the world tree's flash technique. Which thief dares to steal it? Who dares to take it away? Since several small and medium-sized gangs were wiped out by the elf task force. There have been no thieves doing this. It is said that the GPS positioning of the earth is easy to disassemble. But it is more troublesome to find where to install it. Not to mention the positioning on the robe of the mini elf. Not many people can even understand it. How should those who care about it deal with it? But since it is a temporary loan. No one cares about whether the clothes look good or not. Without saying a word. Ezio put on this super old-fashioned holy robe and followed Melson to a secret room in the rest area. Likewise, you are not here to do something shameful. In the past, World Tree used the flash technique to transfer troops, always starting from within the scope of World Tree. After going out, he relied on the cane made of world branches in the captain's hand to contact the boss to see if he was returning or teleporting to other places. If the person wearing the holy robe is in crisis or his life is in danger, there will be a mechanism to recover him and treat him. In a word, all transmissions of flash techniques require the initiative of the world tree bosses. But after seeing the model of the gold coin goddess operating a bank with her holy symbol, how could the world trees, who were more familiar with programming languages than coin, not copy this method that could save themselves trouble and effort? When it comes to the specific place, it is a stone covered with green moss that is set at a fixed point such as what merchant saw after leading Ezio into the secret room. The stone is an ordinary stone. Used to confuse people. The real secret is hidden in the moss. In the moss, Yulin compiled the magic circle used for box cutting. Positioning on the ring set. And the magic circle used to contact the world tree. But the so-called contact here is actually similar to the automatic response process that has been compiled in the gold coin goddess's holy emblem. That is, when it comes into contact with the moss on the stone. 
It will be connected to the transponder jointly constructed by the world trees. Then the person wearing the holy robe of the elf can teleport to the location on the designated list through the flash magic of the world tree. These designated locations include the wood elf tribes, the world tree shrine, and the elven kingdom. All banks in the lost lands and the high seat space, although it can only be teleported to a designated location. It loses the freedom that Flash can provide. However, because there is no need for World Tree to recalculate the Flash parameters of a specially designated location, it only needs to refer to the existing Flash parameters to carry out teleportation between fixed points. This is due to the fact that banks have been opened all over the whole land, so that the fixed point teleportation arrays used for the Flash technique are also spread all over the land. However, because this function requires the person being transported to wear an elf holy robe for protection, it is not open to the public. And of course not many people know about it. Holding my Erxus catkin. Ezio's breath became thicker, and his mood was surging. This is not because of the charming touch in the palm, but because of the excitement of going to the mysterious high seat. This was not Ezio's first experience with the teleportation technique, with the protection of the elf's holy robe, and without even the side effects of dizziness. He followed Melson to a strange space. The reason why this space is called strange is because Ezio is sure that the position he is standing is not in any corner of the land. This is a circular table-shaped conference room space with no ceiling. Even the outer walls looked like they had been gnawed by dogs. With some places built higher and others lower. Round or square. Slanted or straight. There is no customization for low wall buildings. Looking up, you will see a colorful world of mixed colors. Hundreds of people can see hundreds of meanings in it. And what falls in Ezio's eyes is wanton madness and infinite changes. However, this world did not let Ezio linger. He turned his gaze back to the high back chairs lined up in a circle around him. This is the famous high seat. Counting. There are 27 in total. Does this mean there are 27 members of the high council? Among the 25 high seats. There are different living or non-living images occupying them. And there are only two empty chairs. Most of the different images are animals. But they are all gray and white like stone sculptures. The two most special ones are the shapes of dwarf trees. A short tree was bare without leaves, but eight fruits were hanging from it. Each fruit is like a crystal ball, filled with eight color smoke that keeps rolling. The other looked like a dead tree tangled with old vines. Tangled in the trunk of the tree was a mummy that was struggling to get out. For a moment, it was impossible to tell what race the mummy was. Melcha introduced the splits of each world tree boss to Ezio in sequence. It's just that except for his own boss, that is, the man-eating dead tree, he doesn't have much respect for the silent clones of other bosses. Finally, he pointed to the two empty chairs and said, The chair on the left belongs to His Majesty the Goddess of Gold Coins, Coeen, but she usually stays in her own kingdom of God, and the last one belongs to Mr. Although I have known about this for a long time, but when he saw the evidence that the man who usually showed no dignity in front of him was on an equal footing with these legendary bosses. Ezio was still shocked in his heart. Chapter 1495 High Council Meeting In fact, the elves will still maintain a respectful attitude when facing any world tree boss. Even if it is just a separate body, it still remains silent. It is said that the silence of the world trees is very similar to dormancy. One is too lazy to talk, and the other is asleep. In other words, there is no difference between the two, and others cannot tell the difference. But the Dark Elves are quite a strange breed. In addition to being similar in physique and talent to ordinary Elves, Dark Elves are quite unique in terms of group structure and moral concepts. In particular, Wood Elves, with very few exceptions, have a taboo against using metal blades. But Dark Elves have no taboos and can use whatever is useful. And those Dark Elves, who are not under the care of Fasnas and are wandering in the underground world, although they are not yet at the level of unifying the underground world, as long as there are Dark Elves, they will be so strong that they will occupy a leadership position and make others convinced. Those who were really unconvinced died. All in all, Merchant, who led Ezio to the high-level meeting, behaved quite casually. There is no sense of respect in front of a big boss. It's like visiting your own garden and introducing various rare and exotic animals. But when the man-eating dead tree shook, the gray and white matter that originally covered the tree was shaken away like dust. The shaken gray matter did not fall to the ground, but in the process of drifting, it turned into finer ashes the moment before it hit the ground and dispersed with the wind. This is a very light movement, but in the strange silent environment of the dimensional gap, it is extremely eye-catching. As soon as Fasnas made a move, 
Mercy noticed it. She held her belly and back with her left and right hands. Her legs were straight. And she bowed her head. This unique salute gesture is unique to the Dark Elf Priestess. Among Meyer's many identities. This is the one she considers to be the most important. When Ezio saw this, he didn't panic, took half a step back, and gave a decent half salute. Although he was born as an orphan, there was a real nobleman in that family. Although Ezio had not had much contact with Marquis Balin, he was extremely familiar with the deacons and maids regarding the etiquette education of the nobles. He also half inquired and half learned and understood a lot. So only then can we respond appropriately. The reason why I can't give a big gift is because although the other party has a high status, he has no direct affiliation with me. You only need to show respect. And you don't need to show your respect like a subject. If you give a big gift rashly, you actually don't want others to see you. Instead, you will get a blank look and be criticized for being rude. It's like you can't have a drink with just anyone. It doesn't matter if you drink with your sister-in-law. But if you drink with a man, you have a special sexual orientation. Many people only don't blame this kind of bullshit. But they are suspicious in the lost land. However, whether they are humans or elves, the etiquette they show does not mean much to World Tree. The so-called etiquette is actually just a link in maintaining order and class in society. Kings and nobles need their subjects to express etiquette to show their status. But World Tree does not need these. Especially Fasnas is not interested in the false respect of the Dark Elves. So Fasnas shook himself awake without any care. At the same time, the mummy, which was entangled with dead trees and old vines, opened its mouth wide and let out a big yawn. Then he said, Servant, what's the matter? Despite the fact that the boss seems lazy, he seems to cherish his words like gold and refuses to say too much. In fact, this simple inquiry already made my heirs on overjoyed. According to various wood elf tribes, including dark elves, the normal communication seen with the world tree is that the elf priest talks a lot, and the world tree responds by moving its branches. Even not moving is a response. Even if the boss is asleep or too lazy to pay attention, the priest has to tell him a bunch of flowers. As for the branches swinging up and down, swinging left and right, swinging diagonally, and swinging randomly, what they mean depends on how the priest interprets them. This kind of riddle scene is the normal process of communication between the elves and the world tree. Isn't it a great joy that the boss of world tree is willing to speak and save the elves from guessing? But being excited is exciting. And if you lose your composure because of it, you will lose more than you gain. So merchant knelt on the ground calmly and said, Your Majesty, I am here to introduce Ezio, and he also hopes to learn the plan of the whole thing from your golden mouth. That magician avoided the matter again and put the responsibility on us. Right. Thassa has pointed out the truth behind it. Although he is a plant, his thinking logic is different from that of humans. But his long enough life gave him enough experience to judge the true meaning behind things. What's more, this isn't the first time this has happened. It's just that in the past few times, no one could directly enter the high-level meeting to question. Instead, they went through layers of relationships to inquire about the tone of any particular world tree. But if your servant wants to introduce someone, it means that this man has some value. This made Fasnus calm down. And the mummy in the tree looked directly at Ezio. Question. Why do you want to know about our plans? Asking is asking why. But actually asking what qualifications do you have? The lost world is not a society that the people have lived in before. Such a thing as. The people have the right to know. Does not exist in the lost land. The world tree is not just a ploy. Even though they are having a passionate affair with a certain magician. They still have an indifferent attitude towards the elves who have a closer relationship with them. So what does it mean when a person who has not proven his worth comes up to me and asks questions? Speaking of which, such an attitude really does not give the recommender any face. But Myrja didn't express any dissatisfaction. And of course, he didn't dare to express it. The rest can only be performed by Ezio himself. If you can't break through the predicament on your own, how can you make people believe that this person is worth using? To humans, elves are at a level above humans. For such a big boss with so many talents, it is not enough to hire only excellent people. Ezio didn't mean to be timid at all. As an orphan raised by a black dragon, courage was the most basic quality. In his opinion, it would be good to speak his true feelings when encountering such a thing. If your enthusiasm can't move people, it can only mean that the ideas on both sides are not on the same line. When encountering such an opponent, one must either move the opponent with greater enthusiasm, or admit one's own shortcomings and give in. 
There are so many plots, and plots in making friends. Does His Majesty Fasas think it is a good thing to let the gate of the abyss open, and the demons invade the land? Ezio first asked a question. Then he continued, The negative impact of chaotic creatures on the lost land is not limited to the level of burning, killing and looting. The invasion of a large number of chaotic creatures will cause unimaginable damage to the lost land ecosystem. At this point, I believe you know better than me, but the magician Tripwood claims that he has a plan related to the world tree. Feeling that simple questioning was too harsh, Ezio slowed down and said, I just want to know, is this behavior that is no different from suicide allowed by you? If you don't allow it as well, then this is what we work together to do. Drive the devil out of the Wonderland and completely close the door to the abyss. Instead of sitting at home and watching things happen indifferently like that magician. Although high-level demons in the abyss can imitate human nobles, they dress well, behave elegantly, eat exquisite food, and talk about ethereal topics. But all this is not necessary for the devil. It's not even a study done out of admiration for such a culture. This is just a malicious mockery, trying to prove to mankind that they can do the things that you are proud of. And they can do it with ease. The abyss and demons are completely different ecosystems from the lost land. The differences here include biological characteristics, means of sustaining life, and methods of reproduction. These all look very similar to the creatures in the lost lands, but they are actually fundamentally different. Just talk about the types of food. All demons are omnivorous and can survive even if they eat a handful of dirt. Because what they need is not the nutrients in food, but the energy contained in food. The same goes for reproduction. It can reproduce asexually, reproduce by itself, or reproduce through intercourse. Even after death, descendants will crawl out of the remains. These methods of reproduction make the devil have a very weak concept of paternal or maternal lineage. The reason why they are interested in bloodline inheritance is just for the power of bloodline inheritance. The abyss environment itself is the biggest reason for creating such a creature that is completely different from the lost land. Its characteristic is that organisms living in it are very prone to mutation even before and after the change. It will look like a completely different species. According to the biological classification of a certain time traveler, all abyssal creatures can be regarded as completely metamorphosed creatures. Just like a caterpillar emerging into a butterfly. Every time a demon undergoes a transformation, it is not only an improvement in strength, but also a complete change in appearance. The above characteristics give rise to the answers to two questions. One, why would the abyss demon want to invade mystery? 2. What impact will there be after the demon invades lost land? The answer to the first question is not the tragic drama of demons living in a bitter cold land with poor resources. So they must expand outward in order to survive. The answer is simple. Just to plunder resources. And resources can help them grow. The answer to the second question is that abyssal creatures entering the maze will change their surrounding environment and make them abyssal. When a large number of abyssal creatures enter the mysterious land, this change may become permanent eventually turning the mysterious land into a second abyss. Ezio chose to make a statement to the ancient fastness from this starting point, because he knew that the world tree could not survive in the abyss environment. In other words, the world trees that sprouted again from seeds can adapt to the new environment, but the ones that have already formed will definitely be used as firewood in the new world, based on the principle of prioritizing interests that someone constantly emphasizes. The human society where Ezio lives is inherently able to stand on the same front as the world trees. As long as there is this relationship, Ezio will not worry about the most terrifying army of this era. And the Elf Alliance will not join this war with demons as their opponents. But Fasnes gave him an unexpected answer. You will be disappointed. Boy! Chapter 1496 True Purpose Maybe he's too young. Or maybe he's not used to being rejected yet. When Ezio heard that his idea was not accepted, his emotions were a little out of control. But he did a good job of keeping some of his violent thoughts at bay in addition to the fact that such an attitude shouldn't exist. More importantly, he can't win. I don't know which reason accounts for the greater proportion. Anyway, not many people would believe this. However, Ezio still asked seriously, Your Majesty, you said you would disappoint me. Did I miss something? Ezio rethought the whole thing. The world tree, or these world trees that have taken root, and the abyss are naturally in opposing positions, and there is an irreconcilable contradiction between the two. Because once the lost land becomes an abyss, the world tree rooted in the lost land will wither, and only the resprouted world tree can adapt to the new world. The possibility of sacrificing oneself to help future generations is not impossible. But the premise is for a greater goal. Not just to fulfill others, 
You must know that world tree is a plant. According to a certain magician, nothing in the world is more selfish than plants. In a forest, plants compete for sunlight and will grow taller to expand their canopy, even if it blocks other plants. And those parasitic plants directly absorb nutrients from the parasitized plants and even kill them, eventually leading to the death of the parasitized plant. All this is because plants do what they do based on their survival instincts, without considering whether other plants can survive. There is no such thing as courtesy. Even if true symbiosis is achieved, it is only because their needs are different. Etiquette is a product of civilized society for the sake of order and common interests. It not only takes care of the weak, but also gives respect to the strong. Allowing the strong and the weak to achieve the best results of common development and common progress through etiquette as a bond. I won't discuss the unsatisfactory parts of the ideal. Although World Tree has the wisdom to communicate with humans and other species of Homo sapiens, it does not mean that they will abide by the rules of the human world. When he realized that he might face the World Tree, Ezio made mental preparations for this. But now it seems that that psychological preparation is not enough. I still have some things I don't think well about. Fortunately, Thassa's doesn't have the evil attributes of being showy and appetizing like most humans. He said bluntly, let me draw the conclusion first. Drive away the devil. This is something we can agree on. Letting the abyss take root in the lost land is not a good thing. But as for closing the door of the abyss, our thoughts will be the same as yours different. Thus, and you mentioned by the ancient Fasnas are undoubtedly the world tree ethnic group and the human ethnic group, or generally referred to all species of Homo sapiens. This difference convinced Ezio that he was lacking something. This is not an omission or oversight but rather a part that I don't know about, which changes the shape of the puzzle in my imagination and makes the result deviate from my judgment. The easiest way to make up for this lack of knowledge is to ask, Your Majesty Fasnas, what's wrong with closing the door to the abyss? Is it a good thing to allow demons to come and go freely? Suppose there are already eight abyss gates open in the mysterious land, and you only close the new ninth gate. What's the point? An open abyss gate is different from the fact that demons can enter and exit freely. The man-eating dead tree said. With this reminder, Ezio suddenly remembered something he had heard in the past. He murmured. Speaking of which, Hardy once said that the demon cat tribe assisted Moth King Jane Moss in guarding an abyss gate in the cat forest in the south. This is true. But I only listened to it. I said it once and thought I was joking. Grey Cat Hardy. An old cat from the cat forest on the southern border of the Guana Empire. Although he is a cat. As he gets older, he will inevitably like to talk about his past. The old black dragon Augustus has this tendency especially seriously. The ancient one in the world tree certainly didn't know who Hadi was, but didn't care either. He heard the point of Ezio's words and said, Look, you know this too. So do you still insist on closing the gate of the abyss? But why is there an open door to the abyss? But no demons pass through? Is it because of the demon cat clan? They don't look like they are that good at fighting. Ezio asked again. Fastness answered, the eight gates of the abyss that have existed for a long time are guarded by guardians, blocking the communication between the two worlds. However, the newly opened gate does not have a guardian, so demons can use it to invade the abyss. Ground action. At this point, Ezio had enough hints. The reason why a certain magician didn't take action was the same as the reason why the world trees didn't take action. They are equally willing to drive out the demons, but they do not want to close the gates of the abyss. And this kind of idea runs counter to the idea of the vast majority of people today, which is to drive away the devil and close the door to the abyss. So no matter what, the power that the magician and world tree and the family can control will never take action at this time. Even if the human coalition forces successfully drive the demons back to the abyss, they may come forward to side with the demons when they have the opportunity to close the door to the abyss. This is a fundamental difference of purpose. And such differences may lead to another war. So Ezio asked a question that everyone would ask from a human standpoint. Why should we keep the gates of the abyss open? Isn't it a good idea to close them all and cut off the communication between demons? I don't have a correct answer to this question. As for the inferences, let's ask that person. Fastness said, at the same time, the mummy in the tree seemed to snap its fingers. In the high seat conference space, a crisp snap of fingers sounded. The next moment, on one of the two empty benches, there was a man squatting on the chair, holding a big bowl and slurping noodles. It's just that his movements are stiff now, and his wide eyes are staring directly at Ezio and Melanie in the middle of the circular table. With a sense of asking, Who am I? Why am I here? The taste of 
I originally wanted to suck the noodles hanging in my mouth into my mouth. But unfortunately, the noodles that were not in my mouth could not resist the side effects of the flash technique. Contaminated by the chaotic energy in the dimensional gap, the noodles twisted restlessly like maggots. It immediately makes someone lose their appetite. After spitting out the strange noodles in his mouth, Len retracted his hands holding the big bowl and chopsticks and clasped together. In an instant, noodles, bowls, etc. are broken into molecular level dust. Asked, tell me, why did you find me again? My child, please explain yourself about those conjectures. Lord of the Plains, Vasta said in a calm tone. Lin did not hide his disgusted expression at all. As long as it was related to Ezio, he had this attitude. That's why when this big fat boy jumped up before, he would kick people towards the world tree without hesitation. But it seemed like things were flying towards me again like a boomerang. Pouring his lips in dissatisfaction, Lin asked, Do you know what we want to do? Ezio also had a similar expression. It is said that he can get along well with anyone. But facing this man is like a magnetic field that repels each other. And he will lose control in all aspects. But now is not a good time to argue. He wanted to know the truth. So he replied, I know what you want to do. But I also want to know why. Lin calculated in his mind that he had passed the most difficult level. As long as this kid didn't get into a fight when he heard that he didn't intend to close the door to the abyss. And changed his words from reasonable to unreasonable. Then the matter could continue. With a good start. Lin finally told Ezio all about the Ninth Power Plan, including the purpose of the advancement of the World Trees, shaping the Goddess of Gold Coins to become the Ninth Powerful Divine Power besides the Eight Lords of Power. The speculation that Fasas mentioned was about the reason for the emergence of the Ninth Abyss Gate. Although there was no conclusive evidence, Lin still expressed his inference. The final summary says, So, you mentioned closing all the gates of the Abyss which is very likely to cut off the possibility of the development of all extraordinary powers in the land. In the end, not only will there be no demons, but there will also be creatures or professions with extraordinary powers such as Warcraft and magicians. They no longer exist. After hearing the conclusion, Ezio couldn't help but said with great joy, Isn't this great? If there is no gap between people, there will be no bullying behavior. Someone looked at the innocent fat boy in front of him with a dead heart. Then he asked, What should we do? when we encounter dangers that cannot be handled by humans and there is no magic to help. The Automobile Center, the Technology Guild, the things they are developing can work very well even without magic. Isn't it possible to make suitable weapons or tools with the same technology? Ezio said confidently said, I want to take the technological route. Someone chuckled and asked again, Since we mentioned the existence of the Abyss Gate, it is likely to be the source of the extraordinary power of the Lost Land. So what should the world trees do after closing all the abyss gates? When someone's soul asked, Ezio was immediately speechless and his face froze. According to my original thinking, if I need to sacrifice the existence of extraordinary power to achieve a beautiful world where everyone is equal, then why not do it? But the world tree seems to have been classified as expendable by himself. Will they be willing to be sacrificed like this? No matter what you think, it's impossible. In other words, Closing all the doors to the abyss has become an irreconcilable conflict between humans and the world tree. Of course, Ezio would not insist on his own opinion on this occasion. I am only one person. The dark elf Mareshu next to me is a loyal servant of world tree. And the magician in front of me is the initiator of the whole thing. When I dare to put forward such stupid opinions, I am afraid that I will have to challenge everyone here. And there is no place to escape. At this time, the man-eating dead tree suddenly spoke and said, the previous goblin empire that wanted to do this was destroyed by our unity. Uh, uh, the two looked at the ancient world tree who interrupted speechlessly. As for the question of who joined forces, neither of them bothered to ask. Then, there is such a budding dwarf empire. They have finished playing with themselves. Although I have sent many people to sow discord. Uh, the two looked at each other. Lin circled his fingers, pointed at the world trees, and concluded. In short, that's it. Human chauvinism will not work in the lost lands. Unless you are sure to destroy them. Chapter 1497 Guardian? Although the saying, talk to people and talk to ghosts, is somewhat derogatory. But in fact, there is only one core theme. Only by having a common topic when talking to people can the conversation continue. One-sided chatterboxes are just annoying. In the same way, if both parties want to cooperate, either they have common interests, or one party can offer rewards that the other party cannot refuse. 
singing a high profile, and kidnapping others with moral favors will not work in front of the strong. Hypocritical moral favors are weapons used by the weak to bully the weaker ones. Because the strong can come up with a hundred ways to break this situation and break through the fragile hypocrisy. If you can't do this, how can you be called a strong person? However, when there are irreconcilable conflicts between the two parties, you can imagine how slim the possibility of cooperation is. What kind of benefits or rewards should be proposed so that the world trees can commit suicide and abandon their lives with peace of mind and dignity? In other words, if you want to close all the gates of the abyss, or do the next best thing, and only close the one that is causing the invasion of the demon army, you will not get the support of the world trees. This also means that neither the elven army nor the magician will take action. Lin looked at which face of the fat boy had become thinner, and his face was twisted and deformed, as if he was struggling with something. And he said, Now you can understand why I didn't want to tell you this at the beginning. Right. Because if those words had come out of my mouth, you would probably still be quarreling with me and even do some irrational things. Similarly, it is also for this reason that I do not go to the front line as soon as possible to help various countries repel the demon coalition. The first thought of all human beings must be the same as yours. That is to repel the demons and close the gate of the abyss. If everyone knows that the gate of the abyss has opened eight paths, and may be the source of extraordinary power. Then what choice do you think the noble lords will make if they want to rule the people as obedient people and slaves? At this time, someone jumped out and said, I can help defeat the devil, but the door of the abyss must be open for me. Will such people be regarded as reinforcements or enemies? Sadly, if this kind of thing is determined, how much effort will it take to clear my name afterwards? Of course, the smartest way is to temporarily accept us and then rebel when we are close to success but everyone here has thought of this possibility. So how could they not be prepared for such a method? For me, the most ideal development is when the human coalition is in such a difficult situation that they have to turn to me for help or ask the elven army to attack. Since they want something, then we have the bargaining chip to make conditions. It is possible for the two sides to resolve their differences peacefully, but these benefits cannot be obtained by taking the initiative. Is this the only way? Or should I ask first? Is this method really feasible? Ezio tried his best to persuade the people in front of him and solve the dilemma. The man-eating dead tree then interjected. The method is feasible. In fact, a few years ago, I felt that the shackles that bound me were showing signs of instability. This was millions of years after I climbed to the top. It's something I haven't felt in years. But there's still one key left. A big shot came forward to speak out. Although it is difficult to say something like feeling and cannot be regarded as qualified evidence. The weight of the world tree's opening is still quite sufficient. Lin continued. Look, the entire plan seems to be feasible until now. And judging from the existing evidence, once the entire plan is successfully completed, it will not only benefit the world tree, it will also benefit all creatures with extraordinary power in the land, including mystery. All have the opportunity to move up a level. This is why the Lord of Guardians has remained silent so far. Ezio seemed to be reminded and said. Yes the Lord of Guardians. Why does his silence have anything to do with this? Didn't others say that because the coming Lord of the Abyss did not violate the taboos he set, he would not come forward to expel him? Devil? Lin smiled and said, just listen to this kind of words. The taboo violation you mentioned is an occasion where the big boss will definitely show up. But even if the taboo is not violated, he himself has people's likes and dislikes. For those who can't see if it's pleasing to the eye, won't he look for trouble in private? Don't think about how I am always targeted. As for the devil, especially the Lord of the Abyss, do you really think that the Lord of Guardians must have a high-sounding reason to find trouble? No, it is a devil. And this reason is sufficient. But it can suppress the Lord of Guardians. If it doesn't move, it means there is a higher level force involved. The will of the lost earth? This is rarely mentioned. And even those who do are dubious about its existence. But if anyone can control the behavior of the Lord of Guardians, it must be the will of the world itself. And it is also the basis for the Lord of Guardians to obtain unlimited aid. But if this will really exist, and the things planned by the magicians and world trees in front of them are also conducive to its growth, then it is not impossible for this will to suppress the Guardian Lord. Following this line of thinking, what happens when humans choose to go against this will? Ezio couldn't even imagine it. Just when Ezio was distressed, Lin asked about Fastness. Your Majesty, you just mentioned that you feel that the original shackles have been loosened. Have you not tried to advance? What about your majesty Igersil? 
The eighth fruit tree whose name was called also came to life. The ancient Yectrasil said directly, My situation is the same. But if I want to cross that threshold, there is something missing. What I can be sure of is that it is definitely not that we have not accumulated enough. Link 1, we have already prepared the coordinates of the alien plane that other world trees have not set foot on. But if we can't break through, we can't break through. After pondering for a moment, Lin said, Well, the only conceivable possibility is that the door is still missing a guardian. In other words, the entire situation has not been completely stabilized. Yes. Ezio seemed to have grasped a life-saving straw, jumped up and said loudly, Guardian, this is it. No demon can pass through the other abyss gates freely. According to you, there are guardians. Then we only need to assure the human leaders that after the demons are completely driven out of the lost lands, even if the gate of the abyss is not closed, no demons will be able to pass freely. Such a guarantee will not win the support of the human leaders. Are they really all greedy and short-sighted enough to oppose all of this? Without a compassionate leader? Faced with this problem, Len Neon was troubled. After thinking about it again and again, he still said with recognition, Let's not consider whether there is such a compassionate person. Let's not discuss whether such a person can influence other selfish leaders, overwhelm their opinions, and make the human coalition agree with the world. The conditions of the tree, as long as there is a very important problem that cannot be solved, it is not the time for the world tree, the elves, or me to jump out. Regarding a certain magician's evasion, Ezio said dissatisfiedly, What problem is more important than exorcising demons? How to create a guardian? Show. Ezio was speechless. His eyes widened, and he looked at a certain magician in horror. You haven't thought about such a problem. Someone spread his hands and said, In my original ninth power plan, I only supported the development of the bank by the goddess of gold coins, so that the users of the coins would be under the power of the goddess. In other words, it should have ended 12 years ago after that. Just wait for things to develop naturally. After a certain level, everything will fall into place. To put it bluntly, the ninth gate of the abyss is not in my plan. And I certainly have not thought about related issues. If I knew it from the beginning, then why didn't I take precautions in advance and directly block the invasion of the demon army? Instead of letting a bunch of demons come over like now, everyone is having a headache about how to solve it. With the help of the World Tree's ability to connect to the Earth's veins, it is not difficult for Lin to detect changes in the terrain or anomalies in power. This is not something as subtle as listening in on a specific person's conversation thousands of miles away, catching the abyssal breath. An anomaly that is different from the lost land is almost a sure thing, but for the latter, it is difficult to accurately locate one of the tens or even hundreds of millions of individuals with the same configuration, let alone monitor the sound after Ezio also confirmed the fact that the method of generating guardians was unknown. He understood the reason why the magician in front of him was unwilling to come forward to discuss with the noble lords who were at the forefront of fighting against the demon alliance. The fundamental purposes of both parties are different. If we can start from the common point of defeating the demons, then how will the guardians be generated in the future? After the guardians are born, can they really block the gate of the abyss and prevent the demons from continuing to invade the lost land? Faced with a series of uncertainties, unknowns, and no guarantees, even the most rational and compassionate leader would not easily agree to such a proposal, because this may put himself and the people he swore to protect in a crisis. As long as the guardian cannot be born, or the guardian cannot play the role that everyone expects him to play, rather than making a bad start and making future cooperation more difficult, it is better to remain silent now. This is not to expect that the human coalition forces will obey the threats of the world tree and the elves after they have a head-to-head -head fight with blood. It's just two things that happen to come together. And the best choice was to do this. Human beings have a human standpoint. And World Tree also has a World Tree standpoint. There are things in common between the two. But to achieve consensus, someone has to make a few concessions. And not everyone wants to maximize their own interests. Suddenly, Ezio thought of a question in horror and asked, If humans can solve this door to the abyss, what will you do? The eight fruit tree representing Ugdrasil has no expression. In the man-eating dead tree of Fathas, the mummy may be able to make some expressions. But it is not that vivid. Only Lin smiled strangely and asked, Are you worried that we will help the devil's side? The idea behind being exposed made Ezio even more worried. However, Lin said, Probably no one believes it when they say that we will just sit back and wait for the next opportunity if nothing can be done. But the fact is that since records began, the human side has been able to repel the devil and close the door. 
The door of the abyss is all because the door is in the initial stage of opening. While the demons are building up their strength, humans are also doing the same. But this time it is a door of a different level. Especially when the Lord of the Abyss has arrived. Ezio frowned and said, You don't like the human side? With the virtues of the Suli Tang Empire. Would you think highly of them? Lin asked. Chapter 1498 Looking for Traces Eventually, Ezio got the answers he wanted, but left feeling uneasy about the prospect. But before leaving, he accepted the mark of the three-feathered bird with a black background and gold edge from the ancient fastness, and officially became a member of the Turtle Dove Alliance, an ally that the Dark Elf Meyer had high hopes for, and got a task, or a suggestion, if you are worried about the Demon Alliance coming from the Abyss, then lead the brothers in the Brotherhood who are willing to go together to help. However, in addition to fighting hard, Ezio also tries to gain a voice among the coalition forces. In peacetime, if you want to gain power in the army, you rely on seniority, blood, money, and backers. Even if you are an uneducated bastard, as long as someone is willing to protect you and your family background is strong enough, you can still rise to the top. But in times of war, ability and luck are the paths to power. No one wants to follow a commander who is good at losing battles and is willing to abandon the lives of his subordinates at any time. No one would trust a villain who could turn around and run away at any time or stab someone in the back for his own survival. As for the unlucky ones who were unlucky, they were buried in the soil long ago or were picked up by wild dogs. Even if there is a chance to get promoted and make a fortune, it will not be the person's turn to die. When Ezio is able to gain a certain say in the coalition, then when World Tree and the elves are ready to intervene, Ezio can act as a good coordinator from within. This would not cause the idea of preserving the Gate of the Abyss to receive overwhelming opposition. Ezio had to admit that the task assigned by a certain magician was indeed the best choice at hand. Just like other empires, they also want to intervene in this war that is likely to endanger the entire lost land. But except for the Karlsruhe Empire, the other three empires are still looking for the appropriate time to intervene. Instead of rashly interfering and causing protests from the Suli Tang Empire, the situation in the Karlsruhe Empire was different because it was the farthest away and should have been the most insulated. But there are too many young people inside who are eager to make meritorious deeds. These people form a group in the name of a private army and prepare to cross most of the lost land to the battlefield of the Gate of the Abyss. This kind of thing would be unbelievable if it were placed on the modern earth where humans once lived. How could any country allow armed forces to pass through its territory? But in the lost land, mercenaries from the mercenary guild are rampant. It is not unusual for this kind of army to pass by my door. Even though some people oppose it, some people accept it. Such an army only needs to follow the path that is accepted. As for the reason for acceptance, it is because this type of army usually does not carry too many supplies with them. They buy and eat along the way. For some poor small countries or lords who cannot defeat such an army and still have the opportunity to make a fortune, why not let them in? If the other party really intends to kill people and plunder, or even seize territory by force, you must know that above these nobles, big and small, there are their lords. The purpose of a vassal is to uphold justice and protect the rights of vassals. If the people above don't protect the younger brother, why would any younger brother want to be with such a boss? Even if the passing army robs or occupies the territory of the original lord, it will not be recognized. In short, there is still no unified front in the human camp. And now that they are focusing on dealing with demons, Ezio cannot really blame Yggdrasil and the elves for their inaction. As for the magician, he was too lazy to criticize him. Lin Hui took advantage of the occasion where World Tree was present to hand over a seemingly noble and important task to Ezio. But in fact, he also had his own selfish motives. Except that someone did need to do it. That is, he didn't want the fat boy in front of him to follow the path of the romantic assassin in his memory. Although Ezio Auditore of Florence is just a fictional character. Sometimes some names are like a cultural mark in some people's ears. Most people would not use such a name easily unless the name is the name of a vegetable market in that language system. Imagine that a parent who is obsessed with Star Wars named his son Han Solo or Skywalker. Determine whether a child will receive envy or ridicule from peers during the growing stage. When you grow up, will you feel inferior or proud? It's okay to call him Clark or Bruce. They fall into the category of common names. But if it's so unfortunate, when the last name is Kent or Wayne, it gives people a different feeling. Same thing. When a fat boy was a kid, when someone called Ezio, he only found it funny. 
or had a strong sense of bad taste. But when this kid grows up and screams, someone will only be full of embarrassment. Along with this, I saw all kinds of dislikes and criticisms about this kid. So Lin tried to let the lost Ezio not follow the path of the assassins and brotherhood, but to find his own path. Otherwise, this big fat boy got someone's drawing from somewhere and dressed up in that classic costume. It was really embarrassing. So embarrassing that someone wanted to dig a hole and bury themselves. Apart from Ezio's handling, Lin was certainly not someone who left things to others and then ignored them. According to the agreement with the World Trees, the crisis at the Gate of the Abyss can barely be classified as a variable cause by the Ninth Power Plan. Since there is a relationship, someone has a responsibility. At least we need to find out how the Guardian of the Abyss Gate was born and bring the whole thing to an end. Because if there is no guardian for this wide open door of the Abyss, it is like there is no valve at the end of the water pipe to control the water. People can only choose to completely block the water pipes to avoid flooding and reduce the waste of water resources. That is to say, if a method for the birth of a guardian cannot be found, or a qualified guardian can be found, then Midi and World Tree may also change their stance and choose to completely seal the Ninth Abyss door. Allowing demons to invade is definitely a bad idea. So as soon as he learned that the Gate of the Abyss had appeared and the demonic invasion had begun, Lin began to research the guardians related to the Gate of the Abyss. He even found the only two guardians he was familiar with. The demon moth King Jian Moss of Mount Forest in the southern border of the Guana Empire, and the Abyss Dragon God of Dragon Island. More time is spent on the large library surrounded by the holy city of Estali. News about guardians on the forums is lackluster. Lin relied on the background search of the forum index, and it only took him half a day to classify all the guardian messages on the forum into the forgettable range. He doesn't know as much as the things mentioned on the forum. But the Great Library is different. It contains all the knowledge written in words and pictures from ancient times to the present. Thanks to the efforts of generations of bookkeepers, it has been preserved. The only trouble is that if you want to find records related to something or something, you can only rely on searching. The best case is that a wise man who has read through it remembers seeing relevant records in a certain book. Said it directly? Although the big library has classifications. In a world like mystery where the only scientific method is the exhaustive method, it is better to expect a library god who is inquiring about what kind of scientific indexing system the library can have. It is a pity that there is no such god, and Lin has no friends to ask, so he can only rely on reading books on his own. As for the original lich at home, asking her about the ancient secrets of undead magic is okay, but forget about the guardian and the gate of the abyss. During the time when she was in power, the devil was trembling and did not dare to take a step further. Therefore, Finn has no need for the abyss. So naturally he does not have a deep understanding of this aspect. Fortunately, today's reading skills are no longer at the level of reading 10 lines at a glance. Instead, you can read the contents of a book by quickly swiping through the pages, convert it into digital text, and record it on the forum. So Lin went from bookcase to bookcase, looking for a few words about the guardians. At the same time, he also shouldered the task of digitizing the knowledge retained in the large library. Although the latter came secretly, no one agreed with him. But there's no guarantee that what I saw today may be useful tomorrow. So Lin still included it. In fact, this is probably due to a time-traveling collector's addiction. While consulting the data in the Great Library, Lin also did not forget to find out the locations of the remaining six fixed abyss doors. This part is much easier with the help of the World Trees. The specifics are almost the same as what was said before. With the help of World Tree, who has mastered the Earth's veins, it is too easy to find abnormal places with the aura of the abyss in the mysterious land. Although there were more than six places found, it took another half a day to determine the locations of the remaining six abyss doors by cooperating with someone's flash technique to check them one by one. Other places are secret strongholds of some devil worshippers. Or it could be that the devil was lurking directly among the nobles in the lost land. And in order to maintain their vital signs, they secretly set up a living sacrifice site. Lin basically doesn't care about these parts. I am not a messenger of justice. And I don't know the cause and effect of things. So rash intervention may not necessarily bring good results. There are still several places in the early stages of the Gate of the Abyss. Which is almost the same situation Lin encountered when he was in the Tower of the Great Sage. Although the breath of the Abyss flows out from the cracks in space. The demon has not been able to pass through. In the eyes of most magicians. This primary stage of the Abyss Gate is already in an irreversible state and its opening is inevitable. This was also the biggest reason why I would simply be scared away 
and escape from the Tower of the Great Sage. A magician who is accustomed to fighting uncivilized goblins cannot accept that his opponent jumps to the demon level in an instant. It's like playing an online game and just opening a new account and then running to the high-end area to die. It's just that if you die in the game, you can start over. But if you die in real life, it's gone. So I didn't dare to gamble at that time. But seeing it now, Lin could only sigh with emotion and then casually close the abyss door that showed signs of opening from the other side of the land. Compared with sewing and mending with needle and thread, it is not much more difficult for Lin to repair the cracks in space now, let alone being formed naturally. It has not yet been discovered by humans in the lost land or demons in the abyss, and is in an early stage of infancy, even if a demon on the other side discovers it and starts to actively expand it. Lin can still find a way to seal it. It can also send the devil on the opposite side into a reading state of resurrection on the spot. The reason for doing this is just because the door to the abyss that is now wide open has not yet been dealt with. Lin didn't want to face the dilemma of having the second and third doors open at the same time and the demon launching multiple attacks. Even if these doors are fully opened, they may become the key to the future world tree's impact on the 10th and 11th floors. The same situation will definitely appear again in the future. But one door is enough to deal with now. Chapter 1499 Before the War It was the end of autumn in the year 749 of the Aramaic calendar. The window period at the end of this harvest season and before winter is the time when war is most likely to occur in lost land. Because the work in the farmland has come to an end for the time being. It will not start to get busy until next spring. It's not winter yet. Which means the weather and traffic aren't so bad that people have to stay home for the winter. In particular, the human side wants to resolve the demonic threat as soon as possible and restore the original peaceful state. And after a year of preparation, led by the senior officials of the Suli Tang Empire, a major battle to attack from three directions is gradually taking shape. The southern border of the Suli Tang Empire occupied by demons was not a traditional grain-producing area and was itself a relatively barren area. This territory was occupied by demons and did not cause much trouble to the empire. Really speaking, it's not that there is no trouble at all. It's just that the country has been invaded by demons. If you want to say that the face of an empire is very glorious, then of course it cannot be justified. But no one dares to point their fingers at an empire, especially the Suritan Empire itself, which is a country with a very aggressive character. The kings of the eastern and western realms of the empire have been gearing up for a long time. Although most of the men among the nomadic peoples are responsible for the protection, and the daily labor can be replaced by women and children. This does not mean that if all the men are deployed to the front lines of the battlefield, there will be no impact on the homes behind them. Labor can be replaced, but the decline in the number of workers is an undeniable fact. Not to mention that there are many conquered peoples in the east and west who are mainly engaged in farming. These people cannot bear the consequences of men being sent to the front line for a long time. Therefore, under internal and external pressure, the two kings of the eastern and western realms of the Suli Tang Empire had to consider solving the demonic scourge as soon as possible. Another reason that made them interested was that the great Khan, who was also from the Golden Family, was finally willing to take action. Although they did not send troops directly under the Khan's court, they also sent several powerful follower tribes to join the eastern and western fronts respectively. Appropriately weakening the power of the great Khan and preserving his own are what the Khans of the four realms have been working hard on. Finally, in the name of righteousness, attacking demons, with the army in hand, would the kings of the eastern and western Khans let them eat and drink for free for a year, and then return to their respective tribes? Fight! This battle must be fought! In comparison, south of the southern border of the empire, the defense line composed of many small countries and volunteer armies did not have much choice. Even though there have been volunteers from all over the land to join, their foundation is not as good as that of an empire. The longer the delay, the greater the consumption, and the more unsustainable they become. Not everyone will prepare their own food and join the front. Even if someone prepared their own food at first, it would be impossible to bring enough food to eat in a year. When they finished eating the food they had prepared, those who were more conscientious would pay for it themselves. Those who were unconscionable would directly ask for it from the country where they were stationed. Anyway, they will come here to help these countries prevent threats from demons. Under this premise, it's not too much to take care of the food. However, the output of a region is fixed when more people than the area can handle are gathered. These people who open their mouths every day and cry out about hunger will act like locusts and sweep away the food in the area. 
The eaten grain can of course be transported from other areas. But even if the merchants responsible for transportation dare not make huge profits before fighting against the devil, the cost of purchasing food will inevitably continue to rise. After all, transportation is costs. Therefore, from the perspective of humanity, the defense lines in three directions all have needs and reasons for a war. So this war is bound to go. In fact, the allied forces of demons and orcs were not so well behaved during this year, and they quietly managed the newly conquered territory. At least the spies from the other three parties disappeared time and time again, and the lucky ones returned without success, which proved how strong the demon alliance's defense was. The more you don't want people to know what's going on inside, it proves that the demon alliance is definitely causing trouble. Rather than letting the devil take the initiative to attack after being fully prepared, it is better to find a way to consume the wave first. Perhaps this wave of offensive can successfully drive out the demons and end the gate of the abyss. Everyone held such a beautiful idea and allowed their morale and voices to fight to rise. Messengers traveling between the three fronts also became more frequent, despite the rather convenient thing of forums. But over the past decade or so, several leak crises have also let people know that the information on the forum is not foolproof. It's just that they are unable to denounce an established magician. And the cost of using the forum is extremely low. And it is in the hands of the magician associations in each district. Of course, the association cannot lose its golden job. So it can only choose to suppress or ignore these discordant voices. And then change its usage habits. For efficient information or general communication. Most people still use forums. However, those vital intelligence or messages will be delivered through traditional methods. As for those formal documents, they have always been delivered using original methods. After all, the role of these things is not just to convey news. As a formal certificate, the review mechanism of fire paint seal cannot be replaced by the function of the forum. Therefore, regarding the deployment of the upcoming war, the commanders of the three fronts did not dare to use forums that were not confidential enough. Ordinary people may not know it. But as long as their status is high enough and some programming language talents are recruited, they will know that this thing is just like a sieve, full of loopholes. Perhaps sending an envoy to deliver the information also carries the risk of leakage. But at least there will be signs when the information leaks. Rather than being as silent as a forum, it is impossible to trace who has read the information that should be kept confidential. In addition to the messengers riding fast horses traveling between the three fronts, the mobilization and reorganization of the team also attracted everyone's attention, especially the southern front which is regarded by many as a ragtag multinational coalition. Many organizations are organized on a country-by-country -country basis, with teams ranging from large to small. All teams are like parts of a puzzle, filling in the defensive lines. This makes the entire defensive front look quite substantial. But in the eyes of insiders, although this front is not vulnerable, it is almost there. Once a fight breaks out, other than blocking the enemy with flesh and blood, don't expect the defensive measures hastily established during this year to have any effect. There were many factors that made the southern defenses so fragile. The most troublesome point is that all soldiers are not reasonably assigned to positions where they can maximize their effectiveness according to their specialties. Because all teams come from all over the world, there are a large number of adventurers in them. And they all have partners who are accustomed to working together. These people are not used to fighting in large groups, let alone being split up. Just like the armies of those small countries, they are afraid that when they are dismantled and used, what should they do if their more vulnerable partners are not well protected? The team of adventurers who gathered here also had the same concerns. But if you want to change the posture of strategic defense and reorganize it into a form of strategic offense, you have to change the way the current teams are composed. From being in a group with acquaintances, to thinking about real combat power, and then running in. It sounds wonderful. But how to convince the original team leaders to give up their command rights? and obey the arrangements of the coalition command is a big problem. Therefore, the entire reorganization and running and training plan was carried out from spring to late autumn before it showed some results. Although the results are not ideal, some large-scale teams are not easy to split, and new people are constantly joining. But the people at the combined army command also performed exceptionally well and reorganized everyone into several legions with their own characteristics. In the eyes of some veterans, it can be regarded as a fight. The Suli Tang Empire had its own war system and model. So the Khans of the East and West hardly had to worry about this. The only thing they have to consider is who goes first and who goes last. The tribes sent to support by the Great Khan will undoubtedly be placed in the first echelon and sent to the battlefield against demons and orcs. 
Neither Khan was too worried about whether these people would obey orders. Those who will be sent to their subordinates are either inconspicuous and marginalized people on the great Khan side, or people who need to perform meritorious services to prove their worth. If it is really precious, and is not willing to be put on the battlefield to be even slightly damaged, such people will not get into their hands. Therefore, if these people are left idle in the rear, they will be dissatisfied, taking shelter under the wings of the great Khan and distributing fertile pastures. All this is not without cost. The heads of demons and orcs would be a good proof. On the human side, the three fronts began to prepare for the upcoming attack. On the southern front, there is a group of young people who look like they have just been leaned, scattered among the reorganized legions. They do not have full sets of armor like famous knights, nor do they use equipment that appears to be carefully maintained like veteran adventurers. The equipment on their bodies and hands shine brightly, as if they had just been made. And so it is. This group of people are fellow members of the Brotherhood, led by Ezio. The equipment he wears is a high-end product sponsored by an unnamed magician and commissioned by craftsmen from the Technology Guild. It may not be as good as the custom-made products carefully crafted by famous craftsmen. But if you sell your belongings, it will be enough for any child to buy a small manor and live the life of a landlord. The sponsorship from a certain magician seemed to have spent an extra amount of money on these children. In fact, under the reluctant explanation of Ezio, everyone understood the reason why a certain magician could not take action directly. Of course, what Ezio said was not the real reason, but an excuse made up to excuse him. But it was enough to calm the hearts of these children and maintain someone's tall image. Instead of allowing him to be portrayed as someone who ignored the invasion of the abyss, he would only be despised by others. Although the number of members of the Brotherhood could be used as a whole, they did not choose this method which would cause some headaches for the combined army command. Instead, they agreed to be broken up and dispersed to other people's teams according to their respective strengths. After all, when Ezio and others arrived, it was already the late stage of the Southern Front's reorganization, and many formed legions had already begun training. They can join in dispersely, which can serve as veterans leading new recruits, and they can integrate into these legions faster. Instead of joining the newly formed legions, they were still secretly scheming over the arrangement of command authority and officer establishment. Chapter 1500 Worry Fighting demons is everyone's consensus, but no one wants to be commanded by a mediocre person and lose his life for no reason. Everyone thinks that they are tactical geniuses who can lead others to achieve unparalleled military exploits. It is their unswerving duty to command everyone and achieve victory. Therefore, every battle for command, large or small, is an internal wrestling among human beings. It can only be said that the human side is full of hope before experiencing the real battle with the devil. The previous failure in the first battle was all the result of the Empire's selfish and blind command. It was not that everyone was incapable of fighting. This idea is the most common perception. This makes people who have faced demons, including Ezio, uneasy. Some people will worry and warn their companions, but they will only be ridiculed as cowards. It's just that these people who can escape from the devil's hands alive, whether they win or escape, are at a higher level than ordinary warriors. So whether they are ridiculed or not, there is still a group of people following such people. Ezio's approach is smarter. He neither warned nor even mentioned to the officer who received them that he had fought demons. The big demon's head that was submitted to the adventurer's guild was also chopped off by him. Life at a primary school is a group of children of similar age. To put it bluntly, no one is convinced by anyone. To convince others, it's useless to rely on words. You have to show real results. Or you can bribe people with benefits. Not necessarily money. But maybe an extra piece of bread when you're hungry. Or an extra piece of candy when you're usually hungry. That would be enough for a group of kids. Besides, a certain magician who is burdened by fame is also a good negative role model for Ezio. It didn't look like the guy had all his abilities. But he was hampered and guarded against it every turn. Although there are some people who support him. Generally speaking, most people are unhappy with him. By the same token, instead of being in the limelight and turning yourself into a target, it is better to operate silently among the grassroots soldiers, regardless of how happy everyone is now to share command power. In fact everyone knows that when a war actually breaks out, except for the regular armies of big and small countries, whoever gives quick and correct instructions, and who is popular will be able to mobilize more people. People cooperate with his actions. To put it bluntly, everyone still behaves like a team of adventurers. Follow whoever is smart. And stay away from the idiots. This is why Ezio did not choose to let the brothers of the Brotherhood gather together. 
form a team on his own, and then gather some stragglers. Instead, they chose to break everyone up and integrate them into the already existing team. A certain magician may not know it himself, but most of the children who have left elementary school and are adventuring in the lost land know one thing. That is, the education in the primary school is an elite education that only a few people in the lost land have the opportunity to get. There may be a lack of courses such as how to govern a territory. But all the things learned are rare knowledge that few people outside teach. Most adventurers who venture out leave home when they have some strength and ambition. If you are lucky, you can meet soldiers who teach you some simple chopping skills when you are young. Or you can meet hunters who teach you some archery tips. Apart from enthusiasm, most people have no knowledge and do not even know the written language. This is why magicians or magic apprentices can easily take the leadership position in a team of adventurers. Because they are rare intellectuals among adventurers. However, knowledge that was painful to learn but found to be useful everywhere after graduation has become the only way for children from elementary schools to quickly integrate into the group of adventurers. In addition, they originally lived in a group under the guidance of someone's intentional or unintentional curriculum arrangements. All children were accustomed to the role of commanding or being commanded. Not only is it simple cooperation, but we also know how to cooperate and help each other. Because if we don't help each other, we may sometimes be disgusted by a certain magician's unintentional malice. This allows brotherhood members, who are dispersed among various teams, to quickly become the center of the team. If they were not late members, perhaps in the early stages of the struggle for command, these brotherhood members could quickly occupy all captains, squad leaders, etc., and directly lead the soldiers' military positions. But even if not, as long as they go to the battlefield and those captains, who talk loudly make mistakes, I am afraid that the soldiers will quickly change their minds and follow those young people who can take responsibility for their actions. This result was what Ezio had expected, and even the brothers in the Brotherhood accomplished it better than expected. He will not forget his most important task, which is to gain a certain say in the coalition forces. Then at the appropriate time, the World Tree and the Elves are introduced, including their different requirements. Unlike most people who would choose to directly take the high-level route and rely on the names of some big bosses to convince other noble lords. Ezio believes more in the power of the majority and the willpower of unity. Those noble lords only relied on their own power to make the soldiers obey their will. If that's the case, then why don't I just win over the soldiers? This was Ezio's idea. And he did it, convincing the brothers in the fraternity to follow his routine. Although everyone is scattered among various teams, there is still a forum to communicate with each other, which couldn't be more convenient. The civ-like confidentiality of the forum is of course clear to those who came from a primary school, but they think they are not involved in any illegal matters. So why should they avoid using forums that are extremely convenient? The parts that really involve taboos are still hidden in Ezio's heart. But Ezio also knew very well that his inner plan worked. And the big reason was that the current army on the southern front was really a ragtag group. It is incredible that an officer has to worry about whether his soldiers will obey orders at any time. If it were an ordinary army, even if they were not trained to the point where they could use their arms and fingers, the noble lords would still be able to control their soldiers. After all, these people all come from their own families. If one person can run away and be stubborn, how can a whole family do the same? However, many of the soldiers gathered on the southern front were adventurers who volunteered to come here. Mercenaries are paid to do things, but they still obey orders for the sake of money. In the face of these voluntary adventurers, there is really no way to force them to be obedient. When the pressure is too great, they just lean into other people. Therefore, those who hope to command a team can only follow the wishes of these soldiers composed of adventurers and hope to induce everything in a good direction. It is precisely this current situation that makes Ezio, who originally came with great ambitions and led his brothers from the Brotherhood, no longer have the original goal of defeating the demons. Whether the gate of the abyss can be closed is another matter. It is about preserving the vitality of the human side as much as possible. Although he was disappointed, he had to admit that Ezio, who had personally experienced the power of demons, did not think that the humans on the southern front had a chance to defeat the coalition of demons and orcs. They were too underprepared and too optimistic. It seems that as long as the human side attacks, the demon alliance will immediately fall apart. In fact, according to Ezio's assessment, the situation may be just the opposite. The almost crazy fighting spirit and fighting spirit of the orc soldiers are the most likely to make ordinary people collapse. If you don't take away their lives, you can't stop the swords that are slashing at you. Even if their hands and feet are severed, 
they will butt them with their heads and bite them with their teeth. Does the current human coalition have such a consciousness? According to a certain magician, no matter how powerful the army is, no matter how courageous the soldiers are, their morale will reach a critical turning point. As for the turning point of the orcs, Ezio couldn't tell yet. The person who made Ezio's scalp tingle even more was the demon he had had close contact with. Growing up, Ezio had definitely come into contact with a lot of strong people. Moreover, these strong men are not the kind of people who can choose one out of a hundred or one out of a thousand, but the kind of people who can slay a dragon alone or destroy a country by one person. Ezio even sparred with such a person. But sparring is not a life and death fight after all. Even after several fights with the demon prince Azad that once made him feel that his life was in danger, Ezio now seemed to have let him go. What gave Ezio this level of understanding was the escape from the gate of the abyss, which almost became the final drama of his life. At that time, even if he met the most powerful pursuer, the big demon whose head was chopped off by him, strictly speaking, he was not stronger than the big demon Sterina who followed Azad. But these demons are serious about killing themselves, no matter the cost. At first, relying on the surprise of the dragon fong hidden blade, the lives of the first two demons were actually taken away. Although he was not unscathed, the injuries suffered were within an acceptable range. At least there were no disabilities or lost limbs. However, the endless stream of orcs and demons chasing after them turned this escape battle, which was like a picnic, into a life and death battle where one would not be surprised to lose one's life at any time. At the end of the battle, Ezio couldn't remember how he returned to the gathering place of humans, handed the big devil's head to the counter of the Adventurer's Guild, or how he returned to the holy city of Estali. Those things were all said by Rowan and Kish afterwards. Only then did Ezio learn from a third party's perspective what he had done. The only memory I have is of fighting one devil after another to the death, and becoming the one who survives. There is not enough time to deal with every demon. Just like on the battlefield. If you don't deal with the enemy in front of you as soon as possible, when the second or third one catches up, you will have to face multiple enemies at the same time. Ezio can't say that he can't deal with opponents. And now as his companions, everyone in the army will definitely not be able to deal with them either. Perhaps after forming an army, the combat effectiveness of everyone's complementation will be different. After all, war is not a battle between individual soldiers. But no matter how many reasons he gave, he couldn't convince Ezio himself. He said that the army he was in could really defeat the demons and drive the orcs back underground as everyone expected. This is not a pessimistic mood, but a concern about the unknown state of the area occupied by demons and orcs. It's not that Ezio didn't think about it. He once again went in personally to inquire. There are many adventurers who are not good at attacking difficulties head-on and choose such a mission. But these people fail to come back and talk about what they saw and what they encountered. But now that they have entered a formal army establishment, it is not easy to run around. What's worse is that Ezio actually feels a little afraid of the land occupied by demons. As if there is some great terror inside. All this made him feel uneasy. Chapter 1501 Grand Strategy The process of war preparations is proceeding steadily step by step just as planned by several commanders of the human camp. Although the area occupied by the allied forces of demons and orcs is now shrouded in fog, no information can be transmitted. But after all, it was the territory of the Suli Tang Empire, so there was naturally relevant terrain and geographical data. This information was shared freely with the coalition forces on the southern front and used to formulate plans. This is not because the Suli Tang Empire had good intentions. In order to fight the devil, they did not change their composure even if they handed over confidential information such as map information. In fact, it was because the Empire required the Southern Coalition to cooperate with its grand strategy that it used the map as a bargaining chip in exchange. Of course, the most important aspect of the Empire's arrangements is for the three parties to coordinate and attack at the same time. But attacking at the same time does not mean that each one attacks his own. Perhaps doing this can also bring about the performance of the demon and orc coalition forces looking for one thing at the expense of the other. If the three-party offensive can cooperate with each other, will it be able to achieve better results? In terms of grand strategic arrangements, the western border Khan of the Suri Tang Empire proposed a strategy. The East Root Army acted as a diversion and held back part of the Demon Coalition. Then the West Root Army and the South Root Army attacked westward of the southern border of the Empire. The two armies from the West and the South finally merged somewhere in the southern border and divided the demon alliance. The next step is to annihilate the small demon coalition that has been separated and isolated from the gate of the abyss. 
really reduce the number of enemies, and regain the occupied territory. In order to merge smoothly, and prevent the southern root army from not knowing where they were running, or from wandering blindfolded and running into the wrong place. The Sulatang Empire provided accurate military maps. This is the reason for the generosity of the empire. Then, there was a strong attack on the east and west roads, and a containment on the south road. Cut up the demon alliance again, annihilate small groups, and regain territory. Then attack forcefully from the east and south, and contain them from the west. Repeat this over and over again and use cutting methods to take back all the territory occupied by the demons. Finally, the enemy was suppressed near the gate of the abyss, and then annihilated in one fell swoop. Then you can consider closing the door to the abyss. The grand strategy that should have been kept secret has become a topic of conversation for soldiers during their spare time in training, and some good people began to arrange their troops. After all, although the strategy has been set, how to implement it is also a science. Arranging which army to attack and which army to move in which direction are all testing the commander's ability. Which legion is good at attacking, and which legion is good at defending. These are also testing the commander's vision. Since everyone thinks they are capable of directing such a war, of course they will engage in a vigorous paper war based on the parts they know. It doesn't matter if you lose the verbal fight anyway, and having a topic to discuss can also help relieve tense emotions. Therefore, the generals at the headquarters did not stop this trend. In his spare time from training, Ezio not only used the forum to communicate with his friends, but also mingled with this group of people. It's just that Ezio is just a listener, not arguing with others. The focus is certainly not on these people's unreliable rhetorical tactics, but to learn from their words the specialties of each legion and the more famous heroes. One or two may be more one-sided, but once there were more people talking and showing off, Ezio would be able to figure out the details of the entire southern front army before a certain magician noticed the Brotherhood's bias and tried to influence and change it. Ezio and the others learned a lot about intelligence research methods from Kaya. At least the most basic sorting and summarization. Everyone has a preliminary idea. Perhaps the information obtained from others will be highly subjected to the speaker and may not be more complete than the information held by the coalition command. But Ezio still took his friends, hoping that the news from these people would soothe his uneasiness. But the cruel fact is that after knowing the achievements of the strong men who were with him in the Southern Root Army, Ezio's worries increased to a higher level. It's just that this kid who just debuted hasn't seriously thought about who he is comparing himself to. The former Demon King. The former Commander of the Guards of the Dark Legion. Also known as the Sword Master. A person in the order of the strongest in the land. The Demon Prince. And a magician who can single-handedly challenge the Lord of Guardians. As for those Black Dragons and Big Demons. I won't mention them. In fact, the people in the Southern Root Army who were talking about it and mentioned it repeatedly were also very powerful in the Adventurer's Guild or the Mercenary Guild, as long as you don't compare yourself with those non-humans. In short, amid the excitement of this faction before the war and the panic of a few people, time advanced to a special day. The order for the army to set off was given. It seemed like a normal dispatch order. But in fact, the troops that had not been mobilized for more than half a year suddenly moved, which was quite abnormal in the eyes of the soldiers. Even those who seemed to have only grown muscles, but not brains, and who hate using their brains when doing things, feel that there must be something weird behind such actions. It is not as simple as changing the defense zone, like the command issued above. Those commanders with noble backgrounds easily regard soldiers as idiots who know nothing. They only need soldiers to go to the battlefield to kill the enemy, and nothing else is needed. But in fact, soldiers also have the wisdom of soldiers. Not to mention those soldiers who are experienced adventurers. I am afraid they have seen more of the world than most nobles. People at the top always think that as long as they don't explain things clearly, no one will notice. In fact, as long as you are not a certain magician who specializes in doing things that have never been done before, there is nothing wrong with everyone. If you can't foresee things in advance, then there are no smart people who can even realize things later. But it's okay to leave. In addition to everyone's strong desire to fight, those who were officials also worked hard to raise the food they consumed every day. If the situation before the reorganization was followed, each team would have to figure out how to eat and drink every day, and the coalition command would have no control over these matters. From the perspective of command authority, if I control your food, will your soldiers listen to you or mine? On the other hand, there are people who have money to eat well. And there are people who have no money and eat whatever they want. It's all the responsibility of the person in charge. Which country's finances can afford it? 
but after the teams were dispersed and reorganized, they could no longer ignore the original model. The people in the coalition command must bear the food and supplies of all soldiers and officers. There is no salary. If there are personnel from regular legions from various countries, that is the matter of each country. But there is no food. How can the soldiers fight if they don't have enough to eat? Therefore, in the early stage of the Southern Front's military reorganization, a large part of the issue was how countries and chambers of commerce would bear the cost of food and fodder. And they were arguing with each other. Finally, with the pressure of the devil in front of them, no one dares to take things too far or delay them until everyone can't get anything done. Therefore, the speed and progress of military reorganization are rapid, partly because everyone is unable to drag this war into a protracted war. In order to cooperate with the Suli Tang Empire's strategy, the army set off. When the legion in front crossed the boundary marker representing the border, it indicated that they had officially entered the territory of the Suritan Empire. From the generals to the soldiers, no one looked relaxed and at ease, because they had entered the land occupied by the allied forces of demons and orcs. Even if the empire provides a map, everyone will not rush blindly. But what happened to this land, as well as the deployment of the demon alliance's forces, these unknown parts make people unavoidable and worrying. In order to prevent the marching queue from encountering a sudden attack, the general commanding this temporary legion ordered the dispatch of spearheads and sentries to go out to investigate the surrounding environment. The vanguard soldiers are actually just a small unit that stands out from the legion's formation. Used to alert the enemy. Those who are really responsible for the reconnaissance mission are sentry riders riding fast horses. The southern border of the Suli Tang Empire is a rolling hilly land. Even though the slope was not steep, the soldiers still walked up or down alternately. There are not many trees in this area, only large tracts of wild grass growing. And here and there are a few bushes of grass that are almost as tall as a person. If it weren't limited by the undulating terrain, everyone's field of vision could be wider and farther. The advantage is that although it is easy to set up an ambush in such terrain, the number of people cannot be large. And it is only used for harassment at most. Facing a reorganized army, it won't make any big waves. When the scattered sentries found the first man-made object, they were several tents that were no longer inhabited. This is where local herders usually live. And as the pastures move, the tents can be dismantled at any time. Because the resources in the northern part of the lost land are limited. Wooden frames and tarpaulins like this for tents, as long as they are still usable and are definitely ownerless, will usually be dismantled and taken away. Even if there is an owner, depending on the situation, you can choose to rob it and take it away with you. However, the tents here are in a dilapidated appearance and have not been inhabited for a long time. This scene is quite unusual. After careful inspection, although the dilapidated tent showed signs of damage, it was not left over from the battle. Maybe some wild beast came from somewhere to look for food and smashed and tore something. There is no trace of people, let alone livestock. The advantage, or the only advantage, of the barren north is that there are not many wild beasts that can threaten domestic livestock and humans, and even fewer magical beasts. It is also the two natural threats of cold weather and lack of food that limit the growth of population. But people cannot disappear silently. And looking at the situation, everyone in this area has disappeared. So these man-made things are left behind and no one is taking care of them. For such abnormal phenomena, naturally someone will report it. Another part of the Sentinel Riders went deeper into the unknown area in front of them. I thought that the area occupied by the allied forces of demons and orcs must be full of remnants of war disasters. With corpses lying on the roadside. All of them in a miserable state of bloody and bloody conditions. Unexpectedly, the actual situation is that everywhere is so clean that there is no trace of anyone. Even if a person dies, falls on the roadside and is eaten by wild animals. A skeleton will be left behind. How can it be like now? Nothing can be found. However, what happened to this legion was not an exception. The three armies that launched the attack on the same day, no matter which front they were on, encountered no resistance as expected. Instead, they smoothly advanced into the demon-occupied area, but none of them noticed that vultures appeared frequently in the sky. Moreover, these vultures with flaming little heads did not eat carrion, but grew up devouring demon remains and drinking lava. Chapter 1502 The Counterattack of the Demon Coalition When three days have passed, and the advancing human legion finally finds traces of demons and orcs. What should it look like? The two parties hugged each other and cried, saying, Brother, I finally found you. Is that so? Or are the demons and orcs panicking when they see the overwhelming power of humans? 
and turn around and run away? Or are you looking at the high-walled and fortified city built by demons and orcs in this year and sighing with excitement? The correct answer is, the tide-like army of orcs occupied the entire field of vision, charging towards the queue of the human coalition in waves. At the same time, the urgent information sent back to the general by the sentinel cavalry was that both the way in and the way forward were cut off by demons, double-teaming from the front and back, attacking from the flanks. There seems to be another direction to escape. However, it is this kind of thinking that puts this human army into an irreversible situation. The situation of this legion was not unique. Several legions on the southern front that broke into the demon-occupied areas all faced the same situation. Without exception. And these troops, that penetrated deep into the demon-occupied areas, and were surrounded accounted for more than one-third of the southern root army's strength, relying on the convenience of the forum. The coalition command knew immediately that the forward army was ambushed. But we only know one situation. The specific arrangement and strength of the demon and orc alliance. These vital information are still unknown. This leaves the people at the coalition command facing a choice. Should they be rescued? Or should the undefended legion strengthen their defense? They also noticed that the eastern and western root armies that launched attacks at the same time did not suffer ambushes of the same scale. It's as if the demon coalition only targets the southern root army. In fact, not only did the east and west armies not encounter ambushes, they also fought a series of victorious battles. The forwards of the east and west armies were tribes transferred by the great Khan. Whether they are committing meritorious deeds or fighting for more say, it shows that these two forwards will play very hard and hard. And so it is. Since the forwards of the east and west routes broke into the area occupied by demons, they encountered many overrun camps set up by orcs. Even though they were mainly light armored horse archers, it was not difficult to deal with these crooked wooden fences. A single kick from the horse would create a gap. If there are too many kicking horses, the entire wall will be demolished. Once the wall fell down, the group of orcs who could only escape on two legs had no way of surviving. Just demolish and kill them all the way. To report it to the superiors is to attack the city and conquer the fortress. The merit book is filled with pages and pages. So don't expect that the east and west root army will encounter battles. One is to take advantage of the light cavalry. And the other is that they are not as cautious as the south root army. During these three days, the advancement speed of the east and west armies was much faster than that of the south armies. The three-party offensive turned out to be such a paradoxical situation. The southern road fell to several legions in one fell swoop and was surrounded by a coalition of demons and orcs. The situation is precarious. The rear is also in a dilemma as to whether to save or not to save. The east and west roads sang triumphant songs and everything was smooth. But one strange thing is that the main force of the Khan kings in the east and west realms did not keep up. Not to mention taking the opportunity to expand the results. Even the support of the forward army is getting weaker and weaker. It just doesn't show up for a while. Although the nomadic army is very good at providing food to the enemy, it still needs to have food to grab. Orcs, if nothing else, have the best digestive system among all Homo sapiens races. As long as their mouths can move, they can eat it and convert it into the energy and nutrients their bodies need. So it is conceivable that the demons do not have a rigid need for food. And the orcs can eat anything. How much food can be eaten by humans in the territories run by the two? Even if you want to kill people to eat meat, you have to eat the meat of a two-legged sheep. Demons. Creatures of the abyss. Ordinary people who dare to eat demons must have the consciousness to mutate themselves. The greater possibility is that it was directly invaded by the breath of the abyss and turned into a monster without self-awareness. Orcs. As mentioned earlier, they can eat anything and their digestive systems are extremely powerful. As a price, each of them is like a walking source of bacteria and viruses. If you stay with orcs for a long time, you will contract diseases. This is not discrimination, but it's a fact. Such characteristics make orcs a very strong race, have a terrifyingly short average lifespan, and when you are healthy, you have nothing to say. Once you get sick, you are usually left to wait for death. However, these flaws and characteristics are not the factors that cause this seemingly incredible situation. The tribes sent to support by the Great Khan were intoxicated with the dream of winning streak. So they couldn't understand. But the kings of the two realms have been in intrigues, and intrigues all their lives, and stayed out of it. How could they not see the weirdness in this? Therefore, the two Khans unanimously chose a prudent and self-protective attitude. Retaining their most trusted troops, and only using seconded troops, or those who were not valued in the first place. Therefore, 
The situation at hand became that although the east and west routes went smoothly, the main force remained motionless, allowing the forwards to continue to penetrate into the enemy camp. The southern route was surrounded by less than half of the troops, and they were indecisive. Although we don't know the specific arrangements of the alliance between demons and orcs, it seems like the other side has given up on defending the east and west routes and is focusing all its efforts on attacking the south route. This kind of situation judgment can be imagined by anyone who is interested in paying attention to the news flying all over the forum, let alone the commander or headquarters responsible for the three-way front. The best way is to increase the intensity of the attack from the east and west. Hit the gate of the abyss in one go and close it. So no matter how well the demon coalition fights on the southern road, they are like rootless trees and sourceless water and will eventually be wiped out by the human side. However, what is best for the overall situation may not be best for everyone, at least from the standpoint of the cons of the eastern and western borders of the Suri Tang Empire. They would hope that the multinational coalition forces on the southern route would assume more responsibilities and lure the main force of the demon and or coalition forces farther away. This way, they will have greater certainty and more time to close the damn door. Besides, the forward troops on the east and west routes were able to move forward unimpeded. It seemed that the demon coalition had given up on defending in these two directions. But is it really so? Is there no trap behind it? Wait for the two forwards to force out the trap hidden by the demon alliance. Allowing the abyss side to completely expose their trump card. This is the best time for the con kings of the two realms to use their respective main forces to make a final decision. To be fair, the two cons of the Suli Tang Empire only wanted to do the most certain thing and fight a war with a guaranteed chance of victory but they have not thought about what price they will pay for it. In other words, as the arrogance of the imperial cons, they believe that everyone would be honored for their sacrifice. As long as they could achieve the ultimate great cause, it is only natural that they stand on the side that wins in the end. Besides, what does the dead people have to do with them? They are neither from the same tribe nor from the same country. No matter how many people die, the two con kings will not feel sad. In fact, it is not wrong for some people to think so. From a personal standpoint, everyone has the right to choose the path of pursuing good fortune and avoiding disaster. And everyone will make the decision that is best for themselves. That's why the word sacrifice becomes a virtue in others' mouths. However, few people realize that sacrifice is a virtue. But it is not an excuse to ask others to perform this virtue. Or that it is a matter of course for others to perform this virtue. They would not have any sense of honor or mission if they were on the side that was sacrificed. Some are just endless fear and give the most vicious curses to those big people who give up on them. Most of Ezio and his friends did not join the first wave of legions that attacked the demon-occupied areas. Because they arrived late, most of the legions in the first wave of attack sequences had already been organized and had entered into training early. And there was no need for Ezio and other latecomers to supplement them. There are only a few unlucky ones. Because the members of the originally established legion were too excited during training and retired due to injuries and these people all have relatively special responsibilities. It is easier for elites, who come from primary schools, to find replacement talents. And therefore they enter the first wave of attacking legions. Many of these people have no news at all. When Ezio and other Brotherhood members received news about their attack from the private block on the forum, it was already night, and the forward army was already in a state of rout. The brothers in the fraternity still took the time to post a brief message on the forum. And then, they were back in danger of running away. The Southern Root Army's forward corps collapsed faster than anyone imagined. Because every legion faces the cruel fate of being surrounded and attacked by two to three hostile legions. For the soldiers who were deeply surrounded. Almost immediately, when they found themselves surrounded by a large number of enemies, the morale of the team dropped to the sky. Everyone has only one thought left. That is how to escape. The gap in the net is the only way to survive. Almost no team can launch a defensive counterattack. Even if a few teams or two try to make such an effort they will be scattered by their own people. Among the legions in the first wave of attack sequence, there are also heroes who can boost morale. But such a person cannot withstand the sniper attack of a group of big demons. The entire southern front. The legionnaires in the second and third wave of attacks. And the people in the headquarters were all caught in a strange atmosphere. Everyone knows that the forward army is finished. And even if someone can escape, they will not survive in the end. But no one dared to say give up and save. It seems that as soon as you say it, you will lose something. Even though Ezio felt sorry for his companions, he was still powerless. He did not have the ability to accurately locate his companions. 
So even if he could leave the team to rescue them, he would not be able to rescue them. The opponent is on the run, and it is impossible for him to report back the terrain and features he can see all the time. Is there really someone who posts on forums and says where he is free and why he should run a few more steps? Although he was helpless, Ezio knew that there was something he had to say. If no one wants to talk about it, let him start it. Because if some things are not done, there will be more serious consequences later. He approached the general of his regiment. This general was a noble from a small country south of the Suri Tang Empire and was related to the king. He has enough strength and popularity so he has the conditions to be easily persuaded by Ezio. General, it's time to make a decision early. Your kingdom and your family are behind you. And now the entire front does not look like it can defend the demon coalition and attack with all its strength. I don't want them to become orcs. If there is food or seedbed, we must arrange for their escape. Then we must reorganize the defense line, block the demon attack, and absorb the retreating people as much as possible. We can't do more. Chapter 1503 Guardians While the southern front against the Gate of the Abyss was defeated, a certain magician was working hard to investigate matters about the Guardian. Find a definite result early, so that you can negotiate with the nobles for a price. The six Abyss Gates outside Cat Forest and Dragon Island were quickly found with the help of the World Trees. Regardless of whether the Guardian's identity is from the land side or the Abyss side, it's easy to talk about. Even if it's hard to talk to him at first. It's easier to talk to him if he gets beaten up. Perhaps because of their special responsibilities. The Guardians tend to be conservative and unassuming in character. Most of them are not the type to put their eyes above their heads, treat everyone with contempt, and never change their attitude to death. As long as you show a certain level of strength and have the qualifications to be equal to them, you can talk to them on an equal footing and even ask to pass through the gate of the abyss. In fact, the Guardian's duty is to prevent those creatures that are not strong enough from passing through, whether they went there on purpose or got lost and wandered to the other side. If they are too strong, like the Abyss Evil God or the Abyss Lord, they will be restricted by the mystery land itself. Even if the gate of the Abyss is fully opened, they will have inherent restrictions if they want to come. And they cannot come and go at will. Even if you want to force your way through, don't forget that there is still a truly powerful person in Lost Land. With a living early warning device like a guardian, the guardian master will never be in a situation where he can't catch up and can only clean up the aftermath, even if the guardian belongs to the other side, unless his old man is also held back. Just like now, I heard that the goddess of gold coins is already resident in the kingdom of God of the guardian lord. The two gods stared at each other all day long, refusing to give in at all. On the contrary, it is the kind of guy who is neither strong nor weak who has the best chance to pass through these permanent abyss gates and go to the other side of the world. For example, people like a certain magician and the demon prince is odd. In short, the guardians are not that kind of super powerful beings. Think about the demon lord Sabin, who was scared away by a certain magician. With the strength of the great demon level, he is enough to confront the moth king of Mouth Forest. From this, we can see that strength is not an absolute requirement for becoming a guardian. But after becoming guardians, they will be in a state of immortality, or pseudo-immortality. The form may not be the same, but the most likely possibility is symbiosis with the gate of the abyss, so that death cannot be the end of the guardian's journey. For example, the infinite reincarnation of the demon moth king belongs to the lost world side. As long as the faith of the dragon god of the abyss is immortal, and the gods are not destroyed. This of course belongs to the abyss side. There is also a king elephant on the side of the lost land, which is as big as a hill not very active, very oppressive. Someone stands at its feet, which is only the height of the toes. There is a phoenix perched on a sycamore tree. As for the only two branches of the sycamore tree, one is occupied by the phoenix, and the other is the eternal gate of the abyss. The most special guardian on the law side is the ghost of an entire city. Most of them don't know their responsibilities, and they act like living people every day. But when one day ends and the next begins, they forget what happened the day before, and start all over again, including the food that was consumed, the crafts that were made, etc. All are restored to what they were the day before. It's like being stuck in the city from the movie Groundhog Day back home, living the same day over and over again. They will repeat what they have done and what must have happened. People who die on this day will die again. Babies born will return to their mother's belly and be born again. Even if their experiences were artificially changed, they would be back to the same situation the next day. There is only one understanding person here. 
He is also a ghost, watching the whole city from a spectator's perspective, constantly performing the same drama in infinite reincarnations. When Lin came to visit for the first time, he only mentioned the keyword, Gate of the Abyss, which attracted ghosts all over the city to pursue him crazily. Someone decided that these ghosts were evil spirits and killed them all without thinking too much. Killing someone has a psychological burden. Killing these ghosts who have died once. This should be called eliminating harm for the people. After clearing the entire city and accidentally destroying many buildings, Lin finally found the door to the abyss in the middle of the most luxurious palace. I originally thought there would be other guardians. So I was on guard while researching. It's just that he hasn't waited for the guardian to appear. This research lasted until the second day, and I saw with my own eyes that the entire city had returned to its original appearance. And the only understanding ghost also took the initiative to show up and talk to someone peacefully. Only then did Lin learn the secret about this ghost town. The guardians of the other three doors that have not been clicked are all on the other side of the abyss. There was a huge turtle, twice as big as the elephant king. It pressed the gate of the abyss directly into the ground with its belly. If Lin hadn't noticed that the mountain above the gate of the abyss had a life response, he wouldn't have realized that the gate buried underground was guarded by a giant turtle. And he protected the gate in strange ways. There is also a door completely submerged in a lava pool that is home to a flock of flamingos. The strange thing is that the guardians are not among this group of firebirds. They are like the magic cats of Mount Forest. As a subsidiary race that assists the guardians. Although the firebird clan knew their responsibilities, Lin did not find out who or what the guardian was. The guardian of the last gate to the abyss is a near-decaying half-demon. Not a demon like a demon. Lin doesn't have a clue yet about what the other half of his bloodline is. What is certain is that this half-demon is quite old. And his combat power is sometimes strong and sometimes weak. Making it difficult to evaluate. And he himself couldn't remember much. He just kept guarding the door habitually like a machine. Almost every time we meet. I have to beat him down before I can study the door from the abyss side. Sometimes it is someone who is beaten away. That's why Lin would evaluate the opponent's strength as it alternates between strong and weak. Making it difficult to judge. As for beating him to death, someone felt that he couldn't do it. Because his various characteristics are not like a normal life form. Unless the cause and effect erasure weapon, like the year wheel is used. But if you use the wheel of time to kill the guardian, will there be any adverse consequences? Someone doesn't have the guts to try it. Because the scope of destruction of the year wheel cannot be limited. It is true that it only eliminates specific individuals. But when it involves a wide range of levels, there will be some unpredictable collateral damage. It's like killing a father and his son disappears. Yes. Lin used the year wheel again in the past 12 years, targeting a certain high-ranking vampire. Because the opponent kept cutting and killing. Someone got impatient and used the year wheel and ended up wiping out the opponent's entire clan in one go. However, the origin of this half-demon is possible from Ingersoll. That is that the other party is also an ancient one and is likely to be one of the origins of the Abyss Demon. And this sentence is equivalent to explaining from the side that the devil is actually an outsider to the Abyss, not a native species. However, Lin was not in the mood to pay attention to this part for the time being. The Guardian's matters were more important. I got the location of the eight gates of the Abyss and also got the eight Guardians. I didn't actually find them all, but the ones I found all understood someone's behavior. Of course, Lin carefully studied their similarities and differences, hoping to eventually find out how the Guardians were born. In other words, I hope to find out why these gates to the Abyss are so special, and whether there is a way to recreate this specialness. Are Guardians necessary? Lin doesn't have a definite answer to this question yet, because the Guardians are either missing, or they are too old, or have been reincarnated too many times. They have forgotten the reason why they became Guardians in the first place. So it is impossible to ask the answer directly. Lin even tried his best to compare the form of the eight abyss gates and took the initiative to open a smaller but definitely completely permanent abyss gate. However, as an opener, Lin was not fixed as a guardian. Of course, there was no coronation ceremony in which the body was shrouded in holy light. Lotus petals descended from the sky and angels sang hymns together. But Lin did not feel any extra burden on his soul. You must know that the souls of the guardians if they exist at all are related to the gates of the abyss they guard. And this was one of the reasons why Lin didn't dare to use the year wheel to kill them. As for seeking death, of course, it refers to the fact that someone is bound to become a guardian after opening a complete door to the abyss. I don't even want to be the god of lost land anymore. How can I be the god of earth? Fortunately, this situation did not happen. Therefore, 
Someone does not need to worry about how to abandon his identity as a guardian. He can also directly cross off the option of the person who opens the gate of the abyss will automatically become a guardian. Of course, the door that opened by itself was also closed. Someone would not dare to do such a bad thing as conducting an experiment without finishing it. Classifies known guardian forms. Abyss Dragon God and Ghost City can be said to be of the same type. They all rely on some kind of wish and other thoughts to live forever. And they are not pure creatures. The Moth King is similar to the Phoenix. By the way, that Phoenix Guardian was the only Phoenix someone saw in the Lost Land. They will die. But they can regenerate from death. Retaining the most important memories and inheritance. Forming infinite reincarnations. And this death is not limited to natural death. According to Demon Moth King Jane Moss. Being defeated in battle. Dying of natural old age or even committing suicide will trigger the mechanism of reincarnation. Even if it is killed as a larva instead of growing into a complete body, it can still be reincarnated. However, in order to avoid being guarded and protect the newly born larvae, the Demon Moth King has a clan of demon cats as its subordinates. Phoenix is special. So much so that someone doesn't want to deal with that person. It is different from the Firebird, which is close to the form of a fire elemental creature. The Phoenix has an actual body, rather than the semi-virtual appearance of a fire elemental creature. The phoenix of Lost Land is not only androgynous. It is also schizophrenic. Males have masculine personalities. And females also have magnetic personalities. There are considerable differences between the two personalities. The only thing they have in common is that they are all so arrogant that even the phrase eyes above the head is not enough to describe them. Basically, the nostrils are on the top of the head. Although this phoenix was also taught a lesson by Lin. But that attitude of despising you even if you can't when made someone lose beautifully. It also makes this door a place where someone will never come here to conduct research unless necessary. The Elephant King, the Giant Turtle, and the Half Demon, who is suspected to be the Ancient One are all immortals in the true sense. As a price, they have become old enough to be called rotten. Or they sleep all the time. Sleeping until others think they are dead things. Like that Giant Turtle. But what worries someone the most is the door to the Abyss that has no guardian. Chapter 1504 Clues No guardian was found. But the abyss door built in the lava was quite special. Not only is it soaked in lava on the side of the abyss, there are flamingos inhabiting and breeding around it. On the side of the lost world, the door to the abyss was opened in the lava of a volcano and was also completely soaked. It can be said that if it were not for the reconnaissance of the world tree, Lin would not have realized that there was a fully opened abyss door in the lava of the volcano. But on this side of the lost lands, there wasn't a large group of firebirds living in the crater. On this side of the lost land, the volcano where the gate of the abyss is located is within the territory of a king-level monster. It was a huge white manticore. Not only powerful but also highly poisonous. Just by getting close to it, not only will you be intimidated by the terrifying power of the king of Warcraft, but you will also be corroded by the poisonous gas. A slightly weaker creature may die on the spot. Lin once thought that this manticore king was the guardian of this abyss door. However, after questioning, it was confirmed that the Manticore King did not even know that there was an abyss gate in his territory. In addition, it came to the vicinity more than a hundred years ago and grew into a king-level monster. It also does not have the characteristics of symbiosis with the gate of the abyss and acquiring the attribute of immortality. Various evidences show that this king-level monster should have nothing to do with the gate of the abyss. And of course, it cannot be the guardian. The reason why he occupies this territory centered on the volcano is because it has special power that cannot be found anywhere else. Allowing the Manticore King to constantly climb beyond his limits. Now it seems that it is the depraved temptation nicknamed Whispering of the Abyss. In other words, this white Manticore King continues to occupy this territory. Over time, it will become a demonized Manticore King. And even further degenerate into a demon. But no matter how it changes, it should still have nothing to do with the position of Guardian. At least Lin couldn't see the Manticore King resonating with the Gate of the Abyss. Moreover, this door has existed for a long time. If it really had a guardian, it should have been created endless years ago. It's not just now that a lucky person is suddenly chosen to occupy this vacancy. And opposite this special door. That is, on the Abyss side, there is no one in the Firebird Clan who is like a ghost town. And there is no understanding person in it. Likewise, there is no special Firebird that coexists with the Gate of the Abyss. The biggest reason why firebirds will stay in such a place is that the volcanic terrain is the best place for them to grow. Although other demons also like volcanic terrain. 
they definitely don't have the same substantive needs as the Firebirds. Therefore, the Firebird clan will risk their lives to protect this territory in the Abyss. The Firebirds knew that there was an Abyss door in the magma that could lead to the Lost Lands. But they didn't care. And they never thought about passing through the Gate of the Abyss and running to the side of the Lost World to develop. Magma pools are everything to them. Although the mini side is also a terrain with active volcanoes and magma. It lacks a flavor compared to the Abyss side. So they didn't consider migration or expansion. They just guarded the volcano. According to its original purpose, this Abyss door without a guardian should have the least reference value. But Lin spent the most time looking for the reason why there were no guardians here. Or maybe there is already a guardian. But I didn't find it. Is it bacteria? Or a virus? An organism so tiny that it cannot be seen with the naked eye? Or maybe there are other factors that make this abyss door stable and no longer need a guardian to look at the door. He thought so because Lin didn't think from the beginning that the real purpose of the guardian was to look after the family and prevent stowaways from appearing on both sides. The symbiotic relationship between the gate of the abyss and the guardian must have other purposes. If this special door to the abyss really does not have a guardian, it means that it has fulfilled a certain condition. So there is no need for a guardian. Even if no one is watching the open door, it still serves a purpose. In order to find out whether there were any differences that fit this characteristic, Lin began to conduct a comprehensive environmental reconnaissance on both sides of the abyss gate. Don't look at the fact that both the lost land and the abyss have living creatures. In fact, the environmental composition of the two places is obviously different. It is said that the composition of the air in Midland is similar to that of the Earth. Nearly 80% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, and the rest is composed of special ingredients. These tiny details are a little different from the Earth. However, the difference in the air of the abyss is even greater. As an inert filling gas, nitrogen only accounts for less than 60%. Oxygen is close to 30%. And even carbon dioxide, which originally accounted for less than 1,000th in the abyss, has a proportion of close to 3 to 5% in the abyss. The trace elements are even more abundant and even contain substances harmful to the human body. Normal people who stay in an abyss environment for a long time will be tortured to death by diseases if they are not demonized. But as long as they can survive this test and adapt to the harmful parts, the creatures in the abyss will be more powerful than their counterparts in the lost lands. Of course, my mind is even more unclear. But since the air part is inconsistent on both sides, it shouldn't be the focus that someone needs to pay attention to. In fact, just by investigating and recording the differences between the lost land and the abyss, Lin didn't know what he was looking for. We can only collect as much information as possible and try to learn something from it. Maybe they are looking for similarities. Or maybe they are really looking for differences. The greater possibility is that you are working in vain. But the most fundamental thing about science is trial and error. Even if you work in vain, it proves that these methods do not work. So strictly speaking, this is neither a waste of time nor nothing gained. It's just that I didn't get satisfactory results. So I felt a little unhappy. It is not difficult to arrange monitoring devices on both sides of the eight open abyss doors. And the full version of the arcane, I completely records all data information in the space where it is located. What ordinary magicians call is only one or two tenths. And they are mainly image data. But in fact, the arcane I records more things. As time goes by, the amount of information has grown exponentially. All these make it more difficult to access and compare information. Especially when you are not sure which ones are useful and which ones are not. As long as there is doubt about some information, someone will go to the scene and observe it on the spot. Even if you have the flash technique nearby, you have to go to eight locations at a time to review, which is quite time-consuming. Even if he couldn't find what he wanted to see in the end, Lin would only dare to lower the priority of this message instead of directly excluding it from the watch list. Ultimately, the whole operation feels a bit like finding a needle in a haystack. But it was just a blind search. And someone actually found something weird. There are countless inconsistent data on both sides of the abyss gate, the midi side and the abyss side. If there is a set of data that completely matches, it may be regarded as a coincidence. But when this match is continuous, that is, there is change. The worlds on both sides will fluctuate with the same magnitude at the same time. When this abnormal phenomenon appears in eight different places at the same time, it may not be considered a coincidence. Lin further studied this pair of data and found that this was a special kind of radiation. And it is not any type of radiation known to anyone on Earth. Instead of studying what kind of new type of radiation this was, 
Lin was more curious about why such a completely consistent thing appeared in the different worlds on both sides of the Abyss Gate. Even though both the Mysterious Land and the Abyss have eight powers, there are actually some differences in details. At least if you use the power of the Abyss too much, you will have the suspicion of being assimilated. That is, demonized, analyzed from this perspective. There is no private goods carried by the will of the Abyss in the power of the Abyss. Which is as ridiculous as saying that college girls are all virgins. And this radiation waveform data really exists in someone's database. The sub-dimensional tower that someone serves as the foundation. The energy pool at the top. Was originally designed to absorb the chaotic energy in the dimensional gaps. Filter it into magical energy that is regular and safe to use. Since the establishment of the dream tower. This work of absorbing energy from other dimensions has been going on. And the results are getting better and better. But someone can only transform a single type of magical energy for use by the magic array runes engraved on the dream tower and subsequent subdimensional towers. A major drawback of this is that the magic engraved on the subdimensional tower has an independent energy supply. So there is no shortage of it in use. But when it comes to using magic driven by the eight kinds of powers, you can only use the meager knowledge accumulated over a long period of time because of your poor talent. This means that someone can play infinite flash, but if he throws fireballs, he may throw ten of them and stop. And there will also be the sequelae of mental weakness after the power is cleared. So in the past 12 years, in addition to studying his extra three teachings, he also further upgraded the subdimensional tower, allow it to produce eight kinds of powers to make up for its own natural weaknesses. 12 years ago, because he mistakenly entered the zero-dimensional space, someone's subdimensional tower energy pool was upgraded to an energy source with white hole and black hole exchange as the core. It is no longer the original chaotic energy form that draws from the dimensional gaps. This is a welcome upgrade. This means that the sub-dimensional tower can be separated from the strange position of the dimensional gap, and there will be no doubt about lack of energy wherever it appears. But in order to create the eight powers, Lin reintroduced the chaotic energy of the dimensional rift. The final result is also quite gratifying. That is, he can convert eight kinds of powers from two energy cores. The specific conversion method was determined with Lin's help. After all, in the era when the original Lich was active, there was no such thing as eight powers. On the contrary, there are eight distinct schools of magic. Each school represents a source of magic, and each school also has its own complete and similar magic system. In order to thoroughly understand the ways of using magic in the new era, that also spent a period of hard work and adaptation. It can be said that the moment after she was resurrected was her weakest moment. But even the weakest one is still stronger than someone at the same time and the gap is still disappointing. In short, with Lin's help, Lin doesn't have to first produce some kind of pure energy in the secondary plane tower, and then convert this pure energy into eight kinds of powers. If this method is used, there is no need to reintroduce the chaotic energy of the dimensional gap. As we all know, every conversion will produce losses and may produce unpredictable surprises. The more conversions there are, the more energy is wasted and the higher the chance of an accident. Therefore, this method of directly producing eight kinds of powers without making secondary conversions is not just about improving someone's strength, but a big step-by-step -step improvement. However, the disadvantage is not without it. That is, the subdimensional tower loses the possibility of leaving the dimensional gap, unless someone plans to downgrade the subdimensional tower back to its original form. Chapter 1505 The idea takes shape. That familiar radiation waveform is a byproduct when he mixes two energy cores and transforms them into eight kinds of powers. A kind of entropy. Just like burning something produces heat. That high temperature is not necessarily the purpose of burning something, but it will be produced anyway, which is equivalent to wasting part of the resources on producing useless things. Even if we try our best to minimize the entropy generated, there is no way to return it to zero. This is why Lin does not plan to take the path of secondary conversion. When entropy is generated, it cannot be ignored directly. It must be dealt with. Otherwise, it will bring some negative effects to the subdimensional tower. Even if it does not happen for a while, Lin does not intend to let it accumulate. In order to deal with this byproduct, there will be additional consumption. The process of consumption in turn generates entropy, which then has to be processed. This can be said to be an endless process. We can only choose to actively stop this meaningless reincarnation at a stage when the damage is not so great. But now it seems that the generation of entropy is not completely useless at least let yourself compare some possibilities. This is also because according to Lin's observations, 
The types and types of entropy do not change with the process of processing, but are related to what is produced. It's like cooking Chinese medicine in my hometown. Boiling two bowls of water until it's 70%. The reason why there is less water is because it evaporates during the cooking process. In this process, not only the beneficial substances in the Chinese medicinal materials are boiled out, but harmful substances are also taken away, and those things that volatilize are entropy, which are unnecessary impurities. As long as the final output is the same, the volatilized stuff must also be the same. This is not the process of purifying and removing impurities of materials as commonly understood, but a higher type of conversion. To explain mathematically, if 10 minus a certain value equals 7, then the certain value must be 3. What you see before you is a higher level equation. In other words, the combination of the gate of the abyss and the guardian has become the power generator of the lost land and the abyss. As for the source of the material that provides the conversion, it is also obvious, which is the position difference between the two worlds of the lost world and the abyss. This is just like the world tree extracting the unique energy it needs from the energy tides generated by different positions between other worlds and the world where it is rooted. The lost land and the abyss also have the same mechanism, except that eight channels are opened in a row, and they complement each other. Once his thoughts were opened, Lin could easily find various supporting evidence from the eight open abyss doors. The real function of the Guardian is not to be responsible for the crucial bit difference to power device, but to act as a stabilizer. The former is like a hydroelectric generator, using the impact of the water level drop to generate electricity, but the Guardian is more like the dam itself. Not the key, but better than the key. As long as the connection between the two worlds can be coordinated into a certain stable state, then power is a byproduct and will be automatically produced. The conversion mechanism has not yet been fully analyzed. But similar mechanisms are operating in the world tree or someone's subdimensional tower. So it is not difficult to understand. This also explains why there is a gate to the abyss without a guardian. Because the two sides of that door are naturally in harmony. There is no need for an extra guardian to squat. As for why it is naturally in a coordinated state. It can only be said that the volcanoes on both sides of the door played a considerable role. Similar mountain topography and even various characteristics of volcanoes are also close to the same. There are so-called identical twins among humans. So these two volcanoes, which belong to the mystery and the abyss, can also be called topographic twins. And these two volcanoes are not ordinary volcanoes. Just like in feng shui metaphysics, certain patterns can be artificially created, but sometimes this pattern is natural and does not require artificial modification. This is true for these two active volcanoes. In the eyes of Lin, a time-traveling magician, these two almost identical active volcanoes can be regarded as a kind of magic model. This model is very complex. But the ability to parse it is not a big deal. Someone just threw this job to a high-level meeting and let those Igrasils, who are stuck in the door and have no door to step in to be responsible for this kind of brain-intensive work. For his part, he continues to study the two volcanoes on site. According to the investigation, although there are no traces of man-made damage, but it may also be because too much time has passed. So those traces have been erased by the years. And no clues remain. However, these two volcanoes that echo each other have indeed replaced the Guardian's due function and become the dam that coordinates the two worlds of the lost world and the abyss. If natural creations can achieve such a function, then there is no reason why man-made creations cannot. Right? As Lin asked himself this, an idea gradually took shape in his mind. But to bring this idea forward, more evidence and a reasonable plan are needed to convince others that there is a chance of success. To verify the feasibility of an experiment to others, a control group is indispensable. It's probably not a good idea to reopen a complete abyss gate without a guardian, because this door cannot be guaranteed to be a good control group that has not been interfered by other human factors. It is simply man-made. So Lin set his sights on the southern border of the Silatang Empire, the abyss gate that caused the disaster of the abyss invasion. For this reason, he went home and changed his equipment. In the past 12 years, it is certainly impossible for a time-traveling person with long-term consciousness to travel around the world just by wearing a Xuanwu robe. It is normal to make several sets of replacement equipment. And when facing different uses, it is normal to strengthen the equipment in a targeted manner. Someone originally wanted to gather the four spirits of Qilong, White Tiger, Suzaku, and Xuanwu. He occupied the quota for the Xuanwu robe. And the other three quotas were given to three women of his own family. It's a pity that none of them use it. And they all redesign it to look like they like. Since no one wants to use it, it makes sense to take it back 
and use it yourself. So Lin made himself three sets of green, white and red robes. They were not made in Han Dynasty, but the simplest straight robes and tied with a belt. No matter how exquisitely the blue dragon, white tiger, and vermilion bird are embroidered. No matter how powerful the hidden magic effect is. But based on this aesthetic view, all three members of the family decided that the cancer was terminal and there was no cure. So they should wait to be reincarnated. Lin really wanted to criticize these blind guys. The more gorgeous the clothes in the old days, the more complicated they were. Complex means difficult to wear. This is equipment that can be used on the battlefield. There is nothing wrong with going simple. Even if the simple style goes well, the material and pattern of the clothes themselves pass the test. Isn't this better than the complicated tailoring? In short, someone will never admit that there is something wrong with their aesthetics. In short, the three newly made magic robes do not dare to be used in large formations like the Xuanwu robes. It is the most basic operation to not add any finishing touches. Lin did not want to be slapped by the eight powerful masters who joined forces to make these three sets of clothes. It was a narrow escape situation at the beginning. Being able to survive. Luck accounts for the majority. If there is a chance and a reason for those eight to kill him again, they will definitely not show mercy. He will no longer be as careless as before, thinking that he can kill a magician with a wave of his hand. The eight lords of power are definitely opponents that someone does not want to face. Not to mention that he also provided three opportunities in order to prevent himself from dying heroically in confusion. Len restrained himself a little during the process of weaving new three sets. Let these three sets of robes be more magical. Instead of bringing over the stuff from home and attracting unnecessary attention. This also means that the purpose of the new three sets is actually not directly related to the patterns embroidered on the fabric of the robe. However, the Suzaka red robe is too conspicuous. So it is defined as being used for attacking fortresses and cannot be used for covert infiltration. Unlike the black dragon robe, which enhances defense, the green dragon robe enhances magical offensive means. And the white tiger robe is really made for the purpose of concealment. The design idea of the white tiger robe is an upgraded version of Kaya's white cat suit, which is mainly used to avoid the detection of the arcane eye. In fact, this little game of cat and mouse has been going on. Kaya tried her best to avoid the detection of the arcane eye. After Kaya found the loophole, Lin upgraded the arcane eye and found the missing apprentice again. When the white cat suit was completed, it had at least 60 or 70 kinds of counter magic added to it to avoid detection by the arcane eye. Unfortunately, there is little room for upgrades and modifications to equipment made of magic silk. At most, just add some hanging decorations. Although for a while, Kaya seemed to have given up on such small games. But then he was picked up by Ezio, a big fat boy, who worked tirelessly to find ways to avoid someone's detection methods, and then caused someone a little trouble. By the time the white tiger robe was produced, there were already hundreds of additional counter-detection magics. This time, the same wave type of radiation was found. It was also a unique detection mode developed by relying on the upgraded arcane eyes in the cat and mouse game. So after putting on the white tiger robe, someone felt a lot of emotion. Going to the newly opened door to the abyss is not difficult at all. Also relying on the ability of the world trees to master the ley lines of the lost land. Lin knew the exact coordinates of this door early on. It's just that there was no need at that time. And of course, there was no need to specially come to test the security protection of the Demon Alliance. But since it was necessary to make a trip, Lin was no longer afraid. With the flashing technique and the white tiger robe at his side, the Lord of the Abyss cannot threaten his life without alerting any demons or orcs. Lin appeared at the Gate of the Abyss at a fairly close distance. This location has been transformed by the orcs into a huge factory cluster. They constantly plunder the land's resources and craft them into weapons armor, and dangerous items that can explode in any way. Although demons demand for weapons and equipment is not as strong as that of orcs, but they will devour everything, filling the hunger that always remains empty. Just say that the waste soil dug out by the orcs did not need to find a place to bury or pile it up. It directly became a delicacy on the table of those little devils. Nothing wasted at all. This locust-like coalition of evil forces not only turned the area near the gate of the abyss into a large construction site but also turned the sky into a smoky mess. Seeing this miserable look, Lin sighed secretly and put down the props engraved with the arcane eye's magic circle in a hidden place. The devil's trouble has not been solved yet, although there is a suspicion of being a gangster. Still suspicious. This is absolutely true. Someone laughed at himself in his heart. But for your own purposes. 
you still have to perfect your ideas as soon as possible. Only a feasible plan can become a condition for negotiation with others. And then the mess in front of you can be solved as soon as possible. Chapter 1506 Detection of the Gate of the Abyss In order to collect enough information, Lin had to leave the homemade ruby version of the arcane eye at the observation location for at least an hour. To serve as a good control group, this time must be extended to more than six points and seven hours. Because this time happens to be a period of change for most data that will change regularly. It is not difficult to make such an arcane eye. Therefore, Lin has a sufficient number of magic props to allow observation on both sides of the door to be carried out at the same time, or even to monitor at multiple points. However, considering that there is no way to cover up the magic traces of the arcane eyes to the extent that they are not discovered by themselves, there is a risk of being discovered by the devil. Lin was not naive enough to think that in a place where the Lord of the Abyss and the great demons were infested, the demons were all like blind men, unaware of the source of abnormal magic power. If it were discovered, and the arcane I was simply destroyed, that would probably be the least of the consequences. If someone is reminded by the devil and has a wrong idea about the gate of the abyss, no one can predict what will happen next. In order to avoid too many unexpected interferences to the plan, Lin naturally chose the option with the least exposure in advance, which was to personally stay by the arcane eye until the intelligence collection was completed. A person believes that he can cope with various emergencies with his current situation. The worst thing is to recycle the things first and do this sneaky thing again another day. But when I say I'm guarding, it doesn't mean I'm just squatting aside, stupidly waiting for the progress bar to finish. Just keep a close eye on the location where the arcane eye is installed and prevent the situation from happening before any danger of exposure occurs. So Lin had the opportunity to investigate the base camp of the demon coalition that surrounded the gate of the abyss. You'll have to call back sooner or later anyway. So there's nothing wrong with checking it out in advance. It was the early autumn of the year 749 in the Aramaic calendar. On the eve of the counterattack by the human coalition, compared to the camps on the abyss side, most of the forces of the demon and orc alliance were still placed in the camps on the side of the lost land. The source of the orcs is not some underground tunnel with no technical content, but 11 legion level portals. This means that the gathered orc tribes may come from 11 different underground worlds that are not connected to each other. They may also come from the holes in the same underground world. But the tribes are against each other and do not use the same portal. Lin was still paying attention to the news about the alliance between demons and orcs. Regarding the origin of the orcs, the mainstream guess is that they come from 18 large tribes in the largest hollow in the north of the underground world. This large hollow is unlike other underground worlds where mainstream races have powerfully formed a unified underground kingdom. Because the powerful race here is the dark elf tribe protected by Fasnas, the ancient one in the world tree, and the only world tree that grows in the underground world. Whenever other races emerge, they will become a training ground for the Dark Elves. And with Fastness as his backer, no matter how much the Dark Elves suffered, they would only be ambushed outside. No one can even think about counterattacking this tribe and completely solving the problem of Dark Elves. Therefore, the best direction for the Orc tribe to survive is to develop towards the surface. That's why he joined forces with the Devil and invaded the Human Kingdom today. If this guess is true, then before the orcs plundered a large number of human women to reproduce. Their total population was about 300,000. And their military strength was about 200,000. Although such data is based on many assumptions. Basically all strategic ideas on the human side are planned around this set of data. But obviously, this premise is wrong. Should I be notified? Someone thought in his heart. After all, the war potential of hundreds of thousands of soldiers is on a completely different level than the war potential of millions of soldiers. But compared to the orcs, the demon part worries someone more. Let's talk about the key points first. There is not one abyss lord who appears in the lost land. But three. Two of the three are acquaintances. Among them was a succubus and a thin ape-shaped demon. Although I have no memory of dealing with these two people. According to my own experience records, when I became a demon and briefly lost consciousness, I had dealt with these two people. They fought against each other and even eaten one of them like eating in a literal sense, without any ambiguity. That incident only happened more than 10 years ago. It means that this acquaintance has just come out of the state of resurrection, and he doesn't know how much strength he has returned to his heyday. Don't look at the majestic appearance of someone who is chasing and devouring those abyss lords, blocking gods and killing gods along the way, and killing Buddhas when Buddhas were blocking them. In fact, in retrospect, Lin realized that the whole thing was full of conspiracy. 
the power of the Abyss Lords has been weakened. Or suppressed. At that time, I had mutated and strengthened to an unbelievable degree. Afterwards, I wanted to get back to that level. But I couldn't reach it again. Lin originally thought that this was the weakness caused by him taking the initiative to cut off the gifts from the Abyss and only retaining some of the benefits. But now it seems that things are not that simple. An obvious flaw. Since the demonized self at that time could fight several Abyss Lords without defeat by one person. And even kill and devour the opponent. So why are there so many Lords of the Abyss lining up to die? If the mastermind behind everything is the will of the Abyss, which is more active than the will of the Lost World, then it would not be difficult to understand. The Lord of the Abyss, who keeps coming to your door, is like bait mixed with poison. Devouring their flesh and blood will only further deepen someone's demonization. Although their power levels are still strong, they are suppressed below their peak. This was like a test for me at the time. If you can't defeat or eat the weakened version of the Lord of the Abyss, then in the eyes of the will of the Abyss, you are one of those who can be eliminated. If you can eat these added baits delivered to your door, then sooner or later you will become a member of the Lord of the Abyss. This kind of promotion is actually in line with the rules of the game between demons. And no one can say that it is wrong. But no one expected that someone would actually get rid of the control of the Abyss by killing his own incarnation. All the benefits are kept in the mouth. And the side effects are completely ignored. This is also the origin of this demonized body. Thinking back on this, Lin just wanted to emphasize that two of the three Abyss Lords appearing here were once defeated by their subordinates. If I jump out and fight again now, I might be the one who loses. Well, without using my trump card, what remained was the unknown Lord of the Abyss. A strange demon with a two-headed wolf head and a human body. A wolf head looks crazy. With red eyes, bared teeth and a gaping mouth. And is constantly dripping saliva. It's just that the saliva has an unusually high temperature. Once it leaves the mouth, it will evaporate before it even drips onto the fancy clothes of the imitating human noble. The other wolf head is much more normal. With a gentle and gentle appearance. Even his eyes look full of wisdom. Which makes people sigh. And that normal head should be the commander of this army. At least Lin didn't see any arrangement similar to a strategic map elsewhere. Only the two-headed werewolf statue giving orders. In addition to the unexpected two lurking abyss lords. The gathered demon army should not be underestimated. In the abyss world where chaos is the main axis. The most unlikely order appears. How will it make people feel? In that majestic and neat military appearance. Demonic barriers of different levels stood clearly in military formation. Not to mention those big demons armed to the teeth will make many enemies who face them fearful. Even the weakest little devil looks like an elite wearing divine clothing. Lin, a time traveler who has only played strategy games, can't estimate how much damage an army of lawful evil demons will bring. But one thing that is certain is that there is at least one abyss evil god involved behind this. With the characteristics of the lords of the abyss, who use their strength to achieve enlightenment, they will not have lawful evil subordinates. But for big guys like the abyss evil god who rely on their faith, it would not be surprising to have a few elite troops like this. Looking at the training of this lawful evil demon army from a distance, Lin made a rough estimate in his mind that only the elven coalition with all the elven holy robes could fight in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Compared with the human army, even the regular army of the Guana Empire that I have seen, I am afraid that I have to exchange three for one or five for one, to be able to defeat this demon army, not to mention those miscellaneous troops. If it's a robot fleet, I haven't fought before, so it's really hard to make a comparison. However, Lin didn't think the robots could easily defeat this demonic army. The most incomprehensible thing about the robot fleet is the number that someone can use. A million battleships and nearly a hundred million robots. Using the power of an entire elemental plane to defeat an elite magic force. If they don't beat the enemy until they spit out milk, it would be a waste of time for someone to transfer the knowledge of the technology side to the ground. In short, Lin confirmed that there were already four god-level opponents on both sides of the open abyss door, including three abyss lords who appeared, and an abyss evil god who sent out his elite army. As for the strategic layout and confidential information of the alliance between demons and orcs, Lin did not deliberately investigate in depth. His trip was mainly to collect intelligence on both sides of the gate of the abyss rather than risk getting close to these god-level opponents to find out these details. On the one hand, you have to be careful not to be discovered, even with the white tiger robe on him. A certain time traveler did not want to test whether he had Uncle Snake's skills in the enemy's base camp. At least Mitty's cardboard box isn't that magical. On the other hand, if something is really discovered, should it be notified, 
or should it not be notified? After being notified, evidence must be provided to win the trust of those noble generals. If there is insufficient evidence, and the human side suffers losses later due to the actions of the demon coalition, the person who has been involved in this war may become the target of accountability. If you want to collect enough evidence, it feels like it's an endless spiral that invites trouble. If you don't notify me, it feels like your conscience will feel bad. So the best way is to pretend to be asleep. Anyway, if you don't know, then what happens afterwards has nothing to do with you. Because of such a bad idea, someone missed the Demon Alliance's plan to counter the human attack. Chapter 1507 The Lords of the Abyss Just before the complete information about the Gate of the Abyss was about to be collected, the process that had always been smooth sailing finally became a little inconsistent. Lin found that he was surrounded by the Succubus clan. Moreover, this encirclement network is very clever, just at the edge of the active warning range. In other words, don't expect that such a siege will really catch anyone. The demonstration component is relatively large. In other words, have you been exposed? The succubus king, who kept changing his posture, also appeared behind his tribe and stepped into someone's warring range without hesitation. Sometimes it's a cute little Shota with short hair and tiger teeth. Sometimes it's a shy little Lolita with twin tails. Sometimes it's a variety of tempting cross-dressings that would make people shy. And finally the image is fixed on a certain queen with the temperament of a queen. It looks a lot like a certain lich. In Lin's observation with all aspects of detection methods, the succubus king did not continuously change his physical appearance, but more like changing others' perceptions of him in a way that affected his spirit. Does this mean that because his shameful delusions leaked out, he was discovered by the gifted succubus? And it is constantly testing its true taste before finally settling on it. However, I saw that although the succubus lord was walking gracefully, he was walking towards the location where the arcane eye ruby was hidden, rather than towards someone's hiding place. This also means that what was discovered was actually the magic prop in action, not the hidden magician wearing a white tiger rope. Long time no see. Magician. The succubus lord spoke the language of the abyss in soft, soft words. Lin did not reply rashly and expose his whereabouts. The succubus in the lost abyss is a little different from the succubus known back home. At least the midi succubus is not a race that can get along well just by flirting. Nor is it a thirsty demon breed that looks for soy milk all day long and will die if it doesn't drink for one day. The succubus of the lost land generally refers to all demons whose basic body is homo sapiens, including but not limited to the human form, rather than using magic to later process it into a human appearance. However, they sometimes use magic to fine-tune their appearance and body shape in order to better deal with the homo sapiens in the lost lands. Demons also have sex. But just like eating, pooping and urinating, it is not a physiologically necessary behavior. Therefore, a succubus who can only show off her coquettishness cannot survive well in the abyss of lost land. They will also go through the cruel stage of survival of the fittest. Being able to grow to the level of the lord of the abyss shows that this succubus is definitely not easy to mess with. But her alluring beauty still has quite an advantage when facing humans. Compared with other ugly demons, a beautiful first impression can bring good feelings to humans and make everything that follows become somewhat logical. It has the flavor of subduing others without fighting. However, for a time traveler who has read all about Disla goddesses, they already have a certain immunity to all of this. No matter how hungry and thirsty I am, there is still a sweet smelling, soft beauty at home that I can hug, so I won't have to deal with the devil. The main premise that domestic flowers do not have the fragrance of wild flowers is that the wild flower is not a piranha. And judging from the situation at the scene, what was exposed was actually the magic prop of the arcane eye. The existence of one's own body is at best doubted. Not exposed? So, do you want to stand up? Lin thought about this question. According to the position of the succubus lord, he has enough time to recover the arcane eye and then leave. Although the data collection has not yet reached a complete cycle, it is enough to serve as a sample for the control group. It means that once you leave, you don't have to think about coming back. Next time we come, I'm afraid it's time to bring the army back and prepare to solve the problem of the Gate of the Abyss. So continuing to play dead is the best option. Magic, aren't you going to show up? How long do you think you can escape under the gaze of the Abyss? Speaking of which, we will appear here just to recover the things you took for free or to urge you to pay the price. It seems that it has always been remembered. Someone sighed secretly. But one person had no desire to take a step forward and negotiate with the devil in front of him. Speaking of which, knowing that I am still hanging in the abyss is a reminder to myself that I will always have to pay back what I have owed over the years. 
But even if you want to repay or negotiate, you still need to find the right owner. It's obvious from a glance that these guys are troublesome. But I really can't explain it clearly. Although he regards Lord Abyss as a minion, he is really sorry for his strength. But the point is, these big guys are not the parties involved. And they can easily use the topic to their advantage when dealing with matters. Or they just can't grasp the importance. If they don't get things done, it would be a waste of time for them to become demons. No. As soon as I said it, another Abyss Lord jumped down from the sky. The man with the two-headed wolf head and the human body clenched his fists with both hands and smashed it hard towards an empty place. This smash violently sprayed gravel outwards and raised a small cloud of sand and dust. It looks extremely powerful and powerful. But for the Lord of the Abyss, it is just a casual hit. If it were an ordinary stalker, sand, dust, and gravel would be enough to force someone hiding in the dark out. Or at least force them to reveal themselves. But for Lin, who was wearing a white tiger rope, all the tiny particles that might splash on his body passed through his body. And the sand and dust ignored his existence and drifted wherever they should. It was as if there was nothing where he stood. This is an innate skill learned from the demon prince Azad. It is an application of virtual body and belongs to space magic. In fact, it is to hide yourself in a subspace between the mysterious land and other worlds. So that the caster can observe the mysterious land. But does not exist here? It is not difficult to crack. Because the caster also needs to be able to observe the original world. So in a certain section of the electromagnetic spectrum, the non-visible light part, the caster can be seen. It's almost like seeing ghosts occasionally in my hometown. However, Ling can choose which spectrum to hide in. And the difficulty is different. Being in an environment where at least three abyss lords existed, Lin naturally chose the most cautious position and hid in the subspace where no one could touch him. Of course, I can't meet anyone. I can only watch. After the second lord of the abyss made a strong appearance, but achieved nothing, the third one also came out of the shadows. The unlucky man who had been devoured by a demonized mad magician said, I also feel the presence of that human being. But it seems that he is not here. The succubus lord snorted disdainfully and said, Humph. Human being. What kind of human being is more like a demon than a demon? And would tear you apart into pieces and stuff them into his mouth? If this kind of person can still be considered a human being, then let's pack up as soon as possible and go back to the other side of the door. It's too dangerous here. Don't treat him like a human being. Cut the nonsense. Girl. This is not the time for extraneous matters. I recognize your caution. But don't use it as an excuse to take advantage of me. If there's another time, I won't mind peeling off your skin and making it into my flag. After the wolf-headed king finished speaking, his other mad dog-like head looked up to the sky and howled. The wolf-headed king was the first to curse and leave, followed by the unlucky guy. As if not believing that his intuition had failed, the succubus lord stayed where he was and scanned his surroundings. It waved its hand unwillingly, instructing its subordinates to step forward and narrow the scope of the encirclement net. The succubus lord himself walked towards the location that exuded a faint magical aura. As the footsteps got closer, the feeling of being spied on became clearer. This is some kind of voyeuristic magic effect. And the caster is very clever. Because if it had not been clever, it would have been traced back to the source by now and killed the magician who offended it. Just when he was thinking about how to torture the person who was peeping at him, the succubus king's senses were suddenly interrupted. It's like nothing happened. This difference in feeling makes it more convinced that there was someone originally. But now he has left. So, magician, what is your goal? The succubus lord looked thoughtfully at the huge abyss door beside him. This is the most valuable thing in this position. Not only humans don't know when this door to the abyss appeared, but even demons don't know. But once it exists, it is fully open. The first little devil who passed through the door caught a lost sheep and went back, eating it until his mouth was full of blood. Then for the second and third times, demons kept sneaking over, plundering some things that were not in the abyss and returning. Such an action certainly alerted a nearby demon leader. It happily led its improvised private army to the other side of the door. But soon, the demon leader found that he could not swallow such a gift from the sky. It's not that the force blocking him is too strong. On the contrary, it hits the other side of the door with no resistance at all. The devil's greed runs deep into his bones. But rather than being greedy, they know how to maximize their own interests. Compared with monopolizing a piece of virgin land that no other demons have access to, using this information in exchange for something that directly increases their power is more important to these demons at the bottom. 
between long-term benefits and immediate benefits. Most demons will choose the latter because they may not necessarily have such a long lifespan to wait for the benefits to be realized. Waiting is the kind of thing that only the big devils at the top have the leisure to play with. So very quickly, the news of this abyss door spread throughout half of the abyss. All the demon lords nearby stopped their disputes intentionally or unintentionally and tested this door. The trial didn't last long, because the lord of the abyss jumped out directly. The two-headed wolf-headed king integrated the neighboring demon lords and directly captured the other side of the door. The next step is to contact the orcs, who are also in the evil camp. Organize more demons. Manage the other side of the door. And keep the informed humans silent. They even contacted more abyss lords and evil gods to join in the invasion of lost lands. Being discovered by humans, there was no sense of frustration as if their plot had been revealed. Because they are nearly fully prepared. Even if humans don't notice, they will take the initiative to attack. All this development is so logical. However, Everyone has forgotten, or actively ignored, how it all started. Even the demons still have no solution to this problem. Chapter 1508 Twin Towers Before the magic props engraved with the arcane eye pattern were discovered and destroyed, Lin recovered them first and left. There was no need for him to stay or show up to catch up with the demons. Speaking of which, what was left behind was hatred, and nothing good will happen if he shows up. At most, it's just a chat, just to satisfy your addiction. A fight is impossible. Someone will definitely run away before a fight starts. Of course, there is no benefit in doing so. Even if he was just a spectator, he learned enough key information from the Abyss Lords. And other details were irrelevant. There is no need to delve deeper. And there is no need to come forward and find ways to extract words from the devil. On the contrary, it is possible that by talking too much, more things will be revealed that should not be exposed. If that's the case, let's not talk about it. My own business is more important. And the demons can't help. Help? Having returned to his home in the holy city of Estali, Lin stood by the attic window, holding the newly recovered magic props in his hand. An idea that just suddenly occurred to me is that in order to achieve one's goals, one does not necessarily need to find cooperation with humans. Demons can also be partners. As long as the contract is rigorous enough, demons are more trustworthy than humans. When it comes to an agreement with a human being, the other party can break it if it wants to. And it doesn't care whether the contract is comprehensive enough or full of loopholes. Besides, even if the devil breaks the contract or exploits loopholes to terminate the contract in disguise, there will be no psychological burden on him to take revenge. This is simply a good idea to advance to attack and retreat to defend. Besides, the gate of the abyss is now in the hands of the demons. As long as you reach an agreement with the other party, your actions can begin immediately. There is no need to help the human army counterattack, negotiate with them, or even have to guard against the possibility of being attacked from behind by them. But such an idea only remains in someone's mind as an option, not as the main goal. Whether to implement it specifically depends on the opinions of other collaborators. Cooperating with the devil is something that not everyone can accept. What's more, we have to consider whether the abyss side will put forward unacceptable conditions, and there is no room for negotiation. The devil's appetite is often too great to be tolerated. Let's sort out the information at hand. Especially the observation data of the ninth abyss gate that we just collected. Just before anyone else came to him, Lin headed to the dimensional rift, the upside-down level of the sub-dimensional tower, and the high sea conference space. Kaya was bringing back information from Ezio about the changes in the southern front in the demon-occupied area, and wanted to ask for her opinion as a teacher. Although Lin did not take the initiative to care, and Ezio did not intend to take the initiative to inform him. Kaya would still serve as a bridge between the two parties to exchange information in this regard. This is also because she believes that her teacher will intervene sooner or later and is just waiting for an opportunity. But when Kaya entered the attic room, she was already a step slower. Make noise to come back. But someone leaves again. The ability to flash is very convenient for the person involved, but not so friendly for others. At the high-level meeting, Lin had no opening remarks and no greetings. According to the urine properties of the world tree, if a round of greetings were carried out according to human etiquette, it is estimated that the serious matter will not be mentioned until next year, because for unimportant greetings, world trees will respond very slowly, and it is normal to even ignore them. But as long as they put the business in front of them, their processing speed can be calculated in nanoseconds, not to mention that this matter is related to themselves. In such a space, Lin does not need other media to call any information. 
as soon as he extended his hand. Eight permanent gates of abyss environmental information were densely packed in the midair of the high seat meeting space. As a control group, the environmental data of the newly opened abyss gate has also been put together for everyone to compare. All Lin provides is source material, and each character is smaller than an ant's head. That massive data content is impossible for ordinary people to understand without statistical calculations. But Yggdrasil's information processing speed allows them to understand it very quickly even if they just read the raw data. Coupled with the knowledge of mathematics and statistics brought by someone, the world trees instantly made tens of thousands of statistical models to analyze the data in front of them. After eliminating a bunch of irregular or meaningless information, what is left is exactly what Lin wants everyone to see. This can prove that the situation he imagined and the actual evidence used for verification have also passed the exhaustive verification of the world trees. Otherwise, they should come up with something different and argue with someone. However, these data are not representative of anything. One of the ancients, the eight fruit tree form of the world tree Yggdrasil, shook its leafless branches and said in a voice, Lord of the Plains, you are only explaining a phenomenon. It is meaningless. Indeed, Lin did not deny it. At the same time, he took away the original information about the Gate of the Abyss and replaced it with the known information on the Eight Guardians and comprehensive analysis, especially how the Guardians synchronized both sides of the Abyss Gate. Regarding this part, Lin went back to find the Seven Living Guardians and found some clues from them. Although the methods are somewhat different, the leading results are the same. The moment the thing was released, the Seven Living Guardian messages were shrunk and thrown aside. Only the message of the twin volcanoes was amplified and centered. It seems like all the Yggdrasil high seats know where the point is, which saves someone a lot of saliva. So, your opinion is to create a volcano on each side of the door? Yggdrasil asked. Lin shook his head and objected. No, no, no. We have an easier way. After shrinking the data of the two volcanoes, leaving more than half of the space, Lin threw out the last piece of data he had prepared to the design of a magic tower. As a magician who once owned a magic tower and made major improvements to it, Lin certainly retained the original design information of the Great Sage's Tower. After leaving, he dreamed of finding another place to settle down and would occasionally modify the design. I hope that one day I can build an ideal magic tower. This is a three-story tower design. And unlike the dream towers and sub-dimensional towers I placed in other worlds, it not only has more comprehensive considerations, but also considers the functions of life. The subdimensional tower is like a server room, without considering how people live in it. This magic tower is designed with a space where people can live in it, as well as internal defense and external attack. However, this leisurely mood came to light when someone learned that he was excluded from the list of people who could become the master of the magic tower by default by those in power and his colleagues in the magician association. So he put aside the drawing and planning of his dream blueprint. The reason why dreams are precious and guide people forward is because everyone is looking forward to the day when their dreams will come true. But when you know that your dreams will never come true, it's time to wake up. But when the need arose again, Lin found a design drawing that had been thrown into the trash and made certain modifications. This modification is quite simple. Basically, it is a magic pattern compiled by adapting to the two different environments of the lost land and the abyss and then adding the spell model concepts derived from the twin volcanoes and the guardians. After all, Lin only had a few hours from determining what he could do to coming up with a feasible plan in front of the world trees. Of course, it was impossible to have such a perfect plan. There are many traces of hasty additions that make this design look a bit nondescript. It's like sewing the hands and feet of a black bear onto a chimpanzee, giving it a top-heavy feel. But what were the beings present? Someone's imperfect design was replaced by various correction plans on the spot. The world trees are all experienced magicians who make a fuss about their own bodies. In their eyes, the magic tower created by the magician is like the composition of a primary school student who has just learned to write. Even if it is not full of mistakes, it is extremely childish and simple. At best, like the author of this article who likes to use some meaningless content to improve the word count, there is more nonsense than content. Modifying the design of such a magic tower is a very simple matter for the world trees. And they don't even need to use their unique skills. Because if an overly complex design is provided, Lin will reject it with a wave of his hand and restore the design to the previous version. The reason is also very simple. From the various data analyzed by Lin, the various magic tower construction materials listed are simply unable to withstand the transformation plans provided by the world trees. 
This is not like someone's subdimensional tower located in the dimensional gap, or the body of the world tree, which can withstand nanoscale, or even quantum transformation. The magic materials in the lost land have their limits, and exceeding that limit will only lead to collapse. The conditional design is not a problem for world tree. They will not even feel any resistance or trouble. Because from a practical point of view, designing a twin magic tower with the effect of stabilizing both sides of the abyss gate does not require overly complex magic formations. And according to the advice of a certain magician, they all use the lowest end materials as the basis for their design, using good things to create magical objects. As long as the craftsmanship does not fail, even a pig can do it. But not everyone has the ability to turn waste into treasure. Lin is not asking to use ordinary stone and wood to create the impossible. As an example, the twin volcanoes actually have several precious mineral veins hidden within the mountains. This is the biggest reason why volcanoes can become natural magical creations. However, Lin still considered it from the difficulty of collecting materials. If you really get the chance to build a magic tower, you probably won't have much time to build the tower. Not only must one be prepared for attacks by opponents, but one must also anticipate repentance from supporters. If the design uses too many rare magic materials that are difficult to collect. So during the long period of collecting materials, will there be more variables? Of course, the world trees can accept this statement. Who wouldn't be happy to be able to get things done earlier? So very quickly. Someone's design for the Tower of the Great Sage 2.0 was modified beyond recognition. But at least the obvious sense of fragmentation has been unified. The design function is also more than a little bit better than the original form. Most importantly, the magic formations used to stabilize both sides of the abyss gate have also been perfected to a foolproof level by the world trees. It can be said that based on what is known and based on the fastest construction speed, which includes the time for material collection, Lin and Yggdrasil have optimized the twin tower plan to the point where it cannot be more perfect. Chapter 1509 The Problem of the Twin Towers of the Gate Looking at the perfected magic tower design, Lin could only sigh with emotion. Although his subdimensional tower level has been pushed up to an incredible level by himself. In reality, he can only live in an aristocratic mansion that is flashy and does not bring a sense of security. After struggling for a while, I felt like I had let go of something. Lin said, Your Majesties, now that the design drawings have been completed, you can find other representatives to build these two towers. The day when the magic tower is completed will be the time when the great cause will be completed. Lord of the Plain, it sounds like you want to withdraw again. This question was said by another ancient, the man-eating dead tree clone of Fasnes. Lin helplessly spread his hands and said, Everyone, you should also know my situation in human society. Don't ask me to have a magic tower again. I'm afraid that just by mentioning these three words, I can make many people's selective deafness occurs. So you said, what will be the consequences of asking me to build a magic tower? And building a tower that is not destined to belong to me is different from torturing me. Then do you think that among the forces we have, who is closer to this great task than you? Let a group of elves build a magic tower on human territory. Or let us choose one of the wild mages from the Turtle Dove Alliance? The tower master in this key position? World Tree's rhetorical question left people speechless. There is no such thing as racism in Midland. This does not mean that there is no racial discrimination in Midland. Because that statement is a moral weapon for the weak to fight against the strong. On the contrary, the chain of contempt between Homo sapiens species does exist. And no one wants to resist it. The long-lived ones despise the short-lived ones. And those who admire wisdom despise those who admire strength, despicable, greedy, and selfish goblins are despised by all races. And they in turn despise all non-goblins. All species of Homo sapiens are at both ends of the chain of contempt. No one is at the bottom, and no one is at the top. The various differences between races make it impossible to reconcile this contradiction. The mixed race is probably the most tragic product of this contradiction. But Midi is also a place that values strength. As long as he is strong enough and stands on the same side, no matter which race he is from, he is qualified to be respected by others. Respect for strength is higher than racial discrimination. However, respect is only given to individuals, while discrimination is a concept directed at an entire group. So the coexistence of the two is not an incomprehensible situation. In Midland, no one wants to change this discrimination because everyone is accustomed to using strength to shut up people. If you can't shut up people, that means you don't have enough strength. This kind of understanding and practice has become a universal value. However, there is discrimination and a society dominated by humans. 
The reality under the interactive influence of the two factors is that the main force controlled by the world trees. That is, the elves want to obtain the recognition of the magician association in such an environment and become a magic tower. The difficulty of the lord has been doubled. To become the key master of the magic tower on both sides of the gate of the abyss. It is probably as difficult as the elves directly overthrowing humans and becoming the masters of the lost world again. Especially since the gate of the abyss is located within the territory of an empire. Other empires will not ignore the elves and extend their hands into the empire's territory. Because if the first case is made, it will be difficult for subsequent followers to resist. This is not to mention that the more powerful the country is, the more powerful the country is, the more magical towers there are in the country. The two are simply irreconcilable contradictions. The existing magic towers are all trying to find ways to let magicians, who are friendly to the local lords or kings, move in. If you want to build a new magic tower, even if you get the support of the Magician's Association, you may not be able to get the permission of the local lord. Before the Magic Tower was established, the Magician Association had no way to assert its power to the lords and nobles. Therefore, even if World Tree wants to let the elves build towers and control both sides of the Abyss Gate, it will not get the support of human society. Without the support of human society, this whole thing would not be possible. The construction of the Magic Tower is not a one-time deal. The people living there have needs for food and drink, and the tower owner cannot satisfy himself in a closed environment. He needs to enter the cycle of the social system and become a member of it. This is also the reason why the magic tower becomes the guardian of civilization. Every tower owner is symbiotic with civilized society, and only in this way can he exert his most powerful power. Not to mention that the magic towers they want to build are twin towers on both sides of the gate of the abyss. When these two towers were built, whether demons wanted to come to the lost lands or humans wanted to go to the abyss. It was all within a thought of the two tower owners. Is it possible that such a critical position is in the hands of a race other than humans? There may be a slight chance for subsequent successors. But the first tower master will never be born from a race other than humans. As for the human magicians in the Akaruga Alliance, they either lack the ability or the reputation not to carry such a heavy attention. The idea of keeping this newly opened door to the abyss open in mainstream human society is unlikely to be recognized by the majority of people. This is not to mention wanting a magician, who no one knows the details to become the master of the magic tower guarding the gate of the abyss. Well, maybe someone who can get ahead in the Ikaruga Alliance is a magician, who doesn't know who he is, or who doesn't know his true identity. But if it's the famous one, the situation will be even worse. Which noble lord would agree to a person, who is similar to a terrorist to serve, as the master of the magic tower responsible for guarding the gate of the abyss. Let a group that troubles noble lords all day long master the key points of the devil's way to the mysterious land. Then everyone can just deal with the dangers of demons all day long. And there is no need to do anything else. After thinking so much, Lin reluctantly admitted one thing. That is, in terms of candidates to build the tower, World Tree has fewer cards than himself. Or none at all. Hand over the design of the twin towers, and let human society operate this matter? As soon as this idea came to mind, Lin rejected it himself. Everyone understands that the first choice of mankind is to close the door to the abyss. If one of them doesn't take a leading position in the plan, or at least be one of the leaders, who knows what the final product will look like? Trust other people? Based on someone's experience growing up and entering society, whether before or after time travel, if the completion level of a task can only be allowed to be 60 points, or it is not bad if it is vague. Then feel free to leave the task to other people. If you want something to be done meticulously, with no room for error, then it's best to watch it yourself, or even do it yourself. A person who can achieve 80 or 90% or even close to perfection by just using his words. People in a certain time only recognize one Steve Jobs, the deceased Apple boss. Even so, the big shot's path wasn't all smooth sailing. In addition to his persistence and talent, Many believe that his success also involves a considerable proportion of luck. Otherwise, there are thousands of equally smart people and thousands of stubborn people. But why would only one person stand out? And can I follow the path of Lao Jia and count on the success of the Gate of the Abyss Twin Towers project with just one word? You know, Lao Jia is not successful in everything. It's just that the light of his success was too dazzling. Covering up those discordant failures, the Twin Towers project could not count on such an uncertain success rate so its end became an inevitable result. Someone was feeling helpless, and then remembered his previous plan, and asked, What if we ask the devil to cooperate? Will you object? 
because the gate of the abyss is now in the hands of the devil. Adrasil said. I basically have no objection to cooperating with the devil. But where will the materials for your magic tower come from? Okay. Another blind spot that I didn't expect before. It's not difficult to find demons to cooperate with. Even because his opponent is a demon. Lin will not shy away from using some obscene or violent means to force the demon to submit. But what I have to do is build two magic towers. It is true that there must be replaceable materials in the abyss. But the demons do not have the habit of building magic towers. That means a lot of things. They have to start from scratch. From an efficiency perspective. One party has a mature supply system. But it just has difficulty convincing the other party. Although the other side is easier to convince. The technology tree needs to be restarted. I also want to build two magic towers. Which one of the two partners is more suitable? Such questions seem less difficult to answer after a more comprehensive consideration. Not to mention there are issues of moral perception involved. Choosing to cooperate with humans or choosing to cooperate with demons are two different things in the eyes of others. Thinking about it this way. It can be said that the way for someone to cooperate with the devil is almost completely blocked. With another helpless sigh. Lin said. Okay. I understand. This answer meant that someone had assumed another responsibility. However. Judging from the results. I am not that repellent. Those are two magic towers and they basically take off from three floors. If you let yourself operate, one of the towers must belong to you. The most ideal candidate for the tower owner of the other tower is the former lich in the family. Linka had no intention of handing over the ownership of the second tower to others, because in addition to the strong attack, the most likely threat to the magic tower of the gate of the abyss is the other magic tower opposite it. When two towers confront each other, mutual destruction is a sure outcome, and when the two sides of the abyss gate are stabilized, the conditions for the ninth power are truly achieved and its birth is achieved. If one side is destroyed, or both sides are destroyed, will the situation in the entire puzzle return to its original situation, or become worse? This is not a strategic confrontation or dividing the cake. The two towers can be managed by different interest groups. Once a conflict arises between these two towers, destruction becomes the inevitable outcome. Then drag the entire world of lost land and abyss into the water. These two opposite magic towers must only be held in the hands of people with the same attitude. Even if they have to be enemies of people all over the world. After re-examining the possible attitudes of the general environment. I have to say that someone began to think that building these two magic towers was not a good idea. Maybe we should find a way to give birth to a guardian. And do it once and for all? Maybe it would be a good idea to fool the gold coin goddess queen. Let the powerful divine power take charge personally. Who dares to dissatisfy? Chapter 1510 Battle Situation The construction of the twin towers of the gate will not be completed automatically after the design drawings are drawn up. In addition to gaining recognition and understanding in human society, Lin also decided to make some efforts during the construction stage. Because a certain pessimistic time traveler believes that in addition to learning from history, humans will never learn lessons. Human beings are prone to regret and are good at backstabbing, which is also a part that cannot be ignored. The existence of pig teammates is simply more hateful than the middle two. If you encounter a strange teammate like a virgin with a pig heart, then go home as soon as possible to wash up and sleep. Or prepare the funeral arrangements in advance. If it takes too long to build the magic tower, will there be unexpected resistance during this period? Or even those who are considered allies regret? that a righteous backstab. Lin believes that this kind of thing will definitely happen. The only difference is whether it is successful or not. In order to avoid the worst situation from happening, the shorter the construction time of the magic tower, the better. Build the magic tower before others have a chance to go back on their word or use any conspiracy to take effect. As long as the energy pool belonging to the magic tower comes online, all functions will operate normally. Then the most powerful war fortress in Midland will live up to its reputation and make all enemies who face it tremble. In order to achieve this goal, Lin began to study plans to use the manufacturing strength of the technical guild to carry out segmented construction and even precast module construction methods. If all the parts of the magic tower can be made in advance and they can just be assembled after arriving at the site, then the tower construction speed should be much faster. This has been well proven in the construction industry in my hometown. After all, in the traditional tower construction process, all magic materials are not even roughened. Magic is used directly on the construction site to shape them and then placed in a fixed position. Basically, one side is covering, and the other side is sculpting the building materials. Moreover, there are not many traditional magic tower constructions 
that are stopped halfway through due to lack of money. It is common for the design to be changed during construction. No tower can be built safely without any problems along the way. Even if it is built, the magician who lives inside will modify it. It can be said that the magic tower is essentially a dead thing. But it also seems to be alive. It will constantly change, grow, or weaken or be destroyed. Different tower owners will also make the magic tower show different personalities. Lin believes that the more complete the preparations are, the less resistance will be faced later. At least when external resistance arises, no one wants internal resistance to arise as well, or any delaying behavior. And even if you want to negotiate with human forces, now is far from the best time. It is difficult to provide help when it is in need, but it is easy to add icing on the cake. But when it comes to return on investment, how can icing on the cake be compared with providing help when time is right? The difference is that offering help in times of need is somewhat of a gamble. Since it is a bet, there is a possibility of losing money. The icing on the cake is like guaranteed success. You won't lose money, but you can only make a small profit at most. As a time traveler from an era dominated by money games, the return on investment and the risks associated with it can be regarded as common sense knowledge. Without closing the gate of the abyss and the two magic towers, such a sky-high level of remuneration cannot be considered or even taken seriously unless it is proposed at the most critical moment. So Lin was not anxious at all. Even if the waiting was paid for with many bones, this is not a cruel time traveler. But he is used to playing strategic games, like the big shots in his hometown who talk and laugh. He treats death and injury as a numbers game, as long as he didn't kill him with his own hands. As long as it didn't happen in front of his eyes, the horses would still run, the dance would still dance, and the life would be just as happy. A certain time traveler is a bastard. He has never denied it. Just when someone completely gave up on life and death in the outside world and concentrated on how to build two magic towers jointly designed by him and the world trees, and shortened the construction period as much as possible to minimize all possible accidents, everything in the outside world is also going on at the same time. The counterattack plan against the demon-occupied areas has been launched. And within a few days, the entire war situation took a turn for the worse, collapsing into a complete mess. Let's talk about the east and west fronts first. The situation is the same on both sides. No matter which side, the expendable forwards continue to break into the depths of the demonic territory, singing songs of victory all the way, even though there was no support from the main force behind them, or even no movement. The two forwards did not stop their pace, because they need to win to prove themselves. And what victory is greater than rushing into the core of the enemy's formation, taking the enemy's commander's head, and closing the damn door to the abyss? Therefore, the two forwards were aggressive and never looked back. They even wished that the main force of the Khan King of the two realms behind him would not move and take the credit alone. But this momentum was shattered when it collided with the demon army led by the Lord of the Abyss. It has nothing to do with conflicting arms or tactics. It is just a gap in absolute strength that makes the light-armored cavalry that the Suli Tang Empire is proud of become no different than a doll made of paper. The ending was natural. None of the forwards on the east and west sides could escape. Even the forums had no time to send out a warning. So they fell silent. Even though the two tribal armies that came forward were quite unruly. There were no regular reports. But in such a tribe, the cons of the two realms also planted spies. There is no one who cannot be bought. If there is, it just means that the price of buying is not enough. However, there was a sudden silence, and even the hidden spies did not report a single word. Such an abnormal situation would certainly put the two cons, who were accustomed to operating in the dark on their guard, especially after learning about the tragic situation on the southern front. It proved that the alliance of demons and orcs was not without the strength to fight. This made them even more reluctant to send out the main force of their men and throw them into the demon-occupied area that looked like a bloody mouth because no one knows how much strength the Demon Alliance hides. The three groups attacked together, and as a result, the Demon Alliance was able to launch a counterattack on the southern front, swallowing up the forwards from the east and west, whether they can do more things and achieve greater results. No one can guarantee, nor do they want to use their own lives to prove such a thing. The fact is that the king of two realms who chose to protect himself was both wise and foolish. In response to the attacks from the east and west, the demon coalition indeed set a trap. A trap led by the Lord of the Abyss himself. If they hadn't seen the two main armies motionless, the two monarchs might not have come forward to bully the two forwards. But they couldn't help it. Demons are not a race that is good at forbearing. So he took action decisively 
and knocked out the forwards from the east and west in one fell swoop. Let these two tribes serve as the vanguard, transforming from expendable chess pieces to sacrificial discarded pieces in one fell swoop. However, the demons from the east and west did not attack the east and west borders of the Suli Tang Empire, nor did they set up defenses, still maintaining an empty defense, allowing people to come and go freely. But this situation is even more terrifying, making people afraid to step into it easily. The situation on the south road is completely different. The six legions in the first wave of attack sequence were destroyed, and not a single one escaped. And the legions that originally belonged to the second and third wave of attack sequence, because of their fighting position, tore the original defense line into tatters. They didn't have time to reorganize their defense line, and they faced a coalition of demons and orcs that were several times larger than expected. At this point, the strategy of the devil side is also obvious. Facing the east and west routes, they focused on defense. The main force gathered on the south route and pushed out in one go. Compared to the well-coordinated and well-equipped Imperial Regular Army, the allied forces of demons and orcs chose to attack the rabble on the other side. Although the human coalition forces on the south road formation are larger in number, there are also more powerful ones among the adventurers. But after all, they are not a well-trained army. Compared with the regular army of the Empire, those weak ones, who are below the average make up the majority. All of the above have hindered the strength of the human coalition forces on the southern front as an army. Just like the shortboard theory of the barrel. It is the same even after a short period of running and training. The cold weapon army of the old era had different focuses from the hot weapon army of a certain time traveling across the country. In an army that uses cold weapons, soldiers need to know not only teamwork, but also courage, and more importantly, trust in their comrades. However, the hot weapon army put it bluntly and spent money on it. Of course training also has an impact. But ask the soldiers on the front line. Training time or money. Which one can more quickly strengthen their strength? To take a step back. No matter how good the training is. How can you fight with others on bayonets if you don't have money to buy bullets? This resulted in a strong army in the cold weapon era that was not so easy to train. Even if a soldier has fearless courage and powerful combat skills there is no guarantee that his comrades will have the same awareness. It only takes one coward in a battle line, and a gap will appear, and this gap is likely to cause the entire front to collapse. Once the battle line collapses, a strong person may be surrounded by enemies on all sides and become devastated. The breakthrough direction chosen by the coalition of demons and orcs was quite reasonable, and the results were in line with expectations, except for a few legions that accidentally fell into an ambush in the early stage and were surrounded and annihilated. The other legions could not stop the demon coalition even if they defended on the spot. Those who performed best could only retreat in an orderly manner. There were quite a few who were beaten until they fled. When the southern front collapsed, the small countries to the south of the Suritan Empire had to face the demon coalition. They abandoned their homes without hesitation and fled further back. Even if you do this, there is no other way. Because the troops they used to protect their homeland disintegrated with the defeat of the southern front. Even those who were lucky enough to survive. Most of them discarded their weapons and equipment and fled home in embarrassment with only a small life left. Even if the organized team retreats, how can their small numbers resist the demon coalition? Trying to do everything possible to protect their families and escape is the last thing these people can do. And even if you encounter someone who doesn't want to leave, no one will allow them to stay. Demons and orcs need captives. Not to enslave them, but to use them as food after a person dies, his soul can also become the source of power for the demons, or a sacrifice for sacrifice. Therefore, under the principle of scorched earth strategy, these civilians must leave instead of staying to aid the enemy. Not even the old, weak, women or children can be left to demons or orcs. Logically speaking, the retreat of civilians cannot escape the butcher knife of the army. However, in the lost land of this era, there are fortresses guarding civilization standing on the ground. The magic towers have become the biggest weapon to cover the retreaters. The tower owners did not forget their oath of protection and fought against the devil until the last moment. 